Section 1 Who is she that looks out like the dawn? This section opens with the verse, and the Creator spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man whose heart prompts him. Rabbi Shia points out that the Creator put all other nations under his ministers but chose to oversee Israel himself, having a wish to be specially connected to them. Rabbi Shimon then explains that in the text, Who is she that looks out like the dawn? Fair as the moon clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners, she is the secret of the lower world joined to the higher world. He goes on to say that the upper worlds were united in Leah and the lower worlds were united in Rachel, yet that it was Jacob who united the two worlds in his love for and marriage to them both when it was written. Rachel envied her sister. The meaning was that the whole longing and desire of the lower world is to be like the upper world and to inherit its position. Between the worlds, those who sought to lust after them both would perish, having found neither understanding nor faith. And when we read, For Yah has chosen Jacob to himself, we see that God has completed Israel above and below in perfection. The relevance of this passage in a true offering to God speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. A man sacrifices an aspect of his innate negative nature, for this is how we connect to the light of the Creator. This passage uproots our selfish tendency so that we enjoin ourselves to the divine radiance. Jacob also cautions us to recognize the dangers of lusting after the fleeting pleasures of the material world. A desire for eternal fulfillment, the love of family, of friends, and of God is thus awakened in our souls. Our consciousness is raised by virtue of the light that shines through the story of Jacob and his love for Leah and Rachel. This love elevates the entire world, connecting us to the source of all light. One. And Hashem spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man whose heart prompts him. Shema 251 to 2. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying, For Yah has chosen Jacob to himself, Israel, for his peculiar possession. Tehillim 1354. How beloved are Israel before the Holy One. Blessed be he who desires them and wants to be attached to them and connect himself with them to make them a single nation in the world as it is written and what one nation in. The earth is like your people Israel. 2 Shmuel 723. They wanted him and were attached to him as it says, For Yah has chosen Jacob to himself and for Hashem's portion is his people. Devarim 329. He gave ministers and officers to the other nations and took Israel to his part. 2 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying, Who is she that looks out like the dawn fair as the moon clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners? Sure, Hashirim 610. Who have me is she have Zot, me Zot is the Secret of two worlds that unite which are a world and a world. This is as is written forever and ever live from the world to the world. I Rahim and 1636 which are Bun and Malchud who is the supernal level above the beginning of all things which may be examined and is named me which is Bun as it says lift up your eyes on high and behold who created these. Yeshea 4026 Shehab Zot is a lower level below which is the lower world that is to say Malchud there are two worlds joined. By one connection by one tie together, through the elevation of Malchud into Bunna which is how she attained the Mokin of Bunna 3 that looks out that is when both of them are attached as one Malchud looks out like the dawn when the dawn wants to illuminate and she is fair as the moon in which the sun's light which is Zeir and illuminates and she is clear as the sun as clear as the sun's light when the moon is full that is when Malchud is face to face with Zeir and which is called sun terrible as an army with banners this is when she is strong to protect all being at that point furnished with perfection and power to perform great feats for and Malchud receives strength that is Mokin from the supernal word which is Bunna by means of Jacob the whole man who united them together by elevating main and female waters he has elevated Malchud into Bunna and they got connected one with the other he connected them together above so that Bunna received it. Shape of Malchut and is the secret of Leah. He also connected them together below so that Malchut acquired the shape of Bunna and is the secret of Rachel. And the twelve holy tribes came out from there in the likeness of above. In other words, as the twelve aspects that exist in the upper Malchut, Jacob, who was whole, brought love into the two worlds, as we have stated that he wedded two sisters, Leah and Rachel, who are the secret of the two worlds of Bunna and Malchut. Other men who do such a thing merely commit sexual misconduct both above and below and cause antagonism in both worlds and engender separation between Zeir and Ben and Leah and between Zeir and Ben and Rachel. Since he unites with Leah from the chest above and with Rachel from the chest below, it is written, Neither shall you take a wife to her sister as her rival. Vayikra 1818, so that they became rivals and full of hatred toward each other. Five, if you say what is the meaning of Rachel envied her sister, Bereshit 301, the text. Talks about the two worlds, Leah and Rachel, who are the aspect of Bunna and Malchud, who are included together. What kind of jealousy is there here? He replies, It is surely so for the whole desire of the lower world, Rachel, is to be in the semblance of the upper world, Leah, who is Bunna, and to inherit its position in other places. It states when scholars compete with the mount, so there is also envy between scholars, since there are books, and then there are books, Abba and Iama, from whom Shakma is drawn. Therefore, by competition between these scholars, they draw an enormous amount of wisdom. Six, notwithstanding all this, Jacob could not even succeed in bringing perfect harmony between them as would be desirable, but other men cause envy and separation through incest, both above and below, and the secret is included the secret of nakedness, that is the nakedness of the mother and the daughter, which are Bunna and Malchud, and everything, both the two sisters and the mother and her daughter pertain. To the same secret, this is because who have me and she have Zot are considered sisters as they are united in love and sisterly affection and in the connection of intention they are also called mother and daughter because Bina is called mother and Malchut is her daughter he who uncovers their nakedness that is to say the judgments that are in them shall have no portion in the world to come which is Bina and shall have no portion in the faith which is Malchut 7 come and see for Yah has chosen Jacob to himself is the supernal secret above for he cleaved above to Abba and Ima in their light of Shesed in which are termed Yahweh Yudhi since he has completed everything and is now named Israel he is his peculiar possession which is Malchut called peculiar possession for then he takes everything in all the aspects the right and the left he takes above in Abba and Ima who illuminate Shesedim and he takes below in Yisrael Saba and Tevuna who illuminate Chakma and he attains. Perfection in everything both in Chakma and in the Shesedim section 2 when the Holy One blessed be he created the world Rabbi Shimon says that when the Holy One created the world he engraved on the upper and the lower worlds the letters of his holy name which hold the secret of the supernal lights the upper world is concealed in one of these letters it ascends by means of the secret of infinity and from this concealment emerges a thin and hidden light in this light exists its counterpart the glorious light of creation when first it was struck the supernal world emerged and was filled with a light so great that it would be too terrifying for those below to see in this unknown concealed world live 6000 myriads which are supernal inhabitants and hosts and camps only Jacob who possessed Malchut as his own received permission to rise to the higher world and we learn Malchut is illuminated by the light of Bina from above the lower world always has a secret desire for the higher world being unable to experience it directly as Jacob did the relevance of this passage the letters inscribed below connect us to letters of the holy name which embody the primordial forces of creation this awesome luminosity is normally far too intense for a mortal to behold however through Jacob who personifies control over physical existence we have a key to unlock the gate to the upper world through Jacob we acquire the vessel necessary to hold this divine energy that shines so brightly in the distant heavens eight rabbi Shimon said we learned that when the holy one blessed be he who is bina created the world which is Malchut, he engraved his engravings of the secret of the faith which is Malchut into the lights which are the secret of the supernal beings and he engraved above in bina and engraved below in Malchut. everything is in the secret of the engraving of the holy name Yud -Hey -Hey, that controls by means of its letters above and Below that is in Bunna and Malchud, which are the first Hay and the last Hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay, since both of them are of the same shape, which is Hay. The worlds were brought to completion by means of the secret, both the superior world, which is Bunna, and the lower world, which is Malchud. Nine, the upper world is included in the secret of the letter Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay, which includes Eric Enpin and Abba and Ima, namely the first
For then the delight of delight illuminates in its light eleven. This light that emerges to those below from the thin light is awesome and frightful and very strong, and this thin light spreads and becomes one world which is supernal Abba and Iame that illuminates all the worlds. It is a concealed world that is wholly unknown, and sixty million of supernal inhabitants and hosts and camps live in them. Twelve once Yud brought them out, they become one joint Yud Hey, they are the secret of the letter Vav, which has become attached to that concealed world, and this Vav alludes to Jacob as it is written, for Yah has chosen Jacob to himself. Jacob cleaved unto the mentioned name Yud Hey when the Vav emerges and becomes accomplished through Yud Hey, meaning that the letter Vav has become independent with the Mokin of Yud Hey and has the first three Svarot, and it is written Yisrael for his peculiar possession and is called Yisrael rather than Jacob thirteen, none of the other people in the world. Except for Jacob received permission to rise to bind it to cleave unto Yud Hey like Jacob, but to his peculiar possession alone, which is the place that receives and gathers everything which is a lower level, namely Malchut from within Malchut, they receive the light of Shesedim of above in Bino, which is an aspect of Leah and a hidden desire, but not openly as Jacob does. This is the meaning of that they bring me an offering. Section 3 How great is your goodness, which you have laid up. Rabbi Yehuda opens the discussion by reciting this verse How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have performed for those who trust in you in the sight of the sons of man. He goes on to discuss the various levels and worlds, and he reveals the code words that speak of their wondrous roles in the process of creation. For instance, there is the highest level, which is the secret of the higher world, and is called who, then there is the Lowest level, which is the secret of the lower world, and is called what, although the sphere of Chakma is connected to the lower world through the quality of Bina, it does not become revealed until it is completed here in Malchut, the earthly kingdom. The word what is Ma, we're told, which is contained in Chakma. Next, we learn that the foundation of the world is laid upon goodness that is distributed by God, and the light that is concealed in this foundation is a testament to the goodness with which He crafted the whole world, as well as the souls and spirits. The tabernacle was made with the same divine secret as the secret of the whole world. The image of the world above manifested in the world below this, we're told, is understanding manifested in the kingdom. The relevance of this passage we come to this earth for what we may learn, and in the university of this universe, we study to grow, transform, and become perfected. This endeavor is the matter in which we express our godly. Nature and thus become co-creators of our wisdom and light, which are purposely concealed in this realm. Our meditation here completes our own unique role in creation. The tasks that we have been sent into the world to perform in order to facilitate our personal transformation. In addition, the vast mysteries of the tabernacle are revealed here by virtue of all this great energy. The tasks of all mankind are now completed, and the final correction is achieved through the light of the Zohar world. Peace and immortality are now attained in a kind, compassionate, and merciful process. Fourteen that they bring me an offering. Shema two hundred and fifty-one to two. Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse: How great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have performed for those who trust in you in the sight of the sons of men. Tehillim thirty-one twenty. This passage has been explained, and we have learned that the secret was established by the holy luminary as part of supernal secrets. Fifteen. The highest level, which is the secret of the highest world, namely Bina, is called Me, and who the lower level, which is the secret of the lower world, which is Malchut, is called Ma. And what we learn that it is written, What Ma does Hashem your Elohim require of you? Devarim 1012, do not pronounce it as Ma, but rather as Mi and 100, because all the levels are sublime in perfection. There are 50 of them here in Malchut, therefore it is called 116. Another reason why Malchut is called Ma, although the pull from above of Chakma is conducted by way of the higher levels, Bina and Zeir infinite is not revealed until it is completed here in Malchut. This is the last place of all the levels and the end of all the continuance, and it stands revealed in the illumination of Chakma, even though it is more revealed than all of them. One is allowed to ask what Ma is, and what did you see, and what do you know as is written for you, saw no matter. A form to Arm 415 17, therefore it is written, How Hedma great is your goodness, where Ma is Malchut, how great is your goodness is the foundation of the world, namely Yizid of Zeir Anpin, which is called great goodness, as written, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, Yashia 637. This is because the first light that is included in Yizid is merely called good male and female are included here, since the female who is also called Ma since Chakma is revealed in her is also included here, as it is written, How great is your goodness, it is therefore written great because it points toward the illumination of Chakma, which you have laid up. This light is concealed just as the first light was hidden and kept for the righteous you have performed, because here in Malchut that is called Ma because of the inclusion of Bina and it is the craftsmanship of everything, the craftsmanship of the whole world, and the craftsmanship of the souls and spirits. 18. The Holy One, blessed be He, made the craftsmanship of the whole world in the secret of Bina being comprised in Malchut. This is the secret of the verse. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Bereshit 11, the tabernacle was made and built by this means, which is the image of the world above, which is Bina, and in the image of the lower world, which is Malchut. This is what is meant by that they bring me an offering, and me an offering are two levels Bina and Malchut, which are one when combined together. Section 4, the balsam tree and the palanquin. Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Abba, and Rabbi Yossi are sitting one day under the pleasant shade of some trees. Rabbi Shimon opens the discussion by saying, King Solomon made himself a palanquin from the woods of Lebanon. He goes on to speak of the palanquin as the lower chamber, which God called the Garden of Eden and built for himself in order to commune with the souls of the righteous. Four. They are recorded there, and it is there too that they are crowned. Disembodied souls, we're told, are filled with the delights of the river of the pure balsam tree. Rabbi Shimon states that the balsam tree is the upper chamber covered and hidden, which represents Bina Palanquin is the lower chamber that has no support until it is held up by the upper chamber. A discussion between the rabbis follows on the secret of 100, which is hidden in the names for Palanquin and Balsam Tree, whose forms are comparable. Those who do not have a body in this world are suckled by the river of light that emerges from the pure balsam, while those who do have a body delight in the Palanquin, which is the earthly garden. Rabbi Shimon then says that King Solomon means their and God with his attributes, which are the male world. The king without attributes refers to the Messiah, the female world. He concludes by saying that the cedars of Lebanon that he planted and of which the Palanquin was built. And completed were Shisid, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid. The relevance of this passage, this marvelously informative discussion, speaks to us of the two forms of the Garden of Eden that God has made for us the Garden on earth, where we may rest and be comforted, and the higher garden that awaits us after death, where we may commune with Him. Our souls give to and take from the qualities of the Garden, emitting fragrance from our good deeds, and in turn absorbing the exquisite fragrance of it. Garden by our thoughtful reading, our entire world is nourished by His light. Our life is scented with the aroma of the Garden, and the fragrance of Eden now emanates throughout the world, ushering in the arrival of the Messianic Age 19 that they bring me an offering. Shema 252 Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Abba, and Rabbi Yussi were sitting one day under some trees in the valley next to the Sea of Genesis, that is the Sea of Galilee. Rabbi Shimon said, How pleasant is the shade from the trees. That covers us, and we are obliged to adorn this place with the words of Torah. Twenty Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion, saying, "King Solomon made himself a palanquin from the woods of Lebanon." Sure, Hashirim thirty-nine. We have established and learned this passage. Still, palanquin is the lower chamber, Malchut, which is similar to the upper chamber. By the Holy One, blessed be He, called it the Garden of Eden, which He plants for His pleasure, and His desire is to amuse Himself in it with the souls of it. Righteous, for they all stand there and are recorded there. The souls that do not have a body in this world all ascend and are crowned there. They have places to see and to delight in the supernal delight that is called the pleasantness of Hashem. And there they are filled with all the delights of the river of the pure balsam tree. Twenty-one. The balsam tree is the upper chamber, which is covered and hidden, which is by the palanquin is the lower chamber, Malchut, which has no support. Have some until. It is
which is by the therefore one is a farsman and the other an Apirian, and their forms are equal twenty four they are the rivers that emerge from that balsam and the supernal souls that do not have a body in this world nurse from the light that emerges from the pure balsam and delight in the supernal delight the souls that have a body in this world ascend and nurse from this palanquin and descend these give and take giving the fragrance from those good deeds in which they endeavored in this world and taking from that fragrance that remained in the garden of Eden as it is written like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed bear she 2727 meaning the fragrance that remained in that field they all stand in that garden those that do not have a body in this world delight above in the balsam which is by in the garden and those that have a body in this world delight below in the palanquin which is malchute in the garden 25 King Solomon made himself for his own benefit he Questions the souls of the pious delight with it, yet you say made himself. He answers, It is certainly so because this palanquin and these souls of the righteous all exist so that the Holy One blessed be he can amuse himself with them. So we see that he made it for himself. King Solomon had Shlomo is the king that the peace had Shalom is his, namely the supernal king Zeir and the king without attributes refers to Messiah, which is Malchut. The one is the male world and the other the female world from the woods of Lebanon. These are the trees and plants that the Holy One blessed be he uprooted and planted in a different place. They are the seven spirot of male and female that were in Malchut with the quality of judgment which he uprooted and reposted in Bina in the secret of Malchut of the quality of mercy. These are called the cedars of Lebanon as it is written, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. Tehillim 10,416. This palanquin was built and completed with them alone. Section 5 The Woods of Lebanon are the six days of creation. Here we read an alternative explanation of the Woods of Lebanon, that they are the six days of creation, the six attributes of Chesed, Vira, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid all in their turn entered and mated with the palanquin, producing in this fashion the manifested world in six days. Then we learn this palanquin became sanctified until it ascended the crown of rest and was given a supernal name Shabbat Rabbi Shimon. Tells us that we have to see we are sitting in the shadow of the Creator within that palanquin. The relevance of this passage again and again in the Zohar we see that each interpretation of Scripture leads us back to the knowledge that God has placed His own qualities into the creation that He made for us from our mundane perspective. The upper world consists of six Tiferet dimensions rolled into one called Zir, and this realm is the repository of all our wisdom and fulfillment, the love we. Feel the joy we experience, the serenity we seek all originate there. Zir Anfin also embodies the supernal light of Shabbat. Access to this realm can be achieved through inner transformation and various tools such as the Zohar on Shabbat. However, this light is freely given as a gift to all creation. These words of Zohar open up the gates to Zir Anfin, causing the light of the cosmic Sabbath to shine the moment our eyes fall upon them. 26 Another explanation of the woods of Lebanon. These are the six days of creation for each day is arranged on this palanquin in the system that applies to it. Every attribute of Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid of Zeir Anfin that are completed through Bina bestows one part in the edifice of Malchut that is called palanquin. The first system, the first light that was concealed, is drawn from the right side of Bina and it takes from the right side of Zeir Anfin who enters this palanquin upon one foundation and cohabits with it afterwards. It Palanquin produces an image that is suitable for this light, which is the attribute of Chesed of the Palanquin. This is the secret of what is written. Let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13 after it said, Let there be light. Why add, and there was light? It could have just been written, and it was so. Wherefore does it say, and there was light? It means that this light brought forth a different light that was suitable for it, and this was the first day of these woods of Lebanon. 27 The second system, the separation of the waters, is drawn from the left side of Bina by the drawing of a strong fire taken from the left side of Zeir and then it enters into the Palanquin, mates with it, and divides between the water on the right side and the water on the left side. Afterwards, the Palanquin brought forth an image similar to this, and the attribute of Bura of the Palanquin was built. This is the secret of the verse, the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so of it seven this is the second day of these woods of Lebanon 28 the third system a certain third day is drawn from the central side and the right side meaning the attribute of Tiferet of Zeir Anfin which is the central column that makes peace in the world between the two columns right and left whence fruits proceed to everyone and it cohabits with this palanquin and draws forth a species after its kind of species that does many actions like the kinds that fit it accordingly meaning all the vegetation and grasses and trees in many strengths and its image remains in the palanquin that palanquin brings forth a species exactly identical to it that came forth from the central column and the attribute of Tiferet of the palanquin is built this is the third day that includes both sides right and left of these woods of Lebanon 29 the fourth system the light of the sun is drawn and illuminates this palanquin in the midst of its darkness it enters to Illuminate but does not cohabit with it until the fifth day then the palanquin brings forth the cohabitation of the illumination that entered it on the fourth day and the palanquin brings forth the exact likeness of that light the attribute of Netzach of the palanquin is built in this way this is the fourth day which is one of the woods of Lebanon 30 the fifth system one drawing of the swarming of the water was brought forth and made it so as to bring forth that light from the system of it. Fourth day it cohabited with that palanquin on the fifth day and brought forth species according to its very own kind this day of the woods of Lebanon did that action more than in the other days because it perfected the attribute of hot in the palanquin with the sweetened judgments of Bina it was all suspended until the sixth day for the palanquin brought forth all that was hidden in it as it is written let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind of 24 this is the fifth day. One day of the woods of the Lebanon 31 the sixth system it is a day that perfected the entire palanquin the palanquin has no perfection and power except through that day which is Yezid of Zeir Anfin because the palanquin does not receive anything from those above except through Yezid of Zeir Anfin when that day came the palanquin became perfected with many spirits with many souls and with many beautiful maidens who are seven chambers that serve Malchut those ones worthy to sit in the king's chamber Yezid also was perfected with the beauty of all the days that preceded because Yezid includes all the five days Jesus Bura Tiferet Net Sash and Hot and it perfected them with one wish with desire joy and perfection of above and below 32 then this palanquin became sanctified with supernal sanctities and adorned with its crowns until it ascended with the rising of the crown of rest and was given a supernal name the holy name which is Shabbat this is the tranquility of all the desire of all and the cleaving of all of above and below together of which it is written King Solomon made himself a palanquin from the woods of Lebanon 33 Rabbi Shimon said the one who merits the palanquin merits everything he merits to sit and rest in the shadow of Hashem as it is written I sat down under his shadow with great delight sure Hasharim 23 now that I sit in the shadow of this rest we have to see that we are sitting in the shadow of the Holy One blessed be he within that palanquin but we have to adorn this place with supernal crowns until the trees of that palanquin are aroused to come to us with a different shadow section 6 that they bring me an offering the section title passage summarizes one single great truth which Rabbi Shimon explains to us that for one to aspire toward divine union he must strive with all his heart and soul and with self-purification and pay the necessary price we also hear that he is prompted to do this by the heart of God in himself that he may increase his worthiness by turning a wicked person from the path of evil in doing so he causes the subjugation of the other side causes God to be elevated in his honor and thence causes the world to be preserved both above and below such a righteous one we're told shall enter in through the twelve gates the relevance of this passage perfection comes partly through striving and steadfast self-transformation with the right intent yet there is more to bettering ourselves we can increase our merit by tutoring the wicked helping them to be free of evil through our meditation upon these verses we grasp in our hearts the source of all goodness from whence we sprang the evil tendencies of the wicked are abolished and the other side is immobilized we are now free to attain unity with the light of the creator 34 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying that they bring me an offering of every man whose heart prompts him to give Shema. 252 that they bring me points out that if one wishes to undertake a precept and to aspire towards the Holy One blessed be he it is necessary that the person not strive in vain and empty handed
The action in which he wishes to endeavor and he should give whatever is requested of him whether a little or a lot the spirit of impurity is always ready freely and for nothing and is saleable without payment because he compels people upon whom he dwells and entices them to dwell with him he tempts them to make their habitation with him in many ways 37 the spirit of holiness is not this way but only with full payment and great endeavor and by purifying himself and purifying his habitation. With the desire of his heart and soul and even and fortunate is he who merits that he will place its habitation with him with all this he must go in the straight path neither turning right nor left if he does not he separates itself immediately and distances itself from him and he will not again be able to merit it as he did originally 38 in reference to this it is written that they bring me an offering of every man meaning one called man who has overcome his inclination for whoever overcomes his inclination is called man whose heart prompts him he questions what does whose heart prompts him mean he answers rather that the holy one blessed be he takes pleasure in him as it is written of you my heart has said tail 278 the strength of my heart tail 7326 of a merry heart michelet 1515 and his heart was merry wrote 37 they all refer to the holy one blessed be he meaning the heart of the holy one blessed be he that is his good will here also whose heart prompts him is the heart of the holy one blessed be he from him shall you take my offering because there is where the holy one blessed be he is found for he dwells in him and in no other place 39 how do we know that the holy one blessed be he wants him and places his dwelling place in him ITIS when we see that the desire of the person is to endeavor to pursue the holy one blessed be he with his heart and soul and desire we are certain then that the Sheshan dwells there then we should pay in full to befriend him and to learn from him about this the ancient said and acquire for yourself a friend you must buy him for a full price in order to merit the Sheshan that dwells in him this is how far it is necessary to pursue a righteous man and purchase him 40 in the same way the righteous one must pursue the wicked person and purchase him for a full price in order to remove from him that filth subdue the other side and build him for it is considered as though he created him this is a praise with which the glory of the Holy One blessed be he will be elevated more than with any other praise and this elevation is quite in excess what is the reason because he caused the other side to be subdued and to elevate the honor of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written about Aaron and turned many away from iniquity Malachi 26 and also my covenant was with him Ibid 541 come and see everyone who holds the hand of the wicked person and endeavors to help him leave it. Path of evil is elevated in three elevations to which another person cannot rise he causes the subjugation of the other side he causes the Holy One blessed be he to be elevated in his honor and he causes the world to be preserved both above and below about this person it is written my covenant was with him for life and peace and he merits to see the children of his children and gains merit in this world and in the world to come all the accusers will not be able to judge him in this world and in the world to come he enters through the twelve gates that are in the firmament and there is nothing to prevent him it is written his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever light rises in the darkness for the upright he is gracious and full of compassion and just tail 1122 to 4 section 7 the three colors in the flame this section deals with the three colors that can be distinguished inside a flame one rises up while another seems to dip down the other one is usually visible but appears to be concealed when the sun shines there is one color that ascends above and emerges and that color is whiter than white through this analogy we learn how our prayers cause the white light to ascend to the crown and how all the spirat join to each other with light above and below and then join with all the candles only then are all combined with it Righteous one who is called good whosoever causes the wicked to return to the right path is now worthy we are told this recognition is then witnessed by the angels who supervise the world next the overseer appears bringing with him the image of that person and we read there is no righteous person in this world who does not have his image thus engraved above the king and blesses the image of that righteous one and four camps of supernal angels take it and depart whence they go however we are not told the Zohar next recounts the 70 keys belonging of treasures owned by the overseer's master and then of 70 concealed worlds after this we learn that those who help the poor merit much good in return as well as many supernal treasures but these rewards are nothing like those merited by someone who redeems the wicked now we learn when the children of Israel reach the Kedusha in the prayer the third color in the flame emerges and shines we are next told that the sanctification we recite is the same as the praise we give to the supernal angels and we give this praise both so that we may be sanctified ourselves and so that we may earn their friendship sanctification in the holy language may only be recited when ten men are present because the Sheshanah joins the sanctification prayer we are told has great strength and is often able to break the power of the other side concluding the discourse Rabbi Shimon blesses the other rabbis the relevance of this passage just as the seven colors of the rainbow emerge from a single beam of white sunlight our reading unites all the spiritual forces into their original state a ray of pure light emanating from the creator this union produces a luminescence that brightens our entire existence we steer this light towards the wicked the evil who dwell among us as well as the wicked tendencies in ourselves thus purging immoral impulses and subjugating the other side the satan which is the root of personal and global Negativity this light also emancipates the poor annulling the force of poverty so all may not partake of God's goodness 42 in the upper chamber which is Malchut there are three colors which are Netzach hot and Yezid that glitter inside one flame and that flame emerges from the south side which is right these colors separate to three sides one ascends above shining from below up and it is Netzach one descends below shining from above down and it is hot and one is visible but is concealed when the sun shines it is the illumination of Chakma and Chesedim that is produced by Yezid that shines only at night which is the dominion of Mukva but not by day which is the dominion of Zeir and 43 there is one color that ascends above which is Netzach and emerges and that color is white much whiter than any other kind of white it enters that flame and becomes slightly colored for it includes some judgments of the flame yet does not become colored meaning that no color is noticeable in it which is judgment that color is situated above on the top of that chamber namely on top of Malchud when Israel come to synagogue and pray their prayers when they reach to redeem Israel and bring redemption and Amida prayer close together by not interrupting in between through this they cause Yezid which is called redemption to get close to Malchud which is called prayer then that white color which is Netzach ascends to the top of the chamber which is Malchud and becomes its crown. 44 a proclamation is made blessed are you the holy nation that do good meaning that they cause the unity of Yezid that is called good before the holy one blessed be he this is the secret of and have done that which is good in your eyes Yeshayah 383 which means that he brought redemption close to prayer when they reach praises to the supernal that color Netzach ascends upon the top of the chamber and the righteous one is aroused which is Yezid of Zeir and then to unite where it should with Love and affection and with joy and desire all the limbs namely all the Sfirah join each other with the same desire those of above with those of below and all the candles namely all the levels shine and glitter they are all combined with the righteous one who is called good as it is written say of the righteous that it shall be well also good with him Yeshayah 310 it joins them all in one union and all is silent above and below with the kisses of desire it is all found in the union of it. Chamber namely the secret of the embrace 45 as soon as give peace is reached which is the last blessing of the Amida and the attribute of Yezid the river that emerges from Eden which is Yezid cohabits with this chamber which is Malchut and all must leave the presence of the king no person needs to be present there nor make their requests but it is just necessary to fall on the face that is to say the prayer of falling on their faces what is the reason that is the time of cohabitation. And everyone must be embarrassed before his master and cover his face with great embarrassment to include himself in that cohabitation of the souls for this chamber is included from above and from below with souls and spirits and another color that descends below namely hot gets up and attaches itself to the end of this room 46 another proclamation is made those of above and those of below bear witness whoever creates souls and exonerates the wicked meaning he who causes them to return to the right path is worthy to be adorned with the crown of royalty on his head that is the one who is now worthy to come before the king and queen because the king and queen are inquiring about him 47 then appear two witnesses of the eyes of Hashem that roam the entire world namely the angels who supervise the world who stand behind the curtain and bear this testimony saying we witness that so and so son of so and so acquired souls below souls of the wicked who
the jurisdiction of this overseer and seventy keys of all the treasures of his master which is the secret of the seven lords Firat of Chakma are given over into the hand of the righteous one the king and blesses the image of that righteous one with all the blessings that he blessed Abraham when he made over the souls of the wicked as in the secret of the verse the souls they had acquired in Charon Bershi 125 50 the holy one blessed be he gestures to four camps of supernal angels who take that image and go with it he enters seventy concealed worlds that no other person except him merited because these worlds are concealed and are only for those who made over the souls of the wicked if people knew how much benefit and merit they would acquire when they merit them with repentance they would go after them and pursue them as one who pursues life 51 a poor person causes people to merit much good and many supernal treasures but not like one who brings merit to the wicked what is the difference between them simply he who works for and does charity with the poor enlivens his soul enables him to live in merits because he has done much good in this world but he who endeavors after the wicked to return them to repent accomplishes even more because he causes the other elohim of the other side to become subdued and removes him from his dominion he causes the holy one blessed be he to become elevated upon his throne of glory and makes a new soul for that wicked one Happy is his share 52 the other color namely the third color is visible yet not visible when the sun shines when Yisrael reached the Kedesh its sanctification in the prayer namely the sanctification in the prayer but to Zion a redeemer shall come Yeshua 5920 the third color which was concealed emerges because the sanctification is sanctified by the children of Yisrael even more than the supernal angels who are comrades with them that color shines and is seen at the time that the children of Yisrael say the sanctification until they finish it so that the supernal angels should not notice and punish them above and should not accuse them 53 then a proclamation is issued those above and those below who are haughty with the words of Torah listen carefully who is he that all his words are only to be proud with the words of Torah as we learned man needs to be humble in the world with the words of Torah because there is no pride due to the Torah except in the world too. Come 54 we must be guarded and conceal the sanctification among us in order that we become holy with sanctification in the beginning and in the end more than with these sanctifications that the supernal angels say with us the sanctification that we recite in the Amid is the praise that we praise the supernal angels who permit us to enter the supernal gates for this praise therefore we recite the sanctification in the holy language which is the language that the ministering angels use. And they leave us to come with love into the gates of above because we praise them in their system namely we say and one cry to another and said so we receive a great sanctification and enter into the highest gates 55 and if you say that what we praise them is deception and that it is not with a whole heart but only to receive sanctification this is not so the supernal angels are holier than us and they receive more sanctification if it were not for the fact that we take and draw upon ourselves these sanctifications through the praise we give them we could not be friends with them and the glory of the holy one blessed be he would not be complete above and below at one time because we would not be able to receive supernal sanctification therefore we endeavor to be friends with them through the praise we give them and the glory of the holy one blessed be he should rise above and below at the same time 56 the sanctification which is at the end and a redeemer shall come to zion is translated as we have established even a solitary man may say this since they are words of translation but the sanctification that is in the holy language may be recited only when ten are present because the shechinah joins the sanctification when the shechinah is present any sanctification is only recited by ten as it is written but i will be hallowed among the children of israel Bayakra 2232 the children of israel certainly speak in the holy language unlike the other nations that speak a different language 57 and if you ask why isn't the sanctification of Kaddish which is in Aramaic recited alone he answers come and see the sanctification meaning Kaddish is not like the other kinds of sanctification which are tripled but the sanctification is in all the sides above and below and in all sides of the faith it breaks even locks and rings of iron and evil clip so that the glory of the Holy One blessed be he shall ascend above all we must say it in the language of the other side and answer amen may his great name be blessed with great strength in order to break the power of the other side then the Holy One blessed be he should ascend in his glory over all when power of the other side is broken with the sanctification the Holy One blessed be he becomes elevated in his glory and he remembers his children and his name because the Holy One blessed be he ascends in his glory through the sanctification it can be recited only among 1058 the other Side is subdued against his will by this language of Aramaic and its power is broken the glory of the Holy One blessed be he ascends and breaks locks and rings and strong chains and evil clipot and the Holy One blessed be he remembers his name and children blessed are they the Holy People that the Holy One blessed be he gives them the Holy Torah to merit through it the world to come 59 Rabbi Shimon said to the friends blessed are you in the world to come since I started the words of it. Supernal crown of royalty I will say more and only for you may the Holy One blessed be he grant you reward in that world and may the breath of your mouth ascend above as though you yourself said these words section 8 gold and silver and brass Rabbi Shimon opens the discussion with the verse and this is the offering which you shall take of them gold and silver and brass this passage is both toward the upper side which is the side of holiness or the right side and the lower side which is the other side or the left side when God created the world and the tabernacle he made them opposite so that while they are both silver and gold the world is begun from silver or right while the tabernacle is begun from gold or left the relevance of this passage good and evil are undeniable forces that live within us this truth is revealed by way of the metal metaphor gold silver and brass whose purpose is to help us become truly cognizant of their influence our inner aspect of good now emerges as our dominant feature and we finally uproot and eliminate the evil component forever as our own negative traits are toppled the macrocosmic force of evil is conquered in equal measure 60 he opened the discussion with the verse and this is the offering which you shall take of them gold and silver and brass Shema 253 this passage is both toward the upper side and the lower side and he explains the upper side means the side of holiness namely the right side and the lower side means another side which means the left side because the tabernacle was first built from the left side and was afterwards joined to the right side come and see when the holy one blessed be he created the world he started to create from the side of silver which is right because silver is higher than gold because silver is chesed and right and gold is pure and the attribute of the left in the construction of the tabernacle which is similar to Malchut he started from the left side which is gold and then from the right side which is silver since the tabernacle is from the left side therefore it starts here from the left side from gold and thereby the creation of the world from the right side as it is written and this is the offering section 9 evening and morning and at noon this section tells us of the spirits of the night and why they are much to be feared they are nourished we learn in the darkness when the leftovers of it Sacrifice are burned and the smoke rises up twisting toward a hole in the north carry from which they emerge the overseer of these spirits we are told is named Sangiria and they come out only when they need to feast on the smoke of sacrificial fires the purpose of the evening prayer is to protect us from fear of the night on Shabbat this prayer is not necessary because there is no fear of hell nor of other judgments on that night at midnight when the north wind is aroused it attacks all the habitations of these evil spirits breaks through to the other side and enters in their floating above and below this breaks the power of the spirits and they no longer rule in their realm then we learn God enters to amuse himself with the righteous in the garden of Eden when morning comes it completes the outpouring of good to all the worlds it waters the garden and in this action protects the whole world the rabbis go on to discuss the letters that appear in the eastern sky before dawn one Pillar is thrust into the southern edge of the firmament's canopy that is over the garden and in this pillar there is one branch and in this branch are three birds who are aroused to sing and praise the relevance of this passage this is where we ignite the light of the three daily prayers the energy of Shabbat and the primordial power of the 42 letter name of God much good is accomplished through the energy that is awakened here first the negative forces that throughout history have risen. After dark are now battered and broken by this awesome display of light all judgments are halted the fires that have blazed in hell for millennia are dust our dreams of the night are forever shielded from the negative forces Lilith that have caused man to discharge and waste his semen since the dawn of human existence these negative forces have used this squandered life force to sustain their own negative existence thus this force of negativity is now rendered powerless our soul achieves. Dominion over the evil inclination and we help others achieve the same mastery simply by meditating upon them with a loving heart second the cosmic morning the age of Messiah now
A flowery language because that is the way that a black person is referred to as white for a flowery language is used sometimes white is called black as it is written for he had taken a Kashite and black woman Bimidbar 121 and are you not as much mine as the children of the Kashite Amos 9763 evening refers to Arbit and the evening prayer and the other side is mixed with the evening since its light has darkened and ruled by night therefore they made it optional the evening service does not have a set time because it corresponds to the portions and fats that were left over from the sacrifices and are consumed at this time all night on the altar. Many legions of spirits that go out and dominate the night are nourished from them because the externals are nourished from the leftovers of the offering. 64 If you ask have we not learned that all these members of the spirit of impurity of the other side do not dominate in the holy land and that Israel arouse themselves in this to chase them away and it is forbidden to entice them to dwell in the holy land. 65 He answers during the night that smoke of the portions and fats rises but doesn't rise like the smoke of any other offering for the smoke rises in a straight line yet here that smoke rises to a hole in the north where the habitation of the evil spirits is and since the smoke would rise and twist to that side they would all be nourished and stand and enter their places they would not go out from there too. Dominate the world 66 there was one overseer there at that side over that hole in the north over all these groups of spirits and his name was Sangiri when that smoke would twist his way and ascend this overseer and 60 million other encampments were all waiting to accept it and be nourished from it they would stand in that hole that is in the north and enter through one entrance called carry this is the secret of that which is written and if you walk contrary had carried to me they I cry. 2621 and that which is written then I will walk contrary to you also in fury of 28 meaning with that anger that goes forth from the entrance called carry 67 there are those who float around during the night if they are not being nourished from the smoke as mentioned earlier when the souls emerge from the entrance to appear above they go out and accuse them so they are not able to ascend and appear above except for those holy supernal pious ones who split the firmaments and airs and Ascend these camps of spirits go forth and inform people with falsehoods and appear to them in other female forms and seduce them until they discharge semen they are called men who have nocturnal emission of semen had carry because it causes those who go forth from the entrance called carry to be called men of nocturnal emission 68 during the time that the portions and fats were consumed on the altar that smoke would give them drink and nourish them according to their stature and according to their needs therefore they would not go forth and float over the holy land 69 evening Heberev is called so as it is written and a mixed multitude Heberev went up also with them Shemot 1238 which means a mixture because all these groups of spirits mingle according to the rule of the night therefore they did not make the evening prayer obligatory because there was nobody who could correct it like Jacob who was a master of the tabernacle which is Malchut and corrected it properly. 70 Even though it is obligatory the purpose of the prayer is to protect us from the fear of the nights and the fear of many kinds of Gehenna because at that time the wicked are punished twice as much as during the day therefore Yisrael hastened to say but he was full of compassion Tehillim 7838 for fear of Gehenna on Shabbat when there is neither fear of Gehenna nor fear of other judgments it is forbidden to awaken it namely to say but he was full of compassion because it would look as though the Shabbat does not have the power to remove judgment from the world so it is necessary to say and he is compassionate 71 there is fear of accusation against the souls when they wish to ascend above to appear before their master therefore we hasten to say who guards his nation Yisrael forever amen meaning from the fear of many demons and accusers that are prevalent during the night they have the ability to harm one who goes out of the entrance of his house therefore we first say and Guard are coming and are going forth 72 because of the fear of all this as mentioned we deposit our bodies and spirits and souls to the supernal malchute for all the dominion is in her hands therefore the evening prayer is to be recited every single night now that offerings and altars are not in existence we do all the corrections that we do by these means of the smoke of the offering 73 at midnight when the north wind is aroused which is the left column that comes then to its perfection it smites all the habitations of the evil spirits breaks the other side and enters and floats above and below all these groups of spirits enter their place and their power is broken so they do not dominate then the holy one blessed be he enters to amuse himself with the righteous in the garden of eden as we have already learned 74 when the morning comes the light of the candle that dominates during the night which is the illumination of the left is concealed before the light of Day which is the light of Shesedim, and the morning dominates which is Yezid, and the domination of evening is removed which is Malchut. This morning is the morning of the primordial light. This morning completes the good to all the worlds and the upper and the lower worlds are nourished from it. It waters the garden which is Malchut, and this protects the whole world. Seventy-five here is the secret for those who understand measurements. One who wishes to go out on a journey should arise when it is still. Night watch closely according to the hour toward the east and see the appearance of the letters that strike in the sky. One rises and another falls. These are the sparkling of the letters with which the heavens and earth were created. Seventy-six if one knows the secret of these letters which is the secret of the holy name of forty-two letters he will mention them properly with a willing heart and will see six yuds in the shine of the brightness of the firmament three to the right side and three to the left. And three bobs that rise and fall and sparkle in the sky, they are the letters of the priest's blessings. There are six YUDS in them, namely in the first words of the passages Hashem bless you, have Yabra Hashem make his countenance, have Yah turn his countenance, have YIS A B Midbar 624 and 3 BABS of and Bob guard one Bob be gracious to you, one Bob grant you, but the YUDS are divided into two columns right and left, and the BABS are the secret of the central column that unites them, and he should pray his prayer and go out on his way, for it is certain that the Shechinah has preceded him. Happy is his position 77 when this morning arrives, one pillar which is Typhoret is thrust in the south side of the spread of the firmament that is over the garden, meaning that it leans toward Chisid, it is outside of the pillar that is thrust in the center of the garden. This pillar shines with the shine of three hues which are Chisid, Bura, and Typhoret woven together in the color purple in this. Pillar which is Typhoret, there is one branch which is Yezid, and in this branch are gathered three birds which are the three columns that shine in Malchut for the illumination of Chakma, and it is called the bird they arouse chirping praise. Section 10 The watchman said the morning comes. This extremely long section is hardly capable of being summarized, so dense is it with details and instructions for the time and order of prayers. It begins charmingly with the bird, which opens the discussion by giving praise for the morning. Then we hear of the phrase Watchman, one of the night which the exiled children of Israel called out to the Creator. Then the passage continues on to say that the secret of the burden of Duma is that prophecy is transmitted to the prophets in six grades vision, revelation, sight, appearance, word, and burden. And this particular prophecy of Duma was not able to be revealed. The secret of faith is such that grades shine from within. Grades the text and describes what kind of prophecy is associated with each grade. Next we learn that the watchman of the night is monitored about whom it is written. So he who waits on his master shall be honored in the morning. The holy people need to join and come to synagogue. We're told and most blessed is he who arrives first for he ascends to the level of righteousness. The Psalms and praises of David we next learn are designed to awaken love above and below to build perfection and to arouse joy. Warning is then given to those who would speak of worldly matters in the synagogue while the children of Israel are reciting. We're told three camps of supernal angels gather there and follows details of the order of prayers and after a long description of the letters of the words of praise and their numerical significance. Next we are reminded again that the sanctification of the holy tongue must be said by no fewer than ten and that those prayers to be said alone are set in. Aramaic finally the section comes to a close exclaiming happy is the portion of Israel that becomes sanctified with the supernal sanctification because they cleave unto above the relevance of this passage the seemingly simple act of dialing a friend long distance involves a complex communication network cables and wires must be laid and a host of intricate equipment must be in place to ensure easy and reliable communication prayer works a lot like that this passage of Zohar ensures that all our prayers and the spiritual connections that we will make here are as simple as making a telephone call in the act of describing the metaphysical circuitry of the upper world these verses install all the cables and wiring on our behalf all we must do to set the entire communications network into action is read or meditate upon this text this is the equivalent of dialing a correct
Soon cries prepare yourself supernal holy ones those who praise their master prepare yourselves with the praises of the day then the day is separated from the night blessed is the portion of he who rises in the morning from the midst of the praise of the Torah with which he was occupied during the night that is time for the morning prayer 79 it is written the watchman said the morning comes and also the night if you will inquire inquire return come Yeshayah 21 12 this passage was established to refer to those exiles of Israel who were living among the children of Syria Israel said to the holy one blessed be he watchman what of the night of it 11 what will come of us from this exile that is like the darkness of night it is written the watchman said and this is the holy one blessed be he the morning comes I have already shown upon you during the exile in Egypt I have raised you and brought you to my service and I gave you the Torah in order that you merit eternal Life you have forsaken my Torah and also night I have brought you to exile of Babylon and raised you but you forsook my Torah as before I brought you again into exile if you inquire inquire as it is written seek out of the book of the Hashem and read Yeshayah 3416 you will find there just what your exile and deliverance are dependent on if you inquire of it it will say and proclaim you to return come in complete repentance and immediately you will come and get close to me Adian. This passage it is written the burden of Duma Yeshayah 2111 the secret is that prophecy is transmitted to the prophets in sixth grades vision revelation side appearance word and burden and all of them are as one who looks from behind the wall at a shine of the light it is as though some of them see the light of the sun through a lamp of glass but this is a burden as light comes through great effort because it was difficult for him and he could not reveal it as it is written that you lay it. Burden of this whole people on me, Bimidbar 1111. Therefore, this is called Burden 81. Here, it is written the burden of Duma, which means great effort because the prophecy was not able to be revealed. It is a secret of prophecy and remains in secrecy. One calls to me out of Syria, Shayah 2111. It is not revealed whether the Holy One, blessed be he or the faithful prophet, said, One calls to me out of Seir. This prophecy definitely is secret in the midst of the supernal faith and from the depth of secrecy, said the faithful prophet to whom the voice of the secret of the faith, which is Malchut, called and said, One calls to me out of Seir as it is written and rose from Seir to them, Debarim 332 instead of and rose to Seir. This is because the secret of faith is such that great shine from within grades the ones inside the others, a shell within a shell, one part the inner to another part within which it lies. Therefore, it is written from Seir, meaning that it became revealed from it midst of the clip and shell of Seir 82 but we have established that it is written and behold a storm wind came out of the north Yashiskel 14 this is one grade while a great cloud of it is a second grade and a fire flaring up of it is a third grade and a brightness was about it of it is a fourth grade and afterwards and out of the midst of it as it were the color of electrum of it after which out of the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures of it five these are the grades within grades 83 here also when the holy one blessed be he became revealed to Israel he did so only from within these grades and came from Sinai to Barim 332 this is a grade that is exceedingly concealed afterwards it must be revealed that it said and rose from Seir this is another grade that is more revealed a shell that envelopes the fruit and he shone forth from Mount Paran which is another grade and he came from holy multitudes of it which is a praise to them all for even though he became revealed in all these grades, it is considered that he started being revealed from a place which is the essence of all which places in holy multitudes, which are the highest levels above. Here also one calls to me out of Seir, meaning from that level that we said above, and rose from Seir to them as he was cleaved to the above. 84 Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The Watchman is Metatron, about whom it is written, so he who waits on his master shall be honored. Mishlei 2718. This means the ruler of the night. What of the night? Hadlela. Watchman, what of the night? Hadlela. What is the difference between them? Between Lela and Eliyahu? He answers, it is all one. They are both night and dark, just as the other side dominates in this part of Eliyahu. It does not dominate at all in this part of Lela. Lela needs guarding, as it is written, it is a night. Hadlela. Watchfulness. Shema 1242. Therefore, it is spelled without a because hey. Denotes the perfected Malchut from nightfall until midnight. The first half of the night until midnight is called Eliyahu Lela with he dominates from midnight and further as it is written and it came to pass that at midnight had Lela 29. This is Hashem's watch night of 42 and but the night Lela shines like the day Tehillim 13912. Therefore the passage says watchman what of the Lela night watchman what of the Hadlela night 85. The watchman said Yeshayah 2112 I found in the book of Adam what is the difference between Vayomer and he said Adamar and he said Vayomer is above which is Zeir and Adamar is below that is Metatron as it is written and he said Hebamar to Moses Shema 241 who said the watchman who is Metatron the morning comes namely the morning prayer which is the dominion of the day that which dominates the night if you say that the morning came alone and the male which is the morning is separated from the female which is night then. Behold it is written and also night for both of them are together and never separate this voice cries out these words the morning comes and also night and both of them are ready for you 86 from here and further if you will inquire inquire if you will inquire during prayer before the king request pray and ask your petitions and return to your master come like one who invites his children to accept them and have mercy on them so the holy one blessed be he morning and night called and said come blessed are the holy people whose master seeks them and calls to bring them close 87 and the holy people needs to join and come to the synagogue and whoever comes first joins with the Shechinah in one union come and see that first one to be present in the synagogue blessed is his portion for he stands in the level of the righteous in relation to the Shechinah and this is the secret of and those who seek me early shall find me Mishlei 817 such a person rises to the Highest level and if you say we learn the Holy One blessed be he immediately becomes angry when he comes to the synagogue and does not find ten people yet you say that the one who precedes becomes joined with the Shechina and is in the level of righteous 88 he answers this is similar to a king who sent a message to all the inhabitants of a city that they should gather with him at a certain time at a certain place before the inhabitants of the city could prepare themselves one person came first to that place in the meantime the king arrived and found that person who came early the king said to him you where are the inhabitants of the city he said to him my master I came earlier than they and they are coming after me by the king's order this pleased the king who sat with him and spoke to him and they became friends in the meantime all the people came and the king accepted them and then sent them away in peace but if these people would not have come and one would not have preceded them to speak before the king and to say that they are all coming he would immediately get angry and wrathful 89 in this case also since one preceded and is present in the synagogue and the Shechinah arrives and finds him it is considered as though they are all present there because he is waiting for them there immediately the Shechinah joins with him they sit together and she becomes acquainted with him and sets him into the level of righteous but if one did not precede and was not there it is written why when I came was there no man Yeshua 502 it does not say and there were not ten men but rather was there no man meaning one to join with me and to be near me as it is written the man of Elohim Devarim 331 which means to be in the level of righteous 90 and he also makes an acquaintance with him and inquires if he does not come one day as we have established as it is written who is there among you that fears Hashem that obeys the voice of his servant Ibn 10 we have already observed that which is written one calls to me out of Seir that there is a grade over a grade and a grade within a grade therefore the watchman even though one calls to me out of Seir refers to Metatron calls with strength daily the morning comes and also night thus summoning to the morning prayer such a person that the Holy One blessed be he inquires about in the phrases who is there among you that fears Hashem and that obeys the voice of his servant who is Metatron and comes to the house of prayer so the Holy One blessed be he inquires about him if he does not come and says who is there among you that fears Hashem therefore blessed is he who hastens to the synagogue to ascend to this level namely to the level of the righteous 91 when the morning arrives and the congregation is present in the synagogue they should be immersed in the Psalms and songs of David we have established that it is arranged so as to awaken love above and below you. Build perfection and to arouse joy so the love its work at awakening love and joy above with these psalms and songs 92 regarding one who speaks worldly talk in the synagogue woe to him for he shows dissension woe to him for he lessens the faith and woe to him for he has no part in the Elohim
Israel who prepare themselves below with these psalms and praises and with that prayer that they recite as soon as these three camps are gathered the children of Israel start to sing before their master that one camp which is appointed to praise its master during the day gathers with the children of Israel and sings together these praises of King David as we have established 96 when Israel complete the praises of the hymns of David they say the praise of the song of the Red Sea as we have established and if you ask why is this praise in the last service after the praises of David does not the written Torah precede the oral Torah of the prophets and the writings and is it not proper to place it first 97 the congregation of Israel which is Malchut is perfected by the written Torah therefore it is necessary to say the song at the beginning of the prayers namely close to the prayer that is recited sitting down this praise is more valuable than all the praises in the world. Shemalchut is not perfected by all of them as it is perfected by this praise therefore it is adjacent to the prayer that is recited sitting down namely the prayer of he who forms light as explained 98 when the song of the sea is recited the congregation of Israel is adorned with the crown that the Holy One blessed be he is going to crown King Messiah that crown is decorated and engraved with the holy names just as the Holy One blessed be he was crowned on the day that Israel crossed it. See and he drowned all the camps of Pharaoh and his horsemen therefore a person has to direct his will to the song everyone who merits it in this world merits to see Messiah with the perfection of that crown the weapons with which he is girded and merits to praise the song there we have established these matters 99 as soon as the person reaches the praise may your name be praised the Holy One blessed be he takes that crown and places it before him the congregation of Israel that is. Malchut starts to prepare herself to come before the supernal king that is Zeir and it is necessary to include it in the 13 supernal attributes of mercy from which she is blessed and there are 13 kinds of supernal spices as it is written art and saffron columns and cinnamon sure hashering 414 they are song and praise adoration and melody might and dominion victory grandeur and power glory splendor and holiness these are 12 until she joins with them to say and sovereignty. Let Malchut they become 13 now because she is blessed from them 100 therefore at the time when Malchut is combined among them the 13 attributes one should to pay attention to it and not talk at all or interrupt between them if he interrupts between them a flame emerges from under the wings of the cherubs cries aloud and says so and so who interrupted the majesty of the holy one blessed be he shall decrease and his life shall be interrupted so that he does not see the majesty. Of the Holy King it is written and will not behold the majesty of Hashem Yeshayah 2610 as these thirteen are the majesty of Hashem 101 from El worthy of thanksgiving and further this is the supernal king that all pieces is as it is written the song of songs which is Solomon's Hebshalom Osher Hashirim 11 meaning of the king that the peace Hebshalom is his which is Zeir and this is because all the earlier praises were addressed to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut which is praised by the lower camps from forms light and creates darkness Yeshayah 457 and further I have explained and the friends have explained that this is perfection of the upper world which is Zeir and 102 the alphabet at the initials of the words blessed Hashem great in knowledge are the corrections of the lower world which is Malchut that are in the initials 22 small letters as there are large letters and small letters small letters are in the lower world that is Malchut and the large letters are in the world to come which is by 103 they are great in everything meaning because of two reasons they are large letters essentially even when on their own and they are large when these letters expand further each letter comes with its own fitting chariot namely the song of praise of Shabbat for these are letters of praise Allah Almighty El Master over all works but blessed is he and he is blessed by the mouth of every soul these letters expand into five words each because in this prayer there are five words in every phrase they correspond to the fifty gates of the world to come which is by which are the five Sfirah Kedar Shachma Bani Tiferet and Malchut each comprised of ten one hundred and four the last two letters are at the end of the praise Almighty El that are Shintaf and come with six words each they correspond to the six extremities Jesus Bure Tiferet Net Sachat and Yezid of the world to come which is by and they emerge from these one hundred and five. These two letters Shin and Taf each have six letters while the two first letters Aleph and Bet each have five letters all the other letters that are in the middle have four letters each this is because they are in the secret of the supernal chariot because the first letters Aleph Bet which are ten and Shin Taf at the end which are twelve are together the complete twenty two supernal letters as they contain twenty two words against the supernal twenty two supernal letters which are in by another eighteen letters remain that are in the middle and ascend in their chariots meaning expand to four words each which are together seventy two words because four times eighteen equals seventy two this is the secret of the holy name fully pronounced the holy engraving of I and Bet seventy two letters with which the holy one blessed be he adorns himself with this name he adorns the congregation of Israel which is Malchut and ascends through the secret to adorn himself with them in the perfection of the Sheshana one hundred and six you may derive it. From the fact that these letters become adorned in the supernal praise, the first ones which are Aleph Bet and the last ones which are Shintaf ascend with their crowns and are the Atbash cipher in which Aleph first is exchanged with Taf last and Bet second with Shin second to last Aleph expands into five letters namely the phrase Almighty El Taf into six letters namely Splendor Tiferet and Greatness Bet into five letters namely Blessed is He and Shin into six letters namely Praise Heb. Shabbat give to him therefore the secret of the Atbash cipher that is in the praise of Almighty El is that they contain twenty two words the inclusion of the twenty two letters of Zeir and Ben are the crown to the thirty two paths of Shakma for the thirty two paths of Shakma are the twenty two letters of Zeir and Ben which rose to Bina that contains ten Sfirah twenty two plus ten equals thirty two paths of Shakma that is Bina which became Shakma and the twenty two letters of the Atbash cipher in the Himmel Adon to Zeir and Ben. Within Bina 107, the sign of the other letters besides Aleph Taf and Betchin that ascend in their chariots are Gimel Resh as they start with Gimel third, namely his greatness had God low and goodness fill the world and end in Resh third in reverse order, namely he saw Hebarea and perfected the form of the moon. They are all the secret of the holy chariot Aleph Taf and Betchin which are in the hymn Almighty El is the secret of the holy name Yudhi Havav being Zeir and that Ascended to Bina Gimel Resh of Almighty El are the 18 letters from Gimel until Resh and is the secret of the holy chariot that totals the Samayan Bet 72 meaning Shisat Bura and Tiferet that contain the passages Andre moved and it came in stretched out Shemot 1419 to 21 and the holy name was made to adorn the congregation of Israel which is Malchut from the supernal chariot for Malchut received 72 words of Shisat Bura and Tiferet which make a supernal chariot 108 therefore that. Name of Ayin Bet 72 is included in the secret of the patriarchs which are three columns right left and central and Malchut is adorned with them to become a holy name it is not a supernal name like the supernal names of the supernal world which is Zeir and Ben that are joined high above in Bina and they are not drawn down even though this name is supernal for it is three columns which are Shisat Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben its secret is King David meaning Malchut that becomes adorned with the patriarchs which are Shisat Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben 109 the secret of the name of Mem Bet 42 letters is the patriarchs that are Shisat Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben which is the secret of the 22 letters that become adorned in the upper world which are the 10 Sfirot of Bina the upper world becomes adorned with them which is higher than it which are the 10 Sfirot of Shakma for the 22 of Zeir and Ben plus the 10 of Bina and the 10 of Shakma equal 42 therefore it Ascends but does not descend for it does not provide Chakma from above down to Malchut this is because it becomes adorned in supernal thought happy is the portion of he who knows the significance of the name of Mem Bet 42 letters and is careful about it 110 it is David namely Malchut that becomes adorned with the patriarch which are Shisat Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben for Shisat Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben is the secret of the 72 words that are in the three passages Andre moved. And it came in stretched out that is provide Chakma to Malchut its secret ascends and descends that is provides down to Malchut thus Mem Mem Zadik this is the secret of Yud Hey Bab in the sides of the
Descent from one another and the purpose of the descent is to draw goodness from above down 111. The name MEM Bet 42 adorns the supernal chariot, namely supernal Chakmabana as mentioned above. The name I in Bet 72 adorns the lower chariot, namely Malchut as mentioned above. Happy is the portion of the one who endeavors to know his master. Happy is he in this world and happy is he in the world to come. 112. This is why this hymn is sung on Shabbat El Atan Almighty El that praises the King that peace be upon him praises him with the name I in Bet 72 and 18 letters between Gimel Teresh and with the 22 words that are in the four letters of Allah Top Bet This is the secret of the 22 letters in order to become adorned with it so as to ascend above to Bada by this name. Therefore, Almighty El is the praise of the world to come, which is Bada and the ascension of the supernal holy chariot, which is Jesus Bura and Tiferet of Zeirn and that becomes adorned to. Ascend above to Bada the ascension of the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, becomes adorned to ascend and receive from the supernal chariot, which is Jesus Bura and Tiferet of Zeirn and 113 the letters of the Atbash Cipher ascend and descend as we have established that the last letters that are in them descend the letters of the Albam Cipher ascend but do not descend for also the last letters that are in them ascend because the worth of Lamed ascends to the worth of Memn. Afterward to none and to Samic therefore they do not descend to provide to below you may derive this from the fact that the one Atbash Cipher is only on Shabbat which is Malchut and they provide below but the Albam Cipher is Shabbat and Yom Kippur being Malchut that ascends to Bada which is the secret of Yom Kippur that ascends in the secret higher and higher from Bada to Chakma until everything becomes adorned in the secret of the endless and is not providing below 114 the Blessed El that is at the end of the praise he who illuminates the earth and those who dwell upon it is in the order of the alphabet of small letters which are Malchut which are the corrections of the congregation of Israel which is Malchut daily in prayer because they are small letters there is no space between them meaning that they do not expand each one to reveal many words as in the praise of Almighty El on Shabbat they are the perfection of the world which are the seven chambers of Bria that come with the queen which is Malchut to the supernal king who is Zeir and 115 the sanctification that the supernal angels make namely the sanctification in the blessing of who forms and in the prayer of Amida is not said when alone we have established that the single person is prohibited to recite any sanctification that is in the holy tongue and sanctification in the Aramaic language is always recited by one alone and not in quorum for this is definitely the correction. For one, but not for the quorum, the sign for this is the expression read the scripture twice and the Aramaic translation once because two is plural and the illusion is that assuredly the sanctification of the holy tongue which is scripture is prohibited to be recited alone only in public, namely a quorum of ten sanctification in the Aramaic language is lacking in public and it is to be said always only when alone we learn that one the Aramaic translation once and not with two or more and the reason is that the Aramaic translation has come to lessen and so it must be but the holy tongue increases and it must be so because one should increase not lessen the importance of holy matters we decrease rather than increase in Aramaic translation we learned one and not more because one does not increase at all 116 the sanctification that is in the blessing who forms is not simple narrative but is rather sanctification that sanctifies the Sheshana and all her chariots in order to Become perfected before the supernal king because it is the sanctification of the lower world which is Malchut. It is said sitting and not standing. The other sanctification that is said during the repetition of the Amida prayer is the sanctification of the upper world which is Zeir and therefore it is said standing in order to draw the sanctification downwards while all the words relating to the upper world which is Zeir and are recited standing and not sitting. 117 Israel become sanctified through all these sanctifications below. Therefore they are endowed with the sanctification of the lower chariot which is Malchut when seated and with the sanctification of the upper chariot which is Zeir and when they stand. The other sanctification which is in but to Zion a redeemer shall come. Yeshayah 5920 is an additional sanctification. Therefore it is after the Amida prayer since it is an additional sanctification on the other sanctification since each one has to draw upon. Himself from that addition a translated Aramaic sanctification was arranged for each individual 118 and if you ask but it does contain also sanctification in the holy tongue that is for the congregation that they all be sanctified generally with that additional translated sanctification since the individual is not permitted to say it in the holy tongue and become sanctified singularly they prepared it in the Aramaic tongue ITIS for the single one so that each and every one should become sanctified with that addition to draw upon himself more sanctification happy is the portion of Israel that become sanctified with the supernal sanctification because they cleave unto above as it is written but you that did cleave of Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you the state of Aram 44 section 11 a bit and a table and a chair and a lamp the section opens with the verse behold now I perceive that this is a holy man of Elohim who passes us by Continually let us make a little upper chamber employing the lyrical language of metaphor. This is a reference to the upper world's ear and who continually sanctifies above as he sanctifies us below. We learn how we perfect him for his gratification with our order of songs and praises and with prayer. The bed is in the order of the evening prayer and its perfection. The table is in the order of the offering songs and prayers of the morning. The chair is the order of the prayer recited. While sitting in the unity we strive to perfect the blessings that we recite are the lamp. Next we are told how these things were supplied and perfected by Jacob, by King David, by Abraham and by Isaac. Holy people who constantly wish to prepare before the upper world. We finally learn should therefore recite a bed, a table, a chair and a lamp so that there might be perfection daily both above and below the relevance of this passage to partake of water. A man requires a vessel or cup to hold. The fluid while he drinks in like fashion light needs a vessel before it can express itself in our physical domain therein lies one purpose of the daily prayers the words of wisdom set forth below expound upon the construction of a vessel prayer so that light and blessing may be received in our world thus this knowledge perfects and prepares our own souls and the global vessel so that we and all mankind may be the recipients of divine light this effect is now achieved through the lofty spiritual influence of the patriarchs Abraham Isaac Jacob and King David whose names channel the energy that brings preparation and perfection to our souls 119 it is written behold now I perceive that this is a holy man of Elohim who passes by us continually let us make a little upper chamber to Melashim 49 to 10 in this passage we have a slight allusion to the sequence of prayer behold now I perceive his desire and a person must put into his prayer that this is a holy man of Elohim this is the upper world namely Zeir and who sits on his throne of glory all sanctifications emanate from him and he sanctifies all the worlds passes by us continually meaning that he sanctifies the world above and he sanctifies us in this world from that sanctification there is no sanctification above unless there is sanctification below as it is written but I will be hallowed Yisrael vi cross 2232 120 since this is so let us make a little upper chamber which is the order of it perfection of the Sheshana who is called a little upper chamber with walls as it is written and Shizkiah turned his face toward the wall Yishayah 382 little because it is small as it is written a little city Kahilah 914 and let us set for him there two Melashim 410 through this perfection that we are arranging we perfect him Zeir and for his gratification with our sequence of songs and praises and with prayer a bed and table and a chair and a lamp of it all these four are in the Shechen for she is prepared with all these tools toward the upper world which is Zeir and in the order that we set out 121 in the order of the evening prayer and in its perfection is a bed and in the order of the offerings and burnt offerings that we set out in the morning and these songs and prayers is a table in the order of the prayer recited while sitting down and in the perfection of Kriyat Shema in that unity which we strive to perfect is a chair in the order of the standing prayer and these sanctifications that are in who forms and in the repetition of the Amida by the cantor and the additional sanctification that is in and a redeemer shall come to Zion and the blessings that we recite are the lamp 122 happy is the man that concentrates his wish on this to be perfect before his master every day and to perfect this little upper chamber which is the Shechen to his master with these constructions of a bed a table a chair and a lamp and the holy one Blessed be he will surely be his guest every day happy is he in this world and happy is he in the world to come because these four are the tools of the Shechina with which to become ready for her husband's
and illuminated the light of the supernal candle with that sanctification. Therefore, the holy people who constantly wish to prepare the upper world, which is CEIR and the master of the house, the man of Elohim, should recite a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that there might be perfection daily above and below. Section 12 SH Yisrael, and blessed be the name when the children of Israel are declaring the union of the secret of SH Yisrael, we learn one light. Emerges from concealment in the upper world, this light is then battered into a hard spark, which itself is finally divided into 70 lights. These are illuminated in the 70 branches of the tree of life, and the tree emanates fragrance and gives forth spices at the same time. All the trees in the garden of Eden emanate fragrance and praise their master. All the supernal limbs of Sphira join in one aspiration and one desire to be unified as one without any separation. Following this, we learn of the secret and joyous mating of Malchut, the queen with Zir and Benen are told of the significance of the four keys and of the four letters on them, which when they are gathered together cause the union. The union above we learn once more is mirrored by the union below. It is not possible to refer openly to Malchut as one, in case the evil eye is aroused, but in the time to come the other side will separate from her and will in fact be removed from the world and, and only then will Malchut. Be called one by her union to Zir and Ben in silence and in secret, though she is now removed from that other side. The secret of the upper world, we're then told, is the heart of Jacob, and the secret of the lower world is the heart of his sons. Rabbi Hamna Nasaba the elder, we discover, has said that the awakening of this union between Malchut and Zir and Ben is beautiful. Lastly, we are reminded there is a commandment to study the Torah every day. The Torah is the tree of life, and he who studies it deserves to be bound with the supernal Torah. The relevance of this passage, the Zohar ignites the seventy lights that illuminate the seventy branches of the tree of life by revealing holy secrets pertaining to the tetragram. And this light enjoins Malchut our world with Zir and Ben, upper world our body with our soul, which now elevates us above and beyond the sphere of influence of the other side. One hundred and twenty-five. When Yisrael are declaring the union of the secret of Sh Yisrael with complete desire, one. Light which is the path of Abba emerges from the concealment of the upper world, namely the upper Abba and Iama. This light is battered into the hard spark which is Yezid of Iama and is divided into seventy lights that radiate from them the Mokin of Israel, Saba and Tabuna, which are the lower seven Sfirat of Abba and Iama, Chisit, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyezid, and Malchut, each composed of ten and these seventy lights illuminated in the seventy branches of the tree of life, namely in Chisit, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyezid, and Malchut of Zeir and Ben, each containing ten one hundred and twenty six. Then that tree which is Zeir and Ben emanates fragrances and spices, namely the light of Chakma that is called fragrance. All the trees that are in the garden of Eden which is Malchut emanate fragrances and praise their master Zeir and Ben for Malchut is then prepared to enter the marriage canopy with her husband Zeir and Ben. All the supernal limbs which are the Sfirat of Zeir and Ben join in one aspiration and one. Desire to be one without any separation, and her husband Zeir Anpin is prepared to enter the marriage canopy in one union to unite with Malchut 127. Therefore, we stimulate her Malchut and we say, Sh Mal Yisrael, meaning Malchut for the children of Israel are included in her. We say to Malchut, Prepare yourself for your husband Zeir Anpin will come to you adorned, and he is prepared toward you. Hashem our Elohim, Hashem is one. Devarim 64, Hashem is Ab our Elohim, is I am a Hashem, is Zeir Anpin, is it? Is written before you as they are one meaning in one union with one desire without separation, and all these limbs of Zeir Anpin, namely his Sfirat, become one and enter with one longing meaning in Yisrael of Zeir Anpin 128. As soon as Yisrael say, Hashem is one, which alludes to Zeir Anpin, as mentioned above with the stimulus of the six sides that receive from Abba and I am a the secret of Hashem our Elohim, as they became one as mentioned, and all these six sides become one and enter to one longing. Which is yes, this is the secret of Bob, which alludes to Zeir Anpin, which is the secret of one expansion, just like the letter Bob that is shaped like a line with nothing attached to it, meaning that the illumination of Shesedim of the right dominates it, and there is no attachment from the revelation of Chakma in the left, only it itself spreads and is combined of them all, even from the left, and it is one, even though it is combined also from the illumination of Chakma, which is the secret of one, still only the right dominates it, which is the illumination of Shesedim alone. 129 at that time, Malchut prepares and adorns herself. The attendants, meaning the maidens, as written, bring her in great secrecy to her husband Zeir Anpin, and say, Blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever. This is in secret because this is the way that it is necessary to bring her to her husband Zeir Anpin. Happy are the people who know this and perform the supernal order of the faith. Which is Malchut 130 at the time that the husband of the queen that is Zeir Anpin and the queen join as one a proclamation emerges from the south side which is Jesus awaken hosts and camps that manifested the love of their master meaning those that caused this union 131 then a supernal overseer the minister of the camps whose name is Boel becomes aroused in his hands are four keys which he received from the four directions of the world Jesus Bureau Tiferet and Malchut one key is marked with the letter Yud one is marked with the letter Hay and another key is marked with the letter Bob he places them under the tree of life which is Zeir Anpin these three keys that are marked with these three letters become one as soon as they become one that last key which is the last Hay ascends and stands and combines with the other key that includes the three keys all camps and hosts enter these two keys in the garden which are Bob Hay and they all combine as below meaning like. Yisrael 132 Now the Zohar explains the secret of the words of Sh Mal Yisrael. The first Yud Hey Vav Hey is the mark of the letter Yud that is in the holy name which alludes to Abba. Our Elohim is the secret of the mark of the upper Hey of the holy name that alludes to Iama. The second Yud Hey Vav Hey is the drawing of Mokin from Abba and Iama that are drawn below in the secret of the mark of the letter Vav of the holy name that alludes to Zeir Anpin. These two letters Yud and Hey are drawn to be in this place, meaning in the Vav which is Zeir Anpin. It is one for all these three which are Abba and Iama and Zeir Anpin are one in one unity. 133 All these have become one in one unity and everything remains in the secret of the letter Vav for all the Mokin have remained in Zeir Anpin which is the secret of Vav. He is whole from the source of the fountain which is Abba and from the inner chamber that is Iama and he inherits Abba and Iama. Then they bring into him the queen namely Malchut. Because he is now complete with all the supernal good and can nourish her and give her food and sustenance as befitting all his limbs which are the Sphirot are all one and then they bring her in secret why in secret in order that a stranger should not intrude on this joy as it is written and no stranger shares its joy Michelet 1410 meaning so that the other side should not be drawn to nurture from the illumination of the union 134 since Zeir Anpin becomes united above in six sides Malchut also becomes united below in six other sides which are Shisit, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid of the Mokin so there will be one above and one below as it is written Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 namely Zeir Anpin and his name one is Malchut that is called name one above in six sides as written here Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 there are six words corresponding to six sides blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever. Here are six other sides in six words Hashem is one above in Zeir Anpin and his name is one below in Malchut 135 if you ask yet it is only written one above in Zeir Anpin namely in Sh Mal Yisrael but below in Malchut namely in blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever one is not written he answers and ever have beat Vav Ayn Dalit is one have Eshat Aleph Shet Dalit when the letters are interchanged because Aleph is exchanged with Vav and Shet changes with Ayn and Vaed becomes Eshat the male letters do not change but the female letters do for this shows the praise the male has over the female in order that the evil eye should not dominate which is the other side we interchange the letters for we don't say one openly but rather and ever in the future when the evil eye will be removed from the world and will not dominate Malchut will be called one openly now that the other side is attached to it in the secret and her feet go down to
namely the maidens bring her into the marriage canopy with the supernal king who is Zeir and in silence and in secret if it were not so the other side would not separate from her and the joy would have been confused but in the time to come when the other side will be separated from her then on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one 139 since she has entered the marriage canopy and is with the supernal king who is Zeir and we arouse the joy of Mokin of the right and left as it is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart Devarim 65 which is the right and it shall to pass if you hearken Devarim 1113 is the left and this will be without any fear of the other side whatsoever because the other side will not approach there as it has no permission 140 as long as they want to bring the bride who is malchute unto the king for the celebration of union it must be in silence and in secret in order that there should not be found in her footsteps any hint of the evil side any hint of disqualification should neither cleave unto her nor should it be found among her children namely Israel below 141 Jacob said to his sons perhaps heaven forbid there has occurred a flaw in my bed his son said just as there is only one in your heart we have no attachment with the other side at all because it is separated from your bed and we are united with the supernal king Zeir and we have no attachment at all with the other side. Because our desires and thoughts are too separate from the other side. 142. As soon as Jacob knew that the other side was not attached there at all, the wife who was Malchut then entered to her husband Zeir and in silence in the secret of the unity of the six sides that are in Shema Yisrael. Jacob opened by saying, Blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever, for she is in the secret of one with her maidens without any mixing and without partnership of the other side. 143. Come and see at that time Jacob and his sons below assumed the supernal image with the Shechinah. Jacob was in the secret of the six sides of the upper world in the secret of one, namely Zeir and and his sons were in the image of the six sides of the lower world, namely Malchut. And Jacob wanted to reveal to them that end which is Malchut, meaning to make the union openly and not in silence as we have established that there is an end and an end there is the end of days and there is the end of Days also of the right, the end of the right is Malchut of holiness, the secret of the faith and the secret of the kingdom of heaven, the end of days is the secret of the wicked kingdom, the secret of the other side that is called the end of all flesh. Bereshit 613 as we have already established 144 as soon as he saw that the Shechinah left him because he wanted to make the union openly that is to reveal the end of the tribe said just as in your heart there is only one for you pertain to the secret of the upper world which is one so we also who pertain to the secret of the lower world which is Malchut in our heart there is only one therefore there are mentioned here two hearts meaning there is not in our heart just as there is not in your heart because the secret of the upper world Zeir and is the heart of Jacob and the secret of the lower world that is Malchut is the heart of the sons thus they bring her Malchut silently 145 as the upper world was unified in the Secret of one and the lower world in the secret of one, so are we obliged to unite the upper world in one and unite the lower world in the secret of one, each of them with six ends. Therefore, there are six words here in Shema Yisrael in the secret of six ends, and six words here in blessed is the name in the secret of six ends, namely Hashem is one and his name one. Happy is he who has put his heart into this, and happy are his lot and portion in this world and in the world to come. 146 Rav. Hamnon Asaba the elder said, Thus the order of the awakening of this union is beautiful, for we have established the secret of the clarification of the matter, and these words will be placed before Adakim and without any shame at all. Rai Mahin the faithful shepherd 147 It is a commandment to study Torah every day, for it is the secret of the supernal faith with which to know the ways of the Holy One. Blessed be he, everyone who is occupied with Torah merits in this world and merits in it world to come and is saved from all the evil accusers because Torah is the secret of the faith and he who is occupied with it is occupied with the supernal faith the holy one blessed be he causes his Shechinah to dwell in him so she would not turn away from him 148 we should pursue one who knows the subject of Torah and learn from him that subject to fulfill the secret of what is written of every man whose heart prompts him to give you shall you take my offering Shema 252 the Torah is the tree of life that gives life to everyone who becomes mighty in Torah who becomes mighty in the tree of life as it is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 149 we have established many supernal secrets concerning he who is occupied with Torah and that he merits to be bound with the supernal Torah which is Zeir and he neither takes respite from it in this world nor does he take respite in the world to come and his lips move gently in Torah even in the Grave as it is written, causing the sleepers' lips to murmur. Sure, Hashirim 711 and of Rai Mahim, the section 13, that they bring me an offering frequently in the Zohar. The rabbi seemed to be reinterpreting one verse that they bring me an offering again. Rabbi Hamnon Asava the elder opens the discussion on this topic, speaking of the union of Zer and Ben with Malchut and of their mutual agreement to offer Malchut a chance to dwell among the children of Israel. Malchut is thus the offering spoken of earlier. Rabbi Yevasava the elder says that even though they take her, they can only take her with the permission and approval of her husband. It is necessary to perform for him a service of love and then with his love take my offering. This is what happens during the service of prayer. The explanation is followed by a listing of the holy days and of the gifts that accompany each of them. These gifts are gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and Scarlet after this is the secret of the ten days of atonement and their special gifts and so Malchut is taken and established in her place among those living on earth the relevance of this passage during the high holy days specifically between Rosh Hashanah gold and Yom Kippur silver the dimension of Malchut climbs into the realm of Kedar the highest level of the spiritual atmosphere hence Kabbalistically atonement signifies not repentance but rather at one meant which is union and oneness. Between the upper and lower worlds as we acknowledge and uproot our negative traits the true meaning of sacrifice or offering and cleanse our souls we rise to higher spiritual heights our sins scarlet colored are purified so that we become white as snow this passage ignites the cleansing power of the ten days of atonement right now this power eradicates all immoral qualities from our nature it cleanses all the iniquities of humanity making our souls as white as the wintry snow in the Physical world this cleansing occurs each and every year during Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur but because the Zohar is above time and place above physicality because this mystical tome deals with the mysteries of the soul and the secrets of secrets the effect and results are sweeping, universal macrocosmic and in the now our actions here are the ultimate atonement and final redemption for human civilization thanks to the righteousness and power of the rabbi cited here and throughout the Zohar. 150 he opened the discussion saying that they bring me an offering Shema 252 here is the unification of above Zeir and of below Malchut under one principle because me is Zeir and and an offering is Malchut it is not written that they bring an offering but rather that they bring me an offering for this shows above and below in one principle without any separation at all 151 of every man whose heart prompts him to give you shall take my offering but he questions this passage should have said every man whose heart prompts him wherefore of every man he answers here is a secret for those who understand measurements happy are those righteous ones who know how to place the desire of their heart before the supernal holy king the entire desire of their heart is not for this world and its main desire but rather they know and endeavor to place their desire and to cleave unto above in order to draw to them the desire of their master from above to below 152 from which place do they take that desire of their master to draw to them they take from one place that is holy and lofty where all the holy desires are and who is it itis every man which refers to the righteous namely is it of zeir and who is called every as written moreover land has an advantage for everyone kahila 58 therefore i esteem all your precepts tail in 119,128 man is as written a just man bear sheet 69 this is the righteous the master of the house namely is it who is the master of Malchut that is called house his desire is always for the matron which is Malchut like a husband who loves his wife always whose heart prompts him meaning that he loves her and his heart namely his matron meaning Malchut that is called heart shall prompt him to cleave unto her 153 even though they have great love between them and they never separate still in all from every man that is yes the master of the house that I ask the husband of the queen you shall take my offering which is Malchut the way of the world is that if someone wants to take the wife away from a man he is indignant and does not leave her but the holy one blessed
Then 155 Rabia Basaba the elder said of the means from final MEM which is the secret of the supernal world Netzach Hadiazit and Malchut Abbana the Yazid Abbana called Yisrael Saba and Tabuna the dwelling place of that righteous who is adorned with Samak which is the secret supernal Abba and IMA which are Chakma Banda Dad Jesus Bura and Tiferet Abbana for he receives life from them to feed all the worlds and from this Yazid Abbana will they receive the offering which is Malchut it is all one thing the secret is given to the wise and happy is their portion 156 even though they take her Malchut they can do so only with the permission of her husband Zeir and with his approval it is necessary to perform a service of love toward him and then with his love take my offering which is Malchut we do all this during the service of prayer and the improvements that Yisrael perform daily another explanation of the means from the principle of the six. Supernal extremities of Zeir and therefore it is written of them in plural 157 of them of these holidays and Shabbat shall you take them and it is all one secret they are the secret of gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet Shema 253 gold is in the secret of the day of Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year which is the day of gold namely the day of judgment that side of left dominates as it is written gold comes out of the north Eo 3722 and north is left. Silver refers to Yom Kippur when the sins of Israel become white like snow as it is written though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshua 118 and silver is also colored white it is also written for on that day will he forgive you to cleanse you Vayikra 1630 158 and brass refers to the offerings on Sukkot holiday of booths which are the chariots of the heathen peoples for we offer 70 bullocks for them and they are called the secret of the brass. Mountains therefore the bullocks on Sukkot progressively lessen every day and blue is Passover Passover for the dominion of the secret of faith namely Melchut is the secret of the color blue it is blue that hints to judgments because blue have Teshel it is the derivative of Klai in destruction it did not dominate until it killed and destroyed all the firstborn of Egypt as it is written and Hashem will pass through to smite Egypt Shemot 1223 therefore all the colors are good in a dream. Except blue 159 and purple is Shavuot holiday of the weeks which is the secret of purple because the written Torah which was given through it is combined of two sides right and left as it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to Barim 332 this is purple which is composed of many colors and scarlet is the 15th day of Av when the daughters of Israel used to go out in garments of scarlet as it is written that were brought up in scarlet each of 45 160 until. Here IT corresponds to six sides namely gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet from here and further is the secret of the ten days of atonement which are fun linen and goat hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and acacia wood oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense onyx stones and stones to be set Shema 254 to 6 until here are nine corresponding to nine days which Yom Kippur completes to 10 161 we take the offering of Hashem meaning Malchut from all these in the secret of the passage and this is the offering which you shall take of them Shema 253 we take it at every time meaning at all the holy days in order to cause it to dwell over us at Rosh Hashanah we take the offering of Hashem which is the secret of New Year that comes from the side of gold which is Bura because Malchut is Bura on Yom Kippur we take her for she is the Yom Kippur because the daughter which is Malchut inherits her mother which is Binda that is called Yom Kippur on Sukkot and the festival of tabernacles we take her for she is a tabernacle that covers and shields us it is written on the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly Bimidbar 2935 this is the offering of Hashem namely Malchut that is called assembly 162 on Pesach also we take her and she is called Pesach we have already established that she is the secret of the color of the light of blue we take her on Shavuot and she is the two loaves of bread. By the giving of the Torah it is written and Elohim spoke all these words saying Shema 201 we take the oral Torah which is Malchut from the written Torah on the 15th day of Av Malchut stands in joy upon the daughters of Israel and all the other days are there to establish Malchut therefore it is written you shall take of them in plural section 14 just as the Kegavna the section deals with the secret of Shabbat Malchut is called Shabbat when she is united in the secret of one so that their infant should dwell upon her then the holy throne of glory is united we are reminded again of how when the Shabbat enters she unites and separates from the other side the people bless her with joy and must never address her with a verse of judgment for all judgments are suspended it would not be good to awaken the prosecutors below who have fled to conceal themselves in holes beneath the sand of the great abyss because of the holiness of the Shabbat. Rather the holy people should be having goodwill and great love so that they should arouse blessings above and below together the relevance of this passage the merging of lower and upper worlds is perhaps the most predominant theme that weaves itself throughout the Zohar and nowhere else we are told is this unification more readily attainable than on the day of Sabbath this passage provides the image of an egg as both simple and analogy to illustrate this recurring theme fragile yet strong. The shell will only break when the time is right for birth and closed in their shell the white and the yolk can safely unite in secret and later by the splitting of the shell new life arises from that union on Sabbath the secret union takes place safe from harm safe from evil afterward the fruit of this blessed union comes to life among us the great light and unity of Shabbat shines in full splendor as we contemplate this profound Kabbalistic narrative judgments flee from our midst and the other. Side is expelled from our lives the cosmic equivalent of the weekday Sabbath the age of Messiah dawns as our eyes touch these words and our souls embrace these truths 163 just as the six extremities of Zeir and Pen unite above meaning from the chest of Zeir and Pen and above onto one meaning that there is no partnership with the other side Malchut also unites below meaning from the chest of Zeir and Pen and lower in the secret of one in order to be with them above one in correspondence with one. For the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and Pen who is one above does not sit on his throne of glory which is Malchut until she also becomes in the secret of one like him in order so it would be one in one we have already established the secret of Hashem is one and his name one for Hashem is Zeir and Pen and his name is Malchut and they are one in one 164 this is the secret of Shabbat Malchut is called Shabbat when she is united in the secret of one so that Zeir and Pen should dwell upon. Her which is the secret of one and this is the secret of the prayer of Shabbat because then the holy throne of glory which is Malchut in the secret of one is united into one this was established so that the supernal holy king who is Zeir and Pen shall dwell upon her 165 when the Shabbat enters she unites and separates from the other side all the judgments pass away from her and she remains united with the holy light and becomes adorned with many crowns before the holy king all the Dominions of anger and the instigators of judgment flee and there is no other dominion in all the worlds except her 166 and her face meaning her first three Sfirat shines with the supernal light and becomes adorned with the holy nation below for they all become adorned from her with new souls and the prayer begins of blessing her with joy with shining face and saying bless the blessed Hashem the particle ET before Hashem is precise which is Malchut that is called ET in order to address her with a blessing 167 it is prohibited for the holy people to start addressing her with a judgment passage such as but he was full of compassion Tehillim 7838 because she has already separated from the secret of other side all the prosecutors have separated and passed away from her and one who arouses judgment below causes a similar arousal above the holy throne which is Malchut cannot then become adorned with the holy crown for the prosecutors below are aroused that heretofore were absent and all went to conceal themselves in the whole of sand of the great abyss because of the holiness of the Shabbat now that they were aroused from below they all returned to dwell in their places during the weekdays and the holy places distanced by them which is Malchut that seeks rest 168 do not say that only this one becomes aroused above by those below but rather there is no one aroused above unless Israel awaken below as we have established in the passage at the full moon. On our feast day Tehillim 814 it does not say the feast day but rather our feast day that is because the holiness of the holy day becomes awakened above through the children of Israel who sanctify it below and it is therefore our feast day therefore it is forbidden for the holy people who adorn themselves with the holy crowns of souls in order to arouse rest to arouse judgment they should all be rather having goodwill and great love so that they should arouse bl
with their souls at midnight on Shabbat Eid when the sages awake to perform marital duties there is a supernal spirit with which they became adorned when the day was sanctified while they are sleeping other souls wish to ascend and see the glory of the king the supernal spirit that descended at the commencement of the Shabbat takes that soul and so they ascend the other souls bathe in the spices that are in the garden of Eden and see there whatever they see we read that Rabbi Hamad is the elder was filled with joy at the commencement of Shabbat to see the supernal angels and the ascending and descending souls the relevance of this passage here the beauty of the commencement of the Shabbat is profoundly stirred within our souls it connects us richly to the weekly expression of energy while igniting the cosmic Sabbath in the world the joy of Rabbi Hamad is kindled in our hearts and our visual embrace of this passage draws down righteous souls into this world Kabbalah holds that the highest of souls and finest grade of light cascade from higher to lower to our earthly sphere after midnight on Shabbat when a man and woman join together in love thus by virtue of this mystical knowledge intimate relations between husband and wife are imbued with divinity bringing holiness to the entire world the accumulated light resulting from the marital duties of the righteous souls all through the ages shines now in full radiance 169 plus et hashem et is concise for it alludes to Malchut which is called et and as we have established above et there is the Shabbat at the entrance of the Shabbat namely Shabbat which is the aspect of Malchut blessed be the blessed hashem blessed is the source of blessings from the source of life and the place from which all waterings go forth to water everything namely Yizid of Bina, it is the source that provides in the secret of the sign of the covenant namely in Yizid of Zeir and which we call it Blessed for it is the fountain of the well, Yizid is the fountain of Malchut that is called well when the blessings reach there to Yizid of Zeir and the well certainly becomes filled for the water never stops flowing, namely Shesedim that are called water 170. Therefore it does not say blessed be E.T. Hashem who is blessed but rather blessed be Hashem if the flow from the upper source Yizid of Bina would not reach there to Yizid of Zeir and then the well would not become filled at all which is Malchut because Malchut can receive only from Yizid of Zeir and Therefore we say who is blessed that is Yizid of Zeir and Why is he blessed? It is because it fills in waters forever and ever, forever and ever is the Shabbat of the entrance of Shabbat, namely Malchut, and we bring the blessings to the place called blessed that is Yizid of Zeir and when they arrive there they are all drawn forever and ever, which is Malchut. This is the meaning of blessed be Hashem who is. Blessed until your meaning until Yizid of Zeir and that is called blessed reach the blessing of the upper world which is Bina and they are all drawn to forever live for the world and ever which is Malchut so it would become blessed and watered and to be filled properly full on all sides 171 now the Zohar explains the secret of every word of blessed be Hashem who is blessed individually and says blessed is the upper source which is Yizid of Bina from which all the blessings emerge when the moon is full we call it also blessed in relation to those below but this blessed is the upper source as we have said Hashem is the center of all the upper sides namely Zeir and which is the central column who is blessed is household peace which is Yizid of Zeir and that is called peace the fountain of the well to fill and water everything forever and ever is the lower world that needs to be blessed and the oil and greatness meaning the bounty that is drawn by Blessed be Hashem and who is blessed it is all for the benefit of forever and ever which is Malchut 172 therefore it is incumbent upon the entire nation to make this blessing at the commencement of the Shabbat we must start at the beginning with this blessing with the desire of the heart and joy so that the Shabbat of the commencement of the Shabbat which is Shabbat Eve namely Malchut is blessed by the holy nation properly with this blessing 173 when Yisrael begin to bless a voice goes through all the firmaments that become sanctified with the holiness of the commencement of the Shabbat happy are you the holy nation that you bless and sanctify below in order that many holy supernal camps become blessed and become sanctified above happy are they in this world and happy are they in the world to come Yisrael do not make this blessing until they become adorned with the crowns of the holy souls as we have said happy is the nation that merits in this world so that they Merit in the world to come 174 that night is the time for sages to perform marital duties when they become adorned with these holy souls even though we have already established this it is all one in every place the subject is found about the sages sometimes in one way and sometimes in another way it all amounts to the same thing and we have already established the subject when they all become adorned with new holy souls and spirits that are additional to those of the weekdays it is their time to perform marital duties in order to draw upon this union a flow of holiness in supernal rest this should produce holy children as is proper 175 the secret was given to the sages at midnight of this night of Shabbat the holy one blessed be he desires to enter the garden of Eden the secret is that the holy one blessed be he enters the lower garden of Eden which is in the world Asia on the weekdays to amuse himself with the righteous who dwell there on Shabbat and on the eve of Shabbat the Holy One blessed be he enters the upper garden of Eden which is in the world Briya in the secret of the supernal source which is Bina because the three worlds Briya Yitzhara and Asiyah are as Bina Tiferet and Malchut and Briya is as Bina 176 during the weekdays all the souls of the righteous dwell in the terrestrial garden of Eden when the day becomes sanctified at the commencement of the Shabbat all these camps of holy angels that are appointed in the lower garden of Eden elevate these souls that dwell in the lower garden of Eden to bring them to that firmament that stands over the garden of Eden for since they are from the world of Asiyah they have no permission to rise higher than this holy chariots that surround the throne of the glory of the king which is Briya come from there and elevate all these souls to the upper garden of Eden which is in Briya 177 when these spirits ascend to the upper garden of Eden other holy spirits descend to this world too become adorned with the holy people these ascend to the upper garden of Eden and those descend to become adorned with the holy people meaning just as there is elevation to the souls that are in the garden of Eden so is there an elevation for the holy people for they become adorned with an additional soul 178 and if you ask but then during the Shabbat day is the terrestrial garden of Eden empty of the souls of the righteous it is not so rather souls go and souls come souls ascend and souls descend souls go from the garden and other souls come into the garden all these souls of the righteous who cleanse themselves to purify themselves during the weekdays and have still not entered the lower garden of Eden will enter the lower garden of Eden at the moment that these souls leave the garden of Eden to the upper garden of Eden the garden does not remain empty and it is like the shoe bread on the day it is taken that they place others in their place 179 and if you ask when they Souls return from the upper garden of Eden to the lower garden of Eden during the weekdays. How do the places expand in length and breadth and height in the garden until it can accommodate them all? Yet it is not noticeable. He answers, It is like the land of the deer, the land of Israel that was stretched in all directions. Yet it was not noticeable like a deer as much as it grows, its skin grows with it to every side. Yet it is not noticeable. There are many souls that no longer descend from there. Once they have ascended to the upper garden of Eden and they remain there also during the weekdays, 180 souls ascend and souls descend so that the holy people should adorn themselves with them at the commencement of the Shabbat, meaning before the day has been sanctified. There is a turning of souls. Some are going and some are coming. Some ascend while others descend who has seen how many holy chariots float here and there. All of them enjoy all of them with good will. These souls are for the Adorning of the holy people to adorn many righteous in the lower garden of Eden and this continues until the moment that an announcer proclaims sanctified sanctified then rest and quiet is prevalent for all while the wicked in Gehenna all become quiet in their place and have rest all the souls become adorned meaning that they attain the first three spirit those above and those below happy are the people that possess this portion 181 at midnight of Shabbat Eid when the sages awake to perform marital duties there is a supernal spirit with which they become adorned when the day was sanctified while they are sleeping in their beds and their other souls wish to ascend and see the glory of the king the supernal spirit that descended at the commencement of the Shabbat takes that soul and they ascend the other souls bathe in the spices that are in the garden of Eden and see there whatever they see 182 when the spirit descends to dwell in its place at midnight that soul also returns to its place the sages must say a passage of arousal of that supernal holy spirit of the Shabbat crown namely the spirit of Hashem Elohim was upon me because Hashem has anointed me to
Up and sparkles from that light he explains that the firmament is a fountain of the well and the river that flows from Eden when the supernal dew of that crystal is drawn and flows everything becomes perfected with the holy letters we then read of the meaning and day to day utters speech and, and night to night expresses knowledge and then their light is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world we read of the holy sun which is like a tent containing all. The higher and lower levels it shines like a bright room coming out of his canopy and Rabbi Hamanasaba the elder explains that the canopy is Eden the moon herself is an expression of the light from the sun and carries also that greater illumination from the source the Torah is the same expression of wisdom in the kingdom Shachma in Malchut and the Torah of the creator is perfect it is composed of phrases containing five words each during the Shabbat day everything is properly completed in. The secret of Shabbat above and below and on this day light is increased in everything thus David recited the verse the heavens declare inspired by the imminent illumination of the Holy Spirit and by the preeminence of the Shabbat day over all other days the relevance of this passage we learn how the great source of all light gives expression through the heavenly bodies through the Shabbat and through the Torah the supernal light spills downward upon us when our eyes touch the words. Revealing these lofty luminous mysteries this illumination perfects our souls and completes the world allowing the cosmic Sabbath the age of Messiah to commence with the boundless sweet mercy 184 when the day of Shabbat dawns the joy ascends in all the worlds with satisfaction and gladness then the heavens declare the glory of El and the firmament proclaims his handiwork Tehillim 192 who are the heavens they are these heavens namely Zeir Anpin in which the supernal name is visible which is I am a and in which the holy name is marked which is Abba meaning heavens is Zeir Anpin that contains the Mokin of Abba and I am a 185 he questions what is the meaning of declare also tell if you say it is like one who is telling a story it is not so but rather they illuminate and sparkle in the glitter of the supernal light and ascend in the name that is included in the shine of the supernal perfection namely in the name Yudhe which contains Yudhe which are supernal perfection. Being Abba and I am a 186 he questions what is the tale for it says the heavens tell he answers they sparkle in the shine of the supernal book which is Abba and that which is drawn from the book is called the tale therefore they ascend in a complete name which is why you behave Abba and they illuminate with a complete light in the right column they sparkle in a complete sparkle in the left column they sparkle and illuminate by themselves from the light of the sparkle of the supernal book and sparkle and illuminate in every side to which they are attached because every single ring lights up and sparkles all the spirot and malchute that are called rings from that shine and from the light because on this day the heavens which are Zeir and become adorned and ascend in the holy name why you behave Abba more than on the other days 187 his handiwork means the supernal dew that illuminates from all the concealed sides which are the works of his hands of Zeir and his Establishment that is established on this day more than on all the other days 188 the firmament proclaims he questions what means proclaims he answers that its meaning is that he draws the dew and it flows down into Yezid from the head of the king namely from his first three spirot that are called the head of Zeir and it becomes filled from all sides the firmament is a fountain of the well namely Yezid that provides the well which is Malchut and this is the river that emerges from Eden this is the one that draws and spills downward the flow of the supernal dew that illuminates and sparkles from all sides this firmament draws it with a drawing of love and longing to water a potion of joy to Shabbat Eve which is Malchut 189 when the dew of that crystal is drawn and flows from the head of Zeir and everything becomes filled and perfected with the holy letters namely the 22 letters in all the holy paths since everything is attached to him away to water. And blessed below to Malchut is formed within him 190 day to day utter speech of it. 3. This means that day provides to day and ring provides to ring as every sphere of Zeir Anpin that is called day and ring provides to the sphere that corresponds to it in Malchut. The passage is now talking in particulars about how the heavens that is Zeir Anpin tell and perfect with supernal gleam and sparkle this glory which is Malchut that is called glory and how that firmament draws and causes a flow from the supernal do so it says day to day utter speech meaning day to day and level to level will hasten to combine with each other and illuminate one from the other from that gleam that the heavens sparkle and illuminate upon that glory which is Malchut Yabia and utter is as in Mabba and quickly done the translation of and the things that shall come upon them make haste to 3235 uses Maba and Yabia and means that they hasten to illuminate one from the other and to Sparkle one from another from that gleam and sparkle of Zeir and that is called heavens 191 speech head Omer Aleph M.E.M. Resh in the passage day to day utter speech means the whole of the letters and paths that emanate from Abba and I.M.A. and that head namely the first three Svirot that are called head that emanates from them which is the firstborn son namely Zeir and that is called firstborn son the Aleph of Omer alludes to Abba when he ascends and descends namely when he replenishes the smallness of I.M.A. from which light ascends from below up and the greatness of I.M.A. from which light descends from above down then the M.E.M. of Omer which is I.M.A. is joined with the Aleph the Resh of Omer alludes to the firstborn son which is Zeir and when all these letters combine they are Omer which is the light of Abba and I.M.A. and the firstborn son and they illuminate to each other in one bond they dominate on the Shabbat day therefore they are all included in each other in Order to be one because Zeir Anpin ascends and becomes attired with Abba and Iama therefore the three letters of Omer hasten to provide to each other which are the supernal dominion in order that everything should be one 192 when all this is drawn and flows to this firmament which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin it waters and illuminates below the glory of El who is Malchut in order to create offspring in the images of the lights of these heavens which is Zeir Anpin that illuminates the glory of El Ibid 193 and night to night expresses knowledge Ibid 3 meaning her chariots which are the body of the throne which is Malchut they are called nights as it is written my reigns also admonish me in the nights Tehillim 167 the Sfirat of the supernal chariot which is Zeir Anpin are called days as in day to day while the Sfirat of the lower chariot which is Malchut are called nights night to night 194 expresses knowledge Yashiv and expresses means Yashiv Yang. To give life for it will bring to life offspring from the lights that he received from the heavens. If you say that Yashaya does not mean Yashaya, come and see. And the man called the name of his wifey because she was the mother of all living. Have Shabir she 320. So we see that even Shaya are the same for the yet is removed from Shaya and the Bob enters in its place. This is as it should be as the Bob surely signifies life because the Bob alludes to Zeir and that is the tree of life. Therefore, of even Shaya Eve is the main because the yet of Shaya takes life from the Bob of Eve. Therefore, she is called Eve Shaba and not Shaya here. Also, Yashaya means Yashaya 195. Knowledge in the passage and night to night expresses knowledge is the secret of the heavens, namely Zeir and as the heavens have six sides. Also, here night provides to night with six ends through the offspring that the night enlivens, which are similar to the six extremities of Zeir and Therefore day to day is included in the highest level Omer which is Abba and Ima is mentioned and night to night is included in the highest level in the secret of the male that illuminates her that is heaven and knowledge which is Zeir Anpin 196 this Omer is a supernal secret namely Abba and Ima and is not like other sayings therefore the Torah repeats it and says there is no speech nor are there words Tehillim 194 it is not like the other sayings of the world but rather Omer and speech is a supernal secret in the highest levels where there are no speeches nor words meaning that Chakma is concealed in them and does not shine because the illumination of Chakma is called speech they are not heard like the other levels which are in the secret of faith that is Malchut which are an audible voice meaning that Chakma is revealed in her but Omer which is Abba and Ima is never heard this is what is meant by their voice is not heard which meaning is that the Chakma is concealed in them and is not heard because Chakma is revealed only in Malchut alone 197 their line is gone out through all the earth of it 5 even though the Abba and Ima are supernal and concealed and are never known meaning that Chakma does not become revealed in them still in all their flow and drawing is drawn and flows downward to Malchut that is called earth meaning that the Chakma that is concealed in them is drawn to Malchut we have complete faith in this world. Namely Malchut with the illumination of
is the abode of Chakma in levels of Abba and Ima and Zeir and provides it to Malchut that is called faith so that the faith is seen throughout the whole world because Chakma is called Side 199 he who receives the sun is like one who has received all the levels because the sun is like a tent in which the levels are included in it it receives everything and illuminates to all the kinds of lights below to Malchut therefore he is like a bridegroom coming out of his canopy of its six with the shines and glitterings of all the concealed lights from all the levels for they all give him their desire and their lights with complete pleasure and will just as a groom has desire and pleasure to give his bride gifts and presents therefore he is like a bridegroom coming out of his canopy 200 he questions what is his canopy he says this is Eden which is Chakma and this is the secret of and a river went out of Eden Bereshit 210 Eden is a canopy that covers all meaning that it covers and shields from all clipot and rejoices like a strong man to run a race tail 196 rejoices comes from the side of primordial light that served during the six days of creation before it was concealed in which there is no judgment at all like a strong man is from the side of Bura and although Bura might is holy judgment it is written like a strong mighty man instead of a strong man this is because he has sweetened the judgment in Shisit and has taken everything. Together both Chakma and Shisid with complete desire and pleasure and all this I asked to run a race lit way as it is written who makes a way in the sea of Shea 4316 he makes a way in Malchut that is called sea in order to water and fill the shine of the moon which is Malchut in all the sides namely on the right and on the left and to open it in a way to illuminate below 201 his going forth is from the end of the heavens to Barim 432 meaning that from the end of the supernal heavens which is Zeir and Ben he brings forth the provision because at the end of Tiferet that is called body which is Yezid he brings forth his provision as at that place there is a difference between male and female this is what is written and from the end of the heavens to the end of the heavens to Barim 432 the end of the heavens is the upper world namely Zeir and Ben that is called heavens to the end of the heavens is his peace which is Yezid just as this one Zeir and Ben receives all. The lights and they are all in him so does that one is it take all the lights and they are all in it it goes forth from the end of the heavens 202 and his circuit tail 197 means that he encircles all the holy sides that are worthy of being illuminated and worthy to be watered and to glitter from him and there is nothing hidden it means there is none that can be covered from this light because it lights under one principle to each and every one as is fitting for it 203 when they are perfected and illuminating from the sun the moon which is Malchut becomes adorned like the supernal IMA and becomes completed in 50 gates like her this is the meaning of the verse the Torah of Hashem is perfect the bidet for it is now perfect from all the sides in the secret of the five levels Jesus Bureau Typhor at Netzach and Hod like supernal IMA these five are the secret of the 50 gates of Bina because each one is composed of 10 204 therefore it is composed of phrases Containing five words each in order to complete the secret of fifty, the Torah of Hashem is perfect, restoring the soul of it. Here are five. The testimony of Hashem is sure, making wise the simple of it. Here are five. The statutes of Hashem are right, rejoicing the heart of it. Here are five. The commandment of Hashem is pure, enlightening the eyes of it. Nine. Here are five. The fear of Hashem is clean, enduring forever. Ibid. Ten. Here are five. The judgments of Hashem are true and are righteous altogether. Ibid. Here are five. For all these names, the Torah testimony statutes are the names of Malchut. They all come in multiples of five in order to be included in fifty, just like supernal IMA two hundred and five. Therefore, in the passages Yud Hey Vav Hey written six times, for they correspond to the six supernal extremities, which are the secret of the supernal name, which is Zeir, and the moon becomes full from them, which is Malchut, and becomes perfected in the supernal order properly. This occurs during the. Shabbat day when everything is properly completed in the secret of Shabbat above in Zeir and Ben and below in Malchut 206. On this day light is increased in everything American Samoa we have said the heavens which is Zeir and Ben first receive from the source of life which is Abba and Iamay that the heavens illuminate and construct the supernal glory which is Malchut from the secret of the supernal book which is Abba of them all and from the secret of the book which I as supernal Iamay and he namely Zeir and Ben. That is called heavens is derived from the secret of the tale therefore it is written declare also tell as we have said it is in the secret of the three names namely book have sefer scribe have sefer tale have sefer namely Abba Iamay and Zeir and Ben who dominate on the Shabbat day over all the other days 207 therefore David recited this phrase the heavens declare inspired by the Holy Spirit about the shine and sparkle and domination of the Shabbat day over all the other days because it Secret of the supernal name Zeir and Ben illuminates with light and sparkles with sparkles and becomes complete above and below then the Torah of Hashem is perfect which is the Shabbat of Shabbat Eve namely Malchut which is of the same secret with Zeir and Ben as we have said section 17 rejoice in Hashem be righteous the scholars decreed that praises on Shabbat should start with the Psalms of David which rise to illuminate and bless the heavens and the river that comes out of Eden all is performed as it should be performed though and on this day even the sun illuminates properly the relevance of this passage David signifies our physical existence he is Malchut thus David Psalms elevate our lower world Malchut into the heavens Zeir and Ben when they are recited at the commencement of each new Shabbat for us our own souls and all existence are now elevated by the sacred texts that speak these hidden truths 208 and the friends decreed that the Praises start with the praises of David with the secret of the praise the heavens declare the heaven which is Zeir and Ben takes first and illuminates all the rest afterwards the river that comes out of Eden which is Yezid takes and this is the secret of rejoice in Hashem you righteous Tehillim 331 for this praise is the aspect of Yezid this river gathers and takes everything from the secret of the heavens which is Zeir and Ben in the supernal secret which is Chesedim and the source of life which is the illumination of Chakma and all as is proper on this day the sun which is Zeir and Ben perfects Yezid to illuminate properly on this day section 18 of David when he changed his demeanor this verse explains that the phrase refers to the moon that is separated on this day from the other side and joins with the sun it contains the 22 letters that the sun brings into the moon the relevance of this passage the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet signify 22. Primeval forces of energy that combine together in countless configurations to conceive all creation they are the instruments of the divine tools to fashion supernal and mundane worlds along with the diversity of life forms that inhabit them accordingly this passage offers us nothing less than the light of creation this illumination separates our souls from the other side our evil inclination our prayers are strengthened our spirit is renewed and our existence is brightened so that darkness never again dominates our world and our souls 209 afterwards one should say the praise which is the secret of the moon which is Malchut that is separated from the other side on this day in order to shine from the sun it is written of David when he changed his demeanor Tehillim 341 after it was separated from the other side it joined with the sun which is Zeir and this praise is in the order of the 22 letters at the beginnings of the verses that the sun brings them into the moon this Praise also contains the separation of the moon from the other side and the praise of the 22 letters that the sun brings into the moon section 19 a prayer of Moses when we read a prayer of Moses the man of the Elohim we are to understand that this refers to the union of Malchut and Zir and the lower realm with the upper and that joining of a wife to her husband there is the spreading of the right and left hands Jesus and Bureau to receive her here we can understand how the union of the lower world and the upper world is mirrored in the union of husband and wife and of how mercy and Bureau work together to form powerful unions of all kinds the relevance of this passage our own relationships are enriched and imbued with tremendous blessing as the Zohar reveals the mysteries concerning the union of the upper and lower worlds anytime this unification is achieved darkness is expelled from our personal existence our connection to Moses and it Wisdom of Torah is made complete our intimate relations now engender unification of the upper and lower world culminating in the full radiance of the light of the creator all of this is achieved by virtue of Moses and our visual embrace of the verses that speak his name 210 afterwards the queen elevates and joins with her husband Zeir and Ben and it is written a prayer of Moses the man of Elohim Tehillim 901 because prayer is Malchut and Moses is the secret of Zeir and Ben for this shows it. joining and
To the Creator clearly all possibilities exist within the infinite realm of the light as such this wisdom uplifts us above our own base nature so that we now recognize and embody the divinity imbued into the seemingly chaotic world 211 it is written as Psalm Saint Jehashim Anu Song Tehillim 981 we have already established this phrase although we have observed that the observations of the friends who observed about this is that they said that the cows that were transporting the ark rose to recite this praise as it is written and the cows took the straight also Sangway Ishmuel 612 what was the song that they were reciting it was Saint Jehashim Anu Song for he has done marvelous things the secret is similar to above for at the time the living creatures carry the throne which is Malchut to raise it above to Zeir and then they recite this praise 212 if you ask why is it written here new for it is written a new song are they not constantly saying this praise he Answer certainly it is new for it is called new only with the renewal of the moon which is Malchut when it illuminates from the sun which is Zeir and then it is new and this is a new song for each time Malchut ascends to appear with Zeir and she is transformed to become new in accordance with the secret that every time she reverts to being a virgin his right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory Tehillim 981 this is the arousal of right and left which are Shisad and Gura. To receive her 213 they did praise him with this praise when they carried the ark and were going up to Betchemish like the wagons also heifers which is the secret of the living creatures they went up to Betchemish which is the secret of Zeir and that is called Shemish and sun and it all amounts to the same for the elevation of the throne which is Malchut to ascend above occurs on Shabbat therefore the order of this praise is on the Shabbat all these praises were composed for. Shabbat for the unique nation of the world to praise him. Section 21 is Psalm song for the Shabbat day. We learned that like the candle which cannot be seen in the daylight, the lower world cannot approach the light of the upper world. The Shabbat day is the upper world and the Shabbat eve is the lower world. Psalm song for the Shabbat day was the praise said by Adam at the time he was expelled from the Garden of Eden and the Shabbat came and shielded him. We read that all the praises of Shabbat which is the glory of the day are higher than on all the other days. The relevance of this passage Adam we the vessel had a burning desire to be the cause of his our own fulfillment, the creator of his own light. But as candlelight cannot be seen in the presence of the sun, Adam we left the luminous perfection of the garden to enter our disordered dimension of darkness, Malchut, where the light is concealed, man through his own labor and effort can rekindle the light. And thus years in the divine act of creation he becomes godlike keeping the Sabbath learning Torah and igniting the light of the Zohar are the fundamental ways in which we achieve this purpose thus our life's work is being accomplished and completed as we read these words our efforts here provide the finishing touches to the spiritual evolution and final ascent of man therein lies the ultimate power of the Zohar 214 the Psalmist song for the Shabbat day Tehillim 921 this praise was said by Adam at the time he was expelled from the garden of Eden and the Shabbat came and protected him the friends have established this already this is the praise that the lower world which is Malchut says to the upper world which is a day that is holy Shabbat which is the king that the peace is his namely Zeir and this is a Psalmist song but the utter is not mentioned because it alludes to Malchut for every place where it is unspecified it alludes to Malchut as written above 215 for the Shabbat day, namely the supernal day, the supernal Shabbat, which is Zeir and the one is Shabbat and the other is Shabbat. So what is the difference between the one and the other? He answers unspecified Shabbat is the Shabbat of Shabbat, namely Malchut. Shabbat day is the supernal Shabbat, namely Zeir and the one is day Zeir and the other is night Malchut. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat. Shema 3116 refers to night, the secret of the female. Remember the Shabbat. Day Shema 208 refers to day, the secret of the male, namely Zeir and Therefore it is said, Islam a song for the Shabbat day, for Malchut praises Zeir and that is called the Shabbat day. 216 we have found in many places that the lower world, which is Malchut, is not mentioned by name and is unspecified without a name, such as Islam a song for the Shabbat day, in which the name of the author is not mentioned, for example, and called to Moses, Vayikra 11, as well as, and he said to Moses. Come up to Hashem Shema 241 in all of these the name is concealed and is not mentioned because there is a supernal level contained in it namely Zeir and she is not mentioned by name near the supernal level the light of a candle is not noticed during the day in the sunlight therefore she is not mentioned by name all the praises of Shabbat which is the glory of the day are higher than on all the other days section 22 the soul of every living being we read how the soul flies from the life of the world the is of Zeir and is blessed by him as it emerges and flies downwards and the soul has permission to bless Malchut the souls fly downwards and bless Malchut at the commencement of Shabbat we learn that Malchut receives blessings during the weekdays from the other souls that bless her from below during the Shabbat day she receives blessings from the upper souls that bless her with 45 words all this praise and all these words are known Limbs that add up to the proper completion of the Shabbat, the relevance of this passage, all the blessing spiritual energy of the weekday and the Sabbath fill our souls, completing our connection to the light of the Creator. In turn, we ignite the merciful arrival of the cosmic Sabbath, the age of Messiah, and a unified humanity embraces the world of immortality and boundless delight. 217. The soul of every living being, the friends have said true words about it. We must remember that the soul flies from the life of the worlds, which is yet of Zeir and because it is his, all the blessings emanate from him and dwell in him, and he waters and blesses downward Malchut, the soul that emerges from him and has permission to bless this place. Malchut 218. Therefore, the souls fly from that living, which is yet of Zeir and at the commencement of Shabbat, these souls that fly actually bless that place that is called name below, namely Malchut, for which reason it is said the soul of Every living being will bless your name, namely Malchut, that is called name, the place from which the souls emerge, which is Yezid blesses Malchut from above. So we see that this name receives blessings from below and from above and is included from all sides. 219 During the weekdays, Malchut receives blessings from the other souls that bless her from below. During the Shabbat day, she receives blessings from the upper souls of Atzalat that bless her with 45 words like the numerical value of the name of 45, as we have established in the secret of Ma equals 45 and Me equals 50. For this MI is the upper world, Bina and Ma is the lower world, Malchut, the soul of every living being until the last word contains 45 words and from where our mouth is full of song until the word before us, it is a different phrase which is composed of 50 words. This is not a word that indicates calculating, meaning that there is no end of subject to point out a specific sum because the word before us is in it. Middle of subject with all this, the sum adds up to the secret of me, namely 50 words. A different praise starts from that point onward that amounts to the sum of 100 words until by the mouth of the upright you shall be exalted, which is the completion of all, namely the greatness of Malchut that contains 10 spirot with each one containing 10 equaling 100. This is one chariot upon which dwells the supernal wholeness, which is Zeir and 220. All this praise and all these words are certain limbs, meaning grades that add up to the completion of the Shabbat with which to be completed properly. Happy is the nation that knows how to arrange the praise of its master properly from here and further. It is the order of prayer as was arranged. Section 23. But be not you, Hashem, far from me. We read how when King David was arranging the praise of the king, he included, But be not you, the creator, far from me. My strength haste you to help me. This is. Because when Malchut ascends to become adorned with Zir and it is in the upper world and from there it is necessary to elevate it to infinity in order that it should all be bound together high above during the order of praise the children of Israel do not permit Malchut to ascend from them we read that the Holy One ascends higher and higher to infinity but immediately returns to his place because the children of Israel below are joined with him it is necessary to join with the Holy One and hold on to him so that no person is forsaken by him even for one moment now Rabbi Lazar says to his father Rabbi Shimon that they must leave the Garden of Eden and travel in the ways of the guards of the Tree of Life he asks his father to prepare the way the relevance of this passage the upper and lower realms are linked so that blessings may now flow to us unobstructed a constant connection to the light is attained through the energy arising here which acts as an umbilical cord so that in these are darkest days we may call down the light to illumine our way and end pain suffering and ev
With Zeir Anthon and Malchut from below, so that if this glory which is Malchut wishes to go up from there, the children of Israel below are joined to her and hold onto her, and they do not permit her to go away from them. Therefore, the prayer is silent as one who is speaking secretly with the king, because she doesn't become far from him at all as long as she is with him in secret, and she is completely included in Zeir Anthon. And even though Zeir Anthon ascends to the endless light, he does not become far from us because he immediately returns to his place as it is written before us 224 my strength have aliyadi tailim 2220 aliyadi means that just like a stag have all were dear when they go and leave they return immediately to the place they left so is the holy one blessed be he even though he ascends higher and higher to the endless world he immediately returns to his place why because Israel below are joined with him and do not leave him so he would be forgotten and removed from them for this it is said my strength haste you to help me 225 therefore it is necessary to join with the holy one blessed be he and hold on to him like one who draws from above to below so that no person is forsaken by him even for one moment therefore when one connects redemption close to prayer namely the blessing who delivered Israel to the Amida, he has to become engrossed in it and speak to him in silence so he does not become distanced from him and does not leave us Therefore it is written, but you who did cleave of Hashem your Elohim are alive. Every one of you, the state of Aram 44, happy is the people that is in such a case. Happy is the people whose Elohim is Hashem. Tehillim 14,415, 226. At the moment that Rabbi Shimon rose, the friends also rose and left. Rabbi Lazar said to Rabbi Shimon, his father, father, until now we sat in the shade of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. From now and further that we are traveling, we must go in the ways that guard. This tree, he said to him, you start first to open the way section 24, gold and silver and brass. It is impossible to summarize the content of this long and difficult section, which contains a myriad of details explaining the meaning of all the colors and objects referred to in that they bring me an offering. It speaks of gold and silver and brass, blue and purple and scarlet, fine linen and goat skins and ram skins, dyed red and badger skins, acacia wood oil for the. Light onyx stones and stones to be set the passage goes on to emphasize the importance of the numbers 24 and 25 and 49 and then discusses the prayers which should be made standing and which lying down the relevance of this passage when we read of the many offerings that people made on the altars to the Holy One we realize by comparison how little we are tempted to offer him today this unwillingness is planted within us by Satan for the truthful offerings and sacrifices are actually the negative traits and nefarious qualities implanted within us by the other side as we now offer our dishonorable traits upon the sacrificial altar our sins are cleansed and judgments are annulled the number 49 is spoken of signifying the sphere of Bina from our perspective here in Malchut Earth Bina is the fountainhead of spiritual energy thus our souls ascend to this lofty spiritual height to nourish ourselves and bring divinity and boundless mercy to this mundane level of existence 227 he Open the discussion saying that they bring me an offering Shema 252 meaning that it is Malchut that is joined with Zeir Anpin as we have learned what makes it an offering ITIS in the secret of gold which is the left column because it is nourished originally from there as it is the lower viewer that comes from the side of gold from there is the illuminations of Shakma because Malchut is built from the left column even though she comes from the side of gold she perseveres only by the side of silver which is the right column namely by the illumination of Chesedim 228 this is the secret of the cup of blessing that alludes to Malchut that is called cup one should accept it with the right and left hands but it remains only in the right the left arouses the right for it provides the shine of Shakma that is in IT it does not become attached because the cup is given between right and left and the left joins and is included under the right the right becomes joined above in Zeir Anpin as it is written his left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me sure Hasherim 26 gold and silver are as in the verse the silver is mine and the gold is mine Shagai 28 meaning the right and left of Zeir Anpin but in Malchut gold is first and then silver because she is built from the left column which is gold as has already been explained 229 and Brass Shema 253 its color is similar to gold because it is colored from the color gold and the color silver which is Malchut that is received in the right and left of Zeir Anpin which are gold and silver as mentioned earlier therefore the brass altar was small as it is written for the altar that was before Hashem was too small to accommodate the offering I Melachim 864 and, and David was the smallest Ishmael 1714 meaning Malchut which is called the lesser luminary bear sheet 116 even though it is small everything is included in it if you ask why the other altar namely the inner one is called small it is because it was only one cubit by one cubit it is not so for it is not dependent upon measure for the only one which is small is the one about which it is written the greater luminary to rule the day and the lesser luminary to rule the night this one the brass altar is the lesser luminary the greater luminary is the inner altar which is the gold altar 230 and blue of it this is the blue wool of it sits it and fringes blue wool is the throne the secret of the hand tefillin which is malchut blue wool is the throne of justice on which criminal law life and death is judged meaning malchut in the side of severe judgment there is a throne upon which monetary laws are judged which is the secret of weak judgment and there is a throne upon which criminal law is judged which is the secret of severe judgment and blue is the severe judgment that is in malchut therefore all the colors are acceptable in a dream except for blue for this notifies one that his soul is to be judged when the soul is being judged the body is sentenced to destruction and that dream needs great mercy 231 blue wool is the throne about which is written the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone a brightness round about him yashiskal 126 to 27 when it is used for loops for the tzitzit and fringes the brightness illuminates it when the brightness illuminates it it becomes the color green as white becomes more visible in it for this is the secret of the brightness that lights up toward morning from then on the time starts to recry at shma because the color of blue has changed from what it was namely to the color green which is weak judgment it is therefore prohibited to judge life and death law at night because the color blue dominates at that time and permission is given to snatch a soul without trial meaning the other side has power then to confuse the minds of the judges because the judgment which is zeir and which is mercy does not dominate at that Time 232 when morning arrives the right above awakens that light emerges and reaches this blue it changes from what it was and then the right dominates it and a different holy throne then attaches to it of mercy from that moment on is the time to recite cry at SH 233 and purple this is all the colors gathered together which is Zeir and meaning the central column that includes all the three columns which are white red and green and scarlet it is written scarlet lit worm of Shani and scarlet in for all her household are clothed with scarlet have Shani Mishle 3121 this here is the color called scarlet which includes all the colors and Shani and Janim are one as Janim is called when they are all included in it together Shani emerges from the supernal throne which is Zeir and which is the throne for Bina that dominates blue from the right side this is the guardian of Israel of whom it is written Michael your prince Daniel 1021 he is called the worm because his strength is in his mouth like a worm that breaks everything and uproots everything 234 and scarlet and fine linen Shema 253 these are two colors together of right and left which are white and red and they are both in Yezid because the judgments in Malchut are included in Yezid fine linen and Hepshish is linen in which six Hepshish threads are combined namely Yezid this is the meaning of his body also was like the barrel of its six who is angel Gabriel this is because in these two which are Chesed and Bura that are in Yezid are included two others which are Michael and Gabriel Michael is in scarlet and Gabriel in fine linen 235 and goat skins of it three they are lowered Bura in the exterior they are Typhoret and Malchut that are in the clip of Noga and brightness of Bria that cover the internal ones that are in holiness everything is necessary because it is necessary to give place for everything they come from the side of gold for they are drawn. From the side of viewer that is called gold and ram skins dyed red of it five they are drawn from two sides right and left which are chakma and bina of the clip of Nogai in order to cover in another place the holiness because the goat skins cover over the aspects that correspond to them in holiness and ram skins dyed red cover over the aspects that correspond to them in holiness 236 and badger skins there is one aspect that grows in the other side in the wilderness and is not found in inhabited places this is the aspect of purity
Spirit starts rising it is called the Badger Head to Kash Tafshechin because the letter Nun has gone up from a 239 the spirit to Kash is divided into many other spirits and this nation was therefore called to Kash as it is written and to Kash and Mag of Bershi 2224 they used to have knowledge of this animal to Kash that was in the tabernacle and is named after them 240 and Acacia Wood Shema 255 these are the holy secrets of these holy boards of the tabernacle which are Named after their secret, namely Acacia Wood, in relation to the boards, it is written Acacia Wood standing up. Shema 2615 and Seraphim stood above Yeshaya 62 to teach that the boards are the secret of Seraphim 241. From here and further, oil for the light is the drawing of the holy oil of greatness to flow upon them, namely the mokin of the first three spirat onyx stones and stones to be set. Shema 257. These are the holy stones, the foundations of the tabernacle, for they are the secret of the four angels Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Revile. For each one of them includes three columns, which are the twelve that carry the chariot, which is Malchut, and these holy chariots, these twelve heretofore mentioned, come on their own to glorify and praise in a precious garment, namely the breastplate, so the priest should concentrate there on them and mention these twelve tribes. Therefore, there are twelve stones, as we have learned. 242. There are thirteen kinds, namely gold, silver, etc. Besides. These twelve precious stones that are the stones to be set together they add up to twenty-five the twenty-five letters in the supernal mystery of Unison corresponding to these Moses engraved and arranged twenty-five letters in the secret of the verse of Unison as it is written here O Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim sixty-four which contains twenty-five letters engraved and carved in the supernal secret two hundred and forty-three Jacob wanted to prepare below in Malchut in the secret of Unison so he prepared twenty-four letters which are blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever he did not complete to twenty-five letters because the tabernacle was not yet completed which corresponds to Malchut as soon as the tabernacle was completed and the first thing to emerge was completed he spoke only with twenty-five letters to show that it was completed similarly to above which is Zeir and as it is written and Hashem called to Moses and spoke to him out of the tent of meeting saying Vayikra eleven 11 which contains twenty-five letters two hundred and forty-four. Therefore there were twenty-five kinds with which to complete the preparation of the tabernacle and we established all these letters to be the engraved letters about which I learned from Master once the tabernacle was completed with these secrets it is called K-O-H-C-A-F-A equals twenty-five in the complete unison of the tabernacle which is Malchut therefore it is written and your pious ones shall bless you have Yavarku Chetelim 14510 which contains the letters Yavarku and bless C-A-F-A for C-A-F-A is the secret of the completion of the entire tabernacle and its preparation as explained in the adjacent essay C-A-F-A corresponds to twenty-two letters and the Torah the prophets and the writings which are under one rule and one secret two hundred and forty-five Yisrael declare the unity with this passage in the secret of the twenty-five letters which are Hero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one together with blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever which contains twenty-four letters and concentrate on each. One of them and all the letters joined together and in one bond amount to 49 gates in the secret of Jubilee which is Bina because 25 and 24 equal 49 it is necessary to mount until Bina but not higher and then the 49 gates of Bina are opened and the Holy One blessed be he considers for the person as though he has fulfilled the whole Torah that comes in 49 aspects 246 therefore the person has to concentrate the heart and will on 25 and 24 and elevate them with the willing of the heart to the 49 gates that we mentioned after he has concentrated on this he should concentrate on that unison that my master said who is Rabbi Shimon that hero Israel and blessed is the name are the inclusion of the entire Torah happy is the portion of he who concentrates on them for it is certainly the entirety of the whole Torah above and below this is the secret of the complete man male and female because SH Israel is the aspect male and blessed is the name is the aspect of female and this is the secret of the entire faith 247 there is an argument between Shammai and Hillel about rising up and lying down for it is written when you lie down and when you rise up Devarim 67 Shammai holds that in the evening the female rule so in relation to the female it is necessary to turn and recite the SH ma meaning lying down in the morning when the male Z-E-I-R and dominates with the domination of the upper world it is necessary to rise up and read before the male just as it is necessary during Amit prayer which must be standing so in every place that relates to the male IT is in standing 248 the house of Hillel holds that if this one would be alone Z-E-I-R and this one alone Malchut then it should have been so to divide it thus that this one should be standing and this one lying but since we join Z-E-I-R and and Malchut together in the union of 49 versions and 49 gates which are the 25 of SH and the 24 of blessed is the name as mentioned above we do not have to separate this one on its own and that one on its own but rather see that everything is one without division for there should be no division between Kriyat Sh in the morning and Kriyat Sh in the evening however as to the person finds himself so he should recite it either standing or lying down because they are both in one bond as they please this is the way it should be presented 249 therefore the male Zeir Anpin is in six sides of the passage Sh Yisrael which are six other words corresponding to the six sides of greatness that he receives from Abba and Ima and the female is in the six sides of blessed is the name which are the six words corresponding to the six sides of greatness that she receives from Zeir Anpin they both rise in one bond in the secret of 49 gates and the law is always according to the house of Hillel section 25 who raised up one from east Rabbi Shimon begins by explaining that the who in the scripture refers to the supernal world by the entire secret of the faith Malchut begins from Zir and from where the light becomes revealed the discussion moves to righteousness which rules over all the worlds to guide them and to maintain them as necessary righteousness never turns away from Zir and never keeps silence Rabbi Shimon ends by saying that the Holy One has illuminated the way because of a laser Rabbi Shimon's son who calls to the supernal light and is not silent the relevance of this passage like the moon Malchut is barren lacking any light of her own for this reason Malchut never turns away from Zir and so that she may constantly catch the light that shines from the supernal sphere man unaware of this cosmic truth has constantly turned away from the light seduced by the illusionary pleasures presented to him by the other side here we become cognizant of our Malchut nature the realization that we have no light of our own and as the moon is compelled to faithfully Face the sun to receive her light. The entire realm of Malchut is suddenly propelled by the calling and righteousness of Rabbi Lazar. She Malchut turns on her spiritual axis and comes face to face with the upper world to receive the full radiance of light emanating from the Creator. 250 Rabbi Shimon raised his hands and blessed Rabbi Lazar. His son, he opened the discussion, saying, Who had me raised up one from the East? Yeshayah 412. We have established and learned this passage. Yet the secret of the wisdom is that me is the secret of the supernal world. Binefer from there emanates the beginning of the revelation of the secret of the faith, which is Malchut, as we have already established. 251. Moreover, me is the most concealed of all the concealments that are unknown and not revealed at all. It revealed its glory to be known from that place which is called East, namely Zeir and for the entire secret of the faith, which is Malchut, begins from there and the light becomes revealed. Because all the revelation that is in Malchut she receives from Zeir Anpin and afterwards whom righteousness meant wherever he set his foot but because righteousness that is Malchut reveals the supernal Bura and the rule of the Holy One blessed be he which is Zeir Anpin and he allowed this righteousness to rule over all the worlds to guide them and to maintain them properly therefore he gave the nations before him and made him rule over his kings but because all the kings of the world are under the authority of this righteousness as it is written and he will judge the world in righteousness Tehillim 99 252 whom righteousness met called wherever he set his foot he questions who called whom did east call righteousness or did righteousness call east he answers but righteousness always calls to the mirror that illuminates which is Zeir Anpin that is called east and is never silent and righteousness always stands at his feet Malchut clothes net sash hot and yes enough. Zeir and that are called feet for she never turns away from there and she cries and is not silent this is what is written do not keep silence Elohim do
Zir Anpin and Malchut. The text goes on to speak of the black light in the context of earnestly ICQ. David also merited the white light that illuminates from Zir Anpin. We read how my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you, as one hungry for food and thirsty for water in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. The relevance of this passage, King David, we are told, was being pursued by his son who was intent on murdering him. David found himself in the wilderness experiencing great pain, yet he sang, he sang to the light with all his heart. He composed psalms and offered praise to his creator, and he did all this with untold joy in his heart. Today, man is similarly lost in the wilderness of spiritual darkness, employing the wonders of David's psalms and drawing on his courage and spiritual fortitude. We rouse joy and happiness in our hearts. This joy is not a coping mechanism to see us through our darkest moments. Happiness is not about making the best of a bad situation. On the contrary, the joy and happiness that now manifest to us are the tools that call down the white light that illuminates from Zir Anpin and the brilliance immediately removes all the darkness, liberating mankind from the direst of straits of this physical existence. 253 Rabbi Abba opened the scripture and said, A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, Tehillim 631. He questions what is the difference from all the other praises in which it doesn't say where King David recited them. But here it says when he was in the wilderness of Judah, he answers this is really not the only one because there is also when he changed his demeanor before Abba like Tehillim 341 and also when the Zephim came, Tehillim 542. This is to show to all the people of the world the praise of David even though he was in pain and they were pursuing him, he endeavored to recite songs and praises to his master. 254 He would say it through the Holy Spirit, yet the Holy Spirit did not dwell upon him. Until he endeavored that it should dwell upon him, and always the Holy Spirit does not dwell from above until the person arouses it from below. Even though they were pursuing David and he was in pain, he did not forsake the songs and praises from his mouth, and he did not interrupt his praising of his master above any other thing. 255. If you ask that we learned a psalm of David shows that first the Holy Spirit dwelled upon him, and afterward he recited poetry, or to David a psalm shows that first he recited poetry, and afterwards the Holy Spirit dwelt upon him. Here the Holy Spirit dwelt first because he said a psalm of David, so it seems that it was without endeavoring he answers, but if he did not consecrate himself first, the Holy Spirit would not dwell upon him. 256. A psalm is the Holy Spirit that is called a psalm. Why is it called so? Because Malchud, which is the Holy Spirit, constantly praises the supernal kings, Eir and for at all times she praises and sings and is not. Silent when David came and found the body of Malchut meaning her six ends properly prepared and she dwelt upon him he revealed in this world his praise and song to the king's Eir and, and all this in order to prepare this world similar to the world of above 257 to David meaning a man who is complete in his exertions a perfected man a righteous man David certainly did not ever change for he was the same both at time of peace and time of grief when he was in the wilderness of Judah this is the praise of David even though he was in his pain and even though they were pursuing him he sang and praised Hashem which praise did he say a praise that is great and precious 258 what is the superiority of this praise it is Elohim you are my El earnestly I seek you Tehillim 632 he questions just Elohim means the Elohim of all since he said Elohim why did he add my El he answers but this shows his level because there are three levels here Elohim my El and you even though there are three names, they are one level in the secret of living Elohim Elohim is above in Bina that is called living Elohim Mael is the end of the heavens to the end of the heavens namely Zeir and and you is his level namely Malchut even though it is all one and it amounts to one name according to the literal meaning of the passage still in all they allude to three levels 259 I seek you have a shot Erika Tehillim 652 if we follow the literal meaning it is beautiful and needs no explanation but there is a secret here a Shachereka means that he prepared the light that illuminates during blackness have Shachera which is the secret of the light of Shachma due to lack of Chesedim it cannot illuminate therefore it is called black light because the light that is found in blackness does not illuminate until it is mended below meaning until main and female waters are elevated and Chesedim are drawn so that Shachma can be attired with them and it illuminates as Written there the one that mends this blackness even though he is black merits the white light that illuminates for this is the light of the mirror that illuminates which is Zeir and, and such a person will merit the world to come 260 this is the secret of and those who seek me early have Meshashare shall find me have Yimtsanani Mishle 817 Meshashare means that they prepare the light of Meshashare namely the black have Shashur light Yimtsanani instead of the common Yimtsani. Shows that he merits two lights the light of blackness which is the Chakma that is in Malchut that does not illuminate because of the lack of Chesedim and the white light illuminating which is Zeir and, and that attires the Chakma that is in Malchut with Chesedim so she illuminates so we find that he merits the mirror that does not illuminate which is Malchut and the mirror that illuminates which is Zeir and, and hence Yimtsanani meaning two lights therefore David said I seek you have a Shachereka because he installed the black light which is Malchut so that the white light that illuminates could shine on him which is Zeir Anpin so that the Chakma in Malchut would be attired in the Shesedim of Zeir Anpin and Malchut is mended and illuminates 261 my soul thirsts for you my flesh longs for you Tehillim 632 namely as one hungry for food and thirsty for water in a dry and thirsty land where no water is a bit meaning Malchut under the domination of the left which is a black light as mentioned above due to a lack of Shesedim called water for then it is a wasteland and not a place of habitation nor a holy place therefore it is considered a place without water therefore David improved her and drew water to her from Zeir Anpin as mentioned above as we are hungry and thirsty for you for Shesedim in this place so I have seen you in the sanctuary because hunger and thirst cause the elevation of main and female waters the drawing of Shesedim from Zeir and the clothing of the black light of Malchut, then she returns to holiness and illuminates Rabbi Abba said to Rabbi Shimon, just as we are thirsty for master to drink thirstily his words in this place, so are we thirsty to drink his words thirstily in the temple, the place that is called holy Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Abba, let him who started speaking speak now as well. Section 27 that they bring me an offering. Rabbi Abba explains that before Moses constructed the tabernacle, the people were afraid that the Holy One would not stay with them, even though he had performed for them through Moses miracles and wonders. This is because if a king is among his people, but without his queen, it is not certain that he will remain. But on the day that Moses completed the tabernacle, the Shechinah descended to the earth, yet before the Shechinah descended, an accuser appeared and she became covered with darkness to prevent her from descending. We read that 1500. Myriads of accusing angels gathered against her because all their glow and all their light was concentrated in her and if she descended her light would become darkened yet at that moment she broke the darkness and the demons descended to the earth and ruled over all the hosts and camps of angels suffered great pain on the day that Moses bride descended to the earth the text goes on to explain that here in the world the work of the tabernacle is like the work of the body that it should be suitable to include the spirit within it the comparison is made of the Shechinah to the brain in the body the Holy Spirit the Shechinah is fashioned in the body so that it should include within itself another high delicate spirit that illuminates which is your and attired in the Shechinah lastly the text speaks of the outer shell of the world and the inner shell of the skull within which are impurities the relevance of this passage often when we begin the spiritual path miracles and wonders appear before our eyes but in truth miracles cannot support us long term in our spiritual work and journey miracles do provide an intense flash of light for a moment for a particular situation but this light does not continue to glow enduringly consequently we now tie ourselves to the Sheshanah and our connection to the light becomes constant this is what the tabernacle achieved for the Israelites in the desert and this is precisely what we accomplish here 262 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion saying that they bring me an offering of every man Shema 252 when the Holy One blessed be he showed Moses the construction of the tabernacle he found it difficult and could not grasp it as we have already established now we can ask here if this offering which is Malchut was given by the Holy One blessed be he to Moses alone how could he give it to another how could he say that the children of Israel should take this offering 263 he answered surely that he gave it to Moses and did not Give it to another this is like a king who was
is Malchut who descended to earth to dwell in Israel 264. If you ask any time it is written and it came to pass, it is an expression of pain, and here it is written and it came to pass on the day he answers on that day that the Shechinah descended to the earth, there appeared an accuser, and she was covered with darkness to prevent her from descending. We learned that 15 millions of accusing angels gathered against her in order to stop her descent. 265 at that time, all the groups of the supernal angels were gathered before the Holy One, blessed be he. They said before him, Master of the universe, all our shine and all our light is in the Shechinah of your glory. Now you are going to descend to those below, meaning that the light of Chakma in her will spread from above downwards, and then her light will become dark. At that moment, the Shechinah became strengthened, meaning that she became united with Zeir and Ben and included in his decision so that the shine of the left will. Always illuminate only from below upwards. Then she broke the darkness and gloom as one breaks strong spears, meaning the great demons, and descended to earth. As soon as they saw this, they started saying, Hashem, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Tehillim 82. Assuredly, it is majestic, for she broke many strong spears and forces descended to the earth and dominated everything. It is written, and it came to pass, which points out the pain that many hosts and camps of angels suffered on. The day that Moses' bride descended to the earth, 266. Therefore, it is written that they bring me an offering. It is not written that they bring me an offering, but rather that they bring me an offering to show that it is all one without separation. That the Shechinah called offering is one with me without separation. The work of the tabernacle is in the likeness of above one corresponding to the other in order to include the Shechinah in all the sides above and below here in the world the work of the tabernacle is like the work of the body that it should be suitable to include the spirit within it this is the Shechinah that is included above and below and she is the holy spirit 267 the Shechinah is always drawn and enters the secret of the body which is the tabernacle so that the brain should dwell in the shell for the tabernacle and its vessels are like a shell to the Shechinah which is the brain everything is as is befitting this holy spirit namely the Shechinah is fashioned in the body so that it should include within itself another high delicate spirit that illuminates which is Zeir and that is attired in the Shechinah everything is tied and included one within the other and they enter one into the other until they unite and become attired in this world which is the last peel on the exterior 268 the strong clip of impurity is within the clip of this world just as in a nut the external shell is not hard namely the green shell that is on it Nut which is soft, the more inner shell is a strong shell, hard as wood, so the globe of the earth itself is a light shell, and the shell that is within it is hard, it is also so above, and that the strong clip is another spirit that dominates the body. More inside there is a soft clip, and even more inside there is the brain, which is the Shechinah, which is the secret of the Nefesh, and within it is Zeir Anpin, which is the secret of the Ruash, as mentioned above, section 28. An opening and a light cover over the Holy Land. We learn that the hard shell, which encompasses the world, has an opening over the Holy Land. As long as people are performing the proper service, we are told that the clip clocks the brain, then the discussion moves to an analogy between the shell that covers the world and the shell that covers the brain. When the children of Israel were pushed away from the Holy Land, the opening was covered with a holy cover, a delicate curtain to guard against it. Clippa's incursion the cover prevents the holy presence from descending to earth but it also prevents the strong clippa from dominating that place we next learn that the souls of Israel who expire their ascent but the souls of other nations who expire their revolve and finally reach their own side of the impurity if someone is buried on the day that his soul departs from him in the holy land we are told the spirit of impurity has no dominion over him at all the sacrificial limbs and fat must be burned at night on the altar so that the smoke will roll around to the hole in the north and nourish the other side to keep them there the spirit of impurity cannot dominate the bodies of the righteous that do not take any pleasure in the world he whose soul departs outside of the holy land and who had his body defiled by the impure spirit the impure spirit is absorbed inside it remaining there until it returns to dust the impure spirit never dominated Joseph's body however Jacob did not die and his body remained intact and was embalmed. This we learn is because he was a bodily vehicle for the supernal image, or in other words, a chariot for Typhor. At the relevance of this passage from this portion, we shield ourselves from the negative forces that attempt to dominate our lives. In addition, a portal to the upper world is created, raising our consciousness, our senses of awareness, our intuition, our mental faculties are heightened, and we see and understand at last all that we did not see or grasp before the power of the ancient sacrifices is resurrected to nourish all the dark forces, keeping them at bay. While the purifying light embodied by Jacob shines brightly, perfecting the body and refining the soul, this light vanquishes the angel of death and the entire armada of the other side. The light of the land of Israel permeates our entire world, so that in addition to Jacob's light, the resurrection of the dead will take place with extreme mercy and loving kindness. Two hundred and sixty-nine in the Holy land everything is construed in a different way because the strong clip that is attired in the earth is broken from that place and does not dominate over it at all the strong clip breaks more and more and opens from the side and that side until an entrance is formed there 270 that entrance is in the holy land as long as they are doing the proper service due to since the strong clip on the sides of the entrance is drawn back to the side and that side until the sides of it clip join together and this occurs only at the time of the destruction of the temple as written before us since the clip clocks the brain the clip dominates over them over Israel and pushes them out of this place 271 even though it pushed them outside that strong clip cannot dominate in that holy place namely in the holy land because it is not its place if you ask if clip cannot dominate in that holy place why does it stand desolate for there is no destruction in the world but for that strong clip of 272 he answers assuredly when it was destroyed it was destroyed only from that side of the strong clip when it clogged the brain and the holy one blessed be he caused it so that the strong clip would not dominate over this place and when the clip pushed away Israel from it that clip returned and it reopened as before since the holy nation was not there because it was in exile that opening was covered with the holy cover of a delicate curtain to guard that place so that the strong clip could not clog it and the cover is attached on all sides to guard it 273 that there should be a holy presence on the earth as originally is not possible because that delicate cover is attached there so that it should not go down because the holy nation is not there therefore the desolation has not been rebuilt from the day the earth was destroyed it is not possible for the strong clip to dominate because that light cover is attached on all sides of that Opening so that the clippage should not dominate and should not clog the brain that light cover which is from the drawing of the holy curtain of above guards that place 274 therefore when all the souls of the other nations that live in the land of Israel depart from the world the land does not accept them and pushes them outside they go and float and revolve in many evolutions until they exit from the entire holy land and they circle until they reach their side of their impurity all the souls of Israel who expire their ascent that delicate cover accepts them and enter the supernal holiness as every kind seeks its own kind 275 the souls of Israel who die outside the land of Israel in the domain of that strong clip each one circles and rolls until it returns to its place and enters the place suitable for it happy is the portion of one whose soul departs in the holy domain and in that opening in the holy land 276 if someone is buried on the day that his soul Departs in the holy land, the spirit of impurity has no dominion over him at all. Therefore, it says about one who is hanged, but you shall surely bury him that day that your land be not defiled. Devarim 2123 at night, permission is given to the spirits of impurity to hover about, and although permission is given to them, they cannot enter the holy land unless they find there a vessel into which to enter, namely a dead body. 277 the limbs and fat are burned at night on the altar to nourish with their smoke the other kinds which are the other side. That does not mean that they enter the land to be nourished by the smoke, nor does it draw them into the land. It is rather the opposite in order that the other side should not dominate in the land and they should not be drawn to enter there. Therefore, the smoke of the limbs and fat would ascend in a crooked way and roll outside of the land of Israel. It would travel hastily until it entered the hole in the north where lie the habitations of all. Those of the other side the smoke enters there and they are all nourished there 278 the smoke of the offerings that ascend during the day would ascend to its place above in a direct path and there was that that was nourished from it meaning as it is written for a sweet savor an offering made by fire to Hashem Shema 2941 
Dust if that body that has swallowed that impure spirit is brought up to be buried in the holy land it is written of it but when you entered you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination your maya 27 it is my land as the impure spirit did not have power over it with that body of yours in which the impure spirit is absorbed that you are bringing to bury in my land you defile it and being defiled in it and the impure body were it not for the holy one blessed be he making a remedy for the land as soon as that body decays the holy one blessed be he causes a wind to blow from above and push the impure spirit outside because he has pity upon the land 282 the impure spirit never dominated Joseph's body even though his soul departed in a foreign domain namely outside of the land of Israel what is the reason it is because he was not drawn after the impure spirit during his lifetime still in all he did not want them to bring up his body to be buried in the holy land but Rather said, and you shall carry up my bones, bear sheet 5025, but not my body 283. Jacob did not die and his body remained intact constantly. Jacob did not fear the other side because his bed was perfect in the perfection of the supernal light and the illumination of the twelve tribes and seventy souls. Therefore he did not fear the other side for it could not dominate him and because he was also the body of the supernal image meaning that he was a chariot for Typhoret and his beauty was attached in all the sides. All the limbs of Adam were attached to him. Therefore it is written of him, but I will lie with my fathers and you shall carry me out of Egypt. Bear sheet 4730 meaning a whole body. Therefore the physicians embalmed Israel. Bear sheet 502 so that his body would remain intact and this is the way it should be the other people of the world whose souls departed in the holy land. Their souls and bodies are spared from everything. Section 29 of Fesh. Ruash Neshama the section explains the three levels of the soul of man and the corresponding three levels in the supernal realm these levels are Nefesh Ruash and Neshama the Nefesh is present in the grave until the body decays into dust the Ruash is the one that enters the terrestrial garden of Eden and is shaped there in the form of the body belonging to this world Neshama ascends immediately to her place the place from whence she emerged Malchud we learn that until the Neshama ascends to and becomes attached to the throne the Ruash does not become crowned in the garden of Eden of the earth and the Nefesh does not settle in its place as soon as the Neshama ascends they all can rest when people pray at the cemetery the Nefesh awakens then floats to awaken Ruash who ascends and awakens the Neshama then the Holy One has mercy on the world we read how the three are bonded as one the Nefesh is the throne for the Ruash while Neshama takes out the Ruash gives it power dominates it and illuminates it with the light of life after death at the time that the Neshama becomes adorned above in the holy crown the Ruash is standing in the supernal light during Shabbat new moons and festivals and when the Ruash descends from the supernal light to dwell in the garden of Eden the Nefesh stands in the grave and becomes attired in the form that the body had originally and praises the Holy One if people gave themselves permission they could see these forms on the grave standing and praising the Holy One during the day of Rosh Hashanah when the world is being judged and the throne of judgment stands by the supernal king to judge the world every single Nefesh hovers and beseeches mercy for the living sometimes they notify the living of their verdicts in a vision at night and then the living repent the text goes on to tell how Yedemim is the appointed angel who oversees the taking of souls and we read of the correspondence between these three levels of soul and man and it. Three levels in the four worlds of Asiya, Yitzhar, Abriya, and Atzala. The moon is the Nefesh of Atzala, and it illuminates all the chariots and camps of the three lower worlds, even as the Nefesh of man illuminates the limbs and bones of the body. The text says, Happy are the righteous to merit three rests in the world to come. The relevance of this passage, this profound portion, raises our consciousness to the highest level of our souls. Neshama, the ascension, assures a peaceful and merciful transition into the world to come. Our meditation awakens the force of mercy, causing supernal compassion to spill down upon creation. Transformation of our nature and positive change in the world is achieved through a path of mercy as opposed to one of torment. All judgments are hereby rescinded upon the merit of the righteous throughout history. 284. The soul of man is called by three names, which are Nefesh, Rash, and Neshama. They are all combined with each other, and their strength is found in. Three places the Nefesh is present in the grave until the body decays into dust and so it rolls around in this world to be among the living and to be acquainted with their pain at a time of need it pleads for mercy for them. 285 The Ruash is the one that enters the terrestrial garden of Eden and is shaped there in the form of the body from this world in a garment that it dons there it experiences these pleasures and delights that are in the shine of the garden of Eden and it ascends above to the upper garden of Eden on the Shabbat and beginning of new months and festivals and it delights there and returns to its place therefore it is written and the spirit of Ruash returns to the Elohim who gave it Kahilat 127 it shall surely return meaning during these times that we have mentioned 286 Neshama ascends immediately to its place to that place from where it emerged namely to Malchut from which the Neshama is born it is for it that the candle illuminates which is Malchut too. Illuminate above because the souls of the righteous ascend by main look and female waters to Zeir and, and Malchut they become paired through them this one never descends below and this is included whoever is included namely Malchut from all the sides from above and below because Malchut comprises the souls of the righteous until the Neshama ascends to and becomes attached to the throne which is the world of Briah the Rash is not crowned in the terrestrial garden of Eden and the Nefesh does not settle in its place as soon as the Neshama ascends they all can rest for they arrive at their place 287 and mercy is needed for the inhabitants of the world when they are in sorrow and they go to pray at the cemetery this Nefesh awakens it goes and floats and awakens Rash and then Rash awakens toward the patriarchs ascends and awakens the Neshama then the Holy One blessed be he has mercy on the world as we have already established even though they have explained the subject of it. Neshama in other ways meaning that Nefesh is in Asiya, Rash and Yitzhara and Neshama in Briah they all amount to this format this is a clarification of the matter and it is all 1 288 when the Neshama is detained from ascending to its place the Rash goes and stands by the entrance of the lower garden of Eden but they do not open the entrance for it it goes and drifts and no one pays attention the Nefesh goes through the world and sees the body becoming wormy and judged in the grave namely the thrashing in the grave and it mourns for it as we have established as it is written only when his flesh is on him does he feel pain and while his soul had Nefesh is within him does he mourn Neo 1422 everyone is punished until the Neshama is bound in its place above and they all become bound in their place 289 all these three are one bond similar to above in the secret of Nefesh Rash and Neshama which are Malchut Zeir and and Binah for they are all one and one Bond the Nefesh which is Malchut has no independent light which is why it participates in the secret of one body which is the three worlds Briah Yitzhara and Asiyah that Malchut dons as a soul does a body to delight and nourish it in all its needs about this it is written and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens Mishlei 3115 her household refers to the body which she nourishes and her maidens are the limbs of that body namely the Sfirat of Briah Yitzhara and Asiyah. 290 Ruash is the one who rides on the Nefesh and dominates it and illuminates it with all that it needs namely Zeir and the Nefesh is the throne for this Ruash it is Neshama who takes out this Ruash gives it power dominates it and illuminates it with that light of life namely Bina that Ruash depends upon this Neshama and shines from it with the light that it illuminates upon it that Nefesh is dependent upon this Ruash it shines from it and is nourished by it and they are all one bond. 291 that supernal Neshama namely Bina ascends into the flow from the most ancient of all and the most concealed and it is filled with life from it because it does not stop illuminating and as long as the Neshama does not return to its place this Ruash does not enter the garden of Eden which is the Nefesh namely Malchut the Ruash dwells only in the garden of Eden because Zeir and, and Malchut unite the one with the other and the Neshama is above also the Nefesh which is Malchut is not settled in its place in the body below which is Briah Yitzhara and Asiyah as long as the Neshama does not return to its place above 292 in the same way it is all explained in men below even though the Nefesh Rash and Neshama that are in men are all one bond the Neshama ascends above with the flow from the pit namely Yizid of Malchut the Rash enters the lower garden of Eden similar to above as Zeir and enters the garden of Eden
To dwell in the Garden of Eden and illuminates and sparkles and a fesh stands in the grave and is attired in the form that the body had originally all the bones take that form and praise and acknowledge the Holy One blessed be he has written all my bones shall say Hashem who is like you Talim 3510 it does not write say but rather shall say meaning in the grave 294 if permission would be given to the eye to see it could see the like of forms on the graves that acknowledge and Praise the Holy One, blessed be He on the eve of the commencement of the Shabbat and the night of the first day of the month and festivals, but the foolishness of men prevents them from seeing. They do not know and do not pay attention to what is existent in this world. They do not bother to observe the honor of the supernal king in this world and most certainly to observe the honor of that supernal world and upon what it is based and how the things are explained. 295 during the day of Rosh. Hashanah when the world is being judged and the throne of judgment stands by the supernal king to judge the world every single nefesh hovers and beseeches mercy for the living people during the night of the end of the day of judgment they go and hover to hear and know the verdict that was decided for the world. Sometimes they notify the living in a vision as it is written in a dream in a night vision when a deep sleep falls upon men and he opens the ears of man and with discipline seals there. Instruction Eo 3315 to 16 What is with discipline? This is an nefesh who stands and establishes things for people so that they should accept discipline, meaning that it notifies them of their verdict in a vision at night, and then they repent. 296 During the last night of the festival, the sentences emerge from the house of the king, and that shadow is removed from the people who are to be removed from this world, and that nefesh that we mentioned goes and floats above an appointed angel who supervises the secret of the engraving on the seal and clear writing, meaning over the writing in the aforementioned verdicts whose name is Yetamim, authorizes the writing of the engraved light, and within supernal visions descends during that night. Many thousands upon thousands and ten thousands upon ten thousands go with him. They take that shadow from each one who was sentenced to death and bring it up above 297. The nefesh that we mentioned goes and floats and sees that shadow and knows who. Is going to die and returns to her place at the grave. It proclaims to the other dead, so and so is coming to us, so and so is coming to us. If he is righteous and good, they all rejoice, and if not, they all say, Woe, when they elevate that shadow, they elevate it to the faithful servant whose name is Metatron, who takes that shadow near him and elevates it to its place as it is written, as a servant earnestly desires the shadow. Eo 72 certainly he earnestly desires the shadow 298 from that moment. And further, the place for that Neshama of the men is prepared, meaning in Yizid of Malchut of Atzala, as is a place for Rash in the lower garden of Eden, and a place for Nefesh to rest and enjoy during the time that it floats and goes, for there is a Nefesh that has no rest, and there is a Nefesh that perishes with the body 299. The one that has no rest is the one about whom it is written, and the soul had Nefesh of your enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the hollow of a sling eye. Shmuel 2529 This is the one that goes and floats and rolls throughout the whole world and has no rest at all days and nights. This is the hardest punishment of all the nefesh that perishes with the body is cut out from a different place as it is written that nefesh will be cut off from my presence. I am Hashem Vayikra 223 What is from my presence? It means that the Rash does not dwell upon it and when the Rash does not dwell upon it it has no connection at all with that which is above it. Does not know at all of these things in that world and this nefesh is like an animal. 300 A nefesh that has rest meets this appointed angel Yedamim and his officers when it goes and floats they take and elevate it to all the entrances of the Garden of Eden show it the honor of the righteous and the honor of its Rash and it cleaves unto the Rash in rest within that garment of that Rash then it knows about the things of the upper world. 301 When that Rash ascends to be attired with. The supernal Neshama above the Nefesh joins that Rash and illuminates from it like the moon when it illuminates from the sun and the Rash is connected with that Neshama that Neshama becomes bound into the end of thought meaning the end of Atzalat that is called in its entirety thought meaning Chakma because in general the four worlds Atzalat, Riyah, Yitzirah, and Asiyah are Chakma, Bina, Tiferet, and Malchut which is the secret of the Nefesh above namely Malchut of Atzalat that is called Nefesh 302 that Nefesh namely Malchut of Atzalat is connected with the supernal Rash which is Zeir and Pen and that Rash is connected with the supernal Neshama which is Bina that Neshama is connected with the endless Headline Sof meaning that it becomes bound with Eric and Pen as mentioned and Eric and Pen with the endless then there is rest for all and everything is connected above and below all in one secret and in the same manner 303 then there is repose for the Nefesh. Below about this it is written and may the soul nefesh of my master be bound in the bond of life with Hebiti Hashem your Elohim my Shmuel 2529 meaning that they are bound and attached in one way and by one secret with Et which is Malchut of Atzala for the nefesh is connected with the Rash in the lower garden of Eden and the Rash with Neshama which is in Malchut of Atzala the ones corresponding to the others as Nefesh Rash and Neshama of a man are similar to Nefesh Rash and Neshama of Atzala as mentioned 304 when the moon descends which is Malchut which is the secret of the supernal nefesh of Atzala it illuminates on all sides it illuminates all the chariots and camps of angels in Briah Yitzra and Asiyah and makes them into one whole body that illuminates with the light of the supernal shine here also the lower nefesh of man descends and illuminates in all directions from the shine of the Neshama and from the shine of Rash and descends and illuminates all the Chariots and camps which are the limbs and bones of the man's body and it makes them into a whole body that illuminates in its own light 305 this is what is meant by and satisfy your soul nefesh in drought Yeshayah 5811 actually your nefesh afterwards and make strong your bones for the nefesh illuminates the bones and makes of them a whole body that illuminates with the light it arises acknowledges and praises the holy one blessed be he as we learned and it is written all my bones shall say Hashem who is like you Talim 3510 and this is the rest for the nefesh from all sides 306 happy are the righteous who fear their master in this world to merit three rests which are nefesh rash and neshama in the world to come Rabbi Shimon came and blessed Rabbi Abba Rabbi Shimon said happy are you my children and happy am I that my eyes saw this that many supernal places are prepared for us and illuminate for us for the world to come section 30. A song of ascents they who trust in Hashem Rabbi Shimon says a song of ascents they who trust in the Creator shall be like Mount Sinai which cannot be removed but abides forever we learn that ascents means levels upon levels in the secret of fifty years below and the fifty gates of Bina above they who trust in the Creator are the righteous the rabbis go on to talk about but the righteous are bold as a lion then they travel onto a city and after dark Rabbi Shimon expresses his happiness for a perfect day and a perfect night during which they have indeed merited the world to come the relevance of this passage this section is hard to understand on the surface yet bubbling underneath is a pure divine teaching mask in metaphors trust in the Creator is perhaps the most difficult trait a man can evolve trust does not pertain to blind faith trust is connected to vision that is vast sweeping able to perceive the cause and effect principle at work in our lives trust. Includes the ability to observe order beneath chaos, the wisdom to recognize blessing within adversity, the self-honesty to detect the cause behind calamity, it encompasses awareness of the divinity design and purpose behind life's joys and all of its obstacles. It is true that when affliction and hardship strike doubts begin to surface in a man's mind, he becomes uncertain about the reality of the Creator. He questions the justice in the universe, he fears for his own future. Thus we learn that if we have trust, we shall be stable as a mountain, we shall be able to ascend to our own greatest heights, our moments of pain will be brief, and we shall experience the perfection that is the light of the Creator now and in the world to come. This mystical passage ignites trust, truth, and certainty within our hearts, vanishing forever the doubts that have tainted the hearts of men through all the ages. 307 He opened the discussion, saying a song of ascent, they who trust in Hashem shall be like Mount. Zion which cannot be removed but abides forever. Tehillim 1251. This passage has been established but these are holy supernal levels from the sides of supernal Burat that are in Bina. They are similar to the Levites below who are the aspect of ascents meaning levels upon levels in the secret of 50 years of which is written and from the age of 50 years they shall go out of the ranks of the service. Bimidbar 
Do not depend upon their present deeds but rather like a KFIR though they know that the strength of their good deeds is strong they do not depend on it but are rather like a KFIR and not more 310 and therefore it is written they who trust in Hashem shall be like Mount Zion not like a young lion and not like a lion and not like any of his names but rather like Mount Zion they explain that just as Mount Zion is firm and will never decline in the time to come they will also be like Mount Zion not as now when they are only bold like a KFIR young lion who fears and does not trust his strength and you the children of supernal holy ones your trust is certainly like Mount Zion fortunate are you in this and the next world 311 they traveled on when they reached the city it became dark Rabbi Shimon said just as the day shone upon us so we will merit the world to come this night will also light us so we shall merit the world to come and crown this night with the words that we said during the day before Adikim and such a perfect day is not to be found in all the other generations happy is our portion in this world and in the world to come 312 they entered the house of Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yussi were with them and they slept until midnight at midnight Rabbi Shimon said to the friends now is the time to crown the holy chariot above with our efforts he said to Rabbi Yussi your words were not heard among us today you shall be the first to illuminate the night because now is an auspicious time to illuminate above and below section 31 the song of songs which is Solomon's Rabbi Yussi says that King Solomon was inspired to create the song when the temple was built and all the worlds above and below were completed in one action but only when the moon Malchud was first fully completed Moses made the tabernacle in the wilderness so that the Shechinah could descend to earth and on that day another Tabernacle that of the youth Metatron was erected above everything was completed the day that the song of songs Shur was revealed to the world and so it is considered to be the holy of holies the chamber in the temple the portal to the upper world that only the high priest may enter the text goes on to tell of the cup of blessing and the significance of the right and left hands which take the cup then we read that the Shur includes everything the history and story of everything there ever was or will be another explanation offered suggests that the Hasharim are the patriarchs which represent the holy chariot at this time we learn of a deeper secret that if one dreams of black grapes growing but not in the growing season it is known that a decree of death has been declared against the dreamer then Rabbi Yussi tries to understand how if everything below is mirrored above the serpent and death can possibly be above returning to a song of ascent he explains that this means the songs of the supreme angels who are divided into ascents and levels and they sing to David who is Malchut to demand of him food and sustenance as soon as King Solomon came he recited a song that the great ones of the upper world recite to the supreme king the songs of all the people of the world were in the lower chariots but only King Solomon's song was in the supreme chariots King David and his son Solomon sang their songs differently David endeavored to correct the worlds and to beautify the queen with them while Solomon endeavored to bring her to the groom introducing words of love between them in order to join them together David paired the queen in this world below while Solomon paired the queen in a perfect union above the passage speaks then of 3,000 proverbs 3,000 parables a thousand and five poems and the number five in the end the reason that prayers and petitions are necessary is so that the place from whence the light emerges which is Zer and should illuminate and become prepared because when that place is restored then everything below in Malchut is ready for the appearance of God the relevance of this passage days weeks months years could be spent trying to interpret this one extremely long and complex passage yet perhaps its complexity is its message to release us from our stubborn adherence to the intellect and turn us toward the divine languages of music and poetry which are better able than ordinary language to speak of deep things we know that Zohar's narrative arouses the spiritual forces of which it speaks thus references to the serpent and death ignite sacred sparks that safeguard us from these deadly forces and the angel of death himself dies through the light that shines here we draw sustenance in the name of David ending poverty protection and the light of the final redemption are aroused through the temple blessing is bestowed upon us at the hand of the cup of blessing we ignite untold joy by Virtue of Solomon's Song of Songs and we propagate goodness throughout the world through the medium of the white grapes 313 Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion saying the Song of Songs which is Solomon's Shur Hasharim 11 King Solomon was inspired to the song when the temple was built and all the worlds above and below were completed in one completion even though the friends disagree as to when it was said the main opinion is that it was said when the temple was built but the song was recited whole only when the moon which is Malchut was fully completed and the temple was built in the likeness of above when the temple was built below there was no joy before the Holy One blessed be he from the day that the world was created like that day 314 Moses made the tabernacle in the wilderness so that the Shechinah could descend to earth on that day another tabernacle was erected above as was explained as it is written the tabernacle was erected Shema 4017 the tabernacle comes to imply another tabernacle that was erected with it and that is the tabernacle of the youth Metatron and not higher when the first temple was built another first temple was built with it which is Malchut when it was in the grade of Bani it existed in all the worlds and illuminated all the worlds and the world became fragrant and all the supernal apertures were open to shine there was no joy in the world like on that day and then those above and those below opened and said a song it. Song of songs the songs that the musicians played to the Holy One blessed be he 315 King David recited a song of ascents Tehillim 1251 and King Solomon recited the song of songs meaning a song of those who play music what is the difference between them for it seems that they are all the same he answered certainly it is all one but in the days of King David all the musicians were not in their places to play music properly because the temple was not built yet therefore they were not prepared above in their places for as there are washes arranged on the earth so it is in heaven and they stand one corresponding to the other and the washes below were as yet not prepared properly because the temple was not built 316 on the day that the temple was built they were all fixed in their place meaning the washes and the candle which is Malchut that did not illuminate started to illuminate the song the song of songs was arranged for the supernal king the king that the pieces is Zeir and this praise towered above all first praises the day that this praise was revealed to the world was found completed in everything and so the song of songs is considered the holy of holies 317 in the book of Adam it was written on the day that the temple will be built the patriarchs will inspire song above and below therefore we find that the shin of Shur Hasharim is one of the large letters for the three branches allude to the three patriarchs these patriarchs are the ones who Inspire the song they do not actually play music because only Malchut does but they awaken the above by the song of these great songs that are appointed over all the worlds namely of Bani 318 we have learned that the perfect Jacob arose on that day and entered the Garden of Eden joyously to his place then the Garden of Eden which is Malchut started to sing and all the spices in the Garden of Eden sang who brought the singing and who recited it you must admit that Jacob brought this about. For had he not entered then the Garden of Eden would not have sung so we see that Jacob brought it and the Garden of Eden which is Malchut recited it 319 the song is a song that includes the whole Torah a song with which those above and those below became inspired it is a song which is similar to above which is the supernal Shabbat which is Bani a song that the supernal holy name which is Malchut becomes crowned by therefore it is the holy of holies what is the reason because all its Words are in the love and the joy of all and the cup of blessing which is Malchut is given with the right hand with Jesus since it is given with the right hand and all joy and love are present therefore all its words are with love and with joy 320 when this right hand is turned back as it is written he has drawn back his right hand each of 23 then the cup of blessing which is Malchut is given with the left hand where the judgments are because of a lack of chesedim since it is given with the left hand those above and those below start to lament her and what do they say how have each of which are the letters EI and where KOH meaning where is the cup of blessing which is Malchut that is called KOH the place above wherein she would sit namely the place of Bina was withheld and removed from her therefore all the words of Shur Hasharim which is of the right side are of love and joy all the words of each in which the right is missing and only the left is present are Grievances and Lamentations 321 If you ask every joy and every jubilation and every song is from the left side therefore love it who are of the left side play the song so how can you say that it is judgments and lamentations he answers any time there is joy from the left side it is present only when the right is joined with it meaning that the chakma in the left becomes attached with chesedim of the right when the right becomes aroused and joins with it then that joy in the right
Joy and it is not so in all the other songs in the world therefore the song was inspired by the patriarchs 324 the song was revealed on the day the Shechinah ascended to earth as it is written so that the priests could not stand and minister I mail Hashem 811 why for the glory of Hashem had filled the house of Hashem but on that very day the praise of Sher Hashirim was revealed and Solomon said it through the Holy Spirit 325 the praise of the song Sher Hashirim is the inclusion of the entire Torah the inclusion of the whole creation the inclusion of the secret of the patriarchs the inclusion of the exile in Egypt the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt and the song of the sea namely then sang Moses Shema 151 the inclusion of the Ten Commandments the existence of Mount Sinai and includes from the time that Israel traveled in the wilderness until they came to the land of Israel and the temple was built also the inclusion of the crowning of the holy name with love and joy the inclusion of the exile of Israel among the nations and the redemption the inclusion of the resurrection of the dead until the day that is the Shabbat to Hashem namely the day that is completely Shabbat of the time to come whatever is and whatever was and whatever will be afterwards during the seventh day namely the seventh millennium when it will be Shabbat to Hashem it is all in Shir Hashirim 326 therefore we have learned that anyone who selects a passage from Sure Hashirim and says it in an alehouse the Torah girds a sack and ascends before the Holy One blessed be he and says before him your children have made me a joke in an alehouse certainly the Torah ascends and says thus therefore one should be careful and place a crown upon the head of the person out of every single word of Sure Hashirim 327 and if you ask why is it among the writings and not in the prophets he answers it is certainly so that its place is in the writings because it is the song of praise of the congregation of Israel which is Malchut that is crowned above from Bina and Malchut is a part of the writings therefore none of the praises in the world are as pleasing before the Holy One blessed be he as this praise 328 we have learned that Sure a song is one Hashirim and of songs is second and Asher and which is his third this is the secret why the cup of blessing which is Malchut was given and is taken between the right and left hands which is the secret of the two columns right and left Jesus and Gvira it is all inspired toward the king that the pieces is who is the central column Tiferet that corresponds to them and the three mentioned earlier desire ascends in this higher and higher in the secret of the endless light the holy chariot is present here because the patriarchs namely Jesus, Gvira and Tiferet that are mentioned above which is the secret of three songs are the chariot king David joins with them and they are four which is the secret of the supreme holy chariot therefore there are four words in this first passage namely the song of songs which I as Solomon's the secret of the holy complete chariot 329 to further explain the secret sure is the secret of king David being the secret of sure Hashirim are the patriarchs being the secret of the great appointees the proper complete chariot which is Solomon's is the secret of he who rides on this complete chariot namely by the 330 the whole of the secret of forever and ever live from the world and to the world I Abraham and 1636 which means from Bina to Malchut is found in this passage which is the secret of the whole faith it is all a complete chariot for the one who is known and for the one who is not known which is not to be known nor comprehended therefore there are four words in the passage which is the secret of the chariot that is complete from all sides both from the right and from the left from here and further namely higher than Abba and I am a the secret was given over to the sages 331 it also has a deeper secret for we have learned that if one sees grapes in his dream and they are white they are good meaning that the dream alludes to good if they are black and if they are in season meaning the season of grape growing they are good if not in season then mercy is needed because they allude to an evil decree he questions what difference is there if they are white or they are black and what difference is there if they are in season or are not in season we also learn that if one eats the black grapes he is assured to be of the world to come why 332 he answers we have learned that the tree with which Adam sinned was grapes as it is written their grapes are grapes of gall devarim 3232 which are black grapes there are black grapes and white grapes and the white ones are good because they are of the side of life because white alludes to Jesus which is zeir and that is called the tree of life the black ones need mercy because they are of the side of death and because black alludes to the tree of knowledge of good and evil wherein is death in their season meaning when they are ripe they are good even though they are black what is the reason at the time that the white ones dominate everything becomes improved because at that time they all are fixed and everything is nice it is all in the same procedure the white ones and black ones when the white ones are not dominating and it Black ones appear in the dream but not in the growing season of grapes it is known that a decree of death has been decreed against him and he needs mercy for he has seen the tree with which Adam had sent and caused death for himself and the whole world 333 we should make an observation and if Master Rabbi Shimon were not present I would not say this we have learned that this world is similar to the world above and as for the world above everything that is in this world is also in the world above he questions if it is the serpent who brought death to Adam below then why did he bring it above namely to the supreme Adam that is the secret of Zeir and, and Malchut if you say that the light of the woman that is Malchut is lessened as the moon which light is lessened at times and at that time she is considered as though she were dead we should then ask about the male that is Zeir and, and why is death connected to him and also if you say that the moon which is Malchut died by the Council of the serpent which is the lessening of the light we have learned that the lessening of its light was not because of the serpent but rather because the moon said before the holy one blessed be he it is not possible for two kings to use one crown this occurred on the fourth day of creation so we can see that it was not because of the serpent if you say that her husband which is Zeir and is being lessened of the light which is called death heaven forbid that there is lessening above 334 he answers all these are secrets of the Torah and the snake caused a lessening in everything come and see we learned everything that the holy one blessed be he made above and below is all as male and female there are many levels above that are different from each other and from level to level is contained the secret of man the holy one blessed be he made these levels that are the same in the form of one body until they reach the secret of man namely male and female 335 we Learned of the second day of creation that Gehenna was created then and one body was made in the secret of man the six ends of the good that was in clip of Noga and brightness were formed into a body which includes also Malchut as its female its limbs namely the angels that are appointed that are included in IT come close to fire namely to the clip of flaming fire and they die and return to life as before that is because they approached the serpent and this is the supernal Adam who was tempted in his habitation namely by his female that is called habitation tabernacle the tabernacle was enticed by the serpent and therefore he died the serpent caused his death because he approached him and this is exactly like the lower man 336 man always means male and female even in the levels of Atzalut but man who is the supernal holy one namely Zeir and of Atzalut who dominates everything gives life and sustenance to everything even so the strong serpent withheld the light in the entire level of Adam when the tabernacle which I asked the female of that man who is the good part in Noga became impure as we have said she died and the male died too and they returned to life as before therefore everything below is similar to above 337 if one eats these black grapes in his dream then he is certain that he will be part of the world to come it is because he destroys them and he dominates that place namely the clip for he has eaten them overcomes it and grinds it as it is written it devoured and broken pieces Daniel 77 once that strong clip is removed he is closer to the world to come and there is no one to prevent him therefore one who sees in his dream that he ate those black grapes and crushed them is certain to have the world to come 338 similar to this there was no song in the house of David which is Malchut until these black grapes were removed he dominated them and then Shir was recited as we have learned even in this place in Malchut. They are called grapes as it is written I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness Hashia 910 the children of Israel are the aspects of Malchut and these that are in the passage are white grapes 339 the song is superior to all the songs of the ancient all the songs recited by the ancient were equal only to the songs that the angels recited even though they established it in a different manner it is written a song of ascents to David a song of ascents means the songs that those supreme angels say who are divided into grades and levels to whom do they say it to David who is Malchut to request of him food and sustenance 340 another explanation a song of ascents Hebsher Hamalot is as it is written a song to Alamot Tehillim 461 and therefore do the virgins have Alamot love you Shir Hashirim 13 which is the secret of the chambers of Bria that are
ACI come from its Jesid Bura and Tiferet are called great ones, namely first three Sfarat in comparison to its Netzach Hot and Yesid, which are small and the aspect of six extremities. All of them who recited songs had their songs ascend only as high as that song that the Supreme Angels recited, except for King Solomon who ascended with the song to what the Supreme Great Ones, the pillars of the world, Jesid Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and recited all the people of the world their songs. Were in the lower chariots, namely of the Mukba below the chest of Zeir and but King Solomon's song was in the Supreme Chariots in Jesid Bura, Tiferet and Malchut above the chest of Zeir and which are a chariot to buy the 342. If you ask yet Moses ascended by the level of prophecy and love to the Holy One, blessed be he beyond all the inhabitants of the world, would you say that that song which he said pertained to the lower chariots and did not rise higher? He answers, come and see the song. That Moses recited ascended above to Zeir Anpin and not below to Mukba, but he did not recite poetry like King Solomon and no one ascended by a poem like Solomon. 343 Moses ascended with his song above to Zeir Anpin and the purpose of his praise was to give praises and thankfulness to the Supreme King who was Zeir Anpin who saved Israel and performed for them miracles and mighty deeds in Egypt and on the sea. But King David and his son Solomon said songs in a different manner. David endeavored to correct the maidens, namely the chambers of Bria, which are the portions of Netzach and Yezid of Malchut, for without them there are no first three Sfarat to Malchut and to beautify the queen with them, which is Malchut. He did this so that the queen and her maidens should appear in beauty. Therefore he strove through these songs and praises by them until he improved and beautified all the maidens and the queen. 344 As soon as Solomon arrived, he found the queen adorned and her maidens. Beautified, he endeavored to bring her to the groom who was Zeir Anpin and brought the groom to the marriage canopy with the queen, which is the secret of the drawing of the six extremities of greatness. Then he introduced words of love between them in order to join them together, meaning to draw the first three Sfarat of greatness so they would both be as one whole with perfect love. Therefore Solomon surpassed in supreme praise the whole world. 345 Moses bared the queen in this world below. From the chest down of Zeir Anpin, which is only the aspect of six extremities to be in this world in complete union among those below, meaning in the aspects of Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid alone, Solomon joined the queen to a perfect union above, namely from the chest up of Zeir Anpin and brought the groom to the canopy before the marriage. Afterwards, he brought them both into this world into the temple that he built, meaning that he extended the union from the chest down, and so we find that Moses. Drew unto Malchut only the aspect of six extremities, but Solomon drew the first three Sfarat after the six extremities were already prepared by Moses. 346 If you ask how could Moses bring the queen alone to this world since the union was in the aspect of Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid of Zeir Anpin, which belonged to Malchut, and only the aspect of Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet is designated for Zeir Anpin, for it seems like a separation. He answers, Come and see the Holy One, blessed be he first united. Her with Moses, who was a chariot to the aspect of the chest and up of Zeir Anpin, and she was the bride of Moses, as we have learned, as soon as she was united with Moses, and she received from him the sweetness that is above the chest of Zeir Anpin, she descended into the union of this world, which is six ends, and was fixed in this world, which is something she did not achieve beforehand, but she never was separated. 347 But there was not a person in the world since the day that Adam was created. Who brought love and amiability and words of marriage above, except for King Solomon, who prepared the marriage of above from the chest of Zeir Anpin first, for he drew Chakma from there afterwards, he invited them together to the house that he prepared for them, meaning also to the union of the aspect of below the chest to the drawing of Chesedim. Happy are David and his son Solomon, for they prepared the marriage of above, namely in the aspect of the first three Sfarat since the day the Holy One. Blessed be he told the moon which is Malchut, go and diminish yourself. It did not have a complete union with the sun that is Zeir Anpin except when King Solomon came. 348 in Shur Hashirim there are five levels present with which to become joined in the world to come which is by the song is one of songs is two making three which is makes four and Solomon's makes five for there are two levels in the small male and female from the chest down of Zeir Anpin and two levels of the great. Male and female from the chest up of Zeir Anpin and after them is Bina so we find that Bina is in the fifth level for it is the fiftieth day the secret of Jubilee namely Bina 349 come and see Solomon was able to prepare the marriage of above in the aspect of the first three Sfarat only due to the already existing marriage below of the aspect of six ends whose is the marriage of below it is the marriage of Moses for had there not been this marriage beforehand and the marriage above. Would not have been it is all part of the supernal secret for the wise hearted 350 it is written and he spoke 3000 proverbs and his poems were 1005 I Melashim 512 this passage was explained by the friends yet he spoke 3000 proverbs it is certain that every single thing that he said contained 3000 proverbs for example the book of Kahilat is in the supreme secret and is written in a form of parable for it contains no passage that is without supreme wisdom and is allegorical even its smallest verses 351 when Rabham Manasabah the elder the first reached this passage rejoice young man in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth Kahilat 119 he would weep and say certainly this passage is beautiful and it is by way of parable who can expound upon this parable if it is interpreted there is no interpretation that is possible to meditate upon but superficially according to what we see with our eyes if it is Wisdom and who can know it 352 immediately he said again it is written these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old Beersheet 372 this passage of Kahilat is a parable to the wisdom in this passage in the Torah and one is comparable to the other rejoice young man in your youth corresponds to and the lad the passage and let your heart cheer you corresponds to was feeding the flock with his brethren Ibid the passage in the days of your youth corresponds to with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah his father's wives Ibid the passage but know you that for all these things Kahilat 119 corresponds to and Joseph brought to his father their evil report Beersheet 372 the passage Elohim will bring you into judgment corresponds to these are the generations of Jacob Joseph because Joseph is included in Jacob who is called judgment who can know the secrets of the Torah 353 this parable expands to 3000 parables to three Columns and they are all in this parable at the time that Joseph was included in Jacob because there are three thousand in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the secret of Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, which are three columns. Jacob by himself is comprised of them all and by himself has three columns as mentioned before. Therefore, when Joseph was included in Jacob, they were all in Joseph for all of them. All the three columns are in this parable in the secret of wisdom here in the three thousand parables. Many are the merchants who carry the merchandise of mystery, meaning that many wise men have many secrets in this. There are those who carry shields, meaning wear shields against the other side who draw them from the central column, and there is no end to the secrets of wisdom contained here in three hundred and fifty four. And his poems were a thousand and five. This is what we established, and his poems of the parable were eight thousand and five. It is all one whether we say that they are the poems of Solomon or whether we Say they were the poems of the parable, it is all one, and the meaning of it all is that and his poems is Shurhashirim, he questions is Shurhashirim a thousand and five, he answers certainly it is so five are the gates and entrances that open to the king that the peace is his which is Zeir Anpin, they are the five hundred years of the tree of life which is Zeir Anpin, for they are the five Sfarah, Kedar Shachma, Binatifer, and Nad Malchut that are drawn to him from Ima, and they are the fifty years of Jubilee which is Bina that are drawn to Zeir Anpin, three hundred and fifty-five, eight thousand is the tree of life, Zeir Anpin, the groom that emerges from his side which is Yezid that emerges from the tree of life which is Zeir Anpin, inherits all the five that are in the tree of life to bring them to the bride that is Malchut, the day of the Holy One, blessed be he lasts one thousand years, namely when Zeir Anpin close Supreme Abba and Ima, so that each of their Sfarah are in the secret of one thousand and then also the six Sfarat Chesed Bura Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid of Zeir Anpin that are called six days each day in the secret of one thousand years thus even
Chakma, which is Yezid of Malchut, for in it is sealed and revealed supernal Chakma 357. As soon as he made the Holy of Holies below in the temple hidden and concealed, he brought in there the secret of the Holy of Holies, which are the two cherubs in the secret of Zeir Anpin and Malchut that are called Holy of Holies in order to make the mystery of the complete union above in Abba and Ima and below in Zeir Anpin and Malchut in a proper manner. The Holy of Holies above is the secret of supernal Chakma and Jubilee, which is by similarly the groom and bride who are Zeir Anpin and Malchut inherit the inheritance of Abba and Ima, meaning Chakma and Jubilee, and are also called Holy of Holies 358. The inherited possession is returned in a different manner. The inheritance of Abba, which is supernal Chakma, drawn from concealed Chakma of Abba and Ima, is inherited by the daughter who is Malchut, for only in her is Chakma revealed when this holy name ascends, meaning during. The ascension of Malchut that is called name to Abba and Iamay then Chakma is revealed in her and she is also called Holy which is Chakma like Abba the inheritance of Iamay which is Bina which is Jesidim and the secret of because he delights in Chesed Misha 718 is inherited by the son and is called Holies this is because he takes all these supernal holies both the Chakma of Abba and the Jesidim of Iamay and gathers them unto him but the Chakma is covered and only Jesidim dominates. Him therefore it seems that he inherits only from Iamay and not from Abba afterwards he gives them namely Chakma and Jesidim and brings them to the bride who is Malchut and Chakma is revealed in her therefore it seems that she inherits Abba for he possesses supernal Chakma from concealed Chakma of Eric Anpin, that is the source of Chakma therefore she is called Holy after him 359 therefore he said the song of songs song relates to Holy that is Abba of songs to Holies which are Iamay so that everything will be in the secret of Holy of Holies in one secret as appropriate, which is Solomon's, as we have learned that its meaning is which is of the king that the peace is his, which is Zeir Anpin 360. If you say that this praise meaning this smoke mentioned in the Shir Hashirim is of Zeir Anpin, for it says which is Solomon's, that is Zeir Anpin, do not say this, rather the praise ascends to a high place, namely Jubana, but there is a secret in the words which is Solomon's, for when the male and the female are ready together, Zeir Anpin and Malchut under the supernal king who is Bana, then that king who is Zeir Anpin ascends above to Bana and is filled there with all the sanctifications and all the blessings that are drawn down and projects them down, namely to Malchut. This is the desire of the supernal king Zeir Anpin to be filled with sanctifications and blessings to project downwards to Malchut 361. The prayers and beseeching that we say are for. This that the supernal springs Eir Anpin would be fixed and filled when it is prepared properly then from its appearance namely Chakma that is called sight and from the appearance of that fixture namely the preparation of the aspect of the central column the lower world which is Malchut and its maidens which are the chambers of Briar corrected the lower world does not have to be fixed by Bana as in its smallness but by the appearance of the supernal world Eir Anpin and not from Bana. The moon which is Malchut does not appear on its own at all meaning after it was diminished of the lights that it received from Bana except for when it is made ready by the sun that is Eir Anpin and then it shines it is from the light of the sun and it's constructing that the moon is repaired and shines 362 the reason that prayers and petitions are necessary is that the place from which the light emerges which is Eir Anpin should illuminate and become prepared because when that place is Restored then everything below in Malchut is ready from his appearance therefore when Solomon recited the song he did not strive to restore except for the sake of the king that the peace is his which is Zeir Anpin that he will be restored once he is restored everything is mended through his appearance if he is not restored then the moon which is Malchut will never be renewed therefore it is written which is Solomon's who is Zeir Anpin so that he should become restored and full properly as before as we have learned section 32 of every man whose heart prompts him to give when wisdom was drawn down to the world it became entrenched in Malchut in the kingdom on earth and in speech where its purpose was to bring righteousness this world and the supernal angels take nourishment from the spirit of righteousness the text tells of how many times the spirit was removed by the wicked of the world and how many times it was perfected again by Noah by Abraham by Isaac, by Jacob, by Moses, and by Solomon, the Holy One told Moses to make him a tabernacle so that he had a place to dwell among the children of Israel that they bring me an offering refers we are reminded to Shechinah the spirit of Malchud when Solomon came he perfected that spirit of Malchud with the perfection of above of understanding he started to rectify the appearance of the upper world which is Zir Anpin in order to rectify from that the appearance of the lower world which is Malchud this is the meaning of which is Solomon's Solomon represents Zir Anpin the relevance of this passage we can use the story of our repeated cycles of lapsing into sin and then being rectified to illuminate our own world just as often as we are and fall from grace we can also become righteous again through prayer and a renewed effort to succeed the righteous souls of antiquity no Abraham Isaac Jacob Moses Solomon whose own souls outbalance all the souls of the wicked combined are with us now rectifying our iniquities and correcting all the sins of the entire world the sum total of light revealed by all the righteous souls past and present floods our existence prompting the final ascent and redemption of man never again will humanity fall and stumble into darkness for that is the power of the Zohar and because these great sages possess a deep love for their neighbor that shines brighter than a galaxy of stars our ascent is sweetened with immeasurable kindness and compassion for that reason we should take a moment and appreciate this great gift giving thanks to all creation for the opportunity to live during these times 363 that they bring me an offering of every man Shema 252 it is a most secret secret to those who know wisdom that when it entered the will of the secret of secrets that is key to glorify its glory it blew a spirit from the supernal point which is Chakma meaning the spirit of Chakma that is drawn from above down to Malchut. Chakma is revealed in no sphere but Malchut alone and it performed there its rectification in order to settle in this world. Why did it perform this rectification there? It is because if the root and source of this world would not be rectified in Malchut there would be no vessel by which to provide to this world at all. If it would not provide to this world the world would be lost immediately and would not be able to exist even one moment but because it made the rectification in Malchut from this world Malchut is filled from one side to provide this world and from the other side to provide for the supernal angels and they all gain nourishment from it together. 364 The perfecting of the rectification of the spirit which is the light of Malchut as mentioned above is the spirit of the righteous in this world. The spirit was perfected in the time that Enoch and Mahalil were in the world and when the wicked of the world increased that perfection was removed from it from it. Spirit after they perished in the flood Noah came and brought perfection then came the generation of separation and perfection was removed from it from the spirit then Abraham came and perfected it when the people of Sdom came and removed it Isaac came and perfected it the Philistines and the wicked of the generation came and removed the perfection from it then Jacob and his sons came for they were a perfect bed without a flaw and perfected it 365 they went out of the holy land and descended to Egypt and the spirit remained in Egypt for them while their Israel reverted to the actions of the Egyptians the spirit was subdued and that perfection was removed from it until they left Egypt they came to make a tabernacle and the holy one blessed be he said it is my desire to dwell among you but I cannot until you restore that spirit of mine namely the light of Malchut as mentioned above to dwell among you this is what is meant by and let them make me a sanctuary that I may Dwell among them Shema 258 366 This is the secret of the verse that they bring me an offering namely the Shechinah the spirit of Malchut Moses said to the Holy One Blessed be he who can take it and make it he said to him Moses it is not as you think but of every man whose heart prompts him to give meaning that you shall take it and perfect it from their desire and their spirit 367 When Solomon came he perfected that spirit of Malchut with the perfection of above Abana. Because from the time that it was perfected below in the days of Moses that perfection from below was not removed from it when Solomon came he endeavored to perfect it from above and started to rectify the appearance of the upper world which is Zeir Anpin in order to rectify from that appearance the lower world which is Malchut this is the meaning of which is Solomon's who is Zeir Anpin section 33 the kisses first we learned that when the Torah was given to the Children of Israel in the form of the Ten Commandments every commandment made a
Sanctuary of love, the love of the supernal kisses becomes aroused. We are told finally of the most concealed light that illuminates everything and the awakening of the rising of kisses that depends on it. For your loves are better than wine. We learn refers to the living Elohim, which is the wine that gives life and delight to all the relevance of this passage. Ten commandments signify the tense the ten-dimensional structure through which the light of the Creator refracts and flows and root. To our world we connect our souls to the myriad colors, the lights and the sounds that once lit up Sinai brighter than a billion blazing suns love the mysterious force that links us to one another and to God resonates in the supernal sanctuary of love and in our hearts to illuminate all our days and nights. Speak to me of love, says the poet, and I will show you the beginning and the middle and the end of all things and the wellspring of your very existence by truly opening our hearts to this. Message and to the wonders of the Song of Songs this passage furnishes all that God wishes for us, endless life and unending joy along a path teeming with sweetness, tenderness and mercy. The full dimension of Sinai's light is therefore replenished, kissing our souls in an everlasting embrace. 368 And this is the offering Shema 253 We have learned that when the Holy One blessed be he was revealed on Mount Sinai and the Torah was given to Israel with the Ten Commandments every commandment. Made a sound for speech, the secret of Chakma brought forth a sound which is the secret of Chisa. That sound was divided into seventy sounds, and they all illuminated and sparkled before the eyes of all Israel who saw his splendor. I do I, this is what is meant by, and all the people perceived the thundering also see the sounds. Shema 2015 They certainly saw meaning that the Mokin of Chakma was revealed in it, which is the secret of sight, even though essentially it is the secret of Chasidim 369. That sound had three columns and adjured each one of Israel and said to him, Accept me upon you with this many commandments of the Torah, which is the secret of the right column. They said yes, and it turned upside down, rolled over him and adjured him, saying, Accept me upon you with this many punishments of the Torah, which is the secret of the left column, and he would say yes afterwards. That sound returned and kissed him on his mouth. This is what is meant by let him kiss. Me with the kisses of his mouth, Shurhashirim 12, for this is the secret of the central column and the aspect of the first three Sfirah 370. Israel saw everything at that time within one light, namely Malchut, which received within itself all the other lights which are Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet. They long to see it, the Holy One. Blessed be he said to them, The light that you saw at Mount Sinai that received all these colored lights to which you aspired, which is Malchut, you shall receive it. And take it to you, the colors that the light receives are gold, which is Bura, silver, which is Chesed, brass, which is Tiferet, etc., which is the secret of the three columns 371. Another explanation of the passage, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. What did King Solomon see that he brought words of love between the upper world, which is Zeir and the lower world, which is Malchut, the beginning of the praise of love that he brought among them is, let him kiss me, he answers we. Have learned that there is not love of the cleaving of spirit with spirit except through kissing and kissing is with the mouth which is the spring of the spirit or breath and its outlet when they kiss each other the spirits cleave one unto the other and become one and then it is one love 372 in the book of Rabham Nadasaba the elder the first it is said about this passage that a kiss of love spreads in four directions the four directions join together and they are in the secret of faith which is Malchut the four directions come through four letters from which are the letters which form the holy name the upper and lower originate from them and the praise of Shurhashirim come from them who are they they are the four letters of Ahab Allah Hey equals love they are a supernal chariot Chesed and Bura Tiferet and Malchut and they are the connection and cleaving and perfection of everything 373 these four letters Allah Hey and Hey are four spirits they are the four Spirits of love and joy of all the limbs of the body without any sadness at all for when the four spirits are in a kiss each one is combined with the other meaning the spirit of Zeir Anpin is combined with Malchut and the spirit of Malchut is combined with Zeir Anpin when the spirit is included in the other spirit and the other spirit is included in the spirit they become in each one two spirits united meaning the essential spirit and the other which is included in IT then they join in one. Cleaving and therefore in all two of Zeir Anpin and two of Malchut they flow between each other and are included together 374 when their light spreads to this world these four spirits produce one fruit which is a spirit composed of four spirits this one ascends again and splits firmaments until it ascends and sits near a certain sanctuary called the sanctuary of love the sanctuary from whence every love comes that spirit is also called love and when it rises it stimulates that. Sanctuary to become joined above 375 the four letters correspond to the four spirits mentioned above and they are the four letters I have Allah hey, hey equals love because the spirit of Zeir Anpin is Allah and the spirit of Malchut that is included in Zeir Anpin is Hey the spirit of Malchut is Hey and the spirit of Zeir Anpin that is included in Malchut is Bet and their fruit is called love as mentioned earlier when they join with each other Zeir Anpin with Malchut in the joining of kissing they are aroused the one to the aspect of the other the spirit of Malchut becomes stimulated and included in the spirit of Zeir Anpin and the other to the aspect of the former the spirit of Zeir Anpin becomes included in the spirit of Malchut and therefore Allah which is the spirit of Zeir Anpin immediately produces Hey which is the spirit of Malchut that is combined with him and joins with that Allah with cleaving and love and two other letters become aroused Hey which is the spirit of Malchut with that which is the spirit of Zeir Anpin that is included in Malchut spirits are included in spirits with the cleaving of love and these letters Allah hey, hey fly from them and they come with that spirit that ascends as mentioned above which is their fruit therefore it is named love after them and they become adorned with it properly and it is included in those four spirits 376 after that love rises meaning the spirit that is born from the four spirits of the kisses and is combined with all those four spirits it meets a supernal minister the officer that is appointed over 1990 firmaments he is appointed over the flows that are drawn from the 13 rivers of the pure balsam trees that are drawn from the supernal dew and those flows which are the secret of the lights of Chesedim are called many waters when the spirit meets that officer of the camps he stands against it but cannot detain it so if the rivers of pure balsam crosses over through them until it Enters the sanctuary of love 377 referring to the Solomon said at the end of his praise of Shur Hashirim, many waters cannot quench love Shur Hashirim 87 many waters these are the supernal waters that are drawn from the supernal do meaning the many Shesedim while nor can the floods drown it of it are the rivers of pure balsam which are 13 and all those do not extinguish the great love of the right to the left as mentioned earlier that minister is an angel a messenger from Hashem and he is the head of the camps that puts crowns to his master it is the secret of ACH Daril who fashions crowns for his master with the engraved name Yadhe Vav Hey 378 when the spirit enters the sanctuary of love the love of the supernal kisses of Zeir Anpin and Malchut of Atzala is aroused as it is written and Jacob kissed Rachel Beershi 2911 so that the kisses of the supernal love will be done properly these kisses are the beginning of the arousal of every Love cleaving and bond of above therefore the beginning of the praise of the song is let him kiss me 379 he questions to whom was it said let him kiss me he answers it is that which is concealed in the most high concealment which is supernal Abba and I am a that are both called Abba if you ask yet the most concealed of all which is Eric and supernal whence are all the kisses does he kiss downwards towards Malchut come and see the most concealed of all which is Eric and there is no one who knows it and it revealed of itself one delicate and concealed light which is Abba that was not revealed except for one delicate path that spread from it to illuminate I am a this is the light that illuminates everything it is the stimulator of all the supernal secrets and is concealed sometimes it is concealed and sometimes revealed even though it is not revealed at all and the awakening of the rising of kisses depends on it it is concealed therefore the praise starts in a concealed way that he says let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth which is in the third person 380 he questions the kisses are dependent upon Abba if so what is Jacob doing here who is Zeir and if the kisses are dependent upon Abba and why does it say and Jacob kisses Rachel he answers but certainly it is so that Jacob is the one who kisses because let him kiss me alludes to that which is concealed above which is Abba but in what way through that supernal chariot from which all the colors originate and to which they are all attached this
and illuminates upon the moon these lights that are attached in it from which place do they illuminate the passage repeats and says that also from one meaning from that preserved one from that one which is the delight of all the delights what is that one that gives life and delight to everyone this is living elohim which is bana which is the one that gives life and happiness to all and it is the illumination of shakma that is drawn from the left column of bana that is combined with the right 382 another explanation of from one it is from that name that is called yudhe vavhe meaning yudhe vavhe fully spelled with yuds which numerically equals 72 which is the secret of 70 judges of the sanhedrin and two witnesses 70 being the numerical value of yin and one for this is the one of joy love and mercy from which all illuminate and rejoice the friends came and kissed rabbi yosi on his head 383 rabbi shimon with and said i know for sure that the Holy Spirit pulsates and throbs in you. Blessed is this generation, for there will not be another generation like it until the time when King Messiah comes, when the Torah returns to its original glory. Blessed are the righteous in this world and in the world to come. Section 34. And this is the offering. Rabbi Lazar tells us that the passage and this is the offering which you shall take of them is difficult to understand, both in the literal meaning and the hidden one. And indeed, the explanatory text seems to confuse it further. First correspondences are drawn between angels Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael Boel when he is in the seat of judgment, protecting angels, attending seraphim, and the gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet, and all of the other offerings. Each of these also has aspects of the Sfirot. We read of oil of the light and oil for the light, which are the luminaries of the upper world, which is male and dominates by day, and the lower world, which is female and dominates by night. We read of the seven types of gold and of silver and brass and again of the other offerings in the context of the Sfirot and we learn that it is gold which predominates the relevance of this passage. These verses delve deeply into the mysteries of the Torah for the literal text is devoid of practical meaning and filled with contradiction. Accordingly we acquire the consciousness and powers of observation to penetrate beyond the surface level of our existence on a cosmic scale. All is now revealed the hidden meaning of life, the cause behind the effect, the seed that precedes the tree, the beauty beneath the surface and the secrets of the Torah. No longer can life seem as senseless and contradictory as the illusory stories of the Torah. 384 And this is the offering which you shall take of them. Shema 253 Rabbi Lazar said we have established this passage and we have already learned its secrets that offering is the secret of Malchut as mentioned but the Secret of and this is the offering I have learned this way and the passages are difficult if they are interpreted according to the secret of below meaning according to the literal meaning they are conflicting but if according to the secret of above that offering means the Shechina they are not clear because it is written speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering Shema 252 and this is understood for the purposes that it is not by them but they have to bring it. Afterwards it is said of every man whose heart prompts him to give you shall take my offering is difficult for here it seems that the offering is already in their possession and others have to take it from the children of Israel and so also the passage and this is the offering which you shall take of them is difficult for it also means that the offering is already in their possession everything is difficult for certain both above and below namely both according to the literal meaning and the hidden even according to the literal meaning it is difficult for first it says that the children of Israel should bring and afterwards it says that you shall take of them 385 he answers this is the explanation of that they bring me an offering who the children of Israel of every man these are the supernal angels above from Alchud is an offering had to the meaning of raising have for they are constantly raising it before the supernal king Zeir and then they raise it to be united with the supernal king which is the secret of the four living creatures that carry the throne which is the secret of the four angels Michael Gabriel Uriel, and Revile when Israel are righteous they take the Sheshina from above angels and bring her down this is the meaning of, of every man whose heart prompts him to give who are they they are these four namely Michael Gabriel Uriel, and Revile who raised her above whose heart prompts him to give means that that heart which is Malchut favors them and that offering which is the Shechina is carried by them 386 even though the Shechina stands over them and dwells upon them on the angels you shall take her from them to lower her down and how in this time we lower her with good deeds with prayers and beseeching and by fulfilling the commandments of the Torah at that time when the tabernacle was being built it was through the colors gold silver that appear below similar to above meaning like the supernal Sfirot and other services these colors draw below that offering which is the Shechina and the colors of below triumph over the colors of above which are the Sfirot the colors of below drew the colors of above and they entered these into those and those of below became the body for those of above referring to this it is written you shall take of them 387 gold that is comprised in Gabriel is gold above meaning the spheric viewer and Gabriel takes it below this gold is divided below into seven types of gold which are greenish gold the gold of Ophir the gold precious gold pure gold barrel gold silver is above meaning the sphere of Chesed and is comprised in Michael below and they dwell upon each other brass is above namely the sphere of Tiferet and it emerges from gold for Tiferet emerges from pure gold and fire pertains to the same mystery as both are pure and the fire produced brass and because of this power and strength fiery serpents were spread that emerged from fire therefore brass is red like fire is comprised in Uriel and becomes a body for him 388 blue dwells in both brass and gold which includes the judgments in Tiferet which is brass and in pure which is gold it prevails on two sides therefore blue is severe in judgments and none can rule to transform it into life if he sees the color blue in his dream it is the seat of judgment where severe judgment dwells it is the angel Boel as it is written and an L who has indignation every day title him 712 when people Repenting complete repentance his name returns to revile because remedy is prepared for them from that severe judgment 389 purple is gold and silver which are pure and chesed that return to be combined together which are Michael and Gabriel that are combined and fitted together it is written he makes peace in his high places EO 252 because they are fitted together they become one body which is purple and it corresponds to the sphere Netzach because in Netzach pure and chesed rule. Together 390 scarlet is above in the sphere hot and comprised below in Uriel as we said earlier that the one becomes a body for the other so as to be attached to blue and purple which are Malchut and Netzach linen is above in the sphere of Yezid and is comprised as we said in the secret of revile and the one becomes a body for the other so as to be attached to silver and gold which are chesed and pure 391 until here is the secret of the seven pillars of above which are chesed pure. Typhoret net sash hot and yes it is mentioned earlier within seven pillars of below which are gold and silver and brass etc shell within shell meaning that they are covered by each other and those of below become a covering over these of above as a protection we have established that these seven pillars are inner side of the inner meaning that they are all internal and goat's hair is a cover to the inner meaning that it is external 392 and ramskins dyed red shema 255 these are the protecting angels who protect against the other side and have eyes that place flames of fire as it is written and his eyes like torches of fire daniel 106 they are called firmaments and are outside within the covering head clipper and badger skins shema 255 these are inside in the holy side and they are joined in holiness yet are not attached as we said 393 and acacia would have we have established that they are attending seraphim as it is written seraphim stood above him Yashiach. 62 for they are in the world Briah he questions what is the meaning of above him he answers it is above that covering meaning that no clip dominates them by being above them and the judgments do not blemish above the place of their existence so they are in the secret of acacia wood if you ask whether this passage refers to the holy one blessed be he and that above him means above the holy one blessed be he it is not so for we have learned I saw Hashem Ibn 1 the particle et and is exact which means that he saw Malchut that is called et similar to this it is written in this passage and his train filled the temple of it et is exact in that it came to include that clip meaning that his train fills and annuls that clip that corresponds to Malchut that is called et since it said and mentioned the secret of that clip it wrote seraphim stood above him meaning above that clip 394 oil for the light Shema 256 this is the oil of supernal greatness that comes from above from Abba and Ima there are two kinds of oil and there are two levels one is above in Abba and Ima and is called oil of the light and one below is called oil for the light oil of the light is supernal that the oil is assuredly always in it and never stops it is
Attached lower world is included in it and is also called great therefore it is written the two great luminaries 396 when they are separated from each other each one individually is referred to in a proper way for it this one is called great and this one is called small the early sages said that a person should rather be a tail to lions than a head to foxes because when Malchute stood among the lions which are the Sfirat of Atzalut she is named entirely as the lions as the tail of a lion is yet a lion inseparably if Malchute is among the foxes which are the Sfirat of Bria meaning after she was lessened and descended to Bria even though she is the head of the fox the head of the fox is yet a fox inseparably and is called a fox because she becomes crown of Bria 397 this is the secret of oil of the light because when Zeir Anpin and Malchute sat together at first they were called the two great luminaries even though Malchute was the tail to the above Zeir Anpin. When Malchute separated from the above to be the head to the foxes so to speak she is called small according to the secret the oil of the light never stops and abides in the upper level to dominate by day which is Zeir Anpin oil for the light his light is interrupted and is called small and dominates at night meaning Malchute 398 it is written spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense Shema 256 meaning five kinds of spices are put into the oil and five into the incense. Even though it is one that is it seems from the passage that there is one kind of spice for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense yet still in all there are two distinctive kinds of spices five kinds for the oil which are the best spices pure myrrh sweet cinnamon sweet calamus and cashew the five kinds for incense are storax onyx galbanum sweet spices and pure frankincense and the sweet spices comprise them all but are not counted and it is all one for the unite and become one onyx. Stones Shema 257 they are all together 13 meaning 12 stones to be set and the onyx stones equal 13 they are the adornments of the tabernacle which is Malchute that become adorned in the secret of 13 which receives from the 12 acronyms of Yudha Bob Hay of Zeir Anpin with the inclusion 399 let us return to the original subject we have learned that there are 7 kinds of gold and if you ask gold is judgment meaning Vira and silver is mercy which is Chisid yet. Gold has risen above it meaning that the judgment has been sweetened so much that Vira is more valuable than Chisid it is not so and assuredly gold is more important than all of them yet gold is mentioned in the ordinary meaning and not that it has risen more than Chisid though sweetening that is supernal gold meaning Bina because of the Vira that is in IT which is the seventh of all kinds of gold this is the gold that lights and glistens before the eyes the six lower kinds of silver are. In Zeir Anpin and because of this when it emerges to the world one who acquires it hides it by him from that all types of gold emerge and are drawn 400 when is something that is called gold so called it is when it is lit by the shining light and rises in glory of fear which are the judgments of the left column that were sweetened and became the causes of the drawing of Chakma and the fear was turned to be rest and glory it abides in supernal joy to make the lower ones rejoice with its light when it is in judgment meaning under the domination of the left only meaning when it is changed from the color gold to the color blue or black or red then it is under severe judgment but gold is in joy and is found when the fear ascends to joy as mentioned above and with the arousing of joy 401 silver is lower than gold for it is the secret of the right arm of Zeir Anpin that is Jesus because the supernal head is of gold that is by as mentioned as it is written you are this head. A gold Daniel 238 and its breast and its arms of silver of it 32 when the silver is complete it is included in the gold this is the secret of apples of gold in ornaments of silver Michelet 2511 so we find that when the silver reverts to gold meaning that the silver ornaments become gold its place is perfected therefore since the gold is bina there are seven types of gold because bina comprises the lower seven spira 402 brass comes from gold and changes to become inferior to it. Because it is the left arm namely pure and blue is the left thigh namely hot scarlet is the right thigh namely net sash and is combined in the left and linen is the river that is drawn and flows which is yes and is called linen hebshish because it takes and combines in itself all the six hebshish extremities it is similar below in Malchute and also alludes to her spira we have already established it and learned it and this is different from what was explained above 403 there are. Year 7 of Jubilee which is Bina that includes the six sides of Zeir Anpin which are gold, silver, brass, blue, purple and scarlet these are the seven of sabbatical year which is Malchute that also includes these seven kinds that correspond to Bina and the six sides Chisid, Bira, Typharet, Net, Sach, Hot and Yezid as mentioned even though they are six except for Bina they are thirteen with the seventh which is Bina namely Chisid, Bira, Typharet, Net, Sach, Hot and Yezid of Zeir Anpin and Chisid, Bira, Typharet, Net, Sach, Hot and Yezid of Malchute which are twelve and Bina herself which is the head over them equals thirteen the head that is placed on the whole body below in Malchute and the head that stands over all the limbs of the body of Zeir Anpin is of gold what is the difference between the head that is on Zeir Anpin and the head of Malchute is because the supernal gold that is on Zeir Anpin is in a concealed secret and its name is purely closed gold because it is closed and concealed. From everything therefore it is called closed for it is closed to the eye that cannot take hold of it but the lower gold that is in Malchut is more revealed and is named greenish gold the end of this paragraph is missing and is found in the new Zohar section 35 Moses Aaron and Samuel Moses Aaron and Samuel we learn here were three faithful prophets who served in priesthood Zachariah and Jeremiah were also priests and prophets but did not merit the high supernal level of Aaron we are reminded that Moses was able to call and God would answer him immediately Samuel was similarly blessed and being very young also merited the level of youth the relevance of this passage we read here of the faithful prophets of a long ago time and in doing so we receive the gift of prophecy prophecy viewed through the lens of Kabbalah is understood as the ability to perceive the future consequences of our present deeds thus as we reflect upon the names of the prophets are Spiritual awareness and foresight are magnified so that we have vision to always see the end in the beginning this leads to courage to offer compassion to our friends and foes and wisdom to refrain from intolerance in turn we are granted a prophetic vision of our immediate future it is blessed with global peace and tranquility through a miraculously merciful redemption that exemplifies and honors the sanctity of the Zohar and though many parallel universes exist some with pain others with compassion it is this universe of peaceful redemption that now becomes our reality 404 here the beginning of the essay is missing and it is in the new Zohar end of Truma PG 43 where it is said that Aaron merited priesthood and prophecy as no other priest merited and he asks Yetzekari was a priest and a prophet as it says concerning him shall priest and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of Adonai each 220 his answer is written here it was for that time and not for all generations as Written and the spirit of Elohim came upon Zechariah WH why do you transgress the commandment of Hashem to Debrahim 2420 meaning only temporarily if you ask what about Jeremiah of whom it is written before I formed you in the belly I knew you your May 15 so we see that he was a priest and prophet and so there are others and not only Aaron he answers but they all did not merit prophecy and priesthood like Aaron because Aaron merited supernal prophecy above all the other priests and he merited supernal priesthood above them all being high priest 405 Moses merited prophecy and served in supernal priesthood namely during the seven days of consecration and so also Samuel merited them both as it is said about him and Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering Ishmael 79 just as Moses would call and the Holy One blessed be he would answer him immediately it is also written of Samuel is it not we harvest today I will call to Hashem that he shall Sent thunder and rain Ishmael 1217 yet he did not rise to such a high level as Moses as Aaron served before the Holy One blessed be he Samuel also served before the Holy One blessed be he but did not ascend to highest service to be a high priest like Aaron 406 the theory is this there were three who were faithful prophets and served in priesthood Moses is one Aaron is one and Samuel is one if you say that Samuel did not continue in priesthood but there was another who served in priesthood who is Jeremiah who was a priest it is not so for it is written of the priests who were in an Edo Yermaya 11 he was of the priests but he did not serve in the priesthood but Samuel served in the days of Eli as it is written and the child Samuel ministered to Hashem before Eli Ishmael 31 and Moses served one time namely
and was driven from the Garden of Eden because of its influence. The relevance of this passage as brass is a mixture of metals not as pure as our gold and silver. Man is a mixture of good and evil. The spiritual force emitted here generates thrust unalterably tilting the scales of human nature toward the side of good, subjugating our evil tendencies and unleashing the power of our soul. The serpent, the Satan, is both a global phenomenon and a distinct part of our being. They are connected. Hence, as we lay waste to the influence of our inner evil inclination, we annihilate the universal serpent concurrently, thereby abolishing darkness from the world. 408. The cherubs were of gold, as we have established, because they are from the side of gold, which is the secret of fear that changed into glory. Neither silver nor any other color is mixed in with them. This is greenish gold, namely the gold that is at the head of Malchut, that is called thus in the tabernacle. The colors gold and silver are mixed. In order to go together for silver and gold are then right and left combined with each other so that the supernal secret shall be in one also mixed with them is brass which is tied for it to be with them and to go with them to all the sides namely all three columns right left central so that there will be perfection in all of them as one as it is written gold and silver and brass Shema 253 409 another explanation for gold and silver is that gold reverts to silver and silver reverts to gold for the right column which is silver is combined in the left column which is gold and similarly gold with silver it is all combined together and in one place they have returned into three colors when joy is needed and not judgment it is gold left column when mercy is needed meaning she said it is silver right side and when the severity of judgment is needed in order to subdue the left so that it should unite with the right is brass which is the secret of tie for at the central column 410 This is how Moses viewed the work of the brass serpent for it is written and Moses made a serpent of brass Bimid bar 219 H. He knew the place of the melting of the gold meaning the subjugation of the left side to the right through the judgments of that brass which is the central column because the serpent had nakash is derived from brass had nakoshe he knew its place because the holy one blessed be he just told him to make a fiery serpent yet he made a brass serpent as is written and Moses made a serpent of brass what is the reason 411 he answers Hashem knew that was the essence of the matter because it was first written and Hashem sent venomous serpents lit fiery serpents and snakes among the people of its six and venomous serpents have nakash and saraf the bar made 115 because their origin was the primordial serpent since Moses knew the essence and root and foundation of that place he made a serpent and laid his hands upon it what is the reason because Israel sinned with their tongue just like the serpent as it is written and the people spoke against Elohim and against Moses Bimidbar 215 therefore Hashem sent venomous serpents among the people 412 Moses only followed the source which is the serpent and made a brass serpent in the manner needed because its place was brass the holy one blessed be he did not tell him what form to make it and Moses made it from brass as was necessary for its place how do we know that for it is written and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole nine. what is upon a pole meaning on that mark that is above which is the secret of the judgments of the central column where their place is 413 we have learned that the serpent always imitates the woman of valor which is Malchut the woman of harlotry the clipper wants to adorn herself similarly to the woman of valor but cannot the mark and letter of the woman of valor is the letter hey and so it befits her the mark and letter of the woman of Harlotry has to be similar meaning hey but she is not able to her letter is cut because her letter was prepared in the same manner as the letter hey just like a monkey had caught by humans for he follows humans to imitate them but cannot do so in the same way Moses made that serpent on the mark that befits it it is always ready to do evil Adam sinned because of it and was driven from the garden of Eden where his dwelling place resembled the dwelling place above section 37 let there be light Rabbi Yussi explains here that the light spoken of is concealed and illuminates only the righteous it has no purpose in the world Rabbi Yehuda says that the world is sustained by that light which is concealed yet so like a seed a thread of this light emerges wherever people are studying Torah yet the creator will command his steadfast love in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me when Moses erected the tabernacle a thread of this light emerged to form a cloud over the tent of meeting and it is what renews the creation daily even now Rabbi Yossi then comments on so he said it before them and they ate and left some of it over according to the word of the creator which we learn means that whoever hears these teachings always finds new meaning and inspiration in them the relevance of this passage the primordial light spoken of in the phrase let there be light illuminates us bringing spiritual renewal and transformation to the world for the first time in human history myriad threads of light are drawn and woven into a blanket that envelopes warms and unites all mankind as our eyes embrace these ancient texts that shine with such splendid spiritual power 414 it is written and Elohim said let there be light and there was light Beersheet 13 Rabbi Yossi said this light was concealed and it is designated for the righteous in the world to come we have established this according to the words light is sown for the righteous Tehillim 9711 for the righteous certainly with no attributes for it illuminates to the righteous above and to the righteous below that light did not serve a purpose in the world except for the first day and afterwards was concealed and served no more 415 Rabbi Yehuda said had it been concealed completely the world could not exist even one moment but rather it was concealed and sown like the seed that is sown and it produced offspring and plants and fruit the world is sustained from it. There is not even one day from which nothing comes into the world to maintain everything because the Holy One blessed be he sustains the world with it a thread of that concealed light emerges wherever that people are occupied with Torah during the night and it is drawn upon those that are occupied with Torah this is what is meant by yet Hashem will command his steadfast love in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me Tehillim 429 as we have already established 416 on it. Day the tabernacle was erected below it is written and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of meeting because the cloud rested on it. Shema 4035 What is the cloud? He answers a thread emerged from the side of the primordial light with great joy and entered the tabernacle below and from that day onward it did not appear again but it does a service in the world in renewing daily the work of creation. 417 Rabbi Yossi was occupied with Torah and Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Shizkiah were with him. Rabbi Yitzhak said behold we see that the work of the tabernacle is similar to the work of the creation of heaven and earth. The friends have already commented about their secrets such a tiny bit that a man cannot eat with his mouth and stretch his hand to his mouth and swallow meaning they have revealed such a small amount that it is impossible to taste it and be satisfied with it. 418 Rabbi Yossi said let us raise up these issues before the holy luminary that prepares sweet dishes. Just like the most concealed Atika Kaddisha does he prepares such dishes that there is no room for another to come and add salt to them one can eat and drink and fill his stomach with all the delicacies in the world and still leave over meaning that when he hears them he understands them clearly enough yet still in all he will leave over some and will not draw everything that they contain whenever he reviews them he finds new ideas of which he was not previously aware here is fulfilled so he set it before them and they ate and left some of it over according to the word of Hashem 2 Melashim 444 section 38 and Hashem gave Solomon wisdom Rabbi Yossi opens the discussion by saying and the creator gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him and there was peace between Kyram and Solomon and they two made a league together King Solomon saw that even though his generation was highly spiritualized it was still not time to reveal to them all the wisdom of it. Torah yet in the time of Rabbi Shimon we learned such concealed things were allowed to be revealed Rabbi Yossi then worries about how future generations of the world will fare after Rabbi Shimon departs when wise sages are few and far between and when even wisdom itself is forgotten the relevance of this passage the wisdom of Solomon is no longer found in the world's rulers and politicians who make only war not peace by reading this passage however we summon forth Solomon's great wisdom and the piety and righteousness of Rabbi Shimon and his entire generation this spiritual happening reveals to us the secret wisdom of the Torah now instead of later this great light removes conflict and hatred from the hearts of powerful men it stirs truth and compassion in the souls of leaders warming them to the true spiritual wisdom and the sphere of influence of the righteous and the wisdom of Solomon extend to the four corners of the globe 419 he opened the discussion saying and Hashem gave Solomon wisdom as he promised him and there was peace between Kyram and Solomon and they two made a league together. I may 526 we have learned this passage in many places but and Hashem
should be revealed through it and that the Torah that was concealed before it would be revealed and he came and opened doors even though he opened they are clogged except for those sages who had merit they stammer in them and cannot speak about them but it is the desire of the Holy One blessed be he that for the sake of Rabbi Shimon through the generation in which he lives concealed things should be revealed 422 but I wonder about the sages of the generation how can they even for one moment forsake standing before Rabbi Shimon and studying Torah as long as Rabbi Shimon is in this world in this generation wisdom will not be forgotten from the world woe to the generation when he departs and sages will become fewer and wisdom will be forgotten from the world section 39 blue Rabbi Itzhak here relates how he once saw Rabbi Shimon speaking about the Torah when a pillar of cloud and a light within the pillar appeared from the sky the same thing of Course had once been written about Moses Rabbi Yitzhak goes on to speak of the second day of creation whose aspect is blue on that same day we learned Gehenom was created emerging from the center of the fire and with it the emergence of black and filth mire and dirt the relevance of this passage when blue is an aspect of creation it is time for judgment drawing upon the merit of Moses and the immeasurable light of Rabbi Shimon we annul harsh adjudications and decrees that have been set forth against mankind we shift the entire world to a destiny of redemption that personifies mercy and miracles for this is the wish hope and prayer of Moses and Rabbi Shimon and that is the great power of the Zohar 423 Rabbi Yitzhak said indeed it is so because one day I was going with him on the road and he opened his mouth with Torah I saw a pillar of cloud standing from above down and there was a light shining in the pillar I became very frightened and I said blessed is the man that this is Prepared for him in this world 424 it is written about Moses and all the people saw the pillar of cloud stand at the door of the tent and all the people rose and worshipped every man in his tent door Shema 3310 it was appropriate for Moses who was a faithful prophet above all the prophets of the world that generation that received the Torah on Mount Sinai I saw many miracles and many mighty acts in Egypt and by the sea therefore it is justified that they see the pillar of cloud herein. This generation the great merit of Rabbi Shimon accomplished this that miracles should be seen through him 425 and blue Shema 253 Rabbi Yitzhak said blue is from that fish that is in the sea genus which is the sea of Galilee which is in the portion of Zebulon this color is needed for the work of the tabernacle to show this color as it is written before US 426 he opened the discussion saying and Elohim said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide. Water from water bear sheet 16 this firmament was created on the second day which is the left column because the work of firmament is from the left side on the second day which is the left side Gehenom was created which emerges from the center of the fire of the left with it the sea was colored with the blue color which is the throne of judgment meaning Malchud went in the aspect of judgment 427 this day which is left took water which is of the right side because water is chesed in these waters of the right were not revealed until the second day which is left on this day of the right which is the first day the water was not revealed but rather it changed for the light of the side of fire that pertains to the left was revealed in it as explained before us that is because they were combined together and became perfumed the one by the other and he explains the light of the first day was the first light of all the six lights of the six days of creation this light was on the side of Fire as it is written and the light of Israel shall be for a fire Yeshayah 1017, that light essentially is right and is combined with fire which is left 428 the first day of these six days is water which is chesed yet it was not the action of water that was made use of but that of light which is from the side of fire which is the second day that was to show that the Holy One blessed be he created the world only upon peace meaning by the combination of the right column and the left column with each other through the third column that makes peace between them everything was by way of peace and therefore everything that the first day did was done from the side of his neighbor the second day the second day that craftsmen worked on the side of the first day because each one performed the actions of its neighbor to show that they were combined together the third day which is the central column was from the side of both of them for it combines two columns and it was purple whose color is a mixture of white and red which are right and left therefore it is written twice that it was good Bereshit 14 on the third day for it corresponds to the two columns that are combined in IT 429 blue which is Malchut from the side of judgment is the aspect of the second day and it is colored with two colors red and black blue took its red from the very second day for red is like the color of fire this is Elohim that is the secret of Bina and is the secret of Bura of Zeir and the color gold inherits for it is all one color because the color gold is similar to fire only that fire is in smallness and gold is in greatness blue emerges from the color red and when it goes down the color red becomes distant and enters that place which is a sea meaning Malchut where it is dyed with the color blue meaning that it mixes with the color black and becomes blue that red enters the sea and the color becomes diluted and returns to the color blue this is Elohim which is Malchut but its judgment is not strong like at first referring to the name Elohim which is in the left of Zeir and 430 the color black emerges from the meltdown of red when it melts and become weakened below in the melting of the filth namely the filth of the serpent and goes down first there emerges from that filth the color red from strong filth because of the hard filth it again turns into the color black so we find that it is all drawn from the original red that is in it. Left column because it was smitten all this was created in the second day and this filth is called other Elohim 431 this black is so dark that its color is not observed from within the darkness the holy luminary who is Rabbi Shimon said so this color black and this darkness where was it colored he said when this red was melted in the blue and the colors red and blue mixed the essence of the filth melted into the abysses mire and dirt were formed there as it is written and whose waters Cast of mire and dirt, Yeshayah 5720, the darkness which is black emerged from the stirred of the abysses which is not really so black as much as it is very dark. This is what is meant by, and darkness was on the face of the deep bear sheet 12. Why is it called darkness? Because its color is darkness and it darkened the faces of the creatures, which is the secret of the filth of the serpent that caused death to creatures. This is the blue which is red and black, therefore it is not written in it. Second day that it was good, section 40, and behold, it was very good. Rabbi Yitzhak here explains why the angel of death is very good because fear of the angel and the mystery of death causes people to repent. And he tells us, Rabbi Shimon taught him that the angel of death is more important than the angel of life. The Elohim we learn created Adam who afterwards sinned and was banished from the Garden of Eden, and the Creator Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. Similar to the supernal Garden of Eden above there follows a glorious description of the Garden of Eden which is the abode of the Holy Spirits both those who have already come to this world and those that have not yet come to this world all these spirits we are told are clothed in garments and have bodies and faces similar to the ones we have in this world when the time comes to leave this world the angel of death strips the spirit of these garments so that he can return to the Garden of Eden and rejoin his other body there he can rejoice and observe the secrets he was unable to see when he was in this body the wicked of the world who do not repent however are not given this other body but are judged in Gehenom of the earth hell a few who contemplated repentance in their hearts but died before they could repent rise from that fire we learn finally there is no good intention that is lost before God but that those who did not think of repentance descend into Sheol never to reappear the relevance of this passage fear of death is a potent thing that affects people deeply the angel of death is portrayed in black with the sickle and the sight of this dark entity can cause an awakening of our desire to correct our sins and pursue the path of spirituality here we achieve repentance through the purifying forces that light up this passage this act of repentance is shared with all mankind ending the reign of the angel of death and ensuring a sweet and merciful final redemption in our lifetime 432 and if you ask yet it is written and behold it was very good bear sheet 131 which is the angel of death and here you say that it was not written because of him that it was good and before he answers the secret of secrets is here certainly the angel of death is very good what is the reason it is because all the people of the world know that they will die and return to dust therefore there are many who repent to their master because of this fear and fear to sin before him many are those who fear the king because the whips are hanging before them how good is a whip for people for it makes them good and true and improve their ways properly therefore and behold it was very good very good indeed 433 the secret of secrets that I learned from the holy luminary and behold it was good is the angel of life and very is the angel of death who is more important why is the angel of death very good he
Forms and images of this world meaning the spirits of people are formed and carved and engraved there all of them similar to the way they were in this world. 435. This place is the abode of the Holy Spirits both those who have already come to this world and those that have not yet come to this world as well as those who are going to come to this world. They are all spirits that are clothed in garments and bodies and faces similar to this world and they behold there the splendid glory of their master until they come to this world. 436. At the time that they go out from there to come to this world the spirits separate from that body and the garment of the Garden of Eden and attire themselves in the body and garment of this world they make their dwelling place in this world in this garment and body which is from a future drop. 437. When the time comes to go and leave this world it does not go out until the angel of death strips the spirit of this garment when the body has been. Stripped from the spirit by the angel of death, the spirit goes and becomes attired with the other body that is in the Garden of Eden, which was removed from it when it came into this world. The spirit has no joy except in that body that is there. It rejoices that it was stripped from the body of this world and was clothed in a different garment, which is complete from the Garden of Eden, which is similar to this world. It sits in it and observes in order to know the supernal secrets that it was not able to know and view when it was in this world. In this body, 438, when the soul becomes attired with the garment of that world, it has there many delights and delicacies who cause the spirit to be attired with this body that is in the Garden of Eden. Some say it is the one who removed from it the garments of this world, for he is the angel of death. So we see that the angel of death is very good. The Holy One, blessed be he, does kindness by the creatures, for he does not remove from the person. The clothes of this world before he prepares for him other garments more precious and better than these in the garden of Eden 439 except for those wicked of the world who do not repent with complete repentance to their master for naked did they come into this world and naked do they return there the soul goes in embarrassment of the other souls because it has no clothes at all and it is punished in the terrestrial Gehenna with the fire from above there are some among them who break through in Gehenna and immediately rise these are the wicked of the world who contemplated repentance in their hearts but died before they could repent these are judged there in Gehenna and will afterwards break through and rise 440 see how great is the mercy of the holy one blessed be he with his creations for even if one is exceedingly wicked and has contemplated repentance but died before he could repent he certainly receives punishment for leaving the world without repentance but afterwards that desire that he placed in his heart to repent is not absent before the supernal king and the holy one blessed be he prepares a place for that wicked one in the den of the sheol from which he breaks through in repentance because that desire descends before the holy one blessed be he and breaks all the powers of the guards of the gates of the chambers of Gehenna and reaches that place where the wicked man is it strikes him and awakens in him that desire to repent as he had beforehand during his life then that soul presses to ascend from the chamber of Gehenna 441 there is no good intention that is lost before the holy king therefore blessed is he who thinks good thoughts to his master even though he cannot do them the holy one blessed be he considers his desire as though he actually performed it this is for good but the desire for evil the holy one blessed be he does not consider as actually done except for thoughts of idol worshiping and the friends have already established this 442 those that did not think of repentance descend into the Sheol and do not ascend from there for generations and generations about them it is written as the cloud is consumed and vanishes away so he who goes down to Sheol shall come up no more. Yo 79 about the former it is written Hashem kills and gives life he brings down to Sheol and brings up by Shmuel 26 section 41 punishment in Gehenna Rabbi Yehuda begins this discussion by saying that the fire of Gehenna was extinguished until the evil inclination appeared that it burns only with the strength of the heat of the evil inclination of the wicked the text then lists the seven types of wicked people each of whom has a chamber in Gehenna an angel rules over that place under the guidance of Duma and thousands of angels with him judge the wicked on the Shabbat those who observe Shabbat have rest from their punishments but those who did not observe it continue to burn Rabbi Yehuda next tells us that the body in the grave is judged until it is decomposed, and this is true for the righteous as well as well as the wicked only a very few people are worthy to raise their souls immediately and these few may therefore be buried in a coffin he adds that Moses Aaron and Miriam did not die by the hand of the destroying angel but rather by the hand of God those who die in the holy land do not die by the hand of the destroyer but by the hand of the angel of mercy those who die outside of the holy land we are told are called carcasses because the other side dwells upon them the rabbi finally explains the four pairs of tenants in Chevron who are not dead but just sleeping and are thus hidden in the entrance to the garden of Eden the relevance of this passage the fires of hell we are told burn only with the strength of the heat of the evil inclination of the wicked the wicked are thus complicit in their own punishment creating by their very sins the fires in which they are burned our meditation cools down the hellish fires and when we pour just a little love into this mixture the light of the Zohar extinguishes these fires eternally the evil inclination that dwells in our hearts burns away writing us the complete assistance of the angel of mercy as we ascend from this world into the next we ignite a global spiritual transformation and both angels death and mercy are now relieved of their obligations for bliss becomes our new reality 443 Rabbi Yehuda said we have learned that the purpose of the punishments of Gehenna is to judge the wicked there he questions why are they sentenced to the punishment of Gehenna he answers Gehenna is fire that burns days and nights just like the wicked who warm themselves with the fire of the evil inclination to transgress the words of Torah for every warmth that they warm themselves with the evil inclination so does the fire of Gehenna burn in them 444 at one time the evil inclination was not present in the world because they put it into a ring of iron in the hole of the great deep all that time the fire of Gehenna was extinguished and did not burn at all when the evil inclination returned to its place and the wicked of the world started to warm up by it the fire of Gehenna also started to burn the Gehenna burns only with the strength of the heat of the evil inclination of the wicked and with that heat the fire of Gehenna burns days and nights and is not quiet 445 there are seven entrances into Gehenna and there are seven chambers there there are seven types of wicked people evil scoundrel sinner wicked destroyer buffoon and arrogant they all have corresponding chambers in Gehenna each one is proper for him to give him a chamber in Gehenna according to the level at which the wicked one sin 446 there is an angel appointed over that place under Duma in every single chamber many thousands and tens of thousands of angels with him punish the wicked each one according to what is proper for him in that chamber where he is 447 the fire of lower Gehenna comes from the fire of upper Gehenna namely from the Hurdiner and river of fire and comes to the lower Gehenna to burn with the heat produced by the wicked who warm themselves with the evil inclination and all these chambers are burning there 448 there is a place in Gehenna in which the levels are called boiling excrement there is the filth of those souls that have become soiled by all the filth of this world and they become cleansed and rise and the filth remains there these bad levels that are called boiling excrement are appointed over that filth and the fire of Gehenna dominates over the remaining filth 449 there are wicked ones who soil themselves by their sins constantly and are not cleansed of them who died without repenting and sinned and caused others to sin were always stiff-necked and were not broken before their master in this world they are judged there with that filth and with that boiling excrement and they remain there forever all these who destroy their way on earth and do not care about the honor of the master in this world are judged there for generations and generations and do not leave from there 450 on Shabbat the first day of the month festivals and holy days the fire in that place abates and they are not punished but they do not go out from there like the other wicked ones who have rest all those who desecrate Shabbat and festivals and do not care about the honor of their master at all to observe them but rather desecrate them publicly openly just as they do not keep Shabbat and festivals in this world so they are not kept in that world and have no rest 451 Rabbi Yussi said do not speak so they do observe Shabbat and festivals there in Gehenna by force against their will Rabbi Yehuda said that refers to non-Jews who were not commanded and do not observe Shabbat in this world but do observe it there by force but wicked ones who Desecrate Shabbat do not have rest there 452 at every commencement of Shabbat when the day is sanctified announcements are made in all these chambers of Gehenna remove the punishments of the wicked because the Holy King has come and the day is sanctified and he protects everyone immediately the punishments depart and the wicked have rest but the fire
And this shame this is what is written and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have rebelled against me for their worm shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Yeshayah 6624 for their worm shall not die meaning from the body and neither shall their fire be quenched meaning of the soul and they shall be an abhorrence have their own meaning they shall be dirun which means that all the wicked ones in Gehenna who are there will say enough of this side have they real because they will not be able to bear it 455 Rabbi Yossi said certainly it is so for Shabbat is equal to the whole Torah and the Torah is fire they transgress the fire of Torah so the fire of Gehenna burns them and never abates from them 456 Rabbi Yehuda said when the Shabbat departs that angel Sanriel comes and returns that body to its grave and they are both punished this one in its aspect and that one in its aspect this occurs as long as the body is intact because once the body is rotten these punishments no longer apply to it and of the Holy One blessed be he it is written not stirring up all his wrath Tehillim 7838 457 for all the wicked of the world as long as the body is whole with all of its limbs in the grave the body and spirit are each punished with the punishment that is proper for it when the body is decomposed the judgment of the spirit is ended and whoever has to leave Gehenna leaves whoever needs rest has rest and whoever has to be fire and dust under the feet of the righteous becomes so each and every one receives his due proper for him after he is released from his punishment in Gehenna 458 therefore how good it is for both the righteous and wicked that their bodies should cling to earth in order for it to decompose in the dust in a short time so as not to remain intact a long time that the body nefesh and rash may not be punished continuously for a long time there is no Righteous person in the world who does not undergo the punishment of the grave because that angel who is appointed over the grave stands over the body and punishes it every single day if the righteous have it so then it is most certainly so for the wicked 459 when the body is consumed and decomposes in the dust the judgment abates from them all meaning from both Rash and Nefesh except for those pious pillars of the world who do not have the punishment of the grave they may be buried in a coffin for they are worthy to raise their souls immediately to the highest place that is proper for them but they are very few in the world 460 all the deceased in the world die by the hand of the destroying angel except for those who die in the holy land they do not die by his hand but rather by the hand of the angel of mercy who dominates the land 461 Rabbi Yitzhak said if so why is it praiseworthy in Moses Aaron and Miriam that is written by them that they died by the command lift? Mouth of Hashem Bimidbar 3338 Devarim 345 This teaches that these do not die by the hand of this angel destroyer yet you say that all those who die in the land of Israel do not die by the hand of this one 462 He said to him certainly it is so that the praise of Moses Aaron and Miriam was greater than all the people of the world for they all died outside of the holy land and they all died by the hand of that destroyer except for Moses Aaron and Miriam who died by the hand of the holy. One blessed be he those who die in the holy land do not die by the hand of that destroyer because the holy land is not in the domain of any other but rather in the domain of the holy one blessed be he himself 463 therefore it is written the dead men of your people shall live my dead body shall arise awake and sing you that dwell in dust Yeshua 2619 the dead men of your people shall live are those who die in the holy land who are his dead of the holy one blessed be he and do not die. By another for the other side does not dominate there at all therefore it is written the dead men of your people which means of the holy one blessed be he my dead body had nebula shall arise is those who died in another foreign land by the hand of that destroyer 464 therefore they are called the carcass had nebula for it is said about them my dead body shall arise as a carcass brings impurity upon its carriers these that die outside of the holy land also bring impurity upon their carriers therefore they are carcasses any animal improperly slaughtered is called the carcass because the slaughtering is from the other side since immediately upon disqualification the other side dwells upon it and because it is his own it is called the carcass this is what is written nabal is his name and folly had nebula is with him ishmuel 2525 meaning that a corpse is with him and meaning that the other side dwells upon him 465 therefore wherever the other side dwells that place is called Nebula because this menable and despicable dwells only upon a flawed place therefore a slaughtering that has been disqualified is his and is named after him therefore the dead who are outside of the holy land under a different domination and upon whom the other side dwells are called Nebula 466 awake and sing you that dwell in dust you that dwell means tenants that are sleeping but not dead and who are they they are those who are sleeping in Hebron who are not dead but just sleeping therefore they are described by expiration like one who expired but has the strength to awaken here also the four peers of Hebron are asleep and are not dead and they all are preserved in their bodies and no hidden concealments more than other people their bodies are hidden in the entrance to the garden of Eden because the entrance to the garden of Eden is in the cave of Machpelah these are those that dwell in dust hence those whose souls departed in the holy land do not Depart by the hand of that destroyer for he does not dominate there but rather by the hand of an angel of mercy as the holy land is located in his portion section 42 there is a place in civilization where people do not die the rabbis here wonder why the destroying angel has no dominion over people while they are in the temple they ask rabbi shimon who explains that god created the entire world with the secret of the letters and the engravings of the holy name the letter ted remained suspended over the place where the temple would later be god first through a stone engraved with its secret of 72 letters into the water the stone and the water sank under the altar and remained there maintaining the world inside the temple we learn all the letters dwell and therefore the temple is equal to the whole world it exists to atone for since the destroying angel was never given permission to enter there because he flees from the letter ted which supplies the first Three Sfirot to the world wherever the letter Ted is we learn the letter Kof cannot settle nor can the other side dominate but when a person goes outside the temple however the other side has permission to dominate him in Gehenna we are told finally the letter Kof dominates the relevance of this passage only dimly do we perceive the power of letters and words so how can we imagine that the destroying angel could be kept from his task by the presence of a single letter yet in English it is only a single letter that separates us from God that keeps us trapped in ourselves the letter I alone letter can be likened to a single microscopic atom that is capable of releasing unimaginable forces of energy here we receive the light of the letter Ted and the power of the temple bringing us complete protection from pain refuge from the angel of death and liberation from the bondage of the other side our darkest most unwanted traits flee us by virtue of the single letter and the death of Death unfolds before our very eyes 467 there is a place in civilization where that destroyer has no dominion and is not permitted to enter and those who live there do not die until they go out of the city there is not one there who does not die they all die like other people but not in the city what is the reason they cannot remain constantly in the city but they rather go in and out and therefore they all die 468 what is the reason that the destroying angel does not dominate there if you say that this is not in his domain behold the holy land that is not located under another domain but people still die so what is the reason people do not die in this place and if you say because of the holiness of the place you do not have a place in the entire civilization that is holy like the land of Israel and if you say it is because of the merit of the man who built the city there were many people who merited more than him Rabbi Yitzhak said I did not hear anything and I cannot Comment 469 They came and asked Rabbi Shimon he said to them certainly the angel of death has no dominion over that place and the holy one blessed be he does not want any person to ever die there if you say people did die in that place originally before it was built it is not so from the day that man was created that place was established for existence and the secret of secrets is here for those who view the secret of wisdom 470 when the holy one blessed be he created the world he created it with the secret of the letters the letters rolled and he created the world with the engravings of the holy name and the letters rolled and surrounded the world with engravings when the world became manifest expanded and was created and the letters were circling to create the holy one blessed be he said that the world should be concluded with yet the letter Ted remained in that place suspended in the ear Ted is the letter that illuminates with life therefore it is a good sign for one who sees the letter Ted in his dream as life is prepared for him therefore since Ted is suspended over that place death has no dominion there 471 when the Holy One blessed be he who is the central column wanted to maintain the world meaning to draw the first three spirot into the world that are called exist
alone equal to the whole world just as the whole world was created with all the letters with every letter having a particular place so was the temple individually created with all the letters by itself 473 also the holy land gives life and atonement to its inhabitants in that world but that place is not so for it gives life to that place only in this world and not in the world to come the temple is the opposite of that place because Israel have a portion in that world but not in this world therefore the temple exists to atone for sins and to merit Israel for the world to come 474 come and see the letter Tet is universally the shine of life for it is Yezid of Bina therefore the passage opens that it was good had tov with Tet as it is written and Elohim saw the light that it was good Bear sheet 14 the destroying angel flees from this letter and the Zohar repeats and says do not say that he flees but rather he was not given permission to enter there 475 this letter is different from the letter cub the letter cub does not settle at all in any place in the world you may derive it from let not a slanderous man be established in the earth Tetelim 14012 the letter Tet can settle everywhere and is able to settle properly wherever the letter Tet is there is no place for the letter cub to settle there therefore the other side does not dominate at all in this place for he is the angel of death and the Tet gives life of this world to those who dwell under this letter and do not go outside once he goes outside the other side has permission to have power over him and as this letter dominates in this place to give life there so does a different letter dominate in the place of Gehenom which one is it it is the letter cup section 43 but Salel knew the permutation of letters in the book of Rabbi Hamna the elder we learn here it speaks of the two letters Chet and Ted which are in the word for sin these letters are withheld from the tribes of Israel so that they should not be marked with sin in the tabernacle all the letters of the alphabet are engraved as is the secret of the holy name Yadhe Vavhe the tetragrammaton that Salel who knew the wisdom of joining the letters with which heaven and earth were created was chosen above by God and was also chosen below his name we are told means in the shadow of El we next read of the meaning of the son of Uri and of the son of Shu which has to Explanations Finally we are told that Betzalel was appointed over the tribe of Judah the relevance of this passage the wisdom distilled here concerning the mystical letters Chet and Tet absolves us of our sins from the time of Adam to the present moment while finally doing away with our tendencies to err and commit transgressions the four letter tetragrammaton we are told embodies all the secrets of creation the world above and the world below thus the light that permeates all reality now rejuvenates our soul and uplifts all existence our consciousness is liberated from the rational based self-centeredness of Satan the evil inclination by means of the light of Bina the son of Chet 476 in the book of Rabham Nanasaba the elder IT is written that the word Chet Angsin contains the two letters Chet and Tet therefore they were not written in the onyx stones and in the stones to be set because the tribes of Israel had these two letters withheld from them so that there should not be marked in them Chetet meaning sin 477 all the letters of the alphabet are suspended in the side of the temple in engraved secrets of the holy names bound and embroidered on it and the entire world of above and below is bordered and engraved in the secret of the letters and the secret of the supernal holy name namely Yud Hei Vav Hei is engraved on them 478 in the tabernacle the letters were engraved and formed properly because Betzalel knew the wisdom of permutating the letters with which the heaven and earth were created because of his wisdom the tabernacle was built by him and he was chosen from among all the people of Israel 479 he was chosen above and so did the holy one blessed be he want him to be chosen below as it is written that the holy one blessed be he said to Moses see I have called by name Betzalel Shema 312 Moses said to Israel see Hashem has called by name Betzalel Shema 3530 his name is in a supernal secret called Betzalel which Means Betzel and in the shadow of El who is he, he is righteous, meaning is it who sits in that shadow of El that is called supernal El, meaning Tiferet. He Betzel is placed like that El who is Tiferet, as that El takes six extremities because Tiferet takes six extremities. Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid, and the righteous who is Yezid takes them so that El illuminates above, and this righteous one illuminates below to Malchut that El who is Tiferet combines six ends, while that righteous one is the combination of all six ends. 480. The son of Bure, it means the son of the primordial light, or that the Holy One blessed be he created during the work of creation. The son of Che, it means the son of the freedom, Hachera, and everything, namely the light of Bino, which is the secret of freedom. Another explanation, the son of Che means the son who is white, Hachira, meaning white of all the colors, meaning that the light of Chesedim, which is white, is in. Ascendancy in him and he Betzalel who is Yezid was appointed over the tribe of Judah that is the secret of Malchut everything is as it should be because Yezid has to be joined with Malchut section 45 you shall make a table Rabbi Yitzhak begins here by explaining that as long as the children of Israel were in the Holy Land they derived their sustenance from a high place and all the leftovers were sufficient to nourish the rest of the world but when they were sent into exile they themselves received only the remnants leftovers are given only to dogs and servants which is exactly what the children of Israel have become like in their exile next Rabbi Shi, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yaakov son of Edi and Rabbi Yesa Jr. are traveling and while they travel they wonder about the meaning of but show loyal love to the sons of Barzillai the Heladite and let them be of those that eat at your table Rabbi Yesa Jr. the youngest of them explains the meaning of who Gives bread to all flesh for his steadfast love endures forever. He draws parallels between the brain, the heart, and the liver, and by Nazir and Ben and Malchut, and he goes on to speak of how nourishment is sent back and forth between them. And he mentions the sources of the body as the three worlds by Yetzirah and Asiyah. He explains that for he did eat continually at the table of the king means that all his sustenance and food came from there. Finally, Rabbi Yesa blesses their small meal as they sit down to eat the relevance of this passage. As we read this passage, we must ask ourselves at whose table are we sitting and from whom are we deriving our spiritual sustenance? If it is not from God, then it will never nourish our souls as they need and deserve. If our meals are not blessed with his presence, they are only fit for dogs. Yet if they do derive from God, we shall find ourselves ever growing in the wisdom that can only come from the creator. Awareness of this truth emerges in. Our consciousness in turn sustenance livelihood and spiritual nourishment flow to us in great abundance bringing blessings to all mankind 485 you shall make a table of acacia wood Shema 2523 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying when you have eaten and are replete then you shall bless Hashem your Elohim Devarim 810 how fortunate are Israel that the Holy One blessed be he favors them and brings them close to him from among all the nations because of them he gives his sustenance and satisfies the whole world if it were not for Israel the Holy One blessed be he would not give sustenance to the world now that they are in exile surely the whole world receives sustenance doubly in order that the remains should suffice for Israel 486 as long as Israel were in the Holy Land sustenance would descend to them from a high place and they would give a portion of the remnants to the idol worshipping peoples all the nations were sustained only from the remnants but now that they are in exile the situation has changed into a different matter the sustenance reaches the nations of the world and they receive the remnants from them 487 for example a king prepares a meal for his household as long as they do his bidding they eat together with the king and they give the dogs a portion of bones to chew but when the household does not do the bidding of the king he gives the entire meal to the dogs and he gives the bones to them 488 similarly as long as the children of Israel do the bidding of their master they eat at the table of the king and the entire meal is prepared for them because of their joy they give the bones which are the remains to the idol worshippers as long as the children of Israel are not doing the bidding of their master they go into exile and the meal is given to the dogs while they are given the remains as it is written thus shall the children of Israel eat their bread unclean among the nations yet is called 413 they eat it. Remnants of their abhorrence meaning of their repugnant food woe is to the king's son who sits and waits at the table of the servant and eats what is left of his table 489 King David said you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runs over Tehillim 235 you prepare a table for me namely the king's meal in the presence of my enemies they are the dogs that sit under the table and wait for the portion of bones while he sits with the king at his table with the delight of the meal 490 you anoint my head with oil this is the beginning head of the meal for all the oil
At your table also it is not the honor of the king that someone else eats by his table it should not be so rather the king should eat alone and around him all his ministers that are lower than he 492 Rabbi Shia said I have heard nothing about this matter and I make no comment he said to Rabbi Yaakov Bar did you hear anything about this matter he said to him you who nurture daily from the honey of the supernal oil meaning Rabbi Shimon if you did not hear of course I did not he said to Rabbi Yesa did you hear anything about this matter he said to him even though I am a youth and it has only been a few days since I came to you and before that I had no merit nonetheless I did hear 493 he opened the discussion saying who gives bread to all flesh for his steadfast love endures forever Tehillim 13625 he questions what did David have in mind that he concluded the great praise with this passage he answers there are three rulers above through whom the Holy One blessed be he is known and they are the mystery of his glory they are the brain the heart and the liver meaning by Zeir and Pen and Malchut they are opposite of this world meaning from the aspect of the awakening from below that ascends from this world is during a fast day or the like as it is written before you as above the brain receives first and afterwards gives to the heart and the heart takes and gives to the liver and afterwards the liver gives a portion to all the sources that are below each one is his. Proper below through the awakening from below the liver which is Malchut is first to awaken and later brings it near to the heart being Zeir and Pen the heart takes the best of the food and after it has received and has become strengthened from the power and desire that it received it gives and brings awakening to the brain which is Bina and then the supply is projected from Bina to Zeir and Pen and from Zeir and Pen to Malchut which is the liver afterwards the liver again distributes sustenance to. All the sources of the body which are the three worlds Briya Yitzra and Asiya 494 he explains his words on a fast day man offers food and drink to the supernal liver which is Malchut and what does he offer he offers his fat and blood and desires that liver takes it all willingly once everything is already by it it takes and offers it all to the heart meaning Zeir and Pen who is superior and dominates it after the heart has taken and become strengthened and will it offers it all to the brain which is Bina who is the highest ruler over the whole body that is Zeir and Pen the supply returns from Bina to Zeir and Pen and from Zeir and Pen to Malchut which is liver and afterwards the liver again divides portions to all the sources and limbs below in Briya Yitzra and Asiya 495 at a different time meaning when the supply is being provided from the side of awakening from above the brain first receives all supply which is Bina from that which is higher than it which is Chakma. Afterwards it gives to the heart which is Zeir and Pen and the heart gives to the liver which is Malchut and the liver gives to all the sources and limbs below in Briya Yitzra and Asiya afterwards when it wishes to distribute sustenance to this world it gives first meaning the choicest and best of the supply to the heart who is the king of the earth namely the king of Israel and the king's table is stimulated to receive first the other people of the world blessed is he who is counted among those of the king's table for he is recognized above to do him good with that goodness of above that the king receives 496 this is kindness and truth that David did for the sons of Barzillai as it is written and let them be of those that eat at your table if you say at the king's table another person eats besides him it is not so the king eats first and afterwards all the people and those who eat with the king during the time that he eats are the ones who are loved by him exceedingly. They are the ones who were appointed to be of the king's table 497 if you ask is it not written for he did eat continually at the table of the king to Shmuel 913 so it seems that he ate at the table actually he answers it is because all his food was included among those who ate at the king's table and he made no other reckoning but at the king's table for his sustenance and food came from there this is the meaning of for he did eat continually at the king's table Rabbi Shia came and kissed him on his head and said to him you are a youth but supernal wisdom dwells in you in the meantime they saw that Rabbi Ezekiah had come Rabbi Shia said to him certainly in this group will the Holy One blessed be he joined with us because new words in Torah will be promulgated here 498 they sat down to eat and said let each of us say a word of Torah during this meal Rabbi Yesa said this is a small meal but still in all it is called a meal even more this is called a meal from which the Holy One blessed be he derives pleasure as it is written this is the table that is before Hashem Yashiskel 4122 because words of Torah surround this place section 46 when you have eaten and are replete then you shall bless Rabbi Shia speaks here about and satisfies the desire of every living thing indicating that the person who has eaten must bless God in order to give joy above Rabbi Shizkiah says that even one who is drunk may say the blessing after a meal because the blessing is tied to satisfaction on this level but a person who is drunk must not pray because prayer rises higher to that place where there is neither eating or drinking the relevance of this passage there is a link between our daily bread and our spiritual lives which on this earthly level feed each other constantly and interactively the blessing of a meal awakens divine sparks of light within the food so that we may nourish both our bodies and our souls otherwise all we Receive from the meals we eat is the 1% physical matter of the food we miss out on the remaining 99%. The eternal spiritual nourishment this passage extracts all the sparks of life from all the foods eaten by man throughout time. Further we are uplifted to the highest levels of the spiritual atmosphere where the light is so all embracing that there is no need of food or drink. 499 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying when you have eaten and are replete then you shall. Bless Hashem your Elohim Devarim 810 he questions before a person eats to satisfaction and fills his stomach should he not bless the Holy One bless be he how are we to explain the passage when you have eaten and are replete and afterwards then you shall bless he answers even if a person eats as much as an olive but desires it and he considers that eating to be his main food and this is considered being sated as it is written you open your hand and satisfies the desire of every living. Thing Tehillim 14516 It is not written the food of every living thing but rather the desire of every living thing to teach that the desire he has for that food is called satisfaction even if there is only a small thing in front of the person like an olive and no more the desire for satiety has been put on it it is therefore written and satisfies the desire of every living thing desire is written and not food then you shall bless certainly for the person is obligated to bless it. Holy One blessed be he in order to give joy above 500 after him Rabbi Shizkiah opened the discussion with the passage when you have eaten and are replete from your it is understood that one who is drunk may say the blessing after a meal which is not so pertaining to prayer for prayer is not so and one who is drunk is prohibited to pray because prayer is good without eating what is the reason it is because the prayer rises higher higher to the place where there is neither eating nor Drinking meaning to Bina pertaining to this we learned that there is no eating or drinking in the world to come but there is eating and drinking in the other levels below 501 in the blessing after the meal another method applies namely the blessing is tied to satisfaction since the blessing after food abides where there is food and drink namely Malchut so it is necessary to show before him satisfaction and joy but where prayer goes it is not so as it ascends higher and higher to Bina. Where there is no food or drink so a drunk man must not pray 502 by the blessing after a meal a drunk person may recite the blessing after a meal as is understood from this passage when you have eaten and are replete then you shall bless when you have eaten refers to eating and are replete refers to drinking as satiety is with wine because with wine he becomes sated in wine there is certainly satiety and this refers to the drunk as it is written then you shall bless Hashem your Elohim ET is precise for it alludes to Malchut that is called ET that contains both eating and drinking from this we understand that the blessing after a meal requires joy and satisfaction because it is written for the good land of Aram 810 what is the meaning of good satisfaction as it is written for then we had plenty of bread and were well off here may off 4417 so it requires joy and satisfaction section 47 you shall make a table part to Rabbi Yesa begins this discussion by explaining that the table of Acacia wood spoken of in scripture stands inside the tabernacle and should never be left empty of food even for a moment this is because blessing and food come out to all the other tables of the world which are therefore blessed because of it the table that is set above we are told always has the words of Torah spoken over it and a table that is not blessed by the words of Torah is unclean Rabbi Yesa next tells us that a happy person is one who has two things on his table the words of Torah and a portion of food for the poor the person can be called happy because he gains great merit from these things Rabbi Jacob then speaks about Saul who was chosen for kingship but not for prophecy since
Plants and fruit and food he explains why the table is placed on the left or north side the text and speaks of the cleanliness of the body and the intestines of the need to give the dirty finger bowl water to the other side we learn that the secret of the shoe bread is the twelve faces that are in zero infinite is malchut that draws out food and sustenance from those internal faces Rabbi Lazer next tells how God created every person in the similitude of supernal glory the glory of below was constructed above only by the righteous actions of the people of this world we learn the Rabbi speaks of the thirty-two paths of Chakma and glory the three levels of spirit and the three worlds of supernal glory we are told has within it Briya Yitzra Isiya and so does man here below let your garments be always white and let your head lack no oil means that oil of anointing will never be withheld from man for his actions are constantly being white and finally we hear that a person merits delight in the supernal Eden by giving delight to the souls of the poor through the food upon his table the relevance of this passage supernal blessings fall upon the tables of all mankind as our eyes fall upon this rich passage are thought to share the blessings from this book of splendor with the impoverished at last removes poverty from the landscape of human civilization while it warms the hearts of the destitute the light of prophecy and kingship illuminates our souls elevating our consciousness so that we foresee the future consequences of all our present actions we receive wisdom to judge others with compassion with decency with the sweetest mercy we acquire courage to judge ourselves with truthfulness and stringency finally sustenance and livelihood come to our world through the words of wisdom that adorn this passage poverty is vanquished from our midst and all the world experiences the delights of the supernal Eden 503 Rabbi Yesa opened the discussion saying you shall make a Table of Acacia with Shema 2523 This table stands inside the tabernacle and a supernal blessing dwells upon it from it emerges food for the whole word and this table should not be empty even for one moment there should be food on it because the blessing is not present in an empty place therefore bread must constantly be on it in order that the supernal blessing shall always be present in it and from that table blessing and food come out to all the other tables of the world that are blessed. Due to it 504 the table of every person has to be so before him at the time that he blesses the Holy One blessed be he in order that the blessing from above should dwell upon it and should not appear empty for the blessings from above do not dwell in an empty place as it is written tell me what have you in the house you may 42 which the friends have already established 505 of the table upon which words of Torah were not spoken and it is written for all tables are full of vomit. And filth so that there is no place clean. Yeshayah 288 It is forbidden to bless over such a table. What is the reason? Because there is a table and there is a table. There is a table that is set above which is malchut before the Holy One. Blessed be he and it is always ready so that words of Torah may be spoken on it and it should include letters of the words of Torah. It gathers them unto the Holy One. Blessed be he above who includes all of them in himself and becomes perfected through them. And he is happy and has joy about this table. It is written this is the table that is before Hashem. Yeshayah 4122 which is malchut and not from before Hashem which is from above. Zeir and which is bind 506. There is another table that has no part in Torah and has no part in the holiness of Torah namely malchut of Klippot. And that table is called vomit and filth. There is no place since it has no part in the side of holiness at all. Therefore a table upon which no words of Torah were set is. A table of vomit and filth and this is a table of another deity this table has no part in the secret of supernal L507 the Holy One blessed be he takes a table upon which were said words of Torah and places it in his portion Surya the appointed prince takes all these words and places the image of that table before the Holy One blessed be he all the words of Torah that were said on it come over that table and it is adorned before the Holy King this is understood from what is written this is the table that is before Hashem meaning that it is adorned before the Holy One blessed be he the table of a person exists to purify the person from all his sins 508 happy is he who has these two things present on his table one words of Torah and two a portion for the poor from that table when they elevate that table before the person two holy angels are waiting there one on the right and one on the left one says this is the table of the Holy King that so and so arranged before him in it shall be set with supernal blessings and supernal oil and supernal greatness which the Holy One blessed be he causes to dwell upon it and the other angel says this is the table of the Holy King that so and so set before him which is a table that those of above and those of below bless this table shall be set before Atticum in this world and in the world to come 509 Rabbi Abba said they would remove the table from before him and cover it and would say remove it modestly so it should not be embarrassed before the messengers of the king the table of a person gives him merit in the world to come and attains him food in this world it merits him to be known for good before Atticum and merits him to add strength and greatness where necessary happy is the portion of that man in this world and in the world to come 510 Rabbi Yaakov said it is written and it came to pass when all that knew him before time is Saul also one of the prophets Ishmael 1011 he questioned Saul was Chosen by Hashem before this for it is written do you see him whom Hashem has chosen Ibn 24 it is not written chooses but rather has chosen meaning before now when he came and entered among the prophets and prophesied among them why were they surprised 511 he answers when the Holy One blessed be he selected him it was only for kingship and not for prophecy for these two together were never given to one person in the world except for Moses the supernal faithful who merited prophecy and kingship together they were not given to any other person both together 512 and if you ask there was Samuel who merited both prophecy and kingship it is not so Samuel merited prophecy as it is written and all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was accredited as a prophet Ishmael 320 as a prophet but not as a king he was a prophet and judged for had he been a king Israel would not have requested a king he was only a faithful prophet and he judged the sentence of Israel. As it is written he judged Israel Ishmael 717 therefore when Saul was in prophecy they were surprised about him 513 if you ask why did Saul merit prophecy since he already merited kingship he answers he did not merit them both together because the kingship settles only upon the awakening of the Holy Spirit but not prophecy therefore he had the awakening of prophecy beforehand when he ascended to kingship he had no prophecy just an awakening of the spirit of understanding with which to execute a true judgment was upon him for this is fitting for a king as long as he was among the prophets the prophecy dwelt upon him but after he left them he had no prophecy 514 and I said Rabbi Yaikov Baridi who has awakened in me the Holy Spirit to be among faithful prophets the disciples of Rabbi Shimon that the higher and lower beings tremble before him and all the more so I merited to be among you 515 he opened the discussion saying you shall make a table this table is Below to place upon it the baked bread he questions what is more important the bread or the table if you say that they are equal it is not so for the table is set for the bread and also the table is below and the bread is on it he answers it is not so for the table is essential set to receive blessings from above and food for the world from the secret of this table which is the secret of malchut food emerges to the world as it is given from above 516 bread is the fruit and food that emerges from this table to show that fruits plants and food for the world all emerge from this table if the world had no vineyards there would be no grapes for these are the fruits that grow from it if there were no trees the world would have no fruits therefore the table is the root and the food that emerges from it is the shoe bread 517 the priests would gather the fruits of the table every shabbat to show that the supernal food comes from that table and because of that bread that they Priests would gather all the food that they ate and drank was blessed so that the evil inclination could not accuse them because the evil inclination is present only in the midst of eating and drinking this is what is meant by lest I become sated and deny you Mishlei 309 for the evil inclination of a person grows in one's intestines due to eating and drinking 518 this bread which is the food that emerges from the table blesses the food of the priests so that there will be no accuser to accuse them and that they would serve the Holy One blessed be he with a whole heart this is more necessary for the priests than for the rest of the world therefore the table is the root which is the secret of Malchut and the fruit and food that come from it is that bread namely the shoe bread 519 the setting of this table has to be prepared on the north side which is the secret of left as it is written and you shall put the table on the north side Shema 2635 what is the reason it is because there is a source of joy the left always receives from the right first and then it is aroused and supplies the mukbah which is the secret of the table afterwards the right draws near her the mukbah and clings to her 520 and the zohar
there is water which is chastened only on the left side in order to be combined and perfected in chakma of the left. Once water is taken to the left, it becomes aroused and supplies to the mukba. Therefore, we have learned of the powers of the rains. For even though the water is chastened from the right, it comes only from the left, which is pure. Therefore, and you shall put the table on the north side because fruits are more abundant from that side, which is the right, than from the other side. The right through its becoming aroused first with its joy of the left, as it is written, his left hand is under my head, and afterwards his right hand embraces me. Sure, Hashirim 26, 522. The table of a person must be clean, for the body should approach to eat its food only with self cleanliness. A person has to evacuate first before he eats the food of the pure table, because the Holy One, blessed be he, wants the food that he prepares for him in order that he should not approach the table of vomit. And filth which is from the secret of the other side so that the other side will not receive anything from the food of this table 523 after the person has eaten and received pleasure he must give the part of the remnants to that side to the clipot what is it it is the finger bowl water that dirt of the hands that he must give to that side for it is the portion that it needs it is certainly an obligation because it is obligatory and they dwell in a place of obligation namely the clipot for it is obligatory upon every person to give it this portion therefore it is not necessary to make a blessing at all over the finger bowl water because there is no blessing on that side 524 therefore a person must be very careful not to give the food that is on his table to that filthy vomit and all the more so his intestines should be clean of course that is good for the health and well-being of his body therefore the table should be eaten upon impurity as we have learned 525 this Table stands in the temple so that there would be food on it and to take out food from it and it should not be empty even for one moment. The other table of the other side is the table of emptiness and it should not be given a place in the holy side. Therefore the table of the temple should not remain without food for even one moment and there must not be a defective place because the blessing from above is not present in a place that is defective and lacking. This is the table that is before the holy one blessed be he and the table that the person blesses before the holy one blessed be he must also not be empty because there is no blessing in an empty place. 526 There are twelve loaves of bread that is on the table of the holy one blessed be he which is Malchut. We have established the secret of the bread which is the secret of the face meaning the twelve faces that are in Zeir and which are Chesed and Vira Tiferet and Malchut which are the four faces of the living creatures. The Face of the lion, face of the ox, the face of the eagle, the face of man, each one of them is combined of three faces, namely lion, ox, and eagle, and they are twelve faces, therefore they are called the shulet face bread, because the food and sustenance of the world which is Malchut comes from these supernal faces of Zeir and therefore this bread is the inner part of everything which is the food of Malchut and IT is in the supernal secret of Zeir and as is proper 527 the shulet face. Bread that was in the temple is the food of these faces that are in Malchut, meaning that it is drawn from the food that she receives from the twelve faces of Zeir and as mentioned above the food and sustenance that emerge to the world come from them and dwell on that table that is in the temple. This table which is Malchut receives food and sustenance from these supernal faces, the twelve faces of Zeir and it is Malchut that draws out food and sustenance from these internal faces of Zeir. And then the food that she draws out is that bread that was mentioned that was in the temple therefore that bread is called shoe face bread hot bread was placed upon the table and it was removed from their warm we have already established this in relation to the verse on the day when it was taken away I Shmuel 217 because of this table a person should keep the secrets of his table in all the matters that we have said 528 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying let your garments be always white and let your head lack no oil Kahilat 98 this passage has been established and we have learned it the Holy One blessed be he created man with the secret of wisdom and made him with great craftsmanship he breathed into him the soul of life so he would know and behold the mysteries of wisdom and know the glory of his master as it is written everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory I have formed him yeah, I have made him Yeshayah 437 for I have created him for my glory is precise and I have learned the secret of for I have created him for my glory the glory of below which is the secret of the holy throne namely Malchut was constructed above only by the workings of the people of this world 529 when people are righteous and pious and know how to make corrections for the sake of the glory which is Malchut as mentioned above it is written for I have created him for my glory meaning for the sake of this glory of mine so that they should establish it with strong pillars which are Shesed, Bura and Tiferet and adorn it with ornaments and adornment from below meaning that they will raise main and female waters from below in order to draw Mokin into her that are called adornments in order that this glory of mine should be raised through the merit of the righteous that are on earth 530 therefore I have created him similar to supernal glory which is binded that became Chakma again for this Chakma is called 32 paths. Of Chakma and glory had Kabbat numerically in 32 these adornments are in him for he has Briya and creation on the left side meaning the left column of Bina from which is drawn Chakma since man is on the earth and he has to amend my glory that is Malchut I made in him the vessels for the supernal glory which is Bina for there is in man creation too therefore I have created him and it is the aspect Neshama 531 that supernal glory which is Bina contains Yetzirah and formation which is the light of Chesedim and the aspect of Rash that is drawn from the right column of Bina therefore I have formed him and I have placed this aspect in man so that he should be on earth in the likeness of the supernal glory which is Bina that supernal glory has Asiyah in it which is Malchut and the aspect of Nefesh it is also written of man I have made him so that he should be in the likeness of that supernal glory that perfects and blesses the lower glory which is Malchut. 532 How do we know that within the supernal glory which is Bina there are these three Briya Yetzirah and Asiyah it is written I form the light and create darkness I make peace Yeshayah 457 I form the light refers to Yetzirah and creates darkness refers to Briya since it is the left side of Bina as mentioned it contains darkness before it joins the right column I make peace refers to Asiyah and this is the supernal glory that prepares and blesses and supplies all the needs of it. Lower glory which is Malchut 533 Similarly he created man upon earth who is similar to that supernal glory so that he should arrange this glory which is Malchut so it would be combined from all sides the supernal glory has in it these three Briya Yetzirah and Asiyah and man below has in him these three Briya Yetzirah and Asiyah in this way this glory Malchut will be comprised of above and below meaning from Bina and from man to be perfect on all sides happy is the person that merits. Through his actions to be like this 534 in reference to this it is written let your garments be always white and let your head lack no oil Kahilat 98 just as the supernal glory is not withheld from the holy oil of anointing which is the secret of the flow from Abba that is destined for the world to come which is Bina so is man whose actions are constantly being whitened that oil of anointing will never be withheld from him which is the flow from Abba 535 how does a person merit to delight in that supernal delight in Eden which is the bounty of Abba upon his table this is just as he gives delight upon his table to the souls of the poor as it is written and satisfy the afflicted soul Yeshayah 5810 afterwards it is written then shall you delight yourself in Hashem Abba 14 for the holy one blessed be he satiates him with all these delights of the supernal holy anointing oil that flows and is drawn constantly to that supernal glory as it is written and satisfy the Afflicted soul which is followed by then shall you delight yourself in Hashem section 48 it is a time to act for Hashem Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shi are traveling here on the road when Rabbi Shi states it is a time to act for the creator they have made void your Torah means that as long as people are occupied with Torah then all is well in heaven and earth if they neglect the Torah however his strength wanes and all the righteous must work even harder to do good in order to re-empower God along with his camps and legions at this moment a mule driver joins the discussion surprising the rabbis with his insight he speaks of a time to love and a time to hate and says that when the children of Israel are not occupied with Torah that time itself is imperfect incomplete and void of light then it is a time to act for the creator Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shi then get off their own mules and walk with the mule driver the relevance of this passage the Purpose here is to empower the righteous in their study of Torah which exponentially multiplies the volume of light in the world. Our efforts prevent the righteous from further suffering on our behalf
means that as long as the Torah is existent in the world and people are occupied with it, the Holy One, blessed be he, so to speak, rejoices with the works of his hands and rejoices with all the worlds and heaven and earth remain intact. Moreover, the Holy One, blessed be he, gathers his entire court and says to them, See the holy nation that I have on earth, that the Torah is crowned for due to them, see the works of my hands that you said about them, what is man that you are mindful of him? Tehillim 85. When they see their master's joy with his people, they immediately say, And what one nation in the earth is like your people, like Israel? 2 Shmuel 723, 538. When the children of Israel are neglectful of the Torah, his strength wanes, so to speak, as it is written of the rock that begot you, you are unmindful. Devarim 3218. And it is written, And all host of heaven standing as he said to them, Who will entice a calf to the Rahim? And 1818 to 19. Therefore, it is a time to act for Hashem for. These righteous who have remained should gird their loins and do good work so that the Holy One, blessed be he, should be strengthened through them by the righteous as well as his camps and legions. What is the reason they have made void your Torah and people in world are not properly occupied with it? 539. The donkey driver who was driving the donkeys behind them said, I beg of you, I wish to know the answer to one question. Rabbi Yossi said, Surely the way is yet to be traveled before us. Ask. Your question, he said, if this verse were written, we should act or let us act, then I would recite it likewise. But what is the meaning of it is a time and to act for Hashem. It should read before Hashem. Rabbi Yossi said, The way is prepared for us in many manners. Once we were two and now we are three, for the Shechinah is included with us. Another is that I thought that you were simply like a dried out tree, but you are really fresh like an olive tree. Another is that you ask well since you. Started the matter speak up 540 he opened the discussion saying it is a time to act for Hashem they have made void your Torah a time to act for Hashem means that there is a time and there is a time a time to love and a time to hate Kahila 38 time refers to above for time is the secret of faith namely Malchut that is called time it is called a time of goodwill which means that a person is obliged to love Hashem always as it is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim. Devarim 65 and therefore a time to love is a time that the person is obliged to love 541 there is another time which is the secret of other Elohim when the person is obliged to hate and his heart should not be drawn after it therefore there is a time to hate as it is written speak to Aaron your brother that he come not at all times let time into the holy place Vayikra 162 542 when the children of Israel are occupied with Torah and with the commandments of the Torah that Time which is the secret of the holy faith namely Malchut is well established and is adorned to perfection as proper but during the time the children of Israel are not occupied with Torah so to speak that time is not in its perfection and is not complete and without light then it is a time to act for Hashem 543 he questions what is the meaning of to act in a time to act for Hashem he answers it is written which Elohim created and performed let to act Bereshit 23 what is there to act it means that there remain the bodies of the demons that were not made because the day had become sanctified and they remained yet to be done for they were spirits without bodies here also a time to act the time remained without perfection and without completion for what reason because they have made void your Torah and the children of Israel below neglected the words of Torah that time is either elevated or it is lowered because of the children of Israel if they are occupied with Torah it is elevated but if they are idle from Torah it descends 544 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia came and kissed him on his head Rabbi Yossi said certainly it is not according to your honor to lead donkeys behind us blessed is this way where we merited to hear this blessed is the generation in which Rabbi Shimon lives for even among the mountains there is wisdom Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia alighted from their donkeys and the three walked on their way section 49 a time of goodwill the mule driver continues from the previous section speaking about but as for me let my prayer be to you the creator in an acceptable time a time of goodwill Elohim in the greatness of your steadfast love hear me in the truth of your salvation he comments that a favorable time is when the congregation is praying but as for me refers to King David he then explains that a prayer of redemption in a time of goodwill brings together time and favor this prayer is said during the Mincha of Shabbat we learn because at that time all anger is removed and judgment is aroused only in order to be sweetened with cheese and mercy and there is joy in everything. The mule driver next says that Moses died during the time of the Shabbat Mincha. Therefore at this time the gates of the holy study hall are locked and everyone has to justify himself before God. Moses the faithful shepherd Joseph the righteous and King David all died at the same time so there are three justification. Prayers when Moses died the light of the sun darkened and the written Torah was barred. When Joseph died all the springs dried up and all the tribes went into exile. When King David died the moon herself gathered in her light which was gathered up by the oral Torah. Then we are told the lights of Torah were concealed and there was much confusion and many arguments among the scholars. Thus the rabbis decreed severe fast and locked the gates of the Torah the relevance of this passage by invoking. The three qualities of Moses, Joseph, and David, faithfulness, righteousness, and kingship, we magnify these sublime qualities within our fellow man and ourselves. Judgments are repealed as we repent and meditate upon this mystical text. The iniquities of man and the sins of our own past are accounted for and compassionately corrected by the unfathomable greatness of Moses, Joseph, and David, and through the forbearance they engender 545. That donkey driver opened the discussion, saying, But as for me, let my prayer be to you, Hashem, in an acceptable time, a time of goodwill, Elohim, in the greatness of your steadfast love, hear me in the truth of your salvation. Tehillim 6914. We have learned that a favorable time is when the congregation is praying, then it is appropriate, it is certainly so, for the congregation sets out and prepares the establishing of that time, then it is a favorable time when it is proper to make requests, as it is written, Elohim, in the greatness of your steadfast love, hear me in. The truth of your salvation for then it is the time to make requests 546 but as for me let my prayer be to you Hashem here is the secret of the unison but as for me refers to King David namely Malchut that is called I it is the place that is called redemption which is Malchut when joined with Yezid my prayer refers to prayer namely plain Malchut here that he says M-E-M-Y prayer the Amid of prayer is adjacent to redemption for they are one for they are both the aspect of Malchut. When one brings together redemption to the Amid of prayer then it is a time of goodwill a time of goodwill is also one inclusion together time is one namely Malchut and favor is one for it is the secret of the favor that becomes revealed from Peter and they are combined together to become one King David wanted to form one unity through this verse as we have said 547 if you ask why was this verse selected to be said during the Minja of Shabbat he answers it is proper for it to be in it. Mincha service of Shabbat and not in the weekday service for it is certain that Mincha service of Shabbat is unlike the weekday prayer because judgment is suspended over the world during the weekday at the time of Mincha and it is not a time of goodwill however during Shabbat when all anger is removed and everything is combined together for the judgment and Shisa are one judgment is aroused but it is in order to be sweetened meaning only in order to reveal the sweetness that it contains. Therefore a verse of unity is needed to unite all the grades for when there is unity judgment joins and combines with mercy and everything is sweetened as it is written a time of goodwill a time of goodwill shows that everything judgment and Shisa is combined together that judgment is sweetened at that time and there is joy in everything 548 Moses departed from the world at the time of the Shabbat Mincha at the time when there was a time of goodwill at that moment favor was above. And pain was below because of the death of Moses. Therefore, during Shabbat, the gates are locked from the time of Mincha, and further, which gates are locked, the gates of the holy study hall, in order to memorialize Moses, the faithful shepherd, for the Torah was voided because of him, because he died. 549. At the time that he died, the study hall of Moses and the study halls of others became nullified. Whoever saw the doors of Moses' study hall were locked, while all the others be not locked. If Moses' Torah mourned for him at that time, who did not mourn, therefore, all the gates of the study hall are locked, and everyone has to justify the Holy One. Blessed be he by way of praise that we recite. Then your righteousness is like the great mountains. Tehillim 367, 550. There were three who departed from the world at that time, and they are all included in Moses. They are Moses, the faithful shepherd, Joseph, the righteous, and King David. Therefore, there are here three justification prayers. One is for Joseph the righteous who preceded all these and this
Oral Torah that is David the gates of Torah were locked and all the gates of the world were locked at that time at the moment that Joseph the righteous died the sources and springs dried up and all the tribes fell into exile those above opened with the words your righteousness is like the great mountains your judgments are a great deep at that moment that Moses died the light of the sun darkened at midday and the written Torah was barred which is the light of the shining mirror which is C.E.I.R. And at the moment that King David died the moon which is Malchut gathered in its light and the oral Torah gathered in its light 552 since that time the lights of Torah were concealed and arguments multiplied and the mission of the scholars argued and all those of stout heart were confused therefore there was no joy of the Torah at that time throughout the generations of the world this is the cause of the severe fast that the rabbis decreed when a certain person died they decreed a fast when something happened they decreed so when the joy of the written Torah and the oral Torah was most gathered up at that time it is so much more necessary to lock the gates of the Torah therefore we say the justifications of the judgments as we have mentioned Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shi rejoiced and kissed him on his head as before they said happy is our portion on this way section 50 wisdom strengthens the wise the mule driver of previous sections here says that Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten rulers who are in the city refers to Moses when Moses ascended Mount Sinai to receive the Torah the firmaments and the supernal camps of the angels rose against him because he was going to lower the Torah to the earth and take their goodness and joy from them but Moses strengthened himself the Torah shields those who study it with the courage and strength derived from ten rulers which are the ten commandments the ten rules are we learn the ten kinds of wisdom found in the Torah which is the secret of the tense fire in ten engraved names in one name of twenty two engraved letters we are told the secrets of the world to come are combined and cannot be understood yet nonetheless the Holy One bequeathed to the righteous a longing for that time the relevance of this passage a deep longing for eternal world peace stirs within our hearts and the effect is a miraculous positive change in human civilization we are strengthened with goodness and Compassion for these are the traits of the Torah and the power of the Zohar. We secure a swift and sweet redemption of man, bringing the world to come into the here and now. 553 again, he opened the discussion, saying, Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten rulers who are in the city. Kahilat 719, Wisdom strengthens the wise, refers to Moses when he ascended Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. All the firmaments and all the supernal camps of angels trembled. They said before him, Master of it. World, behold, all our goodness and joy is only in the Torah, and you want to lower it to earth. They gathered against Moses to burn him with fire. Moses strengthened himself as the friends have established that the Holy One blessed be. He said to Moses, etc. 554, Wisdom strengthens the wise means that everyone who is occupied with Torah and endeavors in it for its own sake receives strength from the Torah that protects him when he needs courage and strength. From which place does he receive that? Courage and strength to strengthen himself. The verse repeats saying from ten rulers, those are the ten commandments that are written in the Torah, which are supernal rules that the person strengthen himself with them in this world and in the world to come. All the secrets of the world and all the commandments and all the wisdom of above and below depend upon them, and everything is included in them, and everything is in the Torah. Happy is the portion of he who is occupied with Torah so as to become strengthened with courage in the world to come. 555. The ten rules are the ten kinds of wisdom that are in the Torah, which is the secret of the ten spirot in ten engraved names, namely the ten names that allude to the ten spirot of the in one name of twenty two engraved letters, the name Allah Nunke Uf final MEM of the blessing of the priests, the secrets of the world to come are combined in these lights that the eye cannot see nor even with understanding know and behold that delight or the longing that the Holy One blessed be he bequeathed to the righteous for the world to come as it is written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him. Yeshayah 643 section 51 the food of the souls the mule driver from previous section says that the merit gained from a person's table in this world enables him to eat on another table of delight in the world to come there is a table there because food and pleasure are eaten by the souls in that world just as the ministering angels eat the supernal angels eat man of the food that comes from the dew of the world above the food from the light of the holy anointing oil itself the souls of the righteous are nourished from ends in the garden of Eden and there also they become clothed during Shabbat and festivals the souls take off their garments and ascend to see the glory of their master he next explains the meaning of and it shall come to pass that Every new moon and every Shabbat shall all flesh come to bow down to the ground before me says the creator the rabbis ask the mule driver his name which is Chen and finally they all stop at the next village which is also named Chen and they sit down at table blessed with the words of Torah the relevance of this passage the spiritual foundation upon which we build our life determines our place of standing in the world to come a life devoted to the procurement of spiritual assets as opposed to the material kind roots untold pleasures in the world to come the simple truth holds true in this world as well indulging our avaricious impulses while neglecting the needs of our souls spawns a future of difficulty a tomorrow build of despair a destiny born of darkness the building blocks of spirituality are erected here ingrained into our being so that we eat foods of indescribable delights in the garden of Eden 556 the table of a person merits him to eat on another table in the the light of that world the world to come as it is written for he did eat continually at the table of the king 2 Samuel 913 King David used to say you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies Tehillim 235 and this is the preparation of the table in that world for then there is delight and desire with which the soul has pleasure in the world to come 557 he questions is there a table for the souls in that world he answers yes because food and the supply of pleasure are eaten by the souls in that world just as the ministering angels eat he questions do the supernal angels eat he answers yes and similar to that eating did the children of Israel eat in the desert namely the manna that food is the secret of the dew that flows and is drawn from above from the secret of the world to come which is by it is a food from the light of the holy anointing oil the souls of the righteous are nourished from there in the garden of Eden and they gain pleasure there because the Souls of the righteous are clothed there in the lower garden of Eden just as they were clothed in this world 558 during Shabbat and festivals the souls take off their garments and ascend to see the glory of their master and to delight with the supernal delight properly as it is written and it shall come to pass that every new moon and every Shabbat shall all flesh come to bow down to the ground before me says Hashem Yeshayah 6623 he questions will all flesh come it must not be so. Instead it should have been written every spirit or every soul what is the meaning of all flesh he answers the holy one blessed be he has made for man in this world the likeness of the honor of the supernal glory above which is the secret of wisdom of the 32 paths as mentioned above that supernal glory is a spirit to spirit as it illuminates upon Zeir and which is called spirit and a soul to soul as it illuminates divine that is called soul until it reaches a place below that is Called body namely Malchut it inserts in it one spirit of the source of life that is called all which is yes this is a secret of moreover land has an advantage for everyone let all Kahila 58 all is a spirit for that body 559 similarly man in this world is a body and the spirit that rules over him resembles that supernal spirit called all that rules over the body above which is Malchut the spirit that is in the body of man is called all flesh as it is written shall all flesh come to bow down to the ground before me says Hashem Kahila 58 in reference to this delight it is written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him Yeshayah 643 560 the friends rejoiced on the way when they reached a certain mountain Rabbi Shia said to this donkey driver what is your name he said to him and he said to him may the holy one blessed be he be gracious unto you have begun and hear your voice when you need him, Rabbi Yossi said, for certain the sun is setting and past this mountain there is a village named after you, for it is called village of Chen, and let us lodge there in honor of your name. When they arrived there, they came to their lodging and prepared before them a table with many kinds of food. Rabbi Shia said, This table is in the likeness of the world to come, and it is incumbent upon us to elevate this table and adorn it with words of Torah. Section 52 The center of the world here, Rabbi Yossi discusses when you have eaten and are replete, then you shall bless the Creator your Elohim for the good land which he has given you. He says, The holy land is the center of the world, and in the center of that is Jerusalem, and in the center of that is the holy of holies. Everywhere on earth is
Is a resplendence of this light thus a heartfelt visual embrace of this text rebuilds the spiritual temple as if by our own hands the long hidden light begins to shine and death dies evil is laid to waste and goodness fills the land the dead are ready for resurrection in a process that will embody sweet mercy and disburden 561 Rabbi you see open the discussion with the verse when you have eaten and are replete then you shall bless Hashem your Elohim for the good land which he has given. You devarim 810 he questions if we bless in the land of Israel how do we know that we have to bless outside of the land of Israel for it seems that in the circumstance outside of the land of Israel it is not necessary to bless he answers when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he divided the earth the place of habitation was on one side and the place of desolation was on the other side and he divided the inhabited place and circled the world around one point what is it, it is it. Holy Land because the Holy Land is the center of the world and in the center of the Holy Land is Jerusalem and the center of Jerusalem is the Holy of Holies every goodness and all the food of the entire habitation descend there from above and there is not one place inhabited that is not nourished from there 562 he divided the desolate place and there was no greater desolation in the entire world as in that wilderness that the children of Israel broke its strength and power for 40 years. As it is written who led you through that great and terrible wilderness of 15 the other side dominates in that wilderness and against its will the children of Israel walked on it and smashed its strength 40 years had they been righteous during the 40 years they would have removed the other side from the world but because they angered the Holy One blessed be he so many times the other side grows strong they all fell under its power there 563 if you ask behold Moses who was Elevated over all the people of the world, how did he die there? He answers, It was not so, for Moses was not under the jurisdiction of the other side, but rather on the Mount Abarim. What means Abarim quarrels from the expression wrath, heavy, vra, and fury. The supernal rulers of above quarreled over it, for they wanted to dominate the mountain, but it was handed not to any other ruler, and it remained so until Moses, the faithful servant, came and dominated it. Moses was buried there, and no one took part in his burial except the Holy One. Blessed be he alone, as it is written, and he buried him in the valley. Devarim 346, 564, and he buried him. He questions who is the one who buried him. He answers, The one of whom it is written in a nondescriptive way, and he said to Moses, Shema 241, and similarly, and called to Moses, Vayakra 11, it did not write who he is, and he buried him. It is not written who he is, but certainly this place is known to the friends that it is the Shechina called place for. It is the Sheshana wherever it is said just he therefore no one dominated in this mountain except Moses himself and he was buried there he did it so that all the generations of the world would know that those who died in the wilderness will rise at the resurrection of the dead the Holy One blessed be he caused their shepherd to dwell among them so that they all will be present in the rising to existence of the world to come 565 if you ask if that wilderness is the strength of the other. Side how could the Holy One blessed be he command that this goat shall be sent to a different mountain that is called Azazel they should have sent it to that mountain that Israel went over in the wilderness for there is the place of the strength of the other side he answered since the children of Israel had already gone there forty years its power was broken and its power grew strong in a place where nobody ever passed before yet that mountain that is in the wilderness that Israel walked in was the dwelling place of Israel for 40 years 566, but that place where they send that goat is a supernal strong rock and under the depths of that rock where no man can enter the other side dominates exceedingly to eat its prey then it will be removed from Israel and there will be accuser against them will in the inhabited region 567 the dominion of the secret of faith is found in the central point of the whole holy land in the holy of holies and even though it does not exist. Today nonetheless in its merit the whole world is fed food and sustenance even from there to all in every inhabited place therefore even though Israel are outside the holy land because of the strength and merit of the land there is food and sustenance in the world therefore it is written and you shall bless Hashem your Elohim for the good land that he has given you the good land certainly for there is found food and sustenance in the world because of it 568 one who delights at his Table and has pleasure in food should remember and care for the holiness of the Holy Land and the sanctuary of the king that has been destroyed because he was sad about his table there in the midst of joy and feasting the Holy One blessed be he considers for him as though he built his house and built all these ruins of the temple happy is his portion section 53 a cup of blessing here Rabbi Yussi says that the cup of blessing becomes blessed from Shesed Bira and Tiferet of Zerenpen that are the three patriarchs therefore a cup is necessary only when there are three men together the cup of blessing which we learned is Malchut is perfected by the tense Firat it should be looked at because the eyes of the Creator your Elohim are always upon it it is the secret of faith and must always be guarded because it is for the cup's sake that the table is blessed during the prayer after meals Rabbi Yussi says again that the table must never be empty because it Blessing does not exist on an empty table just so wisdom is given to the wise the relevance of this passage as our eyes drink the light of these verses our souls partake of the cup of blessing we receive sustenance so that we may tithe spiritual nourishment so that we may persevere the spiritual path and appreciation of God's endless goodness so that we may protect and forever keep all that is sacred and precious in our lives by the virtue of the patriarchs our tables are kept full so that we may now take possession of all these blessings 569 the cup of blessing is used only when there are three who ate together it is blessed from the secret of the three patriarchs for Malchud which is the secret of the cup of blessing is blessed from Shesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and that are called patriarchs therefore a cup is necessary only when there are three men one should give the cup of blessing with the right and left hands and receive it in both because Malchud is given between the right and left of Zeir and afterwards one should leave it only in his right hand because from there it is blessed meaning from the light of the Shesedim that are in the right of Zeir and 570 ten things were said about the cup of blessing and they are all proper because the cup of blessing which is Malchut is perfected by ten namely the ten Tzvirat as the friends have established it is necessary to look at the cup of blessing with the eyes because it is written the eyes of Hashem. Your Elohim are always upon it Devarim 11 12 on the land which is Malchut that is called cup of blessing it should not be removed from the eye but should rather be looked at 571 the cup of blessing is blessed with the blessing that the person makes over it to the Holy One blessed be he because it is the secret of faith namely Malchut it must be guarded with the highest guard as it is the importance of the king and it is for its sake that the table is blessed during the blessing after the Meal that one blesses 572 the table of a person must never be empty because the blessing is not present on an empty table as we have established tell me what have you in the house you may 42 therefore the table should not appear empty because the supernal blessings dwell only in a whole place this is a secret of and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted I have put wisdom Shema 316 meaning after he has been perfected with wisdom he is given wisdom he gives wisdom to the wise Daniel 221 upon the secret is based the table of the shoe bread that it is never empty as it is written and you shall set upon the table shoe bread before me always Shema 2530 section 54 a candlestick shekels a month one cannot summarize the dozens of pieces of information given in the section with regard to the menorah about the meaning of the letters and musical tones the arms and branches of the candlestick are compared to the spirat and to the Relationship of Zer Enpin and Malchut Malchut we are told serves Zer Enpin in order to reveal all the aspects of Zer Enpin that are called Sphira Rabbi Shimon says to the faithful shepherd Moses that Malchut is like a sacrifice of higher and lesser value depending on whether one is wealthy average or poor if one is very wealthy all good that is done is to one's merit in the world to come if one is of average wealth one is serving two worlds and thus merits half a shekel in the world to come. If one is poor the sacrifice is of lower value yet we find God descends to dwell with he who makes himself a contrite and humble spirit for the Sheshanah's sake from the day a person inherits his soul which comprises the Holy One and his Sheshanah he is called the son the soul has five names Neshamur Ash Nefesh Chaya and Yashid Rabbi Shimon next says that and you shall love the Creator with all your might means with all your money he then praises the faithful shepherd and requests. That he arise once more and complete the commandments of his master. The relevance of this passage. This passage again reveals the many layers of meaning that are symbolized by sacred objects in scripture, and it helps us to more fully comprehend
a menorah or reading a passage of the Holy Zohar. This consciousness is ultimately our Kiraai Mahin, the faithful shepherd. 573 All gather Tanam and Amram because the time has come to perfect the vessels of the king and to illuminate so that they should be perfected before him. For they are the tabernacle, the candlestick, table, basin, and its stand, art cover, and the cherubs. It is all perfected with a shekel as shall be written before you. As therefore he commanded Israel, this they shall. Give Shema 3013 574 One Tana rose and said faithful shepherd certainly it is so you were commanded to make everything as it is written and you shall make a candlestick Shema 2531 You shall make a table of it 23 and so in everything you should observe and make of all of them you had difficulty in making only three things that are marked in the letters of your name which are the candlestick menorah shekels and this hay month why did you find it difficult 575 He said to him old man you learn this difficulty that I had from the verse of Eden work or derived from difficult shall the candlestick be made of it because shall the candlestick be made purports that it should be made by itself that Moses was not able to make it certainly the vessel of the Holy One blessed be he is the Shechina which is a vessel to serve her husband Zeir and she is his candlestick as it is written seven times a day I praise you Tehillim 119164 They are the greatness and the power have. Bira and the glory had Tiferet and the victory had Netzach and the majesty had Hod Ida Brahim 2911 Yezid and Malchud which comprises 7576 from these seven grades I asked the candlestick composed three branches of the candlestick out of one side Shema 2532 are the body namely Tiferet and the two arms of the king which are Shisit and Bira she is Malchud she I asked the candle for a precept with which to illuminate upon them being their fourth and three branches of the candlestick Out of the second side are two thighs which are Netzach and Hod the covenant which is Yezid and she Malchud is a western candle to illuminate them the king's candlestick is called Malchud being a candle that lights the candle with which one fulfills a precept being a fourth to the above mentioned Shisit Bira and Tiferet once she receives Chakma is written the commandment of Hashem is pure enlightening the eyes Tehillim 199 what is the head or top of the candlestick it is by the supernal hay, namely the first three Svirat of by the supernal Abba and Ima who has in her seven lords Svirat which are Yisrael, Saba and Tabuna three branches in the shape of hay which is composed of three bobs that are the three patriarchs Jesus Bira and Tiferet the second hay has a second set of three branches in the shape of hay which are Netzach Hot and Yezid Bob is the center of the candlestick namely Zeir Anpin which is the son of Yud and hay because Zeir Anpin is the Central column that mediates between the two columns of Bina Bina is so called after him because Bina is made up of the letters Ben and the son of Yud Hay Zeir Anpin includes six branches below in his place which amounts to Bob equals six in his six branches 578 Yud is a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband Mishlei 124 the crown of the Torah scroll which is Zeir Anpin in the shape of a Zayin which is a Yud on top of a Bob namely a crown over Bob which is Zeir Anpin from the aspect of the world to come which is by the Malchud is not a vessel to it and now serves him only as a crown on his head in this world being Malchud from her own aspect she is like this Havah Hayyad which permutation shows that she is a vessel under him and serves him in every sphere of his in his every limb and in his every attribute meaning that Malchud serves Zeir Anpin in order to reveal all the aspects of Zeir Anpin that are called sphere limb and attribute 579 therefore this Yud which is Malchud is sometimes under Zeir Anpin and sometimes on top and sometimes in the center he explains on top I ask the secret of the Yud of Yud Havah and the secret of the verse the stone which the builders rejected has become the headstone of the corner Tehillim 11822 this is to cause the lamps to burn continually Vayikra 242 which is Yud on Havah from the side of the candlestick in the center of Zeir Anpin it is half a shekel meaning that she is as large as him and they are both two. Half of the body for Zeir Anpin is the aspect of the right half of Bina and Malchud is the aspect of the left part of Bina then it is called half a shekel as it is written this they shall give half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary Shema 3013 thus Havah Yudhay in the end of Zeir Anpin in the tabernacle she Havah Yudhay and this is the secret of five cubits long Shema 271 from the first Hay and five cubits broad from the lower Hay cubit is the secret of Bob which is Zeir Anpin and half a cubit is Yud which is Malchud that stands at the end everything is alluded to in the letter Bob which is Zeir Anpin or his crown or in his center or at his end 580 this is the secret of I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no Elohim Yeshayah 446 I am the first I ask the secret of Malchud when it is a crown on the head of Zeir Anpin while and I am the last I ask when she is a point at the end of Zeir Anpin and beside me there is no Elohim I ask when she is in the center of Zeir Anpin, meaning forth to the patriarchs after Chesed Bira and Tiferet. She is alluded to in this name Yud Bob Dalad Hay Yud Bob Yud Bob Hay Yud, where Yud is at the beginning and Yud in the center of the Bob and Yud at the end of the Hay. Every name in which Hay dominates Yud is a female from the left, and even though Yud at the beginning of the name is male, still in all sense after the two Hays of the name it is at the end such as Hay Yud Hay Yud is judged. According to the majority, as a female, the Yud that is upon Hay is a crown under Hay a vessel, and all the more so under Bob 581. I do not make any division or separation in the supernal unity that is in Bina, and it is all one unison. Therefore, it was difficult for me to produce the three things: the candlestick, the shekels, and the new moon, which are the secret of Malchud. For in the candlestick there is an aspect of the crown of Zeir Anpin, and in the shekels and new moon it is considered to. Be in his center the Holy One, blessed be he who knows all thoughts said his intention was good not to make division and separation therefore let the candlestick be made by itself just like the Shechinah is made from the self of the Holy One, blessed be he without division of the other vessels of the tabernacle by which the Shechinah is at the service namely at the end of Zeir and it is said and Betzalel made Shema 371 and it was not necessary that it be made by itself 582 wherever. The lower Shechinah is a crown in the central pillar which is Zeir and that is when she is taken from Bina which is the world to come it is certain that then man has no knowledge of the Holy One, blessed be he and all his attributes Bina has then been reduced to the six ends until he enters that gate about which is said this is the gate of Hashem Tehillim 11820 meaning through the letter lane which alludes to a tower that flies in the air 583 from the aspect of her being in the center. Of Zeir Anpin she is combined from all the Svirat and all the letters of the expressed and hidden names for she receives from them all and they are included in her and from the aspect of which she is at the end of Zeir Anpin she is a dot under every single letter because she serves under her husband Zeir Anpin for from there is she built up to unite with Zeir Anpin and from the aspect of her being a crown on the head of Zeir Anpin she is from the side of the musical tones that are marked above. The letters he explains she is a dot like the dot of seagull that is below the knees of the king meaning below Netzach Hot and Yezid of Zeir Anpin that are called knees as it is written and the earth is my footstool Yeshayah 661 meaning Malchut that is called earth she is in the center with Zeir Anpin for then she is called half a shekel half a body as explained earlier and this is in the point of the Shurak which is in the center of the Bob she is a crown on his head from the side of it. Musical note that is called Segalta which is above the letters 584 Zarka Makov Shofar Holek Segalta when we cast and bring close Malchut to Bina that is called Shofar she turns into the Segalta of the musical tones then she is a crown on the head of the king Zeir Anpin as mentioned above for this is the meaning of a crown is given to you Hashem our Elohim she is known then by what is said of her search not into that which is concealed from you and inquire not into that which is hidden from you we know that it is first above in Kita which is Segalta which is above the letters it is the last in the seagull which is below the letters and beside him there is no Elohim in the Shurak which is in the center of the letters for then she illuminates with the shine of Chakma everything is known through her 585 whoever cleaves unto Malchut from below the letters she raises him above for she is built from there to unite face to face with Zeir Anpin yet she lowers.
knows me your may 922 to 23 meaning malchut that is called this and not above her david who knew her said though a host should camp against me then i will be confident lit in this tale 273 jeremiah saw the length of the exile as well as samael and the serpent and all the princes of the 70 nations that were swooping down upon israel by tens of thousands and he saw the verse that the holy one blessed be he said and yet for all that lit this when they are in the land of their enemies vi cross 2644 the prophet said this i recall to my mind therefore i have hope each of 321 for malchut that is called this is with them in exile therefore he awaits salvation of him who neither did he set his heart even to this shema 23 it is written nor does a fool understand this tale 927 and also and this is the blessing of judah and he said here hashem the voice of judah devarim 337 judah observed what his father commanded him as mentioned earlier therefore he merited Kingship David rose because of it to kingship for he endeavored all his days to perfect it. 587 said the holy luminary rabbi Shimon to the faithful shepherd it is said and this is the Torah which Moses said to 444 you admonished Israel with it at the time of your death and you did bless every single tribe of Israel with it as it is written and this is the blessing which Moses blessed to 331 therefore the scholars the masters of the mission explained it in relation to the verse. This is the Torah when a man dies in a tent. Bar 1914 pertaining to this they said what is the meaning of dies in a tent. The Torah is maintained only in one who kills himself for its sake. Death means poverty for a poor man is considered as dead. 588 Malchut is like a sacrifice of higher and lesser value from the side of the wealthy one. It is certainly of higher value for it goes high above him because all the good that the wealthy people do is all to their merit in the world to come. There it is a crown on their heads and this is from the aspect of it being a crown over Z-E-I-R and the average man who serves in order to merit two worlds meaning also this world it is with him half a shekel in the world to come like matzah that is broken into half under the napkin for a pakoman and half to eat to fulfill a commandment before the meal from the side it is said what is your petition and it shall be granted you and what is your request even to half the kingdom it shall be. Performed Esther 56 and this from the aspect that she is in the middle of Z-E-I-R and 589 but for one who is a poor who endangers his life for its her sake as is your quality faithful shepherd she malchut is a sacrifice of lower value lit descending under you for she becomes a point under Yezid of Z-E-I-R and which is the aspect of faithful shepherd why is it so because one who humbles himself for the sake of the Shechina the Holy One blessed be he descends to him this is what David meant. By though Hashem Bihai yet he takes note of the lowly tale in 1386 and the prophet said for thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity whose name is holy yet with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit Yeshua 5715 even though I dwell on high and in a holy place yet due to him who makes himself a contrite and humble spirit for the Sheshanah's sake in order to elevate her from her humbleness and to make her a crown for his head I descend to dwell with him after the husband of the Sheshanah which is Zeir and descends upon the man she lowers herself from his head allows the space of the head to her husband Zeir and descends to the lakes of the king namely under his net sash hot and yezid that are called lakes the secret of the matter is the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool Yeshua 661 namely Malchut that is called earth 590 from the day that the person inherits the soul which comprises the holy one blessed be he and his Shechanah he is called the son one Tana said is it so that from the day that the person inherits a soul that comprises of the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechanah he is called the son from where do we know this it is from this verse that David said in the book of Tehillim I will tell of the decree Hashem has said to me you are my son this day have I begotten you Tehillim 27 for this occurs by every person at the moment that he attains the soul 591 the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon said to him faithful shepherd what is the meaning of this day have I begotten you it would have sufficed to say you are my son to convey that I have begotten you but because of you did David say with the Holy Spirit this day have I begotten you for I refers to the Shechanah and this day refers to the faithful shepherd which is Tiferet as it is written it is yet I day bear she 297 for him of whom it is said and there arose not a prophet in Israel like Moses Devarim 3410 therefore he is called Haidei you lived in the Shechinah and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart Devarim 65 namely the body and with all your soul had nefesh namely the soul for it has five names Neshamaru Ash Nefesh Chaya Yeshida and with all your might namely with all your money the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechinah do not budge from you in all of these things 592 you thought that even if all the worlds would be under your jurisdiction you would give them in order to raise the Shechinah to the Holy One blessed be he to crown him with his Shechinah over all the princes of the nations of the world and afterwards to elevate him and his Shechinah your form is comprised of all good traits throughout the worlds and the companies of the supernal angels and the lower beings and all Israel 593 the Holy One blessed be he attaches a good thought to action since you are his son everything that you thought of for the sake of your master he fulfills through you you will not stir from him forever but will remain in his image in everything you are concealed from humans during the time of exile but I from this world am a messenger from the Holy One blessed be he to say these words before you and I am commanded by him not to stir from you at any time that you desire I and all the Tanim and Amorim of our Yeshiva request of you to arise and complete the commandments of your master section 55 and they shall make an ark here Rabbi Shimon speaks about the Torah and the ark the supernal ark is the Shechina and the Holy One and his Shechina are unity the Rabbi maintains that the Torah is more beloved than anything then he shows that the ark and the ink with which the Torah is written are both made from wood commenting that the world to come is the inside and the letters of Torah though black on the outside are white on the inside as are the Torah scholars and holy sages the relevance of this passage the Ark and the Torah are the two most sacred artifacts and symbols in scripture yet they remain the least understood the ancient Kabbalists however revealed the inner significance of these two divine instruments when Moses received the tablets on Mount Sinai the energy and spiritual light that was revealed during the event literally vanquished all forms of darkness throughout the world death chaos pain and suffering were extinguished overwhelmed by the luminous radiance the term tablets is a code describing a unique instrument that was fashioned to generate divine energy in our physical world in the language of the 21st century one might envision the tablets as a spiritual nuclear power plant just as a city is equipped with transformer substations that bring electrical energy from the local power station to our homes the term 10 commandments really signifies 10 transformers that channel spiritual energy into our physical world both electrical and spiritual energy operate under similar principles both require physical tools to manifest and express their power in the material realm Moses had attained the highest level of consciousness this truth is the deeper significance behind the concept of Moses climbing to the top of the mountain by virtue of his lofty level Moses was able to control the raw forces of energy in the spiritual domain he left the 600,000 Israelites at the foot of the mountain so that he could activate the tablets thus bringing a final end to death and chaos during Moses absence two wicked and powerful alchemists infiltrated the scattering of 600,000 strong and convinced the Israelites that Moses was dead presumably from an overdose of spiritual radiation these hateful souls knew their days were over if the Israelites and the world remained connected to the energy flowing from this mountain it would mean the end of evil and the dawn of immortality consequently they devised a cunning plan they enlisted the help of a rebel rousing faction that had split from the Israelites the two alchemists and the rebel group were known as the mixed multitude the mixed multitude convinced other Israelites to help them manufacture another instrument capable of generating a large supply of spiritual current activating the second source of spiritual power was a key to their insidious strategy gold being the finest conductor of electrical current was also recognized as a powerful conductor of spiritual current thus they built an apparatus constructed of gold known by the code term golden calf powering up the golden calf unleashed an additional surge of energy into the cosmos that literally blew out the circuits of the tablets the light suddenly went out death was reborn and evil returned to our midst the tablets however still retained an afterglow Moses put the glowing tablets into the ark along with the scroll of the Torah though not operating at peak capacity this divine apparatus could help mankind Replenish the light that previously showered Sinai and the world. All the Torahs and arcs that
Illumination of Life 594 He opened the discussion with the verse and they shall make an ark of acacia wood Shema 2510 The book of Torah is the central pillar namely Zeir and its ark is the Shechina and inside and outside shall he overlay it a bit 11 namely the Holy One blessed be he with his Shechina that covers him from outside and inside the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina are all one this is not so with the ark in this world for the Torah which is inside is one kind and the ark is another kind the one is written with ink and the other is wood overlaid with gold certainly the Torah is more beloved than everything as it is written gold and glass cannot equal it Eo 2817 595 from a different view even the Torah and the ark that are in this world show that it is all one ink and wood like the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina because ink is made of apples which are of wood namely of gallnuts so we find that a Torah scroll that is written with ink is one kind with the ark that is made of wood for this is the secret of the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina moreover ink namely the letters is black on the outside and white on the inside as are the Torah scholars and sages black in this world which is outside they are beautiful in the world to come which is in the inside therefore ink had dio is the same expression as dioing sufficient for a servant to be like his master dio contains the letters in yud or the letters of yud and his hand that allude to Chakmabana and Dad, which is the secret of YUD for a man writes with his hand and of RAI may in the section 56 and look that you make them after their pattern. Your Rabbi Yussi says that the title verse is referring to the tabernacle. God gave Moses detailed instructions for constructing the tabernacle and also gave him a vision of how the tabernacle of Metatron would look in the future. The tabernacle above did not come into existence until the tabernacle below was complete. Rabbi Yussi then tells us that there are two tabernacles and two priests of the latter. One is the primordial light Jesus of Zir and the other is Michael the high priest. The relevance of this passage, our physical world, is an exact reflection of the upper world. Thus, the well known Kabbalistic phrase as above, so below, the forces of the upper world influence and animate all events in this physical world except for the actions of man are. Deeds in the lower world causes stirring in the upper world thus by reading this section we reconnect ourselves to the tabernacle below and the supernal tabernacle above forever ensuring our ties to the light of the creator we make contact with the angel monitron michael and the sphere of bana and shesed which bring an abundance of mercy and inner guidance into our lips 596 rabbi you see open the discussion saying of these mysteries of the tabernacle it is written and look that you make them after their pattern shema 2540 and it is written and you shall rear up the tabernacle according to its fashion shema 2630 we have learned that the holy one blessed be he spoke to moses of all the forms and all the constructions of the tabernacle each one as it should be and showed him the angel metatron who serves the high priest inside if you ask but the tabernacle above was not erected until the day that the tabernacle was erected below and that youth metatron did not serve above until the day that they served below in the other tabernacle 597 he answered certainly it is so that the tabernacle was not erected above until it was erected below Moses saw above the appearance of the whole tabernacle but it was not arranged completely until the tabernacle was erected below and he saw Metatron who he served afterwards and he did not see him actually serving but rather as he would be serving later on but not at that time the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses see the tabernacle and see the youth Metatron but it will all be delayed until the tabernacle will be erected below 598 if you ask Metatron serves in the tabernacle above and not Michael he answers the tabernacle is of Metatron and Michael the high priest is the one who serves in the tabernacle of Metatron as the high priest serves above in another tabernacle that is concealed and not revealed which is the secret of the world to come which is by there are two tabernacles one is concealed by and one is the tabernacle of Metatron. There are two priests, meaning the attributes of Chisa that is called priest. One is the primordial light, namely Chisa of Zeir and Ben, and one is Michael the high priest. Below section 57, three names included as one rabbi Shimon here discloses some concealed secrets of the supernal tabernacle, Bano, which is built on twelve pearls or supernal limbs. He speaks then of the three names which are combined together and which interpenetrate each other from the right, left, and central columns of Zir and Ben. The right column Chisa holds the Aleph and Lamed of El. The left column Bure takes those letters and adds Hey Yemem to form Elohim. Mercy is included with them. The central column of Zir and Ben takes all these and adds Nunbab to form Elohim or Elohim. We can see that the right column is included in the left, but the left column is also included in the right by virtue of the fact that they take letters from it. World to combine it to form MEM or MEM or water. Rabbi Shimon also explains here how letters are formed and congealed and cocooned. The relevance of this passage, the mention of 12 pearls, indicates the root of the 12 constellations. Thus, we receive power to ascend above the plane of the planets and their respective astrological influences. At this moment, we alter our destiny for the better, guaranteeing a redemption that is free of negative influences, judgments, and any form of pain. When the Zohar discourses on the three columns, we are strengthened in our soul so that our behavioral actions embody balance. We receive mercy, right column, and it forever tempers and sweetens our acts of judgment towards others. We arouse judgment, left column, and it balances excessive mercy so that we offer tough love in the appropriate measure and time. We receive emotional strength to always resist our selfish desires, central column, so that we enjoin our soul to the supernal realm, the source of all sustenance and blessing finally the powers of creation embodied by the Hebrew letters bring complete order balance and rejuvenation to all existence 599 from here concealed secrets of the tabernacle are disclosed by the mouth of the luminary who is Rabbi Shimon the supernal tabernacle which is by is built on 12 pearl supernal limbs which are three columns and Malchut that receives them each one of these four is combined of three columns totaling 12 and are comprised the right within the left and the left within the right 600 there are three names that are combined together they are El Elohim and Elohim and our Elohim as shall be explained and each penetrates the other El is the first name as is set on the right of Zeir and Ben which is the secret of Chisa the system is as follows Aleph which is first is to the right namely Chisa it was turned into a shapeless lump and was sculpted in the secret of the right smallness is considered as if it were an Unfinished form for it is a formless lump not yet completed while greatness is considered shaped when it entered and served internally namely in Bina that is called supernal tabernacle the lame jointed in its secret it is called El Aleph lame because the lame emerged from the secret of above inside the holy of holies which is Bina because the lamb alludes to the secret of tower that flies in the air namely Bina 601 the lame became cocooned there in Bina and it is certain that when it emerged from there it became cocooned like the other letters that became cocooned and shaped after emerging from the secret of the world to come which is Bina because before the letters enter the central column they are moist and after they emerge from there to the secret of the firmament which is the central column they congeal and become cocooned and lamed also even though it is a supernal secret alluding to Bina the secret of the tower that flies in the air it did not become Cocooned until it emerged outside, then it is the name L which is to the right of Zeir and Ben 602. The left includes within it the right and takes this name L Aleph to itself and combines with it when it is included with it. It is called Elohim Aleph Lamed. Final MEM he questions, and if you say, Behold, the left came first in the secret of the world to come 603, he answers, Certainly it is so, but when the grades emerge in the secret of letters from the world to come, which is by the name Elohim has to be revealed and erected and point at that place from where they emerged, meaning at the order of their emerging in Bina. Therefore, this name was erected in this way. First, Aleph and Lamed on the right side became included later within the left, and the left took it and became joined with its letters Hey MEM and is called Elohim as they emerged in Bina. So did they emerge in Zeir and Ben. This is the secret of the right which is L that is present in the name Elohim. According to that secret, I have found that there is mercy wherever there is judgment, because judgment which is left includes it and is erected and visible in it. 604 The one that emerged from there from Bina in the sense of the central column of Zeir and Ben receives them both, namely the name El and the name Elohim, and is completed to be called Elohim. And our Elohim here is the completeness that appears from the secret of the supernal world, which is Bina. It is all combined one with the other, because there are here in the name Elohim six letters Aleph Lamed on the right, Hayyud on the left, and Nunbab in the center, and they are combined together.
and the right took one letter of the letters Hey final M E M that are in the world to come, which is by the left took two which are Hey of Hey final M E M and the right included the left in itself and took the last letter of Hey final M E M which is M E M it also took the yud which was to the left the M E M it received is fully spelled M E M M E M together with the yud it received the word Mayim and water M E M yud final M E M was constructed and does the right include the left within it. Section 58 The letters here Rabbi Shimon speaks at length telling how all the letters formed role combined conceived new letters and thus participated in the creation of everything fire water air all the fire out the light the goat skin covering on the tabernacle the perfection of the tabernacle sound the garden and the waters he tells how all the seven names coming from the name of M E M bet in 42 letters are the secret of in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. We also learned the meanings of and darkness was on the face of the deep. Let there be light and there was light. The labor and its pedestal. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. The voice of the Creator is upon the waters. The yell of glory. Let the earth bring forth grass and let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place. The relevance of this passage. The Hebrew letters are the instruments of creation. They are genetic strands of cosmic DNA. The letters transcend religion, race, geography, and the very concept of language. They are instruments of power. This truth is found within the Hebrew word for letter, which means pulse or vibration, indicating a flow of energy by virtue of their shapes, sounds, and sequences. Hebrew letters radiate a wide range of forces. Their influence is universal. Their scope sweeping their power is shared with all mankind. Though this penetrating truth has been concealed for. Millennia their sacred energy removes rash and intolerant emotions fear and anxiety from our beings their spiritual influence cleanses destructive impulses from our natures the light they emit purifies our hearts all these spiritual benefits and more are now bequeathed to us in this majestic passage discoursing on the creation of the spiritual and physical cosmos 607 afterwards the letters are erected in such a way that the Allah that was originally on the right side begot and brought forth in the left the letter shin which is combined of the three sides right left and center therefore it contains three bobs and a j pint with the letter Allah and the combination ash and fire was made on the left some more letters were conceived by the blows of the two sides right and left and they approached each other in controversy for the right is made of water and the left of fire from this controversy of fire with water and water with fire they bore letters and they brought forth it Letter Rush and the letter Bob and the letter Chet to become Rush and near the Rush entered between the two sides which are water and fire and mediated and combined the one with the other and then the original letter settled in their places each one in perfection 608 more letters were conceived and they rolled together the Allah brought forth MEM that is from the right side because it settled in the right and now the Allah brought it out to the aspect of the left side the MEM brought forth the shin to the aspect of the central column because the MEM was originally included in the left because it was a closed final MEM in the name Elohim on the left afterwards it became combined in the right for the Allah took it and made it into an open MEM so we find that it is completed on two sides on the right and on the left and once it was completed both the sides in it conceived and bore together the letter shin that is combined of the two sides it is the secret of the central column that combines within itself right and left for the three branches of the shin allude to them 609 those three letters Aleph MEM shin grew stronger conceived and begot three others while revolving the MEM was constructed and conceived and bore rush the Aleph conceived and bore Bob the shin conceived and bore the letter chet and then they were accomplished together 610 the letters of the secret of Aleph MEM shin again conceived and revolved as before the Aleph conceived and bore the letter bet on the west side which is Malchut then the Aleph settled on the south side which is Chisa the MEM conceived and bore the letter Dalit on the north side which is Bure and the MEM ascended between north and south where it is suspended in the air the shin conceived and bore the letter Gimel and settled in the east side which is Tiferet and the shin ascended between west and east and is suspended in the air so we find the two letters MEM and shin are suspended in the air 611 it. Allah that remained in the vessel of Chisid of the body was elevated in its place and ascended above to the place of Chakma Banadad, which is the secret of Yudh of the name Yudh Bab Hay was crowned there with Yudh Hay and these Yudh Hay the Allah grew stronger to conceive and bore Hay and the name Yudh Hay Bab Hay was completed and remained in its place in Chisid of the body and the name Yudh Hay Bab Hay illuminated within the body Yudh Hay Bab in Chisid Bure and Tiferet of it. Body and the last Hay and Malchut then the Allah was crowned and illuminated and expanded in its light and bore light and brought forth the letter Tet which is the striking with which the mystery of the supernal world which is by struck and illuminated in the light of Chisid Bure and Tiferet 612 then the Allah was elevated and took to it Mem and Shin that were in the air they joined it and became the combination of Allah Mem Shin as before the Allah settled in the south side which is. She said the shin in the east side which is Tiferet and the MEM in the north side which is Bure the Gimel that was in the east side ascended and conceived and bore Zadik Toph and the Bet which was in the west side which is Malchut came and ascended and joined between Zadik and Toph Aleph and Bob ascended the one from the south and the other from the east namely Aleph from the south and Bob from the east and were both joined with the Bet between the letters Zadik and Toph they joined and it named Tzbot illuminated Zadik Bet Aleph Bob Toph 613 when this name Tzbot illuminated in the tabernacle which is Malchut the letters conceived and bore Zadik Bet on the letters Aleph MEM shin ascended as before meaning that they illuminated in Shisit Bure and Tiferet as mentioned above they conceived and bore Samakai Pei which are the Sfira Tiferet Netzach and Hot 614 the cup remained alone but went up and down and then stood in the hole of the great abyss the Holy One. Blessed be he saw that it was confused and without a body or form and that it did not enter the tabernacle which is Malchut so he made it into a cover on the tabernacle what is it, it is a curtain of goat's hair to be a covering over the tabernacle as it is written and you shall make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering the tent upon the tabernacle Shema 267 it is written a tent yet it is not a tent but a cover for the tent for it is a monkey head cough and not a human 615 again it letters Aleph MEM shin rolled into the building of the tabernacle as before the shin on the east side and the gimel that was in the east remained suspended in the air for from it emerged the name TZBAOT and the MEM rolled and settled in the north side because in order to illuminate in net sash hot and yes the letters Aleph MEM shin have to be clothed in cheese of and tie for at the dollar emerged which was in the north and joined the shin on that side and the combination shin dollar and Demon was formed the Allah rolled and settled on the south side and ascended to the head of the Yud that is there it ascended and became strengthened with it and took it and joined it with Shindalat the name Shadeh Shindalat Yud was unified into one which illuminates in the sphere Yezid when this name was established in the tabernacle which is Malchut she can exist and is situated within the lower tabernacle meaning that its existence depends upon the erection of the lower tabernacle. 616 again the letters Aleph MEM Shin rolled as before in order to settle in the tabernacle and the letters ascended first the Aleph and then the Toph and the combination of Aleph Toph was formed first the Bet and then the Shin and the combination of Bet Shin was formed the combinations of the letters exchanged by means of the Atbash cipher and then emerged Aleph Bet Gimel Yatav they turned through the holy engravings Aleph to cover the Aleph of the Atbash cipher brought forth cup to guard. The tabernacle as mentioned above the cup brought forth the rush the rush brought it forth iron and these became the combination of cup rush iron 617 the secret of the name kuf rush iron is the secret of the verse and she put the skins of the kids of the goat upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck bear she 2716 and similarly and you shall make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle for the name kuf rush iron whose source is kuf contains the harsh heb as immense of your judgments that are called goats have I am therefore this part must be visible on the outside to guard what is inside so that the external forces do not gain nourishment from it as has been explained earlier the letters of the name Sintet Nun, Kavrashayin which is the second name of the name of MEM Bet 42 after Allah Petimal Yud Tov Zedek mentioned earlier are marked outside the tabernacle in order to guard the tabernacle which is the secret of the Holy Covenant it. Foreskin was
that it contains there becomes and darkness was on the face of the deep but to the gimel brought forth resh and the dalit cup and these became the combinations gimel equals resh dalit equals kuf until here after there emerged the four combinations of aleph equals top bet equals shin gimel equals resh dalit equals kuf the letters rolled and struck one another to be established in the tabernacle the reason is that the permutation of the atbash cipher contains eleven combinations aleph equals top bet equals shin gimel equals resh dalit equals kuf a equals zedek bob equals Pays an equals ion jet equals same tet equals non yud equals mem and caf equals lamed which are divided into three columns right left and central the first four aleph equals top bet equals shingimel equals resh dalit equals kuf are the right column therefore they are considered as establishing the tabernacle 619 these three letters aleph mem shin brought forth offspring hazadik bop for in the continuation of the atbash cipher these are the letters that are suspended in the air they struck others and brought forth the form of it tabernacles a9 which is the seventh combination of the atbash cipher until here it is related to the secret of the verse and darkness upon the face of the deep all of them namely all the three previously mentioned combinations a equals zadik bop equals pays an equals ion are at its side meaning the side of darkness it is by reason that these three combinations are in the left column of the atbash cipher and before the left joins with the right it is holy dark the same it came and joined with it Letter Chet and the combination Chet Samek was formed, which is at the first of the four combinations of the central column, which are Chet equals Samek, Tet equals Nunwa Yud equals M E M C A F equals Lamed. Then it is said, Let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13, because the light comes from the central column after it mediates and joins together the two columns right and left. 620 The letters Aleph, Etimal, Yatav, Zedek rolled as before and conceived and bore and brought forth one form of the secrets of the tabernacle in one inclusion in the secret of the permutated Albam cipher. The Aleph conceived and bore the letter lamed by means of strength and might, and the combination Aleph equals Lamed was formed. The Aleph strengthened in its might and ascended in its glory and bore the letter Bet, and they conceived and bore the letters, and these other letters joined the M E M joined through its engraving with the letter Bet, and the combination Bet equals M E M was formed, so they emerged in pairs up to the combinations. Tet equals Resh Yad equals Shin Caf equals Tov so that the letters should rise to their places in the combination of the secret of the tabernacle. This is the secret of the labor and its pedestal. Shema 3816 for the labor is Netzach and its pedestal is Hod 621. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Bear sheet 16 the waters were ascending by the supernal waters and descending by the lower waters in the secret of the letters. Aleph lamed the Aleph of El brought forth the Bob and the Bob brought forth. Cup and the letter lamed of El ascended to them. The letters were engaged in the engraving in one joint voice. Had called Kuf Bob Lamed. Therefore the upper waters were divided from the lower waters through the letters Kuf Bob Lamed. This is what is written. The voice of Hashem is upon the waters. The L of Glory Tehillim 293. These letters Aleph lamed that are in the verse. The L of Glory conceived and bore and were engraved in the imprint by means of the letters so as to produce the drawings of it. Tabernacle 622 The three letters Aleph Mem Shin conceived and bore and became engraved in the imprint of the letter so as to produce the drawings of the tabernacle which is Malchut the Aleph brought forth Gimel the Shin brought forth final none and joined it with Gimel in the secret of Gan Garden Gimel final none which is the third pair of the Albam cipher in the secret of the verse let the earth bring forth grass bear sheet 111 the letters Aleph Mem Shin rolled again by means of bet equals Mem of the Albam cipher in these waters that gathered into one place as it is written let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place of it 9 section 59 SH Mah Yisrael your Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yusi are again traveling on the road Rabbi Yusi opens a discussion with the words of Kriyat SH Mah Hero Yisrael the Creator our Elohim the Creator is one and Hero Yisrael this day you are become the people and Hero Yisrael you are to pass over the Jordan this day he then asks why the word here is used so many times and says the union of Shem name with I and 70 is necessary he next speaks of the 70 names in the secret of the supernal chariot the 72 names of the three verses the 70 members of the Sanhedrin plus the two witnesses S H Yisrael we learn alludes to Malchut that is called Shem when he unites with Zer and which is called Yisrael next Rabbi Yossi tells us that this day you are become a people means that you broke your heart in order to serve God the hero Yisrael of the unison is we learn the secret of above and below the secret of people accepting upon themselves the yoke of the heavenly kingdom Malchut at this moment of acceptance the Shechinah comes and rests on the person's head and bears him witness before God because the person recites and unites the name of the Holy One the Shechinah blesses him with seven blessings and calls to him you are my servant Yisrael in whom I will be glorified. The relevance of this passage to great sages traveling upon a road indicates the journey of their souls through celestial corridors in the upper world where they behold secrets of the universe. One secret collected on this excursion concerns the SH Ma which essentially enjoins our world and our souls to the upper world. The purpose of this revelation is to unify the two worlds and this effect is achieved now. The SH Ma emits a light of healing and divine radiance that nourishes 248 parts of our spiritual and physical bodies. Thus in the act of meditatively perusing this passage we receive light that heals all our physical ailments and the spiritual nutrients that forever strengthen our soul. The sages speak of the 72 names of God so that we may draw upon their miraculous power to achieve our personal transformations. This miraculous change touches all mankind to facilitate the unification of the lower world with the upper. The Sheshanah is spoken of so that we may permanently fortify our Immune system and forever shield this world from the dark forces of the night. 623 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yusi were traveling on the road while they were still traveling. Rabbi Yusi said, Let us start with delicacies and let us say words of Torah. Rabbi Yusi opened the discussion with the words of Kriyat Shma and said, It is written, Hero Yisrael Hashem, our Elohim Hashem is one. Devarim 64, hearken, O Yisrael, this day you are become the people. Devarim 279, and Hero Yisrael, you are to pass over. The Jordan this day, Devarim 91, what is the need for all these years that Moses said, Hero Yisrael Hashem, our Elohim Hashem is one, is meant for unison and is good, but why the other one? 624, he answers, They all should be interpreted. The here have Shma, O Yisrael of the unison should certainly be interpreted, for here it alludes to and reflects the unison of the supernal Shachma in Shma Shin Mem in the ayin is of the large letters, for it refers to an inclusion that includes what is. Above and below in one unity because S H M I is composed of the letters of Shem and name and Ayin for here this name which is Malchut that is called name is comprised in the seventy equals Ayin supernal names of Z E I R and Pen in order to combine them for the name which is Malchut is blessed by them and is become a part of them they have to be combined as one meaning in one word S H M I in one unity and one has to pay attention in them six hundred and twenty five certainly the seventy names are in the secret of the supernal chariot which are Shesed Bira and Tiferet of Z E I R and Pen of the chest and above which are a vehicle for Bina namely seventy two names of the three verses and Drum of Dan it came in stretched out Shem one thousand four hundred and nineteen to twenty one this is the secret of seventy the Hebrew letter Ayin members of the Sanhedrin plus the two witnesses and this name is blessed by that supernal chariot which is Malchut and becomes a part of them afterwards after the word S H M I the word Israel without attributes is recited namely Z E I R and yet we have learned it is Yisrael Sabo, meaning that Yisrael, which is Zeir Anpin, should be in one unity with that place to which everyone is attached. Zeir Anpin, which is called Yisrael in general, should be attached with Yisrael Sabo, meaning that he ascends and becomes a garment to it. Hence, Shma Yisrael, which alludes that now the wife cleaves with her husband, namely Malchut, that is called Shem, with Zeir Anpin, that is called Yisrael. Everything is in one inclusion, and this is the meaning of Shma Yisrael of the unison. Afterwards, the three sides unite, which are Hashem, our Elohim, Hashem is one, which are Abba and Ima and Zeir Anpin, so that all becomes one. Six hundred and twenty-six. Hero Yisrael, in all
Heart so as to serve the Holy One, blessed be 628 Euro Yisrael, you are to pass over the Jordan this day, it is all in the lower level which is Malchut, and Euro Yisrael of the Unison is the upper level which is Zeir and that is included in Yisrael. Saba as mentioned above, what is the difference between them in Euro Yisrael of the Unison? Not all of them have it in this matter because it is the secret of above of Yisrael, Saba and Tabuna and of below Zeir and and Malchut. Is the secret of accepting upon themselves the yoke of the heavenly kingdom and anything the person has to be ready at that time to declare the unity of the name of the Holy One, blessed be his EIR and to accept upon himself the yoke of the heavenly kingdom, which is Malchut 629. At the moment that the person comes to accept upon himself the yoke of the heavenly kingdom, and the Shechina comes and rests on his head and stands over him as a witness, she bears witness before the Holy King. That this one unites his name twice daily and his name is united above and below properly, therefore the ayin of Shema Yisrael is of the large letters and the Dalit of Eshat and one is also of the large letters which are the letters ayin Dalit Ed and witness meaning to be a witness before the Holy King. We have already established that Hashem our Elohim Hashem is the secret of the unison on three sides, namely Abba Ima and Zeir and and this is the secret of the unity in three sides is it. Holy Luminary has established and has asserted it in many places. We have no permission to assert it anymore. 630. The Shechina comes and rests upon the head of that person who unites the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he above and below properly and blesses him with seven blessings corresponding to the seven Sfarach. He calls to him and said to me, You are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified. Yeshayah 493. Section 60. To you it was shown that you might know. Rabbi She opens this discussion with to you it was shown that you might know that the Creator he is the Elohim. He says the children of Israel lost all knowledge of their faith when they were in Egypt until Moses taught them about the supernal Elohim in the world and they saw many miracles were given the Torah and learned the ways of God. The entire secret of the faith is we are told suspended upon this verse. No, therefore this day and consider it in your heart that the Creator, he is Elohim in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is no other. The secret of secrets is that Zir and which is Yud Hey and Elohim which is Malchut are one. The relevance of this passage, just as a stone is made of the same material as the mountain from which it is hewn, the soul of man is a spark of the divine light. Therein lies the secret of the profound oneness that underlies this physical reality. The essence of the Creator and our souls is an unending desire to impart goodness, joy, and delight. Thus, when we resist our wanton self seeking desires and use them in the service of others, sharing, we attain oneness with the Creator. The stone merges with the mountain. The faith to live by this truth awakens in our hearts. The strength to conquer our avaricious tendencies is born within us. Trust, conviction, and knowledge of the Creator are emblazoned in our minds. Our ultimate transformation and the final evolutionary stage of humanity are achieved. Mankind now. Embodies a desire to receive for the sake of sharing and oneness is achieved between the light and the vessel. 631 Rabbi She opened the discussion after him, saying to you, It was shown that you might know that Hashem, He is the Elohim. Devarim 435. This verse should be viewed closely. What is the meaning of to you? It was shown. He answers, When the children of Israel went forth from Egypt, they knew nothing through the secret of the faith in the Holy One. Blessed be He, because they all worshipped idols in exile. They forgot all the roots of the faith that they had originally that the twelve tribes inherited from their father Jacob. 632. When Moses came, He taught them that there was a supernal Elohim in the world, as we have established afterwards. They saw all the miracles and mighty deeds by the sea, and all the miracles and mighty deeds that He performed for them in Egypt. Then they saw many mighty deeds with the manna and with the water the Torah was given to them, and they Learn the ways of the Holy One, blessed be he, until they came to that time. 633 Moses said to them, Until now I had to teach you as one teaches a child. This is the meaning of to you. It was shown that you might know, for I taught you until now the knowledge to know, behold, and enter the secret of faith, which is that Hashem, he is the Elohim. 634 If you wonder whether it is a small matter to know this, behold, it is written, Know therefore this day, and consider it in your heart that Hashem, he is the Elohim in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is no other. Ibid 39 The entire secret of the faith, deriving the secret of all secrets from this, and knowing the most concealed of all is stems from this verse. Yud Hey Elohim is a full name for Yud Hey Hey Zir and and Elohim is Malchut, and it indicates that it is all one to you. It was shown that you might know that Hashem, he is the Elohim. Here is the secret of secrets to those who know the law, namely the secret. That Zeir Anpin, which is why Yudhi Hei and Elohim, which is Malchut, are one section 61. Then I was by him as a nursling. Rabbi Shia speaks here about the relationship between a king and a craftsman who together make a palace. He says the Torah is the craftsman whom the Holy One used to create the world before the world was created. The Torah preceded it by 2,000 years. The Holy One looked into the Torah, saw what was to be created, and created it. He created men to be occupied with Torah for which the world exists. Now everyone who looks into the Torah and is occupied with it causes the world to remain in existence like Adam. We are told all people before they come to this world stand before God in the same form and existence as they are in the world. At the moment the soul is about to descend to this world, God calls the appointed angel who has authority over the soul and asks the angel to bring her into his presence. Then the soul comes clothed in the form. Of this world and the Holy King makes her swear that she will be occupied with Torah when she descends to this world. It is better for one not to be born, we are told, than to come to this world and not try to know God. The relevance of this passage here we learn that the Torah predated the world and was indeed the pattern for all creation. Traditionally, the Torah is viewed as a religious canon in which the fundamental laws of moral and physical conduct are inscribed. Scholars view the Torah as a document of recorded history or a collection of stories that expound upon God's relationship with man. Kabbalistically, these descriptions miss the mark. The author of the Zohar, the eminent Kabbalist Rabbi Shimon Bar Yakei, ridicules those who see only stories and tales in this sacred instrument. The scroll is not an attempt to define the proper morals by which a man should live. Humanity will never seek out positive change, nor will a man persevere on the spiritual path when the vague concepts of Morality and ethics are the primary motivation and reward lacking the Kabbalistic knowledge concerning the Torah. The scroll becomes a fruitless symbol of tradition instead of an awesome instrument of power. What is the power of the Torah when viewed through the lens of Kabbalah? It is the personal and universal power to change, to transform, to elevate, to grow, to become godlike toward that end. The scroll emits spiritual influences that envelope us with healing so that we share it with others. Prosperity so that we may tithe and give to the poor assistance in the removal of envy so that we may love others unconditionally. The ability to attract one soulmate so that we may complete our souls and the courage to conquer our deepest fears so that we may climb the highest mountains. This most potent passage evokes this ancient memory recalling our promise to God to delve heart and soul into the Torah's mysteries and at this moment here and now we are honoring our commitment igniting it. Full power of the Torah and completing the purpose of creation 635 Happy are all those who are occupied with Torah for when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he looked into the Torah and thus created the world he did create the world with Torah and with Torah was the world created as we have established it is written that I was by him as a nursling Hebamon Mishle 830 do not pronounce it Amon but rather him and craftsman for Torah is the craftsmanship of the world 636 he questions is the Torah a craftsman he answers yes similar to a king who wishes to build a palace if he does not take a craftsman he cannot make the palace once the palace is built it is not known after the name of the craftsman but rather by the name of the king for people say these are the palaces that the king made by reason that the king gave the idea for all these palaces 637 so the Holy One blessed be he wanted to create the world he looked to the craftsman which is the Torah and although the craftsman made the palace, it is credited to the name of the king for people say these are the palaces that the king made. Certainly the king built the palace. The Torah cries that I was by him as a craftsman for the Holy One. Blessed be he created the world with me before the world was created. The Torah preceded the world by two thousand years when the Holy One. Blessed be he wanted to create the world. He looked into every single word in the Torah and created the craft in the world correspondingly because
B. Looked into the Torah and created the world. Man looks into the Torah and causes it to exist. So we see that the existence and the sustenance of the entire world is the Torah. Therefore, happy is the man who is occupied in Torah, for he keeps the world in existence. 641. At the time that the desire arose in the Holy One, blessed be he to create Adam. He stood before him in his form and existence as he is in the world. All the people of the world before they come to this world stand in there complete existence as they are present in this world in one treasury where all the souls of the world are clothed in their form 642 at the moment that they are about to descend to this world the holy one blessed be he calls one appointed angel in whose authority the holy one blessed be he places all the souls that are to descend to this world and he says to him bring me the spirit of so and so at that moment the soul comes clothed in the form of this world and that appointed angel presence it before the holy king 643 the holy one blessed be he says to it and makes it swear that it should be occupied with Torah when it descends to this world to know it and to know the secret of the faith for everyone who was in this world and did not try to know him it is better created therefore it appears before the king through that appointed angel as mentioned before so as to know him in this world and to endeavor in the holy one blessed be he in the secret of the faith Section 62 to you it was shown that you might know part 2 Rabbi Shia says here that the secret of the Torah is to know and to behold this world in the secret of faith he then reminds us that the general principle of the whole secret of faith is that you might know that the creator he is the Elohim this is of course the knowledge of above and below Malchut below being both the faith and the name Elohim he speaks of the written Torah which is Yudhei Vav or Zir and Penedov. The oral Torah which is Malchut and the name Elohim it is all one the written Torah is general and the oral Torah is specific because Malchut is one specific sphere of the tense Firat of Zir and Rabbi Shia then says there are two precepts of the Torah one Yudhei Vav is remember and the other Elohim is keep the secret of remember has 248 positive precepts we learn and the secret of keep has 365 negative precepts and it is all one the relevance of this passage here we receive. Faith for those times when we are drowning in doubt we tie our souls to the upper world through the power of the tetragram and Yudhei Vavhei and divinity flows into our lives the truth of the creator is invoked in the hearts of all mankind so that we are all deeply committed to walk the spiritual path of Torah illuminated by Kabbalah 644 to you it was shown that you might know by that appointed angel that is before the Holy One blessed be he that you might know to know and to behold this world by means of the faith by means of the Torah everyone who was in this world that did not occupy himself with Torah to know it, it would be better for him not to have been created since the Holy One blessed be he brought man into this world for that reason 645 that you might know that Hashem he is the Elohim this is the general principle of the whole secret of the faith of the entire Torah the comprising of that which is above and below the secret is the principle comprehending the whole secret of the faith which is Malchut so it is certainly that the name Elohim is Malchut the inclusion of the entire Torah is the secret of the written Torah namely the name Yudhei Vavhei which is Z-E-I-R-N and that is called the written Torah this is the secret of the oral Torah which is Malchut which is the name Elohim it is all one and this is the totality of the secret of the faith because Hashem he is the Elohim is the complete name which is the secret of the faith that is called name for in this union it is full and whole what is it he is Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 Hashem shall be one is the secret of Yero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one this is one unison and his name one is the secret of blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever for this is another unison so that his name should be one which is Malchut this is the secret of Hashem he is the Elohim I Melashim 1839 which is written one day are in one unity 646 and if you say that if Hashem he is the Elohim is similar to what is written Hashem shall be one and his name one yet it is not similar to the verse Hashem he is the Elohim for it were written Hashem shall be one and his name is one I would agree but it is written Hashem shall be one and his name one it should have been said here Hashem he is the Elohim he is that it would have looked like Hashem shall be one and his name one 647 he answers it is all one because when these two names are unified the one in one unison and the other in another unison as it is written Hashem is one and his name one both the names become one and are combined one within the other it all becomes a complete name in one unison thus Hashem he is the Elohim because everything is combined with each other to become one as long as they are not all joined and are each one by itself they are not included one with the other so that they would all become one 648 Zohar explains its previous words which say that Hashem he is the Elohim comprises the generality of the entire Torah for assuredly the Torah is the written Torah and the oral Torah the written Torah as it is written Hashem which is Zeir and that is called the written Torah and the oral Torah as it is written the Elohim namely Malchut that is called oral Torah and called Elohim because the Torah is the secret of the holy name Hashem he is the Elohim it is called the written Torah and oral Torah the one written Torah is general and the other oral Torah is specific because Zeir and is general and Malchut is specific because Malchut is one specific sphere of the tense fire of Zeir and the general rule needs a specific and the specific needs the general and they join one with the other to be all one 649 therefore the general rule of the Torah is that of above Zeir and and below Malchut because this name Yudhei Vav is above in Zeir and and it other name Elohim is below in Malchut the one is the secret of the upper world and the other is the secret of the lower world therefore it is written to you it was shown that you might know that Hashem he is the Elohim is comprehends everything and this is what man must know in this world 650 if you ask where are the precepts of the Torah in this generality of Hashem he is the Elohim he answers the one why you behave up is remember and the other Elohim is keep and all the precepts of the Torah are included in these in the secret of remember that includes 248 positive precepts and in the secret keep that includes 365 negative precepts that together are 613 precepts of the Torah and it is all one section 63 Tefillin Rabbi you see here explains that the evening service is obligatory because Zir and Day and Malchut night must be joined in unison he says that and you shall love is right and, and it shall come to pass if you hearken is left this is more specific than the general unity or joining of left and right in S.H. Yisrael. This unity we are told is similar to the head Tefillin and the hand Tefillin. The head Tefillin with its four paragraphs is congruent with the three names. The creator are Elohim, the creator in the S.H. Yisrael. Rabbi Yossi then tells us that the left and right columns of the paragraphs and of the three names both join with that in the central column as the union of Chakma and Bina. The hand Tefillin is the unity of the head Tefillin with Malchut and the secret of this unity we learn is blessed. All blessings flow from the upper point Chakma, which is male to the world to come Bina, which is female Bina, is therefore called Barak and also a blessing. Rabbi Shimon comments that the unity of Zir and the head Tefillin and Malchut, the hand Tefillin is set in order by way of Chakma Bina, the right of that and the left of that. The relevance of this passage Tefillin is an antenna and it we see. The power of joining left and right and above and below as a battery requires both a positive and negative pole to produce power. Tefillin generates metaphysical power by incorporating the positive right and negative left spiritual poles permeating the planet and the heavens. This joining is also germane to the connection of the evening service or reading stirs the forces generated through the laying of Tefillin and the performance of the evening service are evil inclination and the dark forces that dominate the night are crushed so great is the light channeled by the Zohar Chakma unites with Bina the upper world and joins our world our bodies are tuned to our souls and all that exists shines with resplendent light 651 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying we have learned that the evening service is obligatory it is certainly an obligation because the evening cry at SH is obligatory for the Holy One blessed be he unites with Malchut during the night just as he unites during the day the aspect of night which is Malchut is included in the day which is Zeir and, and the aspect of day is included in the night and one unison is formed if one says that the evening service is voluntary it is because IT corresponds to the portions of the sacrifices and the fat that are consumed on the altar during the night for there is no obligation that they should be burnt during the night as we have already established 652 it is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might Devarim 65 we already established this verse and the friends have established it but it could be asked in this unison
Paragraphs each one by itself and here are three names what is the difference between them 654 he answers they have observed about these four paragraphs that the one paragraph sanctify Shema 132 is the first upper point namely Chakma and the right column another paragraph and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you a bit 11 is the secret of the world to come which is Bina and the left column one paragraph and it shall come to pass if you hearken is the secret of the right of it. Mokin of that and the final paragraph and it shall be if you hearken is the secret of the left of the Mokin of that because that which is the central column combines Chakma and Bina which are right and left this is the secret of the head Tefilin and here in the secret of the unity of SH Yisrael are three names which are like the four paragraphs the first Yud Hei is the upper point which is the beginning of everything which is Chakma and the right column are Elohim is. The secret of the world to come, namely Bina and the left column, the last Yud Hei is a combination of right and left together in one combination, namely Dea, which is the central column that combines right and left. This is also the unity of the head Tefal, and so we see that they are both equal. This is the first unity, namely Sh Yisrael, which is the upper unity that precedes the lower unity, which is blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom. 655 The head Tefal is the combination of all these four paragraphs together, for they are not placed in four individual compartments like in the head Tefal, but rather are all in one compartment. This is the secret of the unity of blessed is the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever, which is the lower unity of Malchut. Here in the lower unity is the inclusion of the head Tefal, which is Chakma Bina and Dea of Zeir and Pen, which are included in the head Tefal, which is Malchut. 656 The secret of this. Unity is blessed. This is the secret of the upper point, which is blessed for all the blessings flow from there, which is chakma. If you ask if the world to come, which is bina, is called blessed, it is not so because the upper point is male and the world to come is female. Therefore, it is called blessed, and she is called the blessing. Therefore, blessed is the upper point. Chakma name is the world to come, which is bina, which is a great name as it is written. And what will you do for your great name? Yahashua 79 glory refers to upper glory, which is zeir and pen that combines right and left. 657 all of them chakma bina and zeir and pen are combined in the hand tefillah, which is his kingdom that takes everything into it. All the worlds are combined in his kingdom to nourish them and to sustain them with all their needs. Hence, forever live for the world and ever, which shows it sustains all the worlds. 658 this is the unity of the head tefillah, which is zeir and pen and of it. And Tefillin, which is Malchut, as it is the secret of the unison of the Tefillin, so is it the unison of everything. This is the clarification of the matter, and I have arranged this unity before the Holy Luminary Rabbi Shimon, who said to me that in four manners is the unity set in order, which are Chakma the right of that and the left of that. This order is clearer than all of them, it is certainly so, and they are all the secret of the faith, which is Malchut, that receives them. But the order of the unity of the Tefillin is the upper unity of Zeir and Pen, as appropriate. Section 64, and you shall love Hashem your Elohim. Rabbi Yossi says here that the right Jesus arouses love for the Holy One, the Holy One moves his right hand toward he who loves him and receives him with love. Rabbi Yossi goes on to explain that if he sets his heart upon man, if he gather to himself his spirit and soul, shows that everything in the world depends only upon desire, love for the Holy One becomes aroused in three ways we learn with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Rabbi Yossi next lists the 13 precepts that are in the right explaining that if you walk in my statutes the right or love shall predominate if you do not the left or judgment shall prevail the relevance of this passage we need only desire his light in order to learn how to love him and draw beneficence to our soul's desire is the catalyst that sets the light into motion. Where it naturally flows from above to below these ancient verses evoke our love and a deep-seated desire for light causing him to radiate throughout the terrestrial realm with awe-inspiring luminance the desire to receive this light for the sake of sharing with others ignites within our hearts and souls the effect of this is nothing short of miraculous 659 since the right and the left were combined by means of the holy name in a general way namely in SH Yisrael and blessed is it. Name it is necessary afterwards to bring them out in a specified way meaning in and you shall love and in and it shall come to pass if you hearken but not by the way of unification because unity appears in the first verse in SH Yisrael so that Hashem should be one in the head Tefillin and his name one in the hand Tefillin and will all be one since this unity was arranged all together in general from the top of the supernal point which is Chakma it is necessary afterwards to arouse it. First life from the top which is Jesus of Zeir and Pen for it is the first of everything of the Sfirat of Zeir and Pen 660 the paragraph and you shall love is the starting point of the right namely the sphere of Jesus to love the Holy One blessed be he with a devotional love who is it that arouses the love it is the right which is Jesus which arouses love the Holy One blessed be he arouses his right hand toward he who loves the Holy One blessed be he and receives him with love all the Things in the world depend only upon desire spirit show spirit and bring spirit and you may derive this from if he sets his heart upon man if he gather to himself his spirit and soul Leo 3414 661 when the person arouses love toward the Holy One blessed be he the awakening of the right which is love is aroused only in three manners as it is written with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might Devarim 65 so we have three manners you should not say either this or that for it is not written either with all your heart or with all your soul or with all your might rather heart soul and money are all necessary then the Holy One blessed be he arouses toward him his right hand extends it to him and receives him 662 of this it is written Hashem says to my master sit you at my right hand tell him 1101 we have remarked about the secret of this verse that King David said it in reference to his level which is Malchut when she is tied to the right there are thirteen precepts here in the right, and you shall love Hashem your Elohim is one with all your heart, two and with all your soul, three with all your might is four, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. Devarim sixty seven is five, and you shall talk of them if it is six. When you sit in your house, if it is seven, and when you walk by the way, if it is eight, and when you lie down, if it is nine, and when you rise up, if it is ten, and you shall bind them as a sign upon your arm. If it eight is eleven, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, if it is twelve, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. If it nine is thirteen six hundred and sixty three, these thirteen precepts are come from the right, and the left is included in the right, which is as it should be whenever the left is aroused, the right starts with it first. Therefore, if they have merit, then the left combines with the right. If not, then the right is combined with the left, and the left dominates it. Reason for this is from the verse if you walk in my statutes Vayikra 263 the left is always aroused with love by the secret of the right and afterwards its judgment becomes overpowering as should be always the friends have already explained these words Rabbi Shia came and kissed him section 65 the tabernacle moreover with ten curtains Rabbi Yusi opens this discussion by saying the ten curtains are the ten spirat he goes on to show the unity of the tabernacle even though it has ten limbs then the unity of the person even though he has many external and internal limbs and lastly the unity of the Torah even though it has many precepts the precepts of the Torah we learn are one in the secret of Adam which is male and female Zir and Pen and Mukba someone who diminishes even one precept in the Torah diminishes the image of the faith Malchut in closing Rabbi Yusi says that the children of Israel are likewise one in that they are one nation the relevance of this passage scientists have for a long time been studying subatomic particles observing by way of instruments their births and movements and deaths the seemingly random nature of their appearance and disappearance and the mysterious linking of pairs of charged particles a reading of this section awakens our awareness of unity and diversity and inner understanding of the mystery of the many in one the union of the parts and the order that underlies chaos the light generated here induces this awareness in the collective consciousness of all mankind banishing the barriers that cause disunity and create chaos every day everywhere people the world over feel a new sprung sense of compassion love and unconditional unity with their neighbor unprecedented in human history 664 he opened the discussion saying moreover you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains Shema 261 here is the mystery of unison because the ten curtains correspond to the tensifier the perfection of it Tabernacle is made of numerous grades as it is written that the tabernacle shall be one of its six in order to show that all the limbs of the
Together they are one in the secret of man who is the secret of why Yudhi Hebab he spelled fully with all of his which is the numerical value of Adam someone who diminishes even one precept in the Torah it is as though he has diminished the image of the faith which is malchute for all the limbs are together in the secret of man therefore everything amounts to the secret of unity 667 therefore the children of Israel are all one nation for it is written about them but you my flock the flock of my pasture are men led man yashis called 3431 and and what one nation in the earth is like your people two small 723 section 66 with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might rabbi it's hot here asks why and with all your soul is necessary when the scripture already says with all your heart since love is aroused only from the heart he then says that with all your heart means both the good heart and the evil heart or evil inclination next he asks why the word all is in with all your soul rabbi laser answers that the soul includes nefesh rash and neshem adding that all your might means all your belongings love for god means to give him all of this and to love him and everything he then says that it is even possible for a person to love god with the evil inclination for when this is subdued to him and the person breaks the evil inclination he is showing love for god he next tells of the enticer who is doing the will of the Holy One by tempting people from the true path and thus enabling them to show righteousness the enticer deserves praise we learn for he does the Holy One's command and enables the righteous to inherit their supernal treasures in the world to come just as the side of life becomes strengthened when people do good the other side the evil inclination becomes strengthened when the evil ones listen to him and he dominates the man we are told finally constantly becomes stronger with God happy is. The man whose strength is in you and whose heart are your highways the relevance of this passage the ultimate act of deception by the enticer, the negative angel the Satan, is to convince a man that he the Satan does not really exist consequently we believe that our self-indulgent desires our covetous aspirations and our egocentric wants originate from within our being this is a mistake he has convinced us that our enemy is some other person or some external problem instead of our own. Untamed uncertain nature all the while he hides in the shadows of our minds lurking in the dark recesses of our being so that we might never know he exists in truth these selfish desires and negative uncertain thoughts are implanted within us by the angel Satan yet the Zohar reveals a deeply profound reason for his existence so that a man through his own effort can triumph over him rejecting the momentary illusionary pleasure that the Satan provides for the authentic eternal light of it. Creator in this way a man becomes the cause and creator of his own light he expresses the godly nature that dwells within his soul this portion of text accomplishes many things we grasp the role of evil in the world perhaps the most perplexing and disturbing of all theological questions we unlock our ability to recognize our evil inclination as a separate and distinct entity unattached to our true soul consciousness we kindle light and it extinguishes darkness exterminating the very roots of Evil and by virtue of the above we become the cause and creators of our own life thus we fulfill our purpose in this world 668 Rabbi Yitzhak was present before Rabbi Lazar and said to him certainly the love of the Holy One blessed be he that a person feels for him is aroused only from the heart for the heart is a place of awakening to arouse toward him love he questions if so why is it written with all your heart and afterwards and with all your soul so it seems that there are two matters in love one in the heart and one in the soul if the heart is the essence why is the soul necessary he said to him the heart and the soul are two and they join into one for heart and soul and money all unite together but the heart is the essence and foundation of everything 669 we have learned that with all your heart means with two hearts which are two inclinations the good inclination and the evil inclination of these two which are each called the heart one is called good heart and one is called evil heart therefore it says your heart with two bets and it doesn't say your heart with one bet which shows to the good inclination and the evil inclination 670 he questions it should have said and with your soul why does it say and with all your soul why is all said he answers it comes to include nefesh rash and neshama for this is the meaning of and with all your soul all that pertains to the soul and with all your might why does it say all it is because there are many kinds of substance for they are all different one from another namely silver precious stones and so on therefore it says and with all your might meaning with all his belongings because the love for the holy one blessed be he means to give him all this and to love him in everything 671 if you ask how is it possible for a person to love the holy one blessed be he with the evil inclination for the evil inclination persecutes so that the person should not Approach the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, so how is it possible to love him with it? He answers this is an even more precious matter of serving Hashem for when this evil inclination is subdued to him and that person breaks him, this is the love of the Holy One, blessed be he, because he knows how to bring close the evil inclination to the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, 672, here is the secret of those who know judgment for everything that the Holy One, blessed be he, made above. And below is all only to show his honor and everything is for his service who saw a servant go against his master, whatever is the will of his master, he becomes an insider not to do the will of his master, the will of the Holy One, blessed be he, is that people should be constantly in his service and that they should go in the true path in order to merit much good, since this is the will of the Holy One, blessed be he, how could an evil servant come and incite against the will of his master and he? Turns people to the evil path and thrusts them from the good path and causes them not to do the will of their master and turns people to the evil path. 673 He answers certainly he is doing the will of his master. It is like a king who had an only son and he loved him exceedingly and he commanded him with love not to come close to an evil woman because anyone who approaches her is not worthy to enter the king's palace. That son promised that he would lovingly do the will of his father. 674 Outside of the king's palace was a harlot who was very beautiful to behold. After a few days the king said I want to see the wishes of my son toward me. He called that harlot and told her go and entice my son in order to test the wishes of my son toward me. What did that harlot do? She went after the king's son and started to embrace him and kiss him and entice him with all kinds of enticements. If that son is proper and observes the commands of his father he scolds her and does not listen to her. And thrusts her away from him, and the father rejoices with his son, brings him into the inner sanctum of his palace, and gives him presents and gifts and great honor. Who caused all this honor for that son? We must say that it was the harlot. Six hundred and seventy-five. He questions, does that harlot deserve praise for this or not? He says, certainly she deserves praise from all aspects, for she did the king's command, and she brought that son all the good, all this love of the king toward him. Therefore, it is written, and behold, it was very good. Bear sheet one hundred and thirty-one. And behold, it was good. Refers to the angel of life, while very refers to the angel of death. The evil inclination, who is certainly very good, for he who fulfills the command of his master, come and see if there would not be this enticer, and the righteous would not inherit those supernal treasures that are their share in the world to come. Six hundred and seventy-six. Blessed are those who met this enticer, and blessed are those who did not meet this enticer. He explains, blessed. Are those who met him namely those that were saved from him for because of him they inherit all that good and all those delights and all those pleasures of the world to come about them it is written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you Yeshayah 643 677 blessed are those who did not meet him meaning they did not stumble because of him for they would have inherited Gehenom and would have been banished from the land of the living for those wicked ones who met him and would have listened to him all would be drawn after him therefore the righteous have to recognize his good for they inherit all the good and delights and pleasures of the world to come because of him 678 he questions what is the benefit of the enticer when the wicked listen to him he answers he has no benefit nevertheless he does the command of his master he becomes stronger because of this for since he is evil he gains strength when they do evil the wicked does not become strengthened until he Kills a person and when he has slain people then he grows strong and mighty with his power and he has satisfaction so it is with that enticer namely the evil inclination who is called the angel of death who does not grow in strength with his power until he instigates people and persecutes them and kills them then he has satisfaction and becomes strong and mighty with his power 679 just as the side of life becomes strengthened when people are good and go in the straight path this enticer also becomes stronger and mightier when the evil listen to him and he dominates them may the merciful one save us blessed are they who merit to be victorious over him and to subdue him so as to merit through him the world to come man constantly grows stronger with the holy king as is certainly said happy is the man whose strength is in you and whose heart are your highways tehillim 846 blessed are they in this world
Him they all got off their donkeys. Rabbi Lazar said, For certain I see the face of the Shechinah when one sees the righteous or the pious of the generation and meets them. Certainly they represent the face of Shechinah. Why are they called the face of Shechinah? It is because the Shechinah hides within them. The Shechinah is concealed in them, but they are visible. Therefore those who are close to her are called her face. Who are those that are close to her? They are those with whom she prepares to appear before the supernal kings. Eir and meaning who elevate male and female waters to unite the Holy One. Blessed be he with his Shechinah. Now that you are here, certainly the Shechinah is positioned over you and you are her face. Section 68. Let me go for the daybreaks. Your Rabbi Lazar tells how Jacob wrestled all night with the appointed angel of Esau Samael. Though until dawn he thought he was wrestling with Esau, he struck the angel who said, Let me go. For the day breaks because the angel and his female Lilith have dominion only at night we are then told that when morning arrived Samael and his friends entered the whole of the great abyss in the north another explanation of let me go for the day breaks is that night stands for the exile of the children of Israel during which the wicked idol worshipping kingdom dominates them until morning the redemption arrives and the holy one illuminates for them Jacob we next learn would not let the angel go unless he blessed him which he did Jacob saw in Esau's face the exact image that he saw in Samael because we are told whatever a person is connected to is reflected in his face and again Rabbi Lazar tells the three rabbis that because the Shechinah is with them he sees their faces are like hers the relevance of this passage strength to wrestle and conquer our own fears and dark side is bestowed upon us this radiance shines into our darkest moments so that what we see illuminated before us is always the truth, not just a shadow of the truth. Moreover, this light relinquishes the hold of the two negative angels, Samael and Lilith, over all mankind, freeing us forever from their deadly grip. Now that we have total control and dominance over the root of evil, through the greatness and spiritual prowess of Jacob, we are free to complete our personal ascension and actuate the final redemption in a soft hearted and merciful manner. 681 He opened the discussion, saying, Take, I pray. You, my blessing that is brought to you, Bear She 3311. When Jacob saw the accuser Samael that night who wrestled with him at the passage of Yubak, he saw him in the image of Esau, but did not recognize him until the dawn rose. As soon as the dawn rose, he saw him with his face both visible and concealed. He viewed his image that was like the image of Esau and immediately realized that he was a minister of Esau, namely Samael. He struck him, it is written, and he said, Let me go for the daybreaks. Bear she 3227 and the friends retorted that it was because his time had arrived to sing and praise to the Holy One. Blessed be he therefore it says for the daybreak 682 here we must look into that for certainly his dominion is only during the night in the darkness this is a secret of because of the fear by night. Lit night sure hasherim 38 which is the fear of Gehenom and he said the nights in the plural because it refers to Samael and his female Lilith therefore he has power. Only during the night 683 he said let me go for the daybreaks what is the point of for the daybreaks he answers when the morning arrived and the domination of the darkness of the night was removed he and his friends entered the whole of the great abyss that is in the north until the night arrived and the dogs were freed namely the other side from their chains and dominate and float about during the night until the morning arrives therefore Samael was pressing and saying let me go for the day breaks because he does not dominate during the day 684 similar to this is the exile of the children of Israel which is an aspect of night and is called night the wicked idol worshipping kingdom dominates over Israel until the morning arrives which is the redemption the holy one blessed be he will illuminate for them and the dominance of the idol worshipping kingdom will be removed therefore he said for the dawn breaks because he was pressured and his strength was weakened because the night had passed therefore Jacob overpowered him and saw that his image was like the image of Esau but not so clear and Samael had to approve the blessings that his father gave him because he said to him I will not let you go unless you bless me Bear she 3227 and, and he blessed him there but 3685 it is written afterwards for truly I have seen your face as though I had seen the face of Elohim and you were pleased with me Bear she 3310 he saw in Esau's face the exact Image that he saw in Samael because whoever is connected to is reflected in his face. The Shechinah is with you, supernal holy ones. Therefore, your faces are like her face. Blessed are you. He said, If I were going on the same path with you, I would then sit with you. But now that you are going on your way and I on my way, I will separate from you with the words of Torah. Section 69. Unless Hashem builds a house, Rabbi Lazar opens a discussion of a song of ascents for Solomon. Unless the Creator builds a house, they who build it labor in vain. Unless the Creator keeps the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. He then comments that King David said this for his son Solomon. When Nathan the prophet foretold that Solomon would build the holy temple, another explanation of the verse we learn is that unless the king who is by the builds a house with the seven pillars of Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiz, and Malchut of Zir, and then they who build it shall labor. In vain the tabernacle can only be guarded by a youth who was first Joshua in the youthful aspect of Metatron and the child Samuel God alone guards the holy temple and he guards the righteous as they travel as is written the creator shall preserve your going out and your coming in the relevance of this passage in effect Rabbi Lazar's discourse concerns how to draw the light of the creator to our own homes King David we are told composed verses that spoke of the necessity of having the creator's light imbued at the seed level of the building of the temple otherwise all the construction and safeguards would be for not for us this means that our own temples our homes and communities must be imbued with this light otherwise there is no chance for protection and blessing regardless of what we might do on a physical level without our constant awareness of this need for light we are left vulnerable to the forces of chaos here we travel back to the seed level of our homes are communities and the entire world and we inject them with the awesome light of the creator the radiance banishes all the darkness and forces of chaos that have wreaked havoc upon our lives since the dawn of humanity 686 he opened the discussion saying a song of ascents for solomon unless hashem builds a house they who build it labor in vain unless hashem keeps the city the watchman stays awake in vain tehillim 1271 he questions did solomon then say this praise when he built the temple he answers it was not so but rather king david said it for his son king solomon when nathan the prophet came to him and told him about solomon that he would build the temple afterwards king david showed his son solomon the form of the temple when david saw the form of the temple and all its trappings he recited praise for solomon his son and said unless hashem builds a house 687 another explanation for a song of ascents for solomon it means to the king that the pieces is that is zeir and then the song is a song and praise above all the other songs and the song rises above all of them unless Hashem builds a house meaning King David saw all these seven pillars which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiazit and Malchut of Zeir and then upon which this house Malchut stands for they stand row by row in order to build this house above them all stands the master of the house that is Bina who goes over them and gives strength and courage to each and every one accordingly. 688 in reference to this David said unless the king that the whole piece is his who is Bina who is the landlord build the house they who build it labor in vain these are the pillars Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiazit and Malchut of Zeir and then who will build this house unless Hashem keeps the city that is the king that the whole piece is his who is Bina the watchman stays awake in vain who is a pillar upon which the world Malchut is built what is it, it is the righteous namely Yizid. Of Zeir Anpin who watches over the city Malchut 689 Joshua stood constantly and guarded the tabernacle that Moses made which is Malchut of the aspect of Mokin of the six ends it could be guarded only by him for he is called the youth which is the aspect of Metatron as it is written but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man did not depart out of the tent Shema 3311 afterwards this tabernacle was guarded only by another youth as it is written and the child Samuel ministered I. Shmuel 31 because the tabernacle can be guarded only by a youth who is this guard he is the one who guards the supernal tabernacle which is Malchut of the aspect of Mokin of the six extremities who is called so by the name youth who is Metatron 690 guarding you supernal holy ones is not like the guarding of the tabernacle but guarding you is like the keeping of the temple the holy one blessed be he alone guards it as it is written unless Hashem keeps the city the watchman stays awake. In vain similarly all the time that the righteous are going on the road the
In the synagogue it is to the king's glory when they do not come and pray the supernal appointees and legions are lowered because the praises are required to be said above and below simultaneously the downfall of the prince then we learn refers to these supernal beings yet even ten people in the synagogue are sufficient to praise God and to make comrades of the supernal legions the relevance of this passage the greatness and size of Israel is a metaphor alluding to the internal vessel. The magnitude of desire to receive, that exists within the souls of the children of Israel prior to the creation of the world a single unified soul, the vessel, existed in the endless world this one infinite soul was comprised of all the souls of humanity and its essential nature was desire the one vessel shattered into countless pieces of all sizes and spilled into our world thus each broken fragment represents a different measure and intensity of desire the largest pieces of the shattered vessel are called children of Israel thus the Israelites have the capacity to draw the greatest amount of light into this world by virtue of the intensity of their desire thus they are also accountable for the quantity of darkness that engulfs the world prayer in the synagogue is not about worship or offering praise to the creator rather it denotes the path of spiritual transformation of which prayer is but a tool to help effect change within a man's nature hence we are being told that the Children of Israel must embrace spiritual transformation to bring light to all the nations of the world. Light is created when an Israelite resists his selfish and intense desire to receive for the self alone and instead receives for the purpose of sharing with others. Prayer is one procedure that helps reveal light as it diminishes the drive of the ego. Ten men are required in a synagogue during prayer for they correspond to the tense firon which creates circuitry. A reading of this passage awakens our momentous responsibility to bring light to others. We are inspired to perform acts of caring and we summon the courage to practice self denial. Our meditation here is a great act of sharing, thus it nourishes all the nations of the world with spiritual light, ending conflict and crumbling the seeds of intolerance. 692. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains. Shema 261. Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying, In the multitude of people is the glory of the king, but in the lack of people is the downfall of the prince Mishlei 1428 in the multitude of people is the glory of the king refers to Israel about whom it is written for you are a holy people to Hashem your Elohim to Barim 76 there are people that number many thousands and ten thousands and when their numbers are great it is the glory of the holy one blessed be he because those above and those below praise the name of the supernal king because of this holy nation this is what is meant by surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people to Barim 46 693 if you ask but it is written because you were more also few in number than all the other peoples to Barim 77 he answers than all the other people they are certainly the fewest but of any of these people they are more numerous for in the whole world there is no nation as great and numerous as Israel if you ask behold the Ishmaelites and the Edomites who are numerous he answers for sure numerous but all the other nations Mix one with the other this nation has children in this nation and this nation has children in another nation but the children of Israel do not mix with other nations and no nations mix with them therefore there is no nation in the world as great and numerous as Israel a select and unique people are they among them there is no intermingle at all as it is written for you are a holy people to Hashem your Elohim Hashem your Elohim has chosen you hence in the multitude of people is the glory of the king namely the glory of the supernal king the holy one blessed be he 694 we should explain this passage when the holy one blessed be he comes to the synagogue and all the people come together and pray and give thanks and praise the holy one blessed be he it is the king's glory a king without attributes is the holy king that is the holy one blessed be he that is perfected with beauty and perfection to ascend above to Abba and I am a 695 but in the lack of people is the downfall of the prince this is when the holy one blessed be he comes earlier to the synagogue but the people did not come to pray and praise the holy one blessed be he then all the dominions of above and the supernal appointees and legions are cut from the elevation of preparing the adornments of that king who is the holy one blessed be he 696 what is the reason that they are cut from their lofty places because when Israel below arrange their prayers and requests and are supporting the supernal king all these supernal legions arrange praises and support that holy perfection for all the supernal legions are friends with Israel below to praise the holy one blessed be he together so that the elevating of the holy one blessed be he should be done above and below together 697 when the angels are bidden to be comrades with the people of Israel to praise the holy one blessed be he together and the children of Israel below do not come to set their prayers and requests and to praise their master then all the holy legions of the supernal dominion are cut from their perfection they are not elevated and they cannot praise their master properly because the praises of the holy one blessed be he have to be recited together above and below by those of above and those of below at the same time therefore it says the downfall of the prince and not the downfall of the king because this pertains only to the companies of angels and not to the king himself 698 even if they were not many that came to the synagogue and just ten the supernal legions would come to be comrades with these ten to praise the holy one blessed be he what is the reason it is because all the perfections of that king are done with ten therefore ten is sufficient if there are no more section 71 wherever letters are added it causes a lessening rabbi Yehuda begins here by saying that ten can be written with the hay which is the Shechinah or without it as it is not included in 12 at all 12 the higher number Shtasar is spelled without the eye of the evil eye we learn and when that letter is added the number is reduced by 1 to 11 ash Shtasar wherever letters are added we are then told it serves as subtraction even adding it to Amnon's name and referring to him as Aminon decreases his honor the relevance of this passage when the evil eye envious tears and glances of ill will is permitted to shed its influence it literally banishes the light that is present it has drastic effects upon people and situations evil eye is banished from the world through the forces summoned here the desire to cast evil eye is also eliminated from our being we learn that quite often when a person adds he actually takes away as per the well-known adage less is more this truth is often seen in religion a person becomes caught up in the religious aspect of faith performing more and more rites and rituals in the name of holiness but he Grows to be more intolerant of others. This is the difference between a spiritual path and a religious one. Here we receive the wisdom and consciousness to seek out spiritual righteousness as opposed to self righteousness born of religiosity. This dangerous holier than thou consciousness is purged from human consciousness, engendering tolerance and respect among all of God's children. 699 Come and see what is written of the tabernacle. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains. Shema 261 The number ten is because the perfection of the tabernacle, which is Malchut, is by ten, as mentioned earlier in the last essay, so that everything will be proper. He questions, he says, ten Hebesa FM. What is the reason that it says ten Hebesa FM and not ten Hebesa Ramask? He answers for every place that it is written ESER without the hay refers to the tents Firat without the Sheshanah for the Sheshanah encircles them from above because she is not counted with the ten. Similarly, Stood upon twelve oxen Hebshni Isr I may lash him seven hundred and twenty five since the word ten is written without hay the Shechinah is not in the number twelve since she stands over them from above as it is written and the sea was set above upon them but meaning the Shechinah that is called sea in those places that allude to what is missing above them the Shechinah is extraordinary not included in the count seven hundred the other side is given in addition to the number and it decreases in number for example Ashte Sr equals eleven is spelled with ion that is added to the number Shechinah equals twelve thus reducing the number from twelve to eleven this is an indication of what is lacking from above for the added ion is the secret of the evil I have ion as we have already established wherever letters are added in this manner it serves as subtraction for example as a mean on your brother two smule one thousand three hundred and twenty it would have been sufficient to say Amnon and the reason the YUD was added is to lessen his honor however a Letter is deducted on the holy side and it is really an addition meaning that by deducting the iron from Ashtayas where the number 11 becomes 12 section 72 the seven firmaments here Rabbi Shia discusses who covers himself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain saying that God created the heavens from fire and water expanded and spread out like a curtain the seven firmaments we are told correspond to seven spirat and there is one firmament above them tevuna which cannot be viewed but only understood above that there is one which no one can see or know then Rabbi Shia says there are ten firmaments which are the ten curtains of the tabernacle and also ten spirat next Rabbi Yossi says
shift from an apocalyptic finale to a final redemption that is founded upon compassion, mercy, and pleasantness. This miraculous turn of events occurs by virtue of the love of Rabbi Shimon, author of this heavenly tome 701. Rabbi Shi opened the discussion saying, Who covers himself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Tehillim 1042. This verse has been established when the Holy One, blessed be he, created the world. He covered himself with that first light that was in the creation and created with it the heaven 702. Come and see light and darkness were not together because light is from the side of the right column and darkness is from the side of the left column. What did the Holy One, blessed be he, who is by to do? He joined them together and created the heaven from them, which is the secret of Zeir Anpin, because Zeir Anpin is the secret of the central column and mediates between both columns right and left, which are fire and water, what are heavens. Hebshami Mighty is composed of Esh and Main and fire and water, which he joined together and made peace between them. 703 When they were combined together, fire and water, he expanded them and spread them like a curtain, as it is written, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and he made of them the letter Bob of the name Yudhe Bob, hey, namely Zeir Anpin. This is called a curtain or curtains because light spread from this letter Bob to Malchut and curtains were made. This is what. Is meant by moreover you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains seven hundred and forty seven firmaments expanded and are concealed in the supernal storehouse which are the seven sfarot of Zeir and Penchisat Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadiazit and Malchut for Chakma is covered and concealed in them within the light of Chesedim that illuminates upon them from Bana as we have established there is one firmament above them which is Tabun and that firmament has neither color nor a revealed place in it in the illumination of Chakma nor can it be viewed and this firmament is concealed and illuminates all the seven firmaments causing them to journey each and every one as is proper for it it cannot be viewed it can only be understood seven hundred and five from that firmament and higher meaning higher than Yisrael Saba and Tabun there is no one who can know or observe a person should close his mouth in order not to talk and observe with understanding one who will observe will go backwards because. There is none who can understand there 706 there are ten curtains which are ten firmaments and who are they? They are the curtains of the tabernacle which is Malchut which are ten namely ten Sfirot they can be comprehended by the wise hearted because Chakma is revealed in Malchut but not higher than her one who knows them observes great wisdom and the secrets of the world and looks up into that place to which each and every one is attached except for two firmaments that stand on the right and left which are her Chakma and Bina that are hidden with the Sheshanah 707 Rabbi Yossi said there are nine firmaments and the Sheshanah is the tenth if you say that since it is written as and ten without hey there are ten besides the Sheshanah yet if so then there are eleven Sfirot in the Sheshanah as she is one sphere and is supernumerary to ten Sfirot yet it is known that there are ten Sfirot and not eleven as it is written in the Sefer Yitzhara in the Book of Formation but Certainly there are nine which are the nine days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and she is the tenth. Similarly the tabernacle is made of ten curtains seven hundred and eight. These ten firmaments are the mystery of mysteries that is handed only to those who know wisdom and it is all in the secrets of the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon who revealed the secret of every single firmament and those who minister in each and every one. There are seven firmaments above in Zeir and Pen and there are seven firmaments below in Malchut like above and the seventh firmament which is Chesed includes the first three Sfirot. Therefore there are ten as mentioned above. There are seven firmaments which contain stars and constellations with which to lead this world according to its way as is needed. Section 73 Extol him who rides upon the clouds. Rabbi Yossi here continues discussing the firmaments. He says the clouds means the seventh firmament that of Chesed which is called a rabbit because it is mixed from fire and water. He who rides upon the clouds is the eighth and higher firmament. By a rabbit includes within itself all the other six fire and that is the secret of the supernal chariot. Because those who enter the presence of this firmament must enter with only joy. The high priest must enter the holy sanctuary only with joy. Rabbi Yossi next asks what the person in dire straits is to do if he cannot pray with joy, being full of sadness. He answers that those who pray with tears awaken the compassion of God. Then we learn that Bina is called Yah because he is joy and he causes joy and he is the higher firmament. And when this firmament dominates, we are told it revokes any punishment that had been decreed for a person who is in sadness yet still fasts on the Sabbath. Rabbi Laser next says he thinks that him who rides upon the clouds refers to Eric Enfin, who is the most hidden and most ancient of all, whose name is Yah and who rides upon Abba and Ima, who are Yudhe. Even though Eric Anpin cannot be grasped or understood, Abba and Ima are the first level that emerged from him. The name of Zer Anpin Yudhe Bob is not as great because it has more letters, but nonetheless it is still the great name which is used for Amen to draw from him. Rabbi Lazar then tells us again how the precepts of the Torah are the limbs of the body, that every one of the limbs is important, and that neglecting even one precept of the Torah makes a blemish. He next discusses the union of the supernal limbs whose secret is remember and the lower limbs whose secret is keep. We are reminded that anyone who completes the precepts of the Torah will inherit two worlds, this world and the world to come. Then Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Abba rise at midnight to study Torah, and the daughter of the innkeeper stands nearby to light a candle for them and listen to their words. The relevance of this passage, depression and gloom cause the Sheshanah to depart our presence, hence true joy. Is kindled in our hearts so that the Sheshanah envelopes us in all her splendor. We are told that genuine tears of sadness, not selfishness, cause our prayers to be answered. In turn, the gates of mercy are opened to us by the lamenting prayers of the righteous who have cried and spilled tears on our behalf throughout history. We are connected to the highest, most hidden realms of the spiritual atmosphere that shines immeasurable rays of light into our dimension, meditating upon this section while making the conscious effort to share this light with all mankind brings us blessing, helping our world now to become the world to come. 709 Among them, all the seventh is the most valuable, which is Jesus, except for the eighth firmament, which is Bina, who leads all seven firmaments and stands upon them. All it is written, Extol him who rides upon the clouds. Tehillim 685 He questions who is the one who rides the clouds and what are the clouds? Have answers, Rabbit is the seventh. Firmament, which is the first sphere of Zeir Anpin that is called Chesed and includes all the Sfirot of Zeir Anpin that are below it. Why is it called a rabbit? Because it is mixed heavy or of fire and water together, namely from the south, which is water, and from the north, which is fire. It is mixed of the two sides, and the one who rides on the clouds is the eighth firmament. By the 710, if you ask if so, what about the two rabbit and willow branches that are joined with the lalav and palm leaf? We have learned that this is what is written. Extol him who rides upon the rabbit, and they are Netzach and Hod that are called thighs. He questions who gave thighs, which are Netzach and Hod in the body, which is Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, and who gave a body, which is Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet in the thighs that are Netzach and Hod, meaning here you say that a rabbit are Chesed of Zeir Anpin, which is considered the body of Zeir Anpin, and there you say that they are Netzach and Hod, which are. The thighs that are outside of its body who compares them seeing that this one namely the body produces fruit and this one namely Netzach and Hod which are thighs does not produce fruit 711 he answers but certainly it all resembles the secret of a rabbit willow branches of the Lalav palm leaf for one of these willow branches of the Lalav which are Netzach and Hod is fire which is hot and the other is water which is Netzach they all pertain to the same secret for the one is completely water and the other is completely fire and they are not mixed one with the other for they are two Sfirot each with individual dominion it is the seventh firmament which is Chesed which combines fire and water together in one secret for it is one sphere and so we find that it combines within itself the two rabbit of the Lalav in actuality because the firmament the rabbit includes within itself all the other six Sfirot which are Bura Tiferet Netzach Hod and Malchut as the highest one includes all. Those that are lower than IT that is the secret of the supernal chariot the Holy One blessed be he who is Bina desires this firmament more than all the firmaments and his desire is always to perfect this firmament with the highest beauty on this it is said extol him who rides upon a rabbit meaning he who rides on a rabbit who is he this firmament that stands over the living creat
Prayer enters before the Holy King 716, then that place namely Melchut is distressed by the sadness and distress of that person as it is written in all their affliction he is afflicted Yeshea 639 because the pain of the person touches the Shechinah the longing of the supernal world which is Zeir and to this place which is Melchut is like a male whose longing is always toward the female therefore when the king who is Zeir and comes to the matron who is Melchut and finds her sad he gives over to her hands whatever she desires that person or that prayer do not return empty and the Holy One blessed be he has mercy on him blessed is the portion of that person who pours out tears before the Holy One blessed be he in his prayer 717 it is similar on Shabbat there is one who fasts on Shabbat and expresses sadness because of his pain yet during Shabbat that supernal firmament dominates which is by that one that appears with joy and causes everyone to rejoice as for that person who is in sadness once this firmament dominates it revokes that punishment that was deemed against that person we have already learned this and this is what is said extol which means to give honor and exaltation to he who rides on the clouds for he is joy and causes joy for everyone and he is the firmament which is above the living creatures namely Bina as explained earlier Yah is his name Tehillim 685 certainly because in this place is this name included because Bina is called Yah and rejoice before him meaning not to express his sadness before him as explained 718 Rabbi Lazar said this passage should have said extol him who rides upon the clouds and this purport would be Bina that rides upon Zeir and what then is the meaning of upon the clouds and also with Yah is his name it should have said Yah is he if it refers to Bina what is the meaning of his name this verse is said about the most concealed of all and the most ancient of all namely Eric and that is more concealed than the concealed supernal Abba and Ima and more ancient than they he is not revealed and not known at all because its chakma is concealed entirely and does not illuminate beneath it at all and rides upon the clouds which are Abba and Ima who are Yudh and if you ask since he comes and rides on Yudh even though he is concealed can he be revealed in this place 719 he answers but extol him who rides upon the clouds refers to the most ancient of all the most concealed of all which cannot be grasped and will not be revealed upon what does he ride the clouds Yudh namely Abba and Ima which is the secret of the first level that emerged from him because Abba and Ima emerged from Eric and this is his name of that which is concealed that is not known because his name is Yudh therefore the verse says Yah is his name and not that Abba and Ima themselves are his name rather Abba and Ima are his name because of that curtain that separated and Emerged before him that curtain is his name because Malchut is called name and this is his chariot meaning through that curtain he is clothed in Abba and Ima and therefore is not known at all because it is not revealed by them 720 and this is his great name namely Abba and Ima with Malchut of Eric Anpin that are enclosed in them there is a name that is not as great as he namely the name Yudh Bavhe which is Zeir Anpin even though he has more letters because Abba and Ima are called only by the two letters Yudh alone still in all it is a great name therefore with this name we utter and say Amen which is drawn from him with this name Amen goes on continuously because the union of Abba and Ima is never interrupted with the other name which is Zeir Anpin that is called Yudh Bavhe it is not so because the pairing of the male and female is interrupted by the sin of the lower being 721 this that we say Amen may his great name be blessed forever and for all Eternity for when this name is perfected everything is complete and all the worlds rejoice and in the name are included the higher and lower beings in this name are included the 613 precepts of the Torah which are the inclusion of all the secrets the upper and the lower it is the combination of the male world above which is Zeir Anpin and the female world below which is Malchut 722 all the precepts are organs and limbs to express through them the secret of the faith which is the secret of the Shechina one who does not notice and observe the secrets of the precepts of the Torah does not know and cannot observe how to perfect the limbs in the supernal secret the limbs of the body are all established upon the secret of the precepts of the Torah because the 248 limbs correspond to the 248 positive precepts and the 365 beings correspond to the 365 negative precepts even though there are certain limbs that are big and vital and there are some which are small and inferior if any of them either big or small is removed even the smallest in the person he is considered blemished he who diminishes even one precept of the precepts of the Torah makes a blemish in a place where there should not be any 723 come and see what is written and Hashem Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it Beersheet 215 we have learned that to till it and to keep it refers to the offerings and it is all one but this is the secret of the precepts of it Torah to till it these are the 248 supernal limbs and to keep it are the 365 lower limbs namely the 365 sinews those higher ones pertain to remember which is Zeir Anpin and those lower ones pertain to keep which is Malchut and it is all one 724 blessed is he who is worthy of completing the precepts of the Torah he causes man to perfect his spirit and soul in this world and in the world to come the Torah merits the person to inherit two worlds this world and the world to come Everyone who endeavors in Torah endeavors in life life in this world and life in the world to come and is spared from all the bad punishments which cannot dominate him if by endeavoring in Torah it is so so much more so for he who acts and fulfills the precepts of the Torah section 74 for the commandment is a candle and Torah is light Rabbi Yossi here explains that it is necessary to perform a deed to prepare the candle and it is necessary to be occupied with Torah to light the candle in order to merit the supernal life from which the candle is lit he goes on to discuss the reproofs of instruction that the Holy One brings upon the person to purify him of his sins another explanation of the candle is that it is the oral Torah which only illuminates through the written Torah which is the light the candle is a commandment or precept that women merit the candle of Shabbat but only men can merit through Torah and illuminate the candle next we hear of the Father and daughter who are bitterly unhappy because her new husband doesn't even know how to say the prayer after a meal and does not merit Torah the young man sits before Rabbi Yossi who proclaims that either the light of Torah will emerge from him or else a son will emerge from him the young man laughs and explains that because he is young and respectful he decided that he should not speak before the older wiser men for two months but now the time has come he says that the commandments refers to Malchut which is a candle waiting to be kindled by Zer and he speaks of her two arms and the 248 supernal limbs which add to 250 or Rush on candle is none Rush and Torah is light because Torah is from the right side which is the first light that was created when the left is combined in it we learn there is perfection in everything the relevance of this passage here we are purified and corrected of sin so that our souls flicker like the flame of a candle our two four eight limbs are warmed and Nurtured by the supernal candle light that radiates from the Torah and just as one candle can light millions of others without diminishing its own flame the spiritual light we now reveal is shared with all the souls of this planet flooding the entire globe with the light of the Creator as mankind basks in the globe peace takes hold and tranquility spreads throughout the land 725 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Abba were dwelling in their lodging they rose at midnight to occupy themselves with Torah the daughter of the innkeeper rose lit a candle for them and stood behind them in order to hear words of Torah 726 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying for the commandment is a candle and Torah is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life Mishlei 623 for the commandment is a candle means that whoever endeavors in this world in the precepts of the Torah one candle is prepared to shine for him in that world by every precept and Torah is light means he who is occupied with Torah merits that supernal light from which the candle is lit because a candle without light is nothing light without a candle can also not illuminate so we find that they both depend upon each other it is necessary to perform a deed to prepare the candle and it is necessary to be occupied with Torah to light the candle blessed is he who is occupied with the light and the candle 727 and reproofs of instruction are the way of life meaning the way of life with which to enter into the world to come these are the reproofs that a person receives in order to remove himself from the path of evil and to go in the path of good it can be explained that the way of life is the reproofs of instruction that the holy one blessed be he brings upon the person to purify him of his sins with these reproofs blessed is he who accepts them with a willing heart 728 another explanation for the commandment is a candle this is a candle the luminary of David which is a candle lit to Perform a precept the oral Torah namely Malchut that must be constantly attended to she
Then the father of the woman also started to weep. Rabbi Yossi said to him, Perhaps your son-in-law, the husband of your daughter, did not merit Torah. He said to him, It is indeed so, and that is why my daughter and I would constantly 731 because the day I saw him jump from this attic to hear Kaddish with the congregation, I got the desire to give him my daughter in marriage, and immediately after the congregation left the synagogue, I gave him my daughter, for I said by that jump with which he came. To hear the Kaddish IT is known that he will be a learned man in Torah even though he was a youth and I did not know him previously I gave him my daughter but now he doesn't even know how to bless the blessing after the meal and I cannot even learn with him among the scholars so he should learn SH or the blessing after the meal 732 Rabbi Yussi said to him exchange him for another or perhaps he will bear a son who will be great in Torah in the meantime the son-in-law of the innkeeper arose and jumped to them Rabbi Yussi looked at him intently and said certainly I see in this youth that the light of Torah will emerge from him into the world or else a son will emerge from him that youth laughed and said my masters I will speak before you of one subject 733 he opened the discussion saying I am young and you are very old therefore I was afraid and dared not declare my opinion to you EO 326 the pillars of the world have remarked upon this verse about Elihu it is written of the family Ram Ibn it was then remarked that he was said to have come from the seed of Abraham and it is good but Elihu was a priest and was from the seed of Ezekiel the prophet because it is written son of Barashal the Buzidibid and also Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzidibid Yeshizkel 13734 if you say because it is written Buzidibid he was the contempt head buzz of families Eo 3134 it is not so because it says afterwards of the family of Ram meaning higher head Ram above all what is he called Buzid it is because he shames himself before one who is greater than him therefore he is called by the lofty name of Buzid with which was named he who was perfect in everything such as no one was called meaning Ezekiel it is written and you son of man Yeshizkel 26 because Elihu was called by that name Buzid he was also called Ram meaning higher above all 735 therefore he said I am young young in days he questions he says in days but should have said of days what is in days but he said I am young meaning I have made myself small in days before one who has many days what is the reason because I said that days should speak you 327 therefore I am young meaning that I belittled myself before days and you are old I saw that you are old so I am afraid and dared not declare my opinion to you also I said days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom certainly but there is a spirit in man and the breath of shade gives them understanding of a date therefore since I am a youth I decided not to speak for two months and today they have completed now that you are here it is proper to open with words of Torah before you 736 he opened the discussion saying for the commandment is a candle and Torah is light and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life for the commandment is a candle refers to mission as it said and the Torah and the commandments Shema 2412 Torah is the written Torah Z-E-I-R-N and the Commandments refers to mission namely Malchud which is a candle meaning a candle that is waiting to be kindled because Malchud has no light on her own and needs Zeir and to kindle her and illuminate her 737 he questions Malchud is called candle but why is she called candle he answers when Malchud receives from between the two arms of Zeir and which is the secret of the two columns right and left the 248 supernal limbs which are the chesedim of the 248 positive precepts she opens to them her two arms which are her two columns right and left these two arms become combined with the 248 limbs and become the numerical value of 250 equals reshna therefore it is called a candle had an resh and Torah is light because the Torah illuminates this candle and the candle is kindled from the side of the first light which is right because Torah is from the right side which is the first light that was given about this it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to Barum 332 it is given from the right even though the left is combined with it because when the left is combined in IT there is perfection in everything section 75 207 on the right 103 on the left the young man from the previous section continues by explaining that the first light is combined with the 207 worlds hidden on the right under by there are also 103 worlds on the left side adding to 310 worlds that God prepares constantly for the righteous the light of the right is Jesus and it produces offspring for every single day otherwise the world would not be able to exist it is written for I have said the world is built by love the relevance of this passage the sphere of Jesus correlates to the right column attribute of mercy which tempers and sweetens judgment if our world were balanced towards the left judgment it would be immediately destroyed thus out of love for his creation God injected mercy Jesus into the cosmos which gives a man time to repent and change his ways before judgments can be executed in this moment we rouse the forces of mercy using it to atone for our sins complete our spiritual path and cause unceasing fulfillment to fill all existence 738 this light is combined with the 207 worlds which are hidden under that light and it spreads in all of them below the concealed supernal throne which is by these 207 worlds dwell at that right side there are 310 207 on the right side and 103 from the left side and together they equal 310 they are the ones that the holy one blessed be he prepares constantly for the righteous and from these spread many many treasures of delight they are all hidden for the righteous to delight within the world to come of this it is written that i may cause those who love me to inherit substance have yishyashin and i will fill their treasures mishle 821 about all these it is written neither has the i seen that an elohim beside you yishyashin 643 739 yishin equals 310 are the 310 worlds that are concealed under the world to come namely under by these 207 worlds which are on the right side are called first light because even the light of the left is called light it is a dim light that produces no offspring since the light of the right precedes the light of the left the light of the right which is Jesus precedes the light of the left called the first light but the first light will produce offspring in the world to come and if you say that this is true only for the world to come which is but and no more yet it produces offspring every single day meaning even for the levels of zeir and that is called day for if this light would not be in zeir and then the world which is malchut would not be able to exist as it is written for i have said the world is built by love had chisit telem 893 meaning with the first light that is called chisit section 76 light is sown constantly the young man from Previous sections continues telling how God by the hand of his righteous gardener sowed light in his garden of Eden Malchut in rose and rose this act produced fruit that constantly nourishes the world even during the time of exile after the river stopped coming into the garden of Eden and the gardener no longer entered there still the light constantly resows itself and produces fruit similarly the Torah is sown constantly in the world producing offspring and fruit nourishing the world it young man adds that reproofs of instruction signifies God places over a desired way of life one who smites us through suffering people are led to the right way and once again we hear of the secret of keep and remember and how Malchut and Zer and need each other for perfection the relevance of this passage what wonderful sparkling images come before us when the sages speak of God's gardener dropping seeds of light into long soft furrows in the ground and then of the light sprouting and bringing forth fruit each of our souls is a garden where seeds of light have been planted since the dawn of creation the light of this passage tends the garden nurturing the light seeds so that our souls now blossom like a blooming orchard of fruit trees on a sun-drenched summer's day 740 the holy one blessed be he sowed this light in his garden of eden which is malchut and formed it in rose meaning that he divided it according to the columns by the hand of this righteous who is the gardener of the garden who took this light and sowed it a true seed and he formed it in rose in the garden of eden which is malchut it sprouted and produced fruit and from there is the world nourished this is what is meant by light is sown for the righteous tale 9711 741 it is written and as a garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth yeshaya 6111 he questions what are the things that are sown in it he answers these are the things that were sown by the first Light which is sown constantly now it bears and produces fruits and now it is again sown as before before the world eats up this fruit that this plant produces so we find that it produces fruit incessantly therefore the world is fed by the supply of that garden which is called righteous namely is it of Zeir and that neither rests nor pauses forever 742 except during the time that the children of Israel are in exile if you ask during the time of exile it is said the waters fail from the sea of 1411 which is Malchut that is called sea and the river is parched and dries up a bit which is Yezid that is called the river that emerges from Eden
produces fruits because from it and by itself it is sown as before and it never ceases this is like a garden that produces offspring and from its previous planting it falls back to its place meaning that during the harvesting of the field seeds fall to the ground and produce offspring by itself as before if you remark that the offspring and the fruits are the same as when that gardener was there it is not so yet the sowing is never interrupted 743 similarly and Torah is like Mishlei. 623 the Torah was given from the side of that first light and so is its own constantly in the world producing offspring and fruits it never stops and from its fruit the world is nourished 744 and reproofs of instruction are the way of life Mishlei 623 there are two ways one is the way of life and one is the opposite of it what is the side of the way of life it is reproofs of instruction for when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to guard the way of life he places over it one who smites and makes reproofs of instruction for the people of the world who is he is that of which is written and the bright blade of a revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life Bereshit 324 therefore reproofs of instruction are the way of life for one who receives reproof meaning sufferings is surely awakened to walk that way of life for there dwell reproofs of instruction 745 the verse for the commandment is a candle its beginning is not like its end and its end is not like it's beginning because it starts with the light of Torah and precepts and ends with reproofs of instruction. He answers all that is in this verse pertains to the secret of the faith, which is the secret of Maljud. For the commandment is a candle, is the secret of keep, which is Maljud. And Torah is light, is the secret of remember, which is Zeir and Pen. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. These are the decrees and punishments in the Torah. It is all the secret of the faith, namely, for the perfection of Maljud. And they need each other so that the secret of it all is well established. Section 77, light water firmament. The young man continues discussing the light from the right, namely, she said the aspect of Aaron the priest and light from the left, which two were only joined together and perfected when Elohim divided the light from the darkness. We learned that by the left column the evil inclination emerges. Next we read of how the five levels she said. Vira Typhoret Net Sach and Hot were in light and water and in firmament each of which was therefore mentioned five times by these three was the secret of Adam formed and made into engravings which were light from the right column water from the left column and the firmament from the central column this is similar to the form of man at birth he is first seed which is the light of all the limbs of the body the light spreads and becomes water after which the form of the body spreads into these waters as soon as the form and shape of the body is formed and engraved that expansion consolidates and is called firmament after it congeals it is written and Elohim called the firmament heaven next we are told after the body was purified and cleansed the moisture that was drawn and left over from it comprised of bad and troubled waters from which were formed the male and female of the other side as soon as the insider emerged the curse emerged into the world and the light of the moon was Decrease the youth then explains the emergence of the first Adam Zir and Ben in Atzala, who was formed without a female. The second Adam, the man of Briah, was formed and engraved from the seed of the first Adam within the female Malchut of Atzala. The twenty-two letters from Allah to Zayin emerged from the first light, and the body of the first Adam was formed and engraved in them. The youth tells of the measure in the firmament and the joining of the letters of the first light with the waters and the congealing of the two columns. And then we learn this first Adam joined with the Nukba to beget a second Adam of Briah. The relevance of this passage because the verses speak of the mighty gestation of light, water, and the firmament, and of the three columns are personal attributes of judgment, left compassion, right, and self-restraint. Central are strengthened and balanced in the appropriate measure. If we can possibly extend mercy to our most undeserving of enemies, judgment cannot befall us. But how? Many of us in truth have the capability and willpower to offer mercy to our most mean-spirited of foes. The sacred words adorning this passage awaken such mercy within us as we now offer forbearance and compassion to others. These qualities are returned to us in equal measure. Additionally, we attain dominion over our evil inclination left column and connect ourselves to the embryonic state of creation when all was pure and free of sin. This cleanses our soul and completes our life's purpose. 746. In relation to the secret of that light that kindles and illuminates this candle which is malchut, it is written of Aaron. When you light the lamps, beam it bar 82. It comes from the side of that light about which is written, let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13. He questions once it is written, let there be light. Why is it necessary to add and there was light? It would have been sufficient to say and it was so. He answers, let there be light is the first light which is right. Hebyamin, namely, she said the aspect of Aaron the priestess is the end of days. Hebyamin, and there was light, is the left that emerges from the right because the left emerges from the secret of the right, therefore, and there was light refers to the left. 747 from here, I understood that, and it came to pass. Hebyahi, that is mentioned in the Torah, is of the left side, therefore, Hebyahi is not a sign of blessing. What is the reason? It is because by the left column emerges that darkness. That darkened the face of the world, which is the angel of death, the evil inclination. This is how we come by it. When the secret of Esau and his actions were revealed, it was done so by Hebyahi, as it is written, and Hebyahi Esau was a cunning hunter. Bereshit 2527, and by Hebyahi it was fulfilled, a cunning hunter who knew how to entice hearts to seduce people of the world and not to go in the straight path. 748, and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Bereshit 14, this is the pillar. That stands in the center, meaning the central column that stands and is attached to the side and that side for it mediates and unites right and left with each other when perfection of these sides was affected, namely three columns. It is written that it was good. This did not happen with the other two columns right and left that are alluded to in let there be light and, and there was light and it is not said by them and it was good because there was no perfection until the third light of the central column that completed all the sides once this there came the division of right and left was enunciated as it is written and Elohim divided the light from the darkness of it for the right is the secret of light and the left is the secret of darkness. The central column made peace between them and they were included the one with the other for through this they were both perfected 749 because they were five levels that separated and were drawn from this first light that are Vira Typhoret Netzach and Hot Light is therefore mentioned in the first day five times they were all from the right side for all the five Sfirat Chesed Vira Typhoret Netzach and Hot are under the domination of the right which is Chesed when they were combined in the left side they were combined in the secret of waters that flow from the right because the right melts the frozen ness of the left and turns it into flowing waters therefore water was mentioned by the second day of creation which is left five times corresponding to Chesed Vira Typhoret Netzach and Hot of the left column when right and left were perfected in the secret of the central column called firmament firmament was mentioned five times corresponding to Chesed Vira Typhoret Netzach and Hot of the central column therefore these three light water firmament correspond to these three levels right left and central for in each one of them are comprehended the five levels Chesed Vira Typhoret Netzach and Hot. Therefore they are all mentioned five times each namely light water and firmament 750 here lies the mystery of mysteries by these three light water firmament the secret of the form of man was formed and made into engravings which was light at first from the right column and afterwards water from the left column afterwards the central column spread among them which is the firmament which is the engraving of the imprint of the form of man 751 and it is similar to the engraving of the form of man when born at the birth of a person he is first seed which is light for that seed is the light of all the limbs of the body therefore it is light that light is called seed as written light is sown to him 9711 namely that actual seed afterwards that seed that is called light spreads and becomes water by the moisture of the water it becomes further engraved and the form of the body expands into these waters growing to all sides as soon as the form and shape of the body is formed and engraved that expansion consolidates and is called firmament that is a firmament in the midst of the waters bear sheet 16 and after it congeals it is written and Elohim called the firmament heaven of it eight because the moisture of the body that was in the water has congealed 752 as soon as the body is purified and has been cleansed the moisture that was drawn and left over from it is the refuse that is made by melting this is the bad and troubled waters from which is formed it refuse that incites the whole world namely the other side and male and female were formed when the troubled waters flow down and melt on the left side the male and female of the other side emerge to instigate the whole world fortunate is he who is saved from them 753 as soon as the insider has emerged it is written let there be lights had me oro bear sheet 114 without bob which is an expression of
Forms only in the belly of a female for the form of man to grow in her ear are these five levels Jesus, Burin, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yizid of light, water, and firmament, which are the image of man according to this in which place was formed and expanded this form in the water. 755 If you say that it was formed in a female which is the world to come, namely Bina, it is not so because proper form and image are not formed until they emerged from Bina and afterwards they were formed and consolidated the world to come, which is Bina is also the craftsman of all the creation and is the secret of Elohim that is mentioned there as it is written, and Elohim said, Let there be light, and there was light, and also and Elohim said, Let there be a firmament. So Bina is the craftsman, the one who forms that makes the shape of light, water, and firmament. So how can you say that the shape and form are made in Bina? 756 If you say that the figure of man was formed in the lower female. Namely Malchud it is not so Malchud was not yet in existence because afterwards when this figure of man emerged that is in light water firmament which is CEIR and the woman emerged with him so the figure of man was not formed in her if so in which place was formed and engraved that seed of light water firmament to become an engraving of the shape of man 757 he answers this is a supernal secret the first man namely CEIR and of Atzala which is the secret of light water firmament was engraved and formed without a woman the second man namely the man of Bria from the strength and seed of the first man was engraved and formed within the woman which is Malchud of Atzala 758 the Zohar explains his words the engraving of the form and shape of the body of the first man who is CEIR and was not in the woman and was entirely without form meaning that he did not form and consolidate while still in to a degree that he could be considered a form he was formed and Engraved below the world to come, namely below Bina, without male and without female, only these letters, namely the twenty-two letters of Zeir and Bina, that are divided into three columns, were embodied and consolidated in measure, which is called firmament. For it was the cause of the congealment of the letters. The secret of man was formed and engraved in them, and the letters in straightforward order in the order they emerged from the first light that was in Bina, which is the secret of seven letters from Aleph to Zayin, which is the secret of the right column, were drawn to the measure in the firmament, and they commenced to be engraved and formed. This light was sown in the firmament, which is Zeir and Bina, in the measure after the light, which is the right column, reached the measure. The left column was drawn into it, and there the light reverted to water in the waters. Afterwards, the firmament expanded, which is the actual central column by strength of the two columns that illuminated and were included. In IT properly into the form of man meaning that it became embodied and congealed as much as necessary for the two columns right and left were consolidated 759 after the Mukba was adorned meaning that she was constructed by Abba and Ima and Zeir and Pen and Mukba were again face to face this form of man which is Zeir and Pen came with belonging to Mukba there and Mukba became engraved and formed the second man of Bria according to his form about him it is written and he begot a son in his own likeness after his image bear sheet 53 because the first man below corresponds to Zeir and Pen and the second man namely his son Seth corresponds to the second man of above this one became formed in a female namely the Mukba of Zeir and Pen unlike that first one which is Zeir and Pen because that first one became formed by himself by the gauge that is in the measure section 78 Cain Abel Seth and Ash the young man tells us of the first generations of how the Letters formed and combined to make Cain and Abel and Seth and Anash and Mahalalel and the sin that was in them because of the serpent began to be straightened out in Mahalalel yet it was not improved until the children of Israel stood on empty Sinai and received the Torah only then were candle and light repaired together the world however was still in pain and sadness until Noah came next the young man says that he comes from Babylon and is the son of Rabbi Safra he was banished to their land and was afraid to speak of Torah because everyone there was so knowledgeable in it Rabbi Yussi wept and they all rise to kiss the young man's head the young man also explains that he has not joined yet with his wife although it would have been lawful because he did not yet know the prayer after the meal the relevance of this passage the drama of mortal existence began with temptation disobedience expulsion jealousy and murder the same ills that still beset us today connecting with this passage Corrects the sins of the recent and distant past as the goodness and wisdom of the young husband were hidden. The goodness and wisdom of our souls have been concealed through the ages. These ancient texts awaken the righteousness within us so the light that shone on Mount Sinai reappears and the knowledge of the Torah's deep mysteries immediately circulates throughout our world ushering in the age of the Messiah. Immortality and boundless joy 760 pertaining to below what is written and Adam. Knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain. Bear she 41 the cup of Cain whose leg was clothed with the clipot in the secret of the passage. Her feet go down to death. Mishle 55 started to bear in the belly of Eve with the strength and support of Adam after it had already received filth from this cup. First the serpent came which is the secret of Kuf upon Eve and inserted filth into her and then Adam came upon her therefore it is not written and he begot but rather an Adam knew and she conceived and bore and the refuse emerged of the female Eve 761 and she again bore his brother Abel Bear she 42 it is not written and he begot even though he was on the male side namely the right side as mentioned above because the prosecutor weakened and his strength was broken because from the letter cup of Cain the letters started begetting 762 after the refuse in Cain was sorted the letters started to bear from the secret of the letters Shintof which are the perfection of male and female in mutual agreement because Shin is the three columns of Zeir and that is male and the Toph is female namely Malchud it is written and he begot in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth Shintof Bear she 53 it is not written that she called as earlier to show that he called and not she he called his name Seth and that which is written earlier she called Is because the name Seth is the perfection of male and female mutually for they were in mutual. Agreement 763 the letters rolled some more and again bore Aleph of Adam what are these letters that are where his name ends none that is after M.E.M. of Adam and the Bob that is after Dalit of Adam but not He which is after Dalit because this He conceived with Abel thus the letters Aleph Nun Bob emerged ending with the beginning of the name Seth which I asked and he was called Enosh Aleph Nun Bob Shin 764 he questions what is the difference between this name and the name Adam he answers Enosh had not his own strength but was rather the perfection of the earlier ones Adam and Seth as it is written what is man have Enosh that you are mindful of him Tehillim 85 and what is man have Enosh that you should magnify him and that you should remember him every morning and try him every moment he of 717 to 18 about this it is written but it pleased Hashem to crush him by disease Yeshayah 5310 because the breaking of the body and the strength of the soul is what Seth bequeathed to his son Anash this was an inheritance that he should have received for himself but he bequeathed it also to his son namely Mahalalel 765 the letters rolled further in order to straighten out the deviation that became deviated by the sin of Adam and Cain and Abel and they then begot Canaan because Canaan is the perfection for Cain for Canaan is composed of the letters of Cain he was perfected instead of him and the letters reverted to improving the world from the deviation Mahalalel the son of Cain and the M.E.M. of Mahalalel is the last of the letters of Adam Hay and Lane are the perfection of the letters of Abel Hay Lane since Abel was not a sinner like Cain the letters of his name were not changed in Mahalalel except for one letter alone for in place of the bed of Abel there was an Aleph in Mahalalel in order to be perfected even further 766 until now the world was improved and the deviation that started with Anash was repaired only the sin of Adam that was not improved. Until the children of Israel stood on Mount Sinai but the deviation on Cain and Abel was repaired and improved yet the world was in pain and sadness until Noah came as it is written this one shall comfort us for our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which Hashem has cursed. Bereshit 529 the sin of Adam was not improved until the children of Israel stood on Mount Sinai and received the Torah and when they received the Torah candle and light which are Malchut and Zeir and Pen. As mentioned earlier were then repaired together 767 and Nusers I am from Babylon and I am the son of Rabbi Safra but I did not merit to know my father and I have been banished here I feared because the inhabitants of this land are like lions in Torah and I took upon myself not to say words of Torah before any man for two months today have these two months elapsed blessed is my portion that I met you here Rabbi Yussi raised his voice and wept and they all rose and kissed him on his head. Rabbi
Another verse says, And rejoice before the Creator your Elohim. These verses we then learn were fulfilled when the children of Israel dwelt in the Holy Land and appeared before God in the temple. A person must give to the poor, we are told, even as God gives him food, and he should not be a glutton because gluttony is from the other side during the meal. He should be occupied solely with Torah. Next, a young man speaks of the cup of blessing. A person should bless with it only with joy in the presence of three people who have eaten together. We further read that we must aim the desire above to God when we say, And by whose goodness we live, because the world is built by that goodness, as it is written, For I have said, The world is built by Jesus and is nourished by it. When we read, Who sustains the entire world with his goodness, with grace, with kindness, Jesus, and with mercy, and who gives bread to all flesh for his steadfast love, Jesus endures forever. It means that he provides. Food for the righteous and the wicked this is called the blessing of the right because pure and judgment are not included in the blessing after the meal therefore we are told the left hand should not assist the right to hold the cup the second blessing is the blessing of the land the spread of goodness is thankfulness the young man then tells us of the right and left of netzach and hot and how hot is the result of the spread of love in this instance both netzach and hot come from the right there is no left in the blessing after a meal because the other side has no part in the food of Israel after the land of the living is blessed and receives food we ask for mercy for everyone on Shabbat when there is no judgment we say may it please you to strengthen us we say who is good and does good and the one who recites the blessing after a meal receives the blessings before everyone else and has a long life thus the right performs salvation from the inside when the young man finishes Speaking Rabbi Yossi declares a feast and the rabbis gather everyone together for rejoicing finally calling the young man's wife abroad the relevance of this passage on one level eat before the creator your Elohim pertains to the sparks of light contained in the foods we eat blessing our food ensures that we receive both spiritual and physical nourishment so that even the act of eating becomes a sacred tool for spiritual transformation hence we are now connected to the temple and to the Torah which help us elevate holy sparks in the foods we consume we are inspired to give a portion of our sustenance to the needy and our gluttonous cravings are subjugated all the blessings and goodness derived from the eating of God's food especially during the Sabbath are summoned forth so that we may feast upon the light share it with others and enjoy long sumptuous sips from the cup of blessing accumulated light aroused from all the blessings and Torah study of the righteous throughout History during and after their meals ignites in this spectacular moment of meditation all judgments are therefore annulled mercy envelopes mankind poverty is at last purged from the landscape of civilization and the angel Satan is deprived of his meal starved until he withers away becoming nothing more than a long forgotten relic of the past 769 that youth opened the discussion with the blessing after the meal and said one verse says and you shall eat before Hashem your Elohim Devarim 423. And another verse says and rejoice before Hashem your Elohim Devarim 277 these verses were fulfilled when the children of Israel dwelt in the Holy Land and appeared before the Holy One blessed be he in the temple how are they fulfilled today who can eat before Hashem and who can rejoice before Hashem 770 he answers certainly it is so at the beginning when a person sits down at his table to eat he makes a blessing for bread Hamatzi what is the reason we say who brings Hamatzi? Fourth bread and not he who brings Hamatzi fourth bread without the definite article hey it is written he creates lit creator the heavens Yeshayah 425 but not written he who creates lit the creator he has made lit maker the earth Yermeah 1012 and is not written he who has made the maker the earth what is the reason that here we say Hamatzi lit the bringer 771 he answers the hay is hidden from all the things that come from the upper concealed world which is Bunez. There is no definite article hey there that shows that it comes from the hidden and concealed world all the things that are from the lower world which is Malchut that is more revealed are written with the hay as it is written that hay brings out their host by number Yeshayah 4026 that hay calls for the waters of the sea Amos 58 they are all from the secret of the lower world if a name is written it is also with the hay such as the great El for example and here where he is revealed with the hay. It is because it is from the secret of the lower world because when a person is blessing the Shechina comes before him 772 and you shall eat before Hashem your Elohim is included here in speaking words of Torah so it should be because the Holy One blessed be he is standing before him as it is written this is the table that is before Hashem Yashiskel 4122 and and you shall eat there before Hashem your Elohim Devarim 1426 773 because the person is standing before his master he must also favor the poor to give them just as the Holy One blessed be he gives him to eat he should be like one who is eating before the Holy King and he should not be a glutton at his table because gluttony is from the other side this is the secret of give me to swallow I pray you Bereshit 2530 which is by way of gluttony which is a requirement of the other side as it is written but the belly of the wicked shall feel want Mishlei 1325 therefore it is written and you shall eat before. Hashem your Elohim and not before the other side one should not be occupied with frivolous things and the preparations for the meal but should be occupied with words of Torah for one gives strength to his master when words of Torah are spoken at the table 774 and rejoice before Hashem your Elohim this refers to the cup of blessing when a person blesses with the cup of blessing he should rejoice and express joy and no sadness at all as soon as the person has taken the cup of blessing the Holy One blessed be he stands over him and he should cover his head joyfully and bless over the cup in the presence of three people who ate together let us bless him of his bounty we have eaten 775 and by whose goodness we live here we must aim the desire up to the most ancient of all therefore it is in a concealed way as it says by whose goodness and does not say by your goodness he says by whose goodness and not goodness because by whose goodness is the supernal right which is the sphere of Jesus and from whose goodness is a different level below that comes from the right side it is a level that is lower than it namely the sphere of Jesus therefore he must say by whose goodness because the world is built by that goodness which is Jesus as it is written for I have said the world is built by Jesus Tehillim 893 and is nourished by it 776 he questions why is it called goodness and why Jesus which are two names he answers goodness is when the sphere contains everything within itself and the light does not spread to descend downward Jesus is when the light descends below and does good for all the creations the righteous and the wicked without hesitation because it does not contain judgments even though both of them goodness and Jesus are one level as written surely goodness and kindness have Jesus shall follow me Tehillim 236 and we can ask if it says goodness why does it say kindness and if it says kindness why does it say Goodness it would be sufficient to say one of them but as mentioned above goodness means that it retains everything within itself and does not spread down Jesus descends and spreads down and nourishes everything the righteous and wicked alike 777 here it says and by whose goodness we live which is possible to explain that the flow does not descend to the righteous and the wicked therefore it says again who sustains the entire world with his goodness with grace with kindness have Jesus and with mercy this is the meaning of who gives bread to all flesh for his steadfast love have Jesus endures forever Tehillim 13625 therefore it says he provides food for all namely for the righteous and the wicked for everyone this is called the blessing of the right which is Jesus the left which is pure and judgment is not included in the blessing after a meal therefore the left hand should not assist the right hand to hold the cup 778 after he is reciting the blessing after a meal we have to attach the land of the living which is Malchut to the right so it is nourished from there to sustain and give nourishment to all therefore the second blessing is the blessing of the land we should to mention in a covenant and Torah namely for your covenant which you have sealed in our flesh for your Torah which you have taught us to show that the covenant and the Torah are nourished from this goodness which is the perfection of this goodness 779 from here we learn that women are exempt from the blessing after a meal in order to fulfill their obligation because there is no Torah and covenant in them one should conclude for the land and for the sustenance as their joining together is with Jesus for the land refers to the land of the living Malchut and for the sustenance refers to Jesus they are combined together in one union 780 the spread of goodness is thankfulness head hoda that is called Jesus for when the goodness spreads down we thank him for this therefore it says we offer thanks to you for this and for these miracles and signs that have been done for us from the side of goodness if you ask yet it is written at your right hand our pleasures forevermore more have netzach tehillim 1611 we see that netzach is on the right and
Expansion of goodness from the right. This is the expansion of the goodness that expanded in the land of the living, which is Malchut 782. What is the reason there is no left here in the blessing after a meal but the right alone? It is because the other side has no part in the food of Israel. If the left would be aroused and the other side would be aroused with it as it is drawn from the left, it has already sold its birthright and portion to Jacob the patriarch. Therefore, we give the prosecutor his portion with the filth of the last waters. And if there was no filth on the hands that were washed, then his portion is in the food that his hand touched because they have some residue of food on them. 783. Therefore, if the other side has no part with us, since its part is in the left that contains no right, it has no part in the food which is Jesus as explained in the adjacent essay. Since it has no part with us as it has already taken its part in the left, we should not arouse the left at all in order not to arouse the insider to nurture from his food and then he will receive two portions like a firstborn one below and one above his portion is below and he has nothing above Israel took above and Esau took below therefore the left should not approach at all in the blessing after a meal 784 after the land of the living is blessed from the right side and receives food as mentioned above we ask for mercy for everyone and say have mercy Hashem our Elohim upon Israel your people and upon Jerusalem your city etc from that food and sustenance that is in the land of the living which is Malchut shall we ourselves receive from them namely Israel your people and the temple will be rebuilt below through his mercy namely and upon Jerusalem your city 785 on Shabbat when there is no judgment in order for Netzach and Hod to be included which Esadim as was said above that Netzach is the right included in the left and is a result of judgment namely wars Hod is a Result of the expansion of Shesedim down thus they are not actually Shesedim but contain Shesedim but on Shabbat when there is no judgment we say may it please you to strengthen us for please I as Netzach and strengthen I as Had because they are both Netzach and Had the sure loving promises Shesedim of David Yeshayah 553 namely actual Shesedim therefore let there be no distress sadness for then may it please you Hebritza and we thankfully acknowledge Hadmokin namely Netzach and Had the Shesedim of David exist without any mixtures of judgment at all bestow peace that we say in the Amid of prayer in the blessing of he who makes peace in his heavens may he make peace for us I as Yezid that provides the Shesedim of David mentioned earlier to David who is Malchut 786 afterwards we say who is good and does good because everything comes from the right side and nothing from the left side the one who recites the blessing after a meal receives the blessings before. All of them namely before those who answer after him and is blessed in the blessing after a meal therefore he has a long life it is written about the one who takes the cup of blessing and blesses over it I will raise the cup of salvation Tehillim 11613 what are the salvations this refers to the right that saves from all the insiders in the world as it is written his right hand gained him the victory Tehillim 981 and save with your right hand and answer me Tehillim 607 787 in the meantime the day dawned and they all rose and kissed him Rabbi Yussi said today is certainly a feast day and we will not leave here until a feast is prepared for all the people of the city this is a feast that the holy one blessed be he favors they took his wife blessed her with numerous blessings and required that her father designate another house for the joyous event they gathered all the people of the city for that joyous event and called his wife a bride they rejoiced with them all that Night and he rejoiced with them with words of Torah section 80 the seven blessings of the bride the young husband tells us here of the marriage canopy for the bride and the marriage canopy for the other bride the Sheshanah he speaks about the seven blessings that elevate the bride of below and the bride of above ten kinds of joy are combined joy happiness groom bride gladness jubilation cheer love and delight peace and friendship so the bride is the perfection of everything the rabbis place the youth at their head and with great happiness they tell Rabbi Shimon everything about him Rabbi Shimon relates how he blessed the young man's father Rabbi Safar that he would have a son who would excel at Torah but the father died before he could see it the relevance of this passage the union of soulmates of male and female of the upper and lower worlds is the ultimate objective of our existence thus if we are single a half of one soul the blessings arising from this text direct us to our true soulmate the other half of our soul if we are married our relationship is divinely enriched placing our marriage upon a foundation of spirituality all of this light at last causes the upper and lower worlds to join together in spiritual wedlock their ultimate and eternal unification bringing joy happiness and jubilation to all mankind 788 the youth meaning the husband opened the discussion saying and you shall make boards for the tabernacle of acacia with standing up shema 2615 it says here standing up and elsewhere seraphim stood above yeshayah 62 just as there are seraphim there so also the boards here are the secret of seraphim these seraphim that are called boards stand as implements of the bride who is the shechinah around the japan marriage canopy which is the cover that is above the board so that the supernal spirit shall dwell upon that canopy namely zeir and pentu is the same way with the bride below as it is Necessary to prepare a canopy as a cover in beautiful ornaments in honor of the other bride which is the Shechinah that comes to dwell there in joy upon the lower bride 789 in honor of the supernal bride we should to make a beautiful canopy with beautiful decorations to invite the supernal bride who is the Shechinah to this canopy just as in every covenant of circumcision below we should to decorate a beautiful second chair for he who is zealous for the sign of the covenant who comes there. Namely Aliyah who similarly here we should to have beautiful decorations to cover the canopy in honor of the bride that is the Shechinah 790 this one the bride below is similar to that one the bride above and the one below is elevated with seven blessings while the other of above is elevated with seven blessings therefore it is prohibited to cohabit with her until she has been included with these seven blessings as is with the one of above 791 the bride who is the Shechinah inherits. These seven blessings from the supernal spirit that is Zeir and the place from where all the blessings are drawn he questions there are six blessings namely Jesus Bure Typhur at Netzach Hot and Yezid of Zeir and that the bride is blessed with yet you say there are seven he answers the seventh one establishes them all for the seventh blessing corresponds to by the 792 he questions why are most blessings recited over wine he answers wine is the aspect that causes everyone to rejoice the wine that is always kept in its grapes therefore the first blessing of those seven blessings is the secret of wine namely who creates the fruit of the vine had bore pri again because wine produces fruits both above in bina and below in Malchut the vine which is Malchut receives everything and brings forth fruits to the world for after receiving the aspect of wine Malchut is named lower Chakma and before she receives Chakma she is not able to give birth the arousing of joy meaning the Beginning of the union of Zeir Enpin and Malchut is the left as it is written his left hand is under my head Sher Hashirim 26 and afterwards and his right hand embraces me with the tree of life which is Zeir Enpin produces fruits and plants with this arousal of the left because before it receives Chakma from the left of Bina it cannot be get therefore it is the first blessing of them all 793 the second blessing is that he has created everything all for his honor this is the secret of the holy covenant namely is it of Zeir Enpin that is called all this is the joy of the union that receives all the blessings from the secret of the right that is Jesus to produce fruits by that vine which is Malchut that is called his honor that fruit first descends from above from Bina through the limbs which are the Sfirat of Zeir Enpin and is drawn to the holy covenant which is Yezid to be drawn to that vine which is Malchut this is from the right side which is Jesus because fruits are to be found only on the right the left arouses the bearing of the fruits and the right produces the fruits fruits refer to the souls of the righteous 794 afterwards the left is included in the right and the right in the left in order to become the secret of man which is the central column type right therefore the third blessing is the creator of man jacob who is the central pillar was the image of adam man for the image of adam points toward the central column is right and left are combined in him 795 the fourth blessing namely who created is one pillar of the right thigh namely the sphere of netzach the fifth blessing is may the barren one have a care rejoice namely the mistress have a care of the house malchut and be happy at the ingathering of her children from the four winds of the world this is the secret of the other thigh which is netzach that joined in the left thigh which is hot to go to all sides gather the children and bring them between the knees which are Netzach and Had 796 and in these two Netzach and Had between whom the prophets dwell and receive their prophecy from them abides the joy of the mistress of the house which is Malchut what is the
Blessing also includes Malchut. It says loving friends until here are the six blessings by which the bride is blessed. 798. The seventh blessing establishes them all and all are blessed from that seventh one which is Bina which is the source of all Mokin. Certainly it is a combination of the ten sayings namely the ten Svirat for it comprehends them which is above and below namely the first three Svirat and seven lower ones which are the ten Svirat. Therefore ten kinds of joy are combined. In it joy happiness groom bride gladness jubilation sheer love and delight peace and friendship so that the bride shall be perfected in everything. 799. Blessed are the children of Israel for they merit below as above about them it is written and what one nation in the earth is like your people like Israel. Two Shmuel 723. They all rejoiced that entire day with words of Torah and all the inhabitants of that city placed him the youth as their head on the next day Rabbi Yusi and Rabbi Shia. Arose and blessed them and went on their way. 800. When they arrived before Rabbi Shimon, he raised his eyes and saw them. He said to them, I viewed you today, and I saw that you were two days and one night in the tabernacle of the youth Metatron, and that you thought you supernal secrets with the joy of Torah. Blessed is your portion, my sons. 800. And when they related before him all the words and told him the whole story, he said to them, Blessed are you, and blessed is my portion, for I remember that. One day his father Rabbi Safra was traveling with me on the road when he separated from me. I blessed him that he should have a son who will be a lion in Torah, but I did not bless him so that he should merit to see him. Thus therefore he died and did not know him. Blessed is your portion, my sons, about you. It is written, and all your children shall be taught of Hashem. Yeshayah 5413, section 81. And all your children shall be taught of Hashem. Rabbi Shimon explains here. That when children are studying Torah, the Shechina gives them strength and courage, and the Holy One assists them. This is the meaning of, and all your children shall be taught of the Creator. But another meaning emerges as Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Shia encounter a child who answers them with a prophecy. The child says that prophecy stems from the aspects of Netzach and Had, but only for the children of Israel, not for other people. The relevance of this passage, the light of the Shechina shining. Here imbues the children of our world with courage and strength and the love of spirituality, and because all of us are children of our parents and children of the light, we too are strengthened so that we have the boldness to reject the temptations of material existence and the wisdom to walk in the way of the Creator. The innocence of childhood blossoms in our souls, and the prophecy associated with children that causes gems of wisdom to come out from the mouths of babes emerges in our. Consciousness 802 Another explanation of and all your children shall be taught of Hashem Yeshayah 5413 For it can be asked are all the children of Israel taught Torah by the Holy One blessed be he He says yes because when these children are studying Torah the Shechina comes and gives them strength and courage to study Torah If not for the assistance of the Holy One blessed be he The children could not tolerate it 803 Rabbi Shimon was at the gate of Lod one day with Rabbi Shia. Child came to him Rabbi Shimon said surely the Holy One blessed be he will arouse in the world in a few days a great revolution meaning great wars among the kings of the world one with another It is definite that while they are oppressing each other the children of Israel will be peaceful 804 That boy said behold this awakening has started today for much blood has been spilled today in the world Rabbi Shia said to him how does this boy know this Rabbi Shimon said sometimes prophecy comes by the mouths of children and they prophesy more than a prophet 805 the boy said is it any wonder that children prophecy there is a whole verse to support this how do we know this from the verse and all your children shall be taught of Hashem assuredly they are taught of Hashem meaning in the aspects of Netzach and Had known as taught of Hashem as prophecy stems from there this is not so with the whole world but for the children of Israel alone as it is written and all your children shall be taught of Hashem therefore prophecy comes from them Rabbi Shimon came and kissed him he said I have never heard this except just now section 82 and you shall make boards Rabbi Shimon here says that the boards in and you shall make boards for the tabernacle of Acacia wood standing up are like the seraphim standing each with their six wings all the hosts of heaven stand and all the supernal angels are occasionally called seraphim they Relevance of this passage the tabernacle was a vessel necessary for the light to express itself on this planet here Rabbi Shimon reveals supernal secrets behind the construction of the tabernacle his purpose in doing so is to construct a personal tabernacle an internal vessel for the reader through his holy word so that God's light can rest upon us moreover this action connects our planet to the original tabernacle allowing God's light to inhabit the entire world causing the demise of death suffering pain and torment expect nothing less when such a magnificent instrument is wielded in the hands of so noble a sage 806 this was the commandment of the holy one blessed be he to Moses and you shall make words for the tabernacle of acacia wood standing up Shema 2615 it is written seraphim stood above him each one had six wings Yeshua 62 for the construction of the tabernacle with these boards resembled these seraphim the ones were standing and the others were standing 807 If you say that all the hosts of heaven stand as it is written then I will give you access among these who stand by Zechariah 37 and all the hosts of heaven standing by him by Melashim 2219 Do all the supernal camps have no joints namely knees to kneel and sit so they all stand he answers surely they all stand they are sometimes called seraphim and sometimes with a different name but these in the verse seraphim stood above him always bear the same name seraphim and the comparison of the boards of the tabernacle to seraphim is true with all the supernal angels because they are all referred to as seraphim occasionally but they are not exactly like the seraphim in the verse seraphim stood above him section 83 Hashem is my shepherd I shall not want here Rabbi Shimon tells us that the Shechina came and dwelt on David and inspired him to recite this praise to God and to request sustenance from him when God brings food to the world it Shechina takes from it first so it is for her sake that food descends to all the worlds the creator is my shepherd we learn also means that he sustains a person with everything he needs the relevance of this passage the light of sustenance and abundance shines upon us through the merit of king david we learn from david that one should meditate upon this passage with great desire requesting the creator to fill all of our needs for if one does not ask one cannot receive us ask for everything good the totality of light the final redemption the annulment of judgments and infinite loving kindness through it all 808 this verse has been established for it is written the psalm of david hashem is my shepherd i shall not want to 231 for we have learned the difference between the psalm of david and to david a psalm a psalm of david shows that the Shechina dwelt upon him and then he sang and to david a psalm shows that first he sang and the Shechina dwelt upon him Hereby Hashem is my shepherd, the Shechinah preceded and came and dwelt upon him first, for it is written in the Psalm of David. He questions why did the Shechinah precede? Hereby Hashem is my shepherd, David should have preceded since he asked for his sustenance from the Holy One, blessed be he 809. He answers, surely the Shechinah preceded and came and dwelt upon him and aroused him to recite this praise to the king and request sustenance of the king. This is the way it should be concerning. Food for the Shechinah desires it and her wishes that all the inhabitants of the world should pray for food because when the Holy One, blessed be he desires to bring down food to the world, the Shechinah takes first for her sake. Food descends to all the worlds because it is impossible that those below should receive anything unless those above receive first, as mentioned above. Therefore the Shechinah preceded in this matter of food and dwelt upon David 810. Hashem is my shepherd, just like. The shepherd who leads his sheep to the place that has herbage and grasses where nothing is lacking the Holy One blessed be he is also my shepherd to sustain one with everything I need another explanation for Hashem is my shepherd we have learned that man's sustenance is as difficult to obtain as the splitting of the Red Sea these here are two matters two explanations and they are both true section 84 man's sustenance is difficult to obtain as the splitting of the Red Sea Rabbi Shimon explains here that even though it is difficult for God to see the wicked and the sinner still he feeds and sustains everyone according to the supernal chisa that is drawn and flows over all the inhabitants of the world with it he feeds and sustains all the righteous and the pious and the wicked and all the people of the world and all the beasts and animals of the field and the birds of the heavens from the horns of the buffalo to the eggs of lice so why we are asked was this is difficult for God as the splitting of the Red Sea which should have been easy for him Rabbi Shimon explains that when the children of Israel
We all sin we utilize this passage and the righteousness of Abraham to accomplish our own miracles of nature, to forever change our ways and correct all the sins of our past. This miraculous occurrence causes miracles of nature and there is no greater miracle than the world's liberation from the clutches of the angel Satan metaphorically represented as Israel fleeing the Egyptians through the parted Red Sea. Granted this is a feat as difficult as parting an ocean but the strength, power and Light of Abraham are here with the 72 names to support us so it is a fate accomplished the moment our eyes and hearts embrace these ancient verses 811 one explanation is that all the actions of the Holy One blessed be here according to justice and truth and the entire world is supported on justice and truth every day and all the time he judges the righteous the wicked and all the inhabitants of the world with justice as it is written for Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness Tehillim 117 when he judges the people and sees how many are wicked and how many are sinners before him it is difficult for him to give them food constantly because he has to feed the wicked and those that sin 812 yet he deals with them mercifully and feeds and sustains them according to the supernal chisa that is drawn and flows over all the inhabitants of the world with it he feeds and sustains all the righteous and pious and the wicked and all the people of the world and all the beasts and animals of the field and the birds of the heavens from the horns of the buffalo to the eggs of lice there is nothing left in the world that is not fed but he sustains everything even though it is difficult for him due to the actions of the people of the world as is the splitting of the Red Sea 813 he questions was the splitting of the Red Sea difficult for him is it not written he rebukes the sea and makes it dry in Asham 14 he calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth Amos 58 and as soon as the desire arises before him everything is as nothing before him and you say that splitting the Red Sea is difficult to perform before him 814 he answers when the children of Israel approach the sea and the Holy One blessed be he wanted to split the Red Sea for them Rahab the minister of Egypt came and requested justice from the Holy One blessed be Rahab said before him master of the universe why do you want to punish Egypt and split the sea for Israel are they not all wicked before you your ways are with justice and truth but these worship idols and these worship idols and these sin with incest and these sin with incest these spill blood and these spill blood 815 at that moment it was difficult for him to disregard justice here the children of Israel were driving toward the sea as it is written and Hashem said to Moses why do you cry to me speak to the children of Israel that they go forward Shemot 1415 but it was difficult for him to disregard judgment and split the Red Sea for them had not the Holy One blessed be he looked to the merit of Abraham who preceded in the early morning to fulfill the commandment of his master and his desire as it is written and Abraham rose up early in the morning Bereshit 223 they would all have been lost in the sea because the Holy One blessed be he was judging Israel all that night 816 we have learned that it is written so that one came not near the other all the Night Shemot 1420 which teaches that the archangels came to praise before the Holy One blessed be he that night he said to them the works of my hands are drowning in the sea and you sing praises before me immediately one came not near the other all the night because one to another I said about the angels who praise the Holy One blessed be he as it is written and one cried to another and said holy it is written and it was come to pass that in the morning watch Shemot 1424 the Holy One blessed be he observed the merit of Abraham who rose up early in the morning to do the will of his master as it written and Abraham rose up early in the morning then the sea turned back and the water fled from before the children of Israel 817 it is also written and the sea returned to its strength had Leotano when the morning appeared but 27 we learned that Leotano means Litneo and to its conditioning to that condition that the Holy One blessed be he made with it when he Created the world for he had made a condition that it should split for Israel because Itano and its strength I spelled with the same letters as TNAI and condition but we should add that it is written here Leotano while there it is written Maskil of Itan the Ezra Itaylam 891 who is Abraham here also Itano alludes to Abraham therefore the Torah says when the morning appeared at that same time Abraham got up early in the morning to do the will of his master then the sea was split therefore the splitting of the sea was difficult for him section 85 matchmaking is difficult before the Holy One blessed be he like splitting the Red Sea when the Red Sea parted we learn some people were saved and some were killed someone dies and there is weeping yet his wife is given to another and there is singing and sometimes a wicked person gets a good woman Rabbi Shimon says here that there are concealed secrets in all this yet nonetheless it is all According to the law he then tells us that before the Holy One refers to Malchut these things are difficult for her because they are not under her authority she receives everything from the Holy One Rabbi Shimon next questions the meaning of and that soul will be cut off from before me and decides that it means that the soul will be cut off from all the delights of the world to come which is by the then we read of Jonah and Yonah rose to flee to Tarshish from before the Creator and for the men knew that he had fled from before the Creator how is it possible to flee from God Rabbi Shimon explains that this means Jonah was afraid to be in the Holy Land so that the spirit of prophecy should not come upon him he then speaks of the role of the Shechinah who dwells in the Holy Land and who rested on King David before he said Yadhe Bahay is my shepherd I shall not want when the Shechinah receives food above for all the worlds all the angels delight and awaken and raise there wings to cover their faces when she comes to deliver their food to them so that they do not gaze upon her there are three companies of worshipping angels we are told who fit into each other like the tendons in the standing boards of acacia in the tabernacle rabbi shimon next discusses for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and its gain than fine gold and he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul we learn means the soul of david which is malchut who wishes to amend his level properly the righteous will rest in the world to come with these still waters that are drawn and emerge from eden the relevance of this passage here we see that there is an underlying and hidden yet lawful reason for life and death good and evil grieving and rejoicing we are told that these things are not hard for the holy one but they are hard for malchut and from this we see that it is only because our understanding is so much lower than God's that we have difficulty accepting the seeming inequities of the world this difficulty is ultimately caused by the existence of time Kabbalah defines time as the distance between cause and effect it is the separation between action and reaction the measurement between conduct and recompense the space between deed and dividend and the chasm between crime and consequence because of time's existence we believe mistakenly that goodness goes unrewarded that evil goes unpunished and that life lacks true justice the world appears chaotic and random when in reality there is an exquisite and elegant order the law of cause and effect beneath the turmoil through David we correct the sins of our past rectifying and restoring all malchute all the waters of earth become still and the green pastures upon our earth welcome us as the light of the Shechen reaches her maximum intensity 818 similarly matchmaking is difficult before the Holy One blessed be he like the Splitting of the Red Sea just as by the splitting of the Red Sea these are killed on the one hand while others are kept alive on the other hand by matchmaking it is also written he brings out the prisoners into prosperity had Bakashiro Tehillim 687 we have learned that IT is spelled with the letters of weeping and singing had Beshiv Shirat because this one dies and there is weeping and he gives his wife to another and there is singing sometimes a wicked person gets a good woman therefore. Mating is difficult before him like the splitting of the Red Sea there are concealed secrets in it all and it is all according to the law and what the friends have remarked about this to explain why one is thrust aside before another certainly it is so 819 and the remark that we were taught about before meaning that matchmaking is difficult before the Holy One blessed be he instead of from before the Holy One blessed be he it is because before refers to that which stands before. The Holy One blessed be he and serves before him namely Malchut that receives from the Holy One blessed be he therefore it was not said that matchmaking is difficult for the Holy One blessed be he and similarly it was not said that man's food is difficult to obtain for the Holy One blessed be he rather it is before the Holy One blessed be he which is Malchut because all these things are difficult for Malchut for they are not under her authority even though she does accomplish it but this is under another's authority because she receives everything from the Holy One blessed be he it is appropriate to say that these things are difficult for her 820 it is written and that soul will be cut off from before me Vayikra 223 he questions what is the meaning of from before me he answers it refers to the
Shechanah dwells there as it is written your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your house. Tehillim 1283 A fruitful vine is the Shechanah just as the Shechanah is concealed inside in the Holy of Holies. Similarly a modest woman does not go out from the entrance of her house outside therefore the Torah compares the woman to the Shechanah and Jonah fled outside of the Holy Land. He questions here it is from before and it does not say before and still in all it means the Shechanah and not by 822 he answers it is certainly so from before meaning before the Shechanah because the spirit of prophecy does not come from the Shechanah but rather from before meaning before the Shechanah which are the two levels of prophets which are Netzach and Had that dwell upon the Shechanah from that place Netzach and Had he was afraid to be in the Holy Land so that the prophecy should not dwell upon him therefore it says from before me because he fled from before Hashem and not before Hashem which would mean the Shechanah because he knew that prophecy comes only from from before me which is Netzach and Had 823 because of his matings and food of people are difficult before the Holy One blessed be he which is the Shechanah is mentioned therefore King David aspired for his food higher than the Shechanah for he said Hashem is my shepherd which is Zeir and above the flow is never interrupted but it can be interrupted here by the Shechanah because the food is not dependent upon her but higher in Zeir and therefore it is written Hashem is my shepherd I shall not want which means that food will never be interrupted from me because that river which is drawn and emerges from Eden which is Zeir and that receives from Abba and Ima never has its flow interrupted therefore the Shechanah preceded and rested on him and afterwards he said praise 824 come and see when that place the Shechanah receives food above from Zeir and for the world's all the angels who sanctify their master delight and awaken and raise their wings to cover their face when the Shechanah comes with their food to them in order that they should not gaze upon the Shechanah 825 there are three companies of angels on one level who call and say holy these call to the second company and the first and the second ones raise their wings and the second ones say holy then these call to the third company and all three companies in unison raise their Wings and all say holy is Hashem's devotee, the whole earth is full of his glory, therefore all three companies are fitted one into the other, interpenetrating each other as we say by the boards connected one with the other, thus shall you make the boards for the tabernacle. Shema 2617 826 The boards always stand erect and do not bend like these who stand, meaning the seraphim who do not bend because they have no knees to kneel, they stand constantly without sitting, so it is written of it. Board standing of 827 it is written two tenants shall there be in one board, but here also just as by the seraphim, each including two aspects which are the two tenants, each one has its own aspect and that of its neighbor and the same with its neighbor, therefore they are fitted one with the other. 828 it is similarly written in the Torah, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and its gain than fine gold. Mishle 314 the one teaches the other and the other. Teaches the former so they become fitted one to the other, the one takes his own portion and that of his neighbor, and the other takes his own portion and the portion of his neighbor, meaning his reward and the reward of his friend with whom he is studying, and they are fitted together. Therefore, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, because there one takes the merchandise and the other takes the value of the silver, but here each one is interconnected with his friend. For each one has the merchandise and also the value he receives from his friend with whom is his studying. 829 it is written, He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. Tehillim 232 Green pastures refers to the supernal sources which are the Sphirot of Zeir and from which all food and sustenance come. They are called pastures had needed because these Sphirot of Zeir and are called the habitations had needed of Jacob each 22 and they are called green. Pastures because there are external pastures that are called the pastures of the wilderness. Yoel 222 therefore he calls these of holiness by the name green had the pastures yet you may argue it is written let the earth bring forth grass had the bear sheet 111 so we see that the is below in the earth that is Malchut he answers but the comes for these pastures where it is born and grows and they come to Malchut therefore it says he makes me to lie down in green pastures. 830 he leads me beside the still waters these are the waters of stillness that are drawn from that place that is drawn and emerges from Eden which is by and these waters are called still waters he restores my soul. Tehillim 233 this is the soul of David which is Malchut and the only reason that David wants this is to amend his level properly with these still waters will the righteous rest in the world to come as it is written and Hashem lead you continually. Yeshua 5811. Section 86 The stars it would not be wise to make a synopsis of this long and exquisite passage each reader must read the entire section for himself in order to delight in the beauty of its imagery and to gain some understanding of its profound teaching the relevance of this passage here we are treated to an entirely new vision of the role of the stars in everything from the growth of plants to the governance of all human activity when we read the section with its unforgettable imagery we are filled with a sense of mystery and also with a lust for knowledge that burns as brightly as the stars though a bounty of celestial wisdom is distilled here foremost to the reader is the knowledge that man alone can steer the stars and direct his destiny distant stars of war and stern judgments are subdued by our efforts here stars used by the wicked to propagate evil are snuffed out and rendered powerless stars of mercy sparkle stars of joy flash and stars of peace gleam too. Ignite our personal redemptions and the immediate arrival of heaven on earth 831 and you shall make 50 clasps of brass. Shema 2611 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba were sitting one night when it became dark they entered a garden that was by the sea of Tiberias. In the meantime they saw two stars that were moving one from one side and the other from the other side then they met and disappeared. 832 Rabbi Abba said how great are the works of the Holy One blessed be he in the heavens above and on the earth below who can understand these two stars that came out each from a different side met and then disappeared. Rabbi Lazar said to him have we not seen them for we observed them and we have observed other actions that the Holy One blessed be he does constantly. 833 he opened the discussion with the verse great is our master and of great power. Tehillim 1475 he questions the passage tells that the Holy One blessed be he is great mighty and supernal don't I know that the Holy One. Blessed be he is great and mighty what is the reason for David's praise here 834 he answers he always says great is Hashem but here he says great is our master what is the reason when he says great is Hashem and greatly to be praised Tehillim 1453 he is speaking of the higher levels Eir and but where it is written great is our master he is talking about the lower level which is Malchut the master of the whole world what is written before this verse he counts the number of it. Stars he calls them all by their names Tehillim 1474 if all the people from the time that Adam was created would gather to count the stars they would not be able to do it as it says and count the stars if you be able to number them. Bereshit 155 what is written about the Holy One blessed be he he counts the number of the stars he calls them all by their names what is the reason it is written great is our master and of great power just as there are none who can count the stars except it. Holy One, blessed be he, so is it written pertaining to him, his understanding is infinite. Tehillim 1475, 835, come and see it is written, that brings out their host by number. Yeshua 4026, meaning that the Holy One, blessed be he, brought forth all the hosts and companies and stars, each one by name, and none was missing throughout the stars and constellations of all the firmaments, leaders and supervisors were appointed to minister the world, each one as is worthy for him, there is not even one. Small blade of grass in the world that does not have a star and constellation in the firmament that rules over it and over each and every star is an appointee that serves before the Holy One, blessed be he, as is proper for him. 836, all the stars in the firmament are in charge over this world, and they are all appointed to attend to every single thing for those that are in this world. No grass trees or vegetables grow without the supervision of the stars that stand over them and appear to them. Face to face each one as is proper for it. 837 most of the companies of stars and constellations come out at the beginning of the night until three hours minus a quarter from there onwards only small stars come out and all these stars do not work for no reason and do not appear in vain there are some stars that serve the entire night in order to cause all those things that are under their responsibility to sprout and grow there are certain stars that serve until midnight and they cause to sprout and grow from the beginning of the night until that time all those things that were assigned to them there are also stars that serve a short period of the night
only through the shine of that tail that the star extends into the firmament and then all these things are perfected 840 there are illnesses among people namely jaundice and infection which are types of sicknesses and they seem to be sickness of the gall in which their faces become greenish their only remedy is a mirror of glittering metal that sparkles in the eyes namely a mirror that is made of polished metal and the ill person has to stare at it the ill person is not cured until the mirror is moved from one side to the other and the mirror has to reflect a spark of flash similar to a comet onto his face when that flash sparks in the eyes the remedy is effected in this case also all those ruled by the stars develop and grow only due to the expansion of the comet and they develop this in appearance color and strength as it should be 841 it is good because the like of it is alluded to in the book of king solomon he says in the science of precious stones if there would have been lacking the shine of the sparkle and flaming of certain stars they would never grow or develop the holy one blessed be he prepared all this in the development of the world is written to give light upon the earth bear sheet 115 meaning they shine on and perfect anything in the world that needs perfecting 842 it is written and you shall make 50 clasps of brass and you shall make 50 golden clasps shema 266 we have learned that one who has never seen the clasps in the Tabernacle has never seen the light of the stars in the sky because the clasps of the tabernacle were similar in appearance and manner of the stars to all who viewed them. 843 There are stars in the sky that emerge from that firmament wherein all the stars are kept, which is the second firmament wherein the sun, moon, stars, and constellations are set, and this firmament is the third firmament that emerges from IT. In that firmament, there are 100 framed windows, some on the east and some on the south, and in every window there is one star. 844 When the sun travels through these windows and frames in the firmament and sparkles, those stars emerge to sparkle from the sun, sparkle and become colored, some red like bronze and some yellow like gold. Therefore, some are red and some are yellow. There are 50 stars in these 50 windows and 50 in the other 50 windows on the east side, they are yellow, and on the south side, they are red with them. We're joined the ending of it. Tabernacle 845 The night stars are intermingled in all these stars that emerge from that firmament and they sparkle and flame and rule this world some dominate over bronze some over yellow gold which develop and grow with their strength 846 These stars rule over 25 and a half points of the night which are the minutes of the hour some produce bronze and some are red and they flash and glitter when they emit sparks three times toward the east or five times or seven the kings of the nations come against that side and all riches and gold move out of that side if that sparkle is once twice four or six times one after the other fear and terror then fall and dwell upon that side if the sparkle throbs and then his quiet wars are threatened but are not affected because there is then an arousing among the patrons of the world that dominate over the other nations before the holy one blessed be he it is the same on the other side west 847 he opened the discussion with the Verse blessed be the name of Elohim forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changes the times and the seasons Daniel 220 to 21 everything is in his jurisdiction and he removed his holy people from the control of the stars and constellations because they are other Elohim the portion of Jacob is not with them but rather the former of all things Jeremiah 1016 is his portion 848 there is a firmament above all these firmaments namely the firmament of Bido which is higher than the seven firmaments which are Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadjazid and Malchut about whom is said out of whose womb came the ice IYOB 3829 it is concealed and hidden and is sealed with the ring of the tabernacle namely the supernal tabernacle which is by and the seal of the ring is the secret of Malchut of the attribute of judgment that is concealed in this firmament which causes it to be hidden and concealed and unknown this firmament is known as Idra Dimashkina namely the chamber of it. Supernal tabernacle and in this firmament are all these hundred windows mentioned earlier of the side and of that side from them are they drawn to the third firmament of below and it is attached to all parts of the lower tabernacle which is Malchut there are six windows greater than all of them which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid and one closed which corresponds to the seal of the ring that was mentioned which is Malchut of the lock which dominates them conceals and covers them from the conceiving of those below 849 one window of the seven large windows is called the light window which corresponds to Shesed through it emerges a star called by the sages Yad and Hand which is the power of melting that melts downward in order to remove the judgments that are in IT under the dominion of Judah not that Judah has a part in it since the tribes have no part or possession in the stars to worship them but rather the tribe Judah rules over these judgments and not they over him 850 when the children of Judah turned away from the Holy One blessed be he and followed after this window and the star for understanding they said that the Yad and Han triumphs over the other nations as it is written your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies Beersheet 498 they followed it and served it and about this is written and Judah did evil in the sight of Hashem by Melashim 1422 851 when the star emerges it stretches out one hand which is the secret of Jesus that is called right hand with five fingers which are Jesus Burit Tiferet Netzach and Hot that are in IT and illuminates and sparkles in that window and the sorcerers and magicians fear that place because all the sorcerers and magicians are confused and their magic does not thrive during the time that it dominates 852 if you ask since this firmament is concealed as mentioned that it is in Bina, how do the sorcerers know about it to become confused by it he answers they have a Sign in the outer part of the holiness from which they know that star is ruling they constantly fear it and their sorcery and magic do not succeed in it there are times when people are successful in it and there are times when people are not successful therefore the sorcerers and magicians are becoming less numerous in the world because they do not know the source when they see that the magic is not successful by them therefore the ancient magicians knew the source for they would gaze at that sign that was on the exterior of the holiness of which they knew 853 the second window which is pure is called the window of nail hepsiparen because it is similar to the nail namely the left column that is called siparen through it emerges a star that is called by the scholars siphon and viper because it dominates with harsh judgment and with its head and tail like a viper that lies in wait to kill 854 from that window emerged below six billion spirits that rule over the nails of people when they are thrown away openly all those who know how to perform sorcery and magic with them at the time that the star dominates all those who throw away their nails or perform magic with them bring death to the whole world and the magic that they perform is successful in it. 855 the third window which is Tiferet is called the window of the breastplate because Tiferet is called breastplate through it emerges a star called the Nikhat of the shine of it. Lamp this is a sparkle that sparkles despite all winds and peace and deliverance are in it since it is the central column that unites right and left together and thereby removes all the judgments that are in them it bears no accusation at all when it dominates all peace and all light rule the world and tranquility and satisfaction and all good rule the world. 856 the fourth window which is Yezid is called the window of the goblet because it receives and provides wine which is a secret. Of the illumination of the left that is sweetened by the right to melt you through it emerges a star that is called the cluster of the henna by the sages because it emerges and illuminates like a cluster and sparkles like grapes in a cluster of the henna through it is aroused mercy in the world it keeps the judgments at a distance and brings close murk many children are born into the world and people are not particular when they need one another peace and joy are aroused in the world 857. The fifth window which is Netzach is a window called the well because of the star that emerges from it, it enters and emerges and draws sustenance like a pail from a well and never ceases the was hearted could never truly understand the star because it is never stationary and is never quiet therefore the was hearted had difficulty studying this place and making conclusions 858 the sixth window is hot this is a window that is called Nagha brightness and a star emerges from it called these are an decree when it rules the world is under judgment under many decrees and many punishments every single day there are new decrees against the world and new ones are formed before these judgments are completely executed the star does not rule much in the world 859 close to the days of Messiah the window with the star shall rule the world therefore wild animals will rule the world and new evil species will be formed one after the other and the children of Israel will be in distress when they will be pressed in the darkness of exile the holy one blessed be he will light up for them the light of day which is redemption and the supernal holy ones will accept the kingdom rulership will be annulled from the idol worshipping nations and Israel will rule over them and will be fulfilled moreover the light of the
With the verse Banan says where is Aloha my maker lit makers who give songs in the night by makers we learn the scripture means that Aloha includes both Zer and Pen and his court Malchut Malchut is constantly praising all night in order to receive his joyous supernal light all the stars are thankful and praise God during the entire time that they are visible in the sky because the supernal angels who are appointed over the stars are all thankful and praise in watches during the three parts of the night we next learn that in order to unite with their master the angels must push the other side outside and they do this by bringing sleep to the inhabitants of the world which attracts the other side downward evil spirits float around until midnight we are told Rabbi Shimon then tells of the angels that stand outside spoken of in who makes the wind spirits his messengers and the angels who are fire that stand inside spoken of in the flames of fire his ministers the supernal Angels praise God only after they have pushed the impurity outside the master over all the companies of angels is the candle of David who is Malchut. Next Rabbi Shimon offers an alternative explanation for the opening verse where the secret is that the spirit of man is composed of male and female as in and Elohim said let us make man in our image after our likeness following this Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba rise at midnight to study Torah at midnight the Holy One is aroused through love for the congregation of Israel and he sees the good deeds they performed that day inhaling their sweet savor then the light illuminates the trees in the garden of Eden sing praises and the righteous experience there the delights of the world to come the relevance of this passage the light of the creator travels though numerous dimensions before manifesting in our physical realm a vast communication network runs throughout these dimensions transporting this light this network incorporates what we commonly refer to as angels. Angels are the interface through which a man interacts with the awesome light of the Creator. However, our senses of perception are by design restricted and limited, much remains hidden from the thoughts of men and women. Consequently, the force called angel remains unobservable to the naked eye and illogical to the rational mind, like the unseen wind. However, its influence is very real. Positive actions of sharing tolerance and compassion ignite positive angels in our lives. Behavior that embodies selfishness, intolerance, hatred, and self indulgence rouses negative forces of darkness. David, we are told, rule over all the angels. Thus, here we are given the power to govern all the angels to have them do our bidding so that we attract the light of the Creator into our lives. We animate positive angels and bring forth countless blessings. We expel all negative angels and dissolve all blockages. The light that illuminates after midnight when two saintly sages engage in. Torah study shines here endowing us with the power to triumph over the other side especially during the evening hours when the influence of the dark force reaches its maximum power this is the final end of darkness and all creation rejoices in turn 861 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse but none says where is Aloha my maker lit makers who give songs in the night EO 3510 this passage has been established and we have studied it the scripture says my makers in the plural instead of my maker in the singular who are my makers in plural he answers the name Aloha is an inclusive name that denotes him who is Zeir and Pen and his court which is Malchut this is a complete name that includes male and female which contains the letters Elbop hey therefore it is written my makers in plural because it includes both levels 862 who give songs in the night why in the night is because Malchut that is called night constantly praises the king that the Pieces is who is Zeir and Pen like a candle that is never placid but always wavers here and there. Similarly, Malchut is constantly praising in order to receive the supernal joyous light of Zeir and Pen because of this great joy that is aroused by the recited praises. Therefore, it says, Who give songs in the night? 863. All these stars that illuminate in the firmament are thankful and praise the Holy One. Blessed be He during the entire time that they are visible in the sky because the supernal angels who are appointed over the stars are all thankful and praise in watches during the three parts into which the night is divided. 864. During the night, various sides are divided at the beginning of the night when the night sets in and it becomes dark. All these evil spirits and evil species scatter and flow throughout the whole world and the other side separates and demands the ways of the king from all these holy sides. 865. As soon as the other side is aroused, all the inhabitants. Of the world taste death meaning that sleep falls upon them which is one sixtieth of death and the other side dominates them since the impurity is separated from above and descended to dominate below three companies of angels separate to praise the holy one blessed be he in the three parts of the night as the friends have remarked 866 while they are still praising the holy one blessed be he the other side goes and flies below to all directions of the world as long as the other side is not removed from there the angels cannot be united with their master 867 this is a secret for the sages the angels above and the children of Israel below all reject that other side when the supernal angels wish to unite with their master they cannot do it until they push the other side outside what do they do about 600,000 holy angels descend and throw down sleep upon all the inhabitants of the world once the other side has descended because they pushed it out and give it this world entirely in that sleep then the other side rules over them people and they become impure by it except in the land of Israel alone for the other side does not rule there as soon as the other side separates from them the angels come before their master and praise and give thanks before him 868 similarly Israel below cannot become united with their master until they push away the other side from them and give it a portion to keep it occupied which is the secret of the scapegoat afterwards they approach their master and there is no accuser is present above or below 869 if you ask this is all applicable below with humans but above with angels what kind of accusation is possible there because of which they are obliged to push the other side downwards as mentioned he answers above it is because the other side is an impure spirit and the angels are holy spirits therefore until they send away the other side from among them they cannot approach their master because Holiness and impurity can never mix. Similarly, the children of Israel below do not mix with the nations of the world who worship idols. When both sides, those above angels and those below Israel, desire to approach the king, they push the other side out. 870. Therefore, when night arrives and the holy supernal angels arrange themselves in lines to approach their master, they first push the other side out and afterwards come into the sanctuary. 871. This is similar to a king who had precious stones in a locked chest in his fortress. That king was wise, and in his great wisdom, he took a strong snake and wrapped it around that chest in order that not everyone who so wished could approach that chest with precious gems and pearls. If anyone would try to put his hand to that box, the snake would bounce upon him and kill him. 872. The king had a close friend, and the king said to him, Whenever you want to enter and make use of that chest, you may do such and such to the snake then. You can open the chest and help yourself to my treasure the Holy One blessed be he does also wrap a snake around the sanctuary namely the other side that approaches angels when the illumination of the left dominates during the beginning of night when the supernal angels come to enter the sanctuary the snake is there and they fear becoming impure through it therefore they cause sleep to fall upon people for then the other side goes below and separates from them and the angels can enter the sanctuary and recite poetry as mentioned 873 come and see it is written who makes the winds or spirits his messengers the flames of fire his ministers tell him 1044 who makes the spirits his messengers these are the angels that stand outside while the flames of fire his ministers are the angels that stand inside so we realize that the other side is the impure spirit and these angels who say praise during the night are the external angels and they are a spirit and one spirit does not Enter another the impure spirit and the Holy Spirit do not mix together therefore those that are called spirit which are the external angels cannot enter inside because of that impure spirit so they push it down as mentioned the angels that are inside who are fire that fire pushes away that impure spirit so it does not enter inside they all push the impure spirit outside so it does not mix with them therefore the supernal angels praise the Holy One blessed be he only after they have pushed impurity out 874 there are three watches during the night corresponding to three companies of angels who divide to praise the Holy One blessed be he as we have learned therefore the master over them all is the candle of David namely Malchut that is never quiet but is rather constantly thanking and praising the supernal king Zeir and then therefore it is written who gives songs in the night 875 another explanation of the verse but none says where is Aloha my maker makers who gives Songs in the night is written as makers in plural it is as we have learned that since man is made and comprised of above and below just like the body comes out from male and female so it is with the spirit the spirit of man is composed of male and female namely of Zeir and Pen and Malchut by these means is man perfected in his engravings
have learned that when the north wind is aroused at midnight all these evil spirits and evil aspects gather together from the whole world and enter through the hole of the great abyss if so then in the south side which is the right which is Jesus why do these evil types rove around in the beginning of the night when the south wind dominates it should be the opposite that during the beginning of the night when the south wind dominates the other side should be removed from the world and at Midnight when the north wind dominates they should again dominate in the world 877 he answers but surely were it not for the south side that detains and pushes away the other side and the other side would trouble the whole world and the world could not tolerate it when the other side is aroused to dominate the world it is aroused only from the west side which is Malchut that dominates during the beginning of the night and gathers the whole world therefore the holy one blessed be he proceeds with a remedy for the world by the sleep as we have learned blessed are the children of Israel in this world and in the world to come that the holy one blessed be he has chosen them of all the other nations of the world 878 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba entered the house at midnight they rose to study Torah Rabbi Abba said it is certainly a favorable time for the holy one blessed be he many times we have remarked about this that at midnight the holy one blessed be he enters the Garden of Eden with the righteous and delights himself with them. Blessed is he who studies Torah at that time. 879 Rabbi Lazar said when the Holy One blessed be he delights himself with the righteous. How does he delight himself? He answers at midnight the Holy One blessed be he is aroused through the love of the left for the congregation of Israel which is Malchut love is only in the left meaning that Chakma of the left is clothed with the Shesedim of the central column and then Chakma is completed the congregation of Israel has no present to offer the king or a beautiful and distinguished thing except for these spirits of the righteous for the Holy One blessed be he sees them adorned with many good deeds and many merits that they perform that day they are accepted more favorably than all the offerings and burnt sacrifices for the Holy One blessed be he smells in them the sweet savor that the children of Israel produce 880 then the light lights up for the Light of Chakma is lit up after being clothed in Chesedim of the central column. All the trees in the Garden of Eden sing songs of praise, and the righteous become adorned there with the delights of the world to come, which are the illumination of Chakma that is called Eden. When a person wakes from his sleep at that time to study Torah, he takes his portion with the righteous in the Garden of Eden. One name which is engraved with 32 letters, which is the secret of the 32 paths of Chakma, adorns the righteous there, and this pertains to the secret of the righteous. Section 88. I will praise Hashem with my whole heart. Here, Rabbi Lazar shows how Yahya is included with Hail of praise and Hail Yahya. He then speaks of the secret of the alphabet shown by King David in his praises, namely the supernal letters and the letters of Malchut, and the secret of 32 paths of Chakma, praising God with one's whole heart. We are told means with both the good and the Evil inclinations we should give thanks to God for good and for evil and furthermore say this thanks before everyone the relevance of this passage here Zohar is taking us deeper into a teaching that has been slowly but steadily intensifying throughout Truma, the nature of evil when we are told that we should give thanks for evil we probably feel a shockwave of protest run through us or are we not here to defeat and overcome evil how can we give thanks for such blackness in each act of victory over evil man achieves a state of divinity he unleashes a godly spark of life flickering in his soul this truth can be seen in our physical world muscle tissue requires resistance and strain in order to grow stronger a lit candle requires darkness to give it value and worth likewise the soul of man requires burden and lightlessness in order to realize its full splendor when evil has run its course and man has fully triumphed over the darkness the soul will be strengthened to its Maximum potential we will have evolved to the highest level, the state of God this has been the journey of over 5761 years thus far two paths to this ultimate divine place have always existed the path of torment and the soft hearted path of spirituality both paths strengthen the soul and achieve the same outcome but the path of torment is known all too well while the path of spirituality remains the least traveled until now by utilizing the awesome spiritual influence of the Zohar we now choose. The path of light we fully correct our souls and complete the spiritual evolution of all mankind in a compassionate way so there is no further need of darkness and challenge 881 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying Hail Yah I will praise Hashem with my whole heart Tehillim 1111 Hail Yah let praise Yah we have learned this and the friends remarked about it so it is for this is a praise that transcends all the songs and praises that David said among the ten various praises he said. Because it includes the name Yahudhah and the praise Hallelujah praise together, this is the entirety of the holy supernal name Yahudhah Vav. Because the name Yahudhah is the whole of the name Yahudhah Vav. 882. I will praise Hashem with my whole heart. Wherever King David mentioned the secret of the alphabet, meaning when he arranged the beginning of the sentences in the order of the Aleph, it is the secret of the engraved letters that emanate in the engravings of the 32 paths, namely the 32 paths of Chakma. There are supernal letters from the secret of the supernal world, which is Bina, and there are other letters which are small letters which are from Malchut. Here is the secret of the alphabet of the lower world, which is Malchut. 883. I will praise Hashem with my whole heart, meaning with the good inclination and evil inclination that dwell in him. We must thank the Holy One, blessed be He, for everything, both with the good inclination and the evil inclination. Good. Comes for the person from the side of the good inclination and it behooves us to bless the Holy One, blessed be he with the blessing of who is good and does good from the side of evil come accusations against the person and it behooves one to thank the Holy One, blessed be he for everything that may come unto a person from either side. 884 in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation of it in the assembly lit secret of the upright refers to those who know the secret of it. Holy One, blessed be he as they know all the secrets of the Holy One, blessed be he as they are his secret in general referring to this he says in the secret of the upright the congregation is the children of Israel when they gather in a group of ten to thank the Holy One, blessed be he therefore we should give thanks to the Holy One, blessed be he for good and for evil and publicize it before everyone if you ask the Holy One, blessed be he knows so why is it necessary to publicize the Holy One? Blessed be he is glorified in the world by this publicizing therefore we should publicize the miracle and therefore it is written of the Holy One blessed be he thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself Yeshua 3823 section 89 let every soul praise Yah your Rabbi Yehuda says that all souls come from the Holy Body Malchut and dwell within in humans he speaks again of the fountains of wisdom that emerge into 32 paths and of the Holy Spirit in which all the spirits are included Rabbi Yitzhak then tells us how profoundly moved Rabbi Shimon had been when speaking of this and how he had told of the treasures of the supernal king the key which is yes the supernal engravings and the treasury of the images Malchut Moses died and approached the 50th gate we learn without revealing these secrets to Israel the relevance of this passage this passage speaks of the paradise that is obtained by the souls of the wise after death the joy so fierce that it causes Rabbi Shimon to weep is the joy of returning to paradise. It is the moment when the burden of physical existence drops forever from one soul, when the anguish and woe is cleared from one sobbing heart, and when everything is made eternally young and joyful again. The notion of death has spiritual connotations relevant to the here and now. In the moment we choose to ascend to a higher spiritual level, our old self dies, thus the world to come paradise along with its abundant joyful treasures pertains to the next level of spirituality, which potentially lies in the very next moment. Should we choose it in this passage, we choose it. Death itself dies, and paradise appears before our eyes. The burden of physical existence is forever lifted. 885 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse. Let every soul praise Yah. 1506. We have learned that all souls come from this holy body, namely Malchut, which is a body to Z E I R and and dwell within humans. He questions from. Which place is it meaning from which aspect he answers it is from the place that is called hand namely Malchut he questions what is the aspect of this place Rabbi Yehuda said it is written Hashem how manifold are your works in wisdom have you made them all Tehillim 10424 and we have learned of that Chakma wisdom that her fountains flow into 32 paths everything is included everything that is above and below which is Malchut which in her alone is Chakma revealed and not in any other level. It is called the Holy Spirit in which all spirits are included 886 Rabbi Yitzhak said during the day that Rabbi Shimon was explaining the subject his
Complete faith when Jacob was renamed Israel we learned it meant the perfection of everything which is a lack of death the relevance of this passage death dies all is perfected and made eternal through Jacob and Moses mercy and loving kindness enveloped the entire metamorphose end of story 888 we have learned that Rabbi Shimon said Moses did not die if you ask yet it is written and Moses died there to 345 and south every place where death is mentioned by the righteous what is death. From our view it is called so but from the view of those above to the contrary his life increased for we have learned that Rabbi Shimon said he taught that the holy faith is suspended from one who is perfect death is not attached to him and he doesn't die as it was with Jacob who had a complete faith therefore Jacob the patriarch did not die 889 for Rabbi Shimon said your name shall not be called anymore Jacob but Israel shall be your name and he called his name Israel Bereshit 3510. What means Israel the perfection of everything which is a lack of death it is written therefore fear you not my servant Jacob says Hashem neither be dismayed Israel for lo I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity your maya 3890 Rabbi Yehuda said from the following is derived that Jacob did not die as it is written for I am with you Ibn 11 I is exact for it points out to Malchut that is called I blessed is the portion of him whose master speaks thus to him it is not written for you or with me for then it would imply that he was attached to the holy one blessed be he above but not when he was in his place below rather for I am with you which points out that his master came to join and dwell with him 891 Rabbi Shimon said Rabbi Abba has spoken well about the verse and Jacob shall return and shall be quiet and at ease and none shall make him afraid Ibn 10 and Jacob shall return means he shall return to being called by a different name as it is written your name shall not be called any more Jacob but Israel 892 another explanation for and Jacob shall return meaning and Jacob shall return to the place from where he was taken and shall be quiet namely in this world and at ease namely in the world to come and none shall make him afraid namely of the angel of death the implication is that he had everything in him for Jacob did not die Rabbi Yitzhak said the friends have established it as it is written and your seed from the land of their captivity of it just as his seed is alive so is he alive hence Jacob did not die section 91 circumcision redemption of the firstborn son and marriage Rabbi Yehuda tells us here that bad things will come to the people in the world who do not take advantage of the Torah that their master left for them he then says there are three things that a person is obligated to do for his son circumcision redemption and to marry him to a woman this is because God did these things for Israel also we are told he carried them like the eagle who carries its children on its wings the relevance of this passage our meditation purifies our children and redeems all the world's children who grace us with their innocence by this action we are carried upward on our own strong wings and the men and women sons and daughters of this world find their soulmates and unite in completion and then our entire world unites with our creator in the final redemption that exemplifies the loving kindness of this holy book 893 and the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end Shema 2628 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying happy are you a land when your king is a free man and your princes eat in due season Kahilad 1017 and woe to you a land when your king is a child and your princes dine in the morning of it 16 woe is to the people in the world that do not care the service of their master because their master endeavors to do good for them for he has left words of Torah before them but they do pay attention to them 894 we have learned that there are three things that a person is obligated to do for his son circumcision redemption marry him to a woman the holy one blessed be he did all this with Israel circumcision as it is written and circumcise again the children of Israel a second time Yahashua 52 and any that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every male bear sheet 1712 redemption as it is written and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the land of Pharaoh king of Egypt Devarim 78 to marry him to a woman as it is written male and female he created them bear sheet 127 and an Elohim blessed them and Elohim said to them be fruitful and multiply but 28 also he carried them like an eagle who carries its young on its wings as it is written and how I bore you on eagles wings Shema 194 section 92 until Jacob people died without sickness Rabbi Yossi tells us that Rabbi Huna went up to the Holy Land and found the rabbis discussing this passage and I will punish Bel in Babylon and I will take out of his mouth that he has swallowed up and the nations shall not flow together anymore to him Rabbi Huna tries to make himself heard but no one will listen until Rabbi Yudai asks him to speak Rabbi Huna then explains that Jacob asked God if a person could be sick for a few days before death so he could put his affairs in order and repent of his sins thus God granted this wish to Jacob and he was the first person to fall sick before dying the relevance of this passage here the reader proactively repents of his wrongdoings and brings order to his affairs without having to go through pain and illness just to comprehend the importance of penitence moreover just as Jacob had the power to bring sickness to this world so that a man could avoid suffering in the world to come we now draw upon Jacob's righteousness and awesome power to achieve the reverse effect the end of sickness the cessation of suffering the demise death the gateway to the world to come is now open 895 Rabbi Yossi said it is all nice but the Torah that was given before the children of Israel and taught to them is more important than everything come and see there is no praise for a person in this world and in the world to come like the praise of Torah as it is written of it by me King's reign Mishlei 815. 896 we have learned that when Rabbi Huna went up to the Holy Land he found the rabbis occupied with this passage that says and I will punish Bel in Babylon and I will take out of his mouth which he has swallowed up and the nations shall not flow together anymore to him Yermeah 5144 Rabbi Huna stood but they didn't notice him because they did not recognize him at first and because he was small he came to the study hall and he heard the sages saying that this verse that was just mentioned must be Examine to see whether the name of the idol and object of fear of Nebuchadnezzar was Bel and therefore he said and I will punish Bel yet it is written but at last Daniel came in before me whose name is Belchitsar according to the name of my Elohim Daniel 45 so we see that his idol's name was Belchitsar also what does this mean and I will take out of his mouth which he has swallowed up 897 Rabbuna stood up between the foundation of the pillars and said if I were in my own place I would explain this verse they paid him no attention he stood up and repeated it a second time Rabbi Yudai the son of Rab came over and sat him down in front of him he said to him speak my son speak because concerning the words of Torah is written she cries in the chief place of concourse Mishlei 121 898 he opened the discussion saying we have learned that in the early days before Jacob came a person was peacefully in his home without any sickness when his time came to die he died without any sickness when Jacob came he asked of the Holy One blessed be he master of the universe if it is favorable before you let a person fall into illness for two or three days then he should be gathered unto his people so that he would be able to arrange for his family and repent his sins the Holy One blessed be he told him fine you will be an example for the world meaning that it will start with you come and see what is written concerning him and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph behold your father is sick had Koli Bershi 481 the word Koli is spelled without a bob which shows that it was new and that no person had this before section 93 up until Hezekiah there was no sick person who was cured we learned here that after Jacob died everyone who became ill also died until Hezekiah when he became ill he prayed to God saying that if people were healed from illness they would thank God and return to their lives with repentance God took his point and granted his request beginning with Hezekiah at this time also the sun turned back 10 degrees we learn and time turned back 5 full hours so the Elohim of Hezekiah performed two miracles on one day God swore to Hezekiah that three kings would descend from him we are then told the first of these kings was Nebuchadnezzar who made an idol and caused everyone to worship it from the temple he took a vessel that was engraved with the letters of the holy name and placed it in the mouth of the idol which then spoke great things Daniel came and commanded the idol saying I am the messenger of the supernal master I decree upon you to leave here then the vessel came out of the idol's mouth and the idol fell to the ground and broke Rabbi Hunath and concludes by saying that all this is the meaning of and I will take out of his mouth that he has swallowed up and the nations shall not flow together anymore to him the relevance of this passage the light of healing shines Brightly here brighter still when we fill our hearts with contriteness and make a conscious effort to share this radiance with others in need of heal
Judah when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness of Bidnai we learned that the sun turned backward 10 degrees 900 we also learned that Merodach Baladon used to always eat daily at the fourth hour of the day and also that he slept until the ninth hour of the day that day too he slept until the ninth hour when he awoke he saw that the sun stood at the fourth hour of the day he said what is this is this a plot to starve me with hunger they said to him why he said for I have slept one and a third days because he thought that this was the fourth hour of the next day and that he had slept one full day from four hours and a third of the second day because it was already at the fourth hour of the second day they said to him that it was not so but that the Elohim of Hezekiah performed two miracles on that day one is that he cured Hezekiah of his illness and the second is that he returned the sun to this hour he said is there a great Elohim in this world except for my Elohim and they said the Elohim of Hezekiah 901 he arose and wrote his letter peace to Hezekiah the king of Judah and peace to his Elohim and peace to Jerusalem the holy city afterwards he changed his mind arose from his throne took three steps and wrote another letter peace to the great Elohim in Jerusalem and peace to Hezekiah the king of Judah and peace to Jerusalem the holy city the holy one blessed be he said to him you took three steps in my honor I swear that three kings will descend from you rulers and princes who will rule over the whole world and the first of them was Nebuchadnezzar 902 come and see what Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar you are this head of gold and after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to you and another third kingdom of brass Daniel 238 to 39 what is written Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and the breadth of which was 6 cubits Daniel 31 Nebuchadnezzar said the idol that I saw in the dream had a head of gold and his innards were silver I shall make it entirely of gold and there shall be a golden crown on its head 903 we learned that he gathered all the nations and peoples and tongues on that day to worship that idol and he took a vessel of the vessels of the temple upon which was engraved the holy name and placed it in the mouth of that idol at that moment the idol spoke great things until Daniel came and approached that idol saying I am the messenger of the supernal master I decree upon you to leave here when he mentioned the holy name that vessel came out of the idol's mouth and the idol fell and broke this is the meaning of that which is written and I will take out of his mouth which he has swallowed up and the nations shall not flow together anymore to him your may 5144 Rabbi Yehuda got up and kissed Rabbi on his head he said if I had not brought you close to the friends here we would not recognize you from that day onwards they were in awe of him Section 94 Happy are you a land when your king is a free man Rabbi Yossi says here that this verse refers to Moses when he freed the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt by land he means the earth Malchud which is attained from the heavens here and then Rabbi Yossi then discusses the destruction of the holy temple and the holy land and explains that when God wants to judge the world he first has a trial above and then the verdict is established below Rabbi Shimon next says that and the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from end to end refers to Jacob who united Malchud and Zer and through Rachel and Leah and Jacob was a plain man we learn means he was whole and complete supernal Chesed and supernal Bura in Bina and the two columns in Zer and Shachma we are told includes everything the patriarchs Abraham and Isaac include everything too and Jacob combines both of them the relevance of this passage our evil inclination the ego has been the foundation of turmoil pain and all unhappiness the other side tells us that we are self-governing free and independent but in truth we have been enslaved to its will and command we are under the delusion that we act freely in reality we have been held captive by its desires we are imprisoned by our reactive whims and self-absorbed desires we are enslaved to our careers jobs and shallow relationships we are incarcerated by our need for other people's acceptance the ego is a ball and chain that has anchored us to this physical dimension its material trappings and its inevitable turmoil for this reason fulfillment has always been a rare commodity our moments of happiness and true freedom are fleeting the segment of zohar unlocks the chains of the other side offering us the greatest freedom a man can attain freedom from the self the zohar spiritual influences impress us with wisdom to finally recognize life's true and lasting pleasures closeness with the creator marriage Children friendship and the strength to forever resist trading them away for transient pleasures born of self-indulgence this wisdom and the ultimate freedom it now provides flows to us from Abraham Isaac Jacob and Moses 904 we have studied happy are you a land when your king is a free man and your princes eat in due season Kahilat 1017 Rabbi Yossi established this verse to refer to Moses at the time that he took the children of Israel out of Egypt and made them free people and your princes eat in due season as it is written and you shall eat it in haste it is Hashem's passage Shema 1211 905 Rabbi Shimon Bar Yukai said did I not say that the words of King Solomon are all inside the sanctuary of the king what you said is all well and it required for an argument to be based upon it but this verse is above in the supernal sanctuary which is Malchut 906 we have studied happy are you a land when your king is a free man what land is this it means just land namely Malchut for we have learned that it is written he has cast down from heaven to earth or land the beauty of Israel Egypt 21 behold this land is a secret among the crowns of the holy king namely the Sfirot of which is written in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heavens Bereshit 24 for Elohim is by the heaven is Zeir and earth is Malchut on this earth all that is nourished is from that place called heavens because this earth is sustained only from the holy perfection called heavens 907 when the holy one blessed be he wanted to destroy his house below namely the temple and the terrestrial holy land he first removed the celestial holy land which is Malchut lowered it from that level from which it was nourishing which is the holy heavens namely Zeir and and destroyed the terrestrial one this is what is meant by he cast down from heavens to earth Egypt 21 first and afterwards and remembered not his footstool of it which is the terrestrial temple and the Holy Land called his footstool we have learned that these are the ways of the Holy One blessed be he when he wants to judge the world first he has a trial above and then verdict is carried below as it is written Hashem shall punish the host of the high ones on high and afterwards the kings of the earth upon the earth Yeshayah 2421 908 Rabbi Shimon said happy are you a land when your king is a free man refers to Zeir and who sustains you with abundance without fear of another from that supernal king all are sustained and your princes eat in due season is as written in due time Jacob and Israel are told what El has performed Bimidbar 2323 for they are the princes woe to you a land when your king is a child Kahilat 1016 is as written and I will give children to be their princes Yeshayah 34 woe is unto the land if it nourishes from the left which is called child and your princes die in the morning Ibid that is in that darkness of the left is long as that which should rule does not illuminate or rule namely the central column that unites right and left 909 we have learned that Rabbi Shimon said and the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from end to end Shema 2628 this refers to holy and perfect Jacob as we have established it is written and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents Bereshit 2527 it is not written tent but rather tents which means two for he is attached to this one and that one namely in Malchut that is above the chest of Zeir and that is called Leah and in Malchut below the chest of Zeir and called Rachel it is also written here and the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from end to end so that it is attached here and held there to Leah and Rachel meaning throughout the stature of Zeir and from end to end 910 what is meant by a plain man it is translated into Aramaic as whole for he is whole in everything and completes both aspects Atika. Kadisha and Zer Enpin he is the central column who mediates and completes both columns right and left that are in Bina that is sometimes called Atika Kadisha and the two columns in Zeir Enpin this is because he completes supernal Chesed and supernal Bura namely the two columns right and left that are in Bina and he completes the one and the other Bina and Zeir Enpin 911 Rabbi Shimon said I see that Chakma includes everything and supernal Chesed that is in Zeir Enpin which is the right column emerges from Chakma Bura which is strong judgment emerges from Bina Jacob completes both sides for he mediates between Chesed and Bura and unites and completes them the patriarchs Abraham and Isaac namely Chesed and Bura of Zeir Enpin include everything and Jacob is the combination of the patriarchs because he combines both of them section 95 Chakma united with its paths Rabbi Shimon speaks about the mechanism of the delivery of wisdom
that we are now receiving the power to perform feats of wonder concerning the ultimate transformation of human nature. The word Bina is itself a portal, a priceless passkey to the supernal fountainhead where we now dip ourselves into the pure pristine wellspring of light and reemerge cleansed in body and soul. And the great name of Jacob, who is the central column force incarnate, ignites our own central column, the divine gift of free will. The autonomous choice of man has to reject the base. Drives born of ego or ego is here with overthrown by the will of our soul and the Satan is crushed by the cosmic central column power of Jacob 912. We have studied that Chakma united with its paths and gathered with its wind meaning its seven lower spirot which are called wind the waters and the waters gathered into one place the fifty gates of Bana open from these thirty-two paths ten crowns emerged which are the ten spirot of the first three spirot of Chakma with glorious crowns and there remain twenty-two paths which is the secret of the seven lower spirot of Chakma being the secret of twenty-two letters therefore when that wind beat upon the paths in order to gather the waters to one place as mentioned the fifty gates of Bana opened which is the secret of the first three spirot of Bana and twenty-two opened which are the lower seven spirot and the fifty gates of Jubilee meaning in these fifty gates of Bana these twenty-two of Bana are crowned with the iron bed seventy-two letters of the holy name that illuminate. With the illumination of Chakma and open to its aspect, but upon the fifty gates of Bina, which are the first three Svirat of Bina, the name M E M B 42 illuminates as mentioned here by 913. The twenty-two crowns of mercy were adorned, which are the seven lower Svirat that are included in Adikim and who illuminates upon them. Each one in his aspect, they illuminate and cover Chesedim from them are adorned fifty engravings, which are the fifty gates of Bina with the forty-two holy letters of the holy name, with which heaven and earth were created. They were engraved into eight gates, which are the eight letters of mercy, as it is written: Hashem, Hashem, El Merciful and Gracious. Shema 346. These are the eight names that emerge from Atika Kadisha that emerge into Z E I R N and the supernal Chakma and Bina join these holy crowns and ascend, meaning that they illuminate from below upwards. And supernal Chesed emerges from the side, meaning from Chakma the judgment of Bira emerges from the side from. Bina and the merit of Jacob, which is the secret of the central column, Tiferet comes and unites them one with the other. For this is the supernal perfection. Nine hundred and fourteen. We have learned that Rabbi Shimon said this is the reason that he is called Israel. We have learned that Jacob is below, meaning the aspect of from the chest down of Zeir and Israel is above, meaning from the kist up of Zeir and Jacob is not perfection, but Israel is complete perfection. And we have learned the saying of David, the son of Yishai, two Shmuel two hundred and thirty one. David is not perfection because he is last, for he is the last sphere of Malchut, whose perfection lies only in Yisad. Yishai is Yisad, which is highest, is perfect. This is what we learned that the children of Israel were not exiled from their land until they denied the Holy One, blessed be he, and the kingdom of David, which are Yisad and Malchut, as it is written, we have no part in David. Two Shmuel two hundred and one, which is Malchut, neither have we inheritance in the son of. Yeshai, which is Yezid, every man to his tents, O Yisrael, Ibid, what is the meaning of each man to his tents, Hebe meaning to his deity, Hebe which is the place where idol worshipping dwells among them. 915 Rabbi Yehuda said when Chakma started to engrave on in all the crowns, namely the Sfirat from which crown did it start, he answers from that crown that is called Bina as everything is included in Bina because the revelation of Chakma started in IT, therefore 50 gates were opened in it, so it appears that everything was engraved with Chakma. This is what is meant by in wisdom, have you made them all? Tehillim 10424, section 96, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, Rabbi Lazar says here that water is Jesus, Rabbi Shimon then replies that water is Bina, but that they are the same thing. He next explains the meanings in and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth as a measure and Weigh the mountains in scales and, and the hills in a balance. Rabbi Lazar then summarizes by saying that it is implied that Jacob, who is Tiferet, emerges from harsh judgment because Isaac had harsh judgment in his portion. Rabbi Shimon extends this argument by adding that Isaac Bura emerged from Chesed. Therefore, in all the levels, judgment emerges from mercy and mercy from judgment. It is recognized that it is all one and that they all come from one. Rabbi Lazar, we find, thinks that it appears there is no perfection unless one is attached to the other, so that the central column mercy unites Chesed and judgment. He next says, We have learned that it is not considered such a great distance between Chesed and judgment, except from our viewpoint. Rabbi Yehuda then concludes by saying that all the candles illuminate from one from Ein infinity. All the candles are one, and we must not distinguish between them, for one who separates them is in turn separated from eternal life himself. The relevance of this passage in the section we read that God's judgment is achieved through understanding measurement and weighing and balancing with the exercise of loving kindness and mercy spiritually we are being taught that light is an endless infinite force whose sole essence is goodness this light never stands in judgment of us nor does this boundless force execute punishment good fortune and reward judgment and punishment are the result of the manner in which we knowingly or unknowingly interact with the light that permeates all existence as a model the force of electricity can bring great light and benefit to a city comfort and security to a community or it can bring destruction if our fingers carelessly touch raw current in the case of the latter it is meaningless to say electricity punished us the Zohar is providing us with the schematic of the cosmos the blueprint of the soul it is our behavior the blend and balance of judgment and mercy that we extend to Others that determines how much judgment and mercy the cosmos reflects back to us thus we learn that a man offers compassion because he will one day need it and a man bestows mercy for the times when he seeks a Jacob as a central column force embodies the wisdom of balance the perfection of sharing and receiving judgment and mercy Jacob creates a circuit of light through the union of opposite forces much like the filament in a bulb that unites through resistance the positive and negative poles to produce ordinary light the wisdom and will to embody such balanced behavior is bequeathed to us through Jacob the entire world is here with measured balanced unified and illuminated by the supernal candle the creator of the cosmos and because mercy now grows in our heart this is all achieved with boundless benevolence 916 we have learned that it is written who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand Yeshua 4012 what is water by Rabbi Laser taught it this way that this is Chesed Rabbi Shimon said to him they are all the same for Chesed is drawn from Bina and meted out heaven with the span of it what is heaven it is Tiferet as it is written the beauty had Tiferet of Yisrael Ejah 21 therefore the word meted I used the implication being that it is arranged for splendor and beauty and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure Yeshayah 4012 is bureau meaning the left column for before it is included in the right it does not illuminate and is like the dust of the earth and weigh the mountains in scales Ibid these are the other crowns meaning Sfirot that are called mountains of pure balsam which are net and Yezid and the hills in a balance Ibid these are the rest of the chariots below them namely those in Malchut and Briah Yitzra and Asiyah 917 come and see it is written in the hollow of his hand what is the hollow of his hand he answers this is the spirit of Chakma for we have learned a knotted path is overcome by a palanquin 918 and meted out heaven with the span. What is a span? He answers, These are the fifty gates of Bina that were opened and scattered to all directions because the word span habzir it means scattering as it said and spread habzir it dung upon your faces. Malachi 23 and comprehended in a measure habshalish. Yeshayah 4012. What is shalish? Namely mercy, which is the central column tiferet that includes within itself three habshalosha columns, which is the completion of everything and weigh the mountains in scales. What means scales? Rabbi Shimon said, as it is written, just balances, just weights. Vayikra 1936, which are net sash and hot. Rabbi Shimon also said, I have established these subjects in the lecture about who forms everything. 919. Rabbi Lazar said, Here it is implied that Jacob, who is tiferet, emerges from harsh judgment from Bura, which is his opposite because Isaac, who is Bura, had harsh judgment in his portion. Rabbi Shimon said, to him is that all indeed Isaac who is Bura emerged from Chesed and so in all the levels judgment emerges from mercy and mercy from judgment Abraham inherited an inheritance of Chesed and Isaac emerged with judgment from
not change Malachi 36 Rabbi Yehuda said all the candles illuminate from one from the blessed endless light and they depend upon one all the candles are one and one must not distinguish between them for one who separates between them is separated from eternal life section 97 and he wrote upon a cherub and did fly Rabbi Yitzhak speaks here of two cherubs called Yutz Metatron and Sandalphone and how God settles upon them Rabbi Yuzi then tells us that if the two cherubs turn their faces away from each other there is no peace in the world this we learn is because there is then no pairing above and Rabbi Yitzhak points out that a similar idea is conveyed in the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover he says that in the old days people cared about Torah but now only a few are left to do and these few holy ones are those with whom God himself praised the relevance of this passage the verses two cherubs who turn their faces away from each other and the nakedness of your mother or the nakedness of your father pertain to the disjoining of the right and left columns the separation creates a dangerous imbalance that inevitably prevents peace in our lives the root of evil is the left column the desire to receive for the self alone left unchecked its appetite is unappeasable like a black hole in deep space it consumes everything in its vicinity leaving blackness in its wake if the right column force of sharing is left unchecked it will give ceaselessly however lacking any aspect of the left desire to receive it will never be replenished eventually its resources are depleted and it ends up empty feeling a tremendous lack the central column unites these two opposite forces by resisting the desire to receive and transforming it into the desire to receive for the sake of sharing jacob and the righteous souls past and present who love to now activate the complete consciousness of central Column the will to resist our selfish drives and instead think about the next person which brings the full complement of light and genuine peace to the world. 922 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written and I will make youngsters their princes and babes shall rule over them. Yeshayah 34 this is in accordance with the verse and you shall make two cherubs of gold. Shema 2518 that are Metatron and Sandalphone who are called youths it is written who sits upon the cherubs. Ishmuel 44 and also and he wrote upon a cherub and did fly to Shmuel 2211 meaning only on one cherub he answers when the holy one blessed be he wishes to settle upon them entirely it is written who sits upon the cherubs that he settles on them both together but when the king does not dwell and is not seated on the throne meaning when there is no union above between male and female it is written and he wrote upon a cherub this is because the king who is Zeir and is not seated on his throne that is Malchut but who Sits on the cherubs would imply to 923 Rabbi Yossi said woe is to the world when one cherub turns his face away from his neighbor for this shows that there is no union above a right and left it is written and their faces shall look one to another Shema 2520 at the time that there is peace in the world it is implied that if they do not face each other there is no peace in the world Rabbi Yitzhak said we have learned that the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Vayikra 187 meaning that one should not sin by separating the union of male and female who are your father and mother woe is to he who uncovers their nakedness meaning if he blemishes them therefore it is not necessary to derive this from and their faces one to another similar to this it is written by Jacob shall reach from end to end meaning that he unites right and left together blessed is the portion of Israel that the Holy One blessed be he praises himself with their praise is above in Tiferet as it is written Yisrael in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 924 we have learned that Rabbi Yitzhak said in the early days a person would say to his neighbor tell me a word of Torah and receive a coin of silver now a person says to his neighbor receive a coin of silver and study Torah no one cares and no one pays attention except for these few holy ones with whom the holy one blessed be he praises himself as it is written your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever they shall be the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified Yeshua 6021 section 98 the hooks of the pillars Rabbi Yitzhak speaks here about the forms of the supernal pillars Netzach and Hot and the hooks from which are suspended the pillars below the two pillars are united and watered we are told by the spinal column Tiferet that stands over them lastly we learn that the hooks of him are six within six so that there are bobs above in Shesed, Bure, and Tiferet and bobs below in Netzach Hot and Yezid the relevance of this passage essentially this passage speaks of how life flows Tiferet is the upper central column and Yezid is the lower central column residing between Netzach and Hot this is the critical channel that needs to be opened for us to receive the light the Zohar now opens up Netzach and Hot through the unifying power of Yezid so that an abundance of light floods our world opening up the hearts of man to the true creator 925 the hooks of the pillars and their joints shall be of silver Shema 2710 Rabbi Yitzhak said the hooks of the pillars I say all these that are joined with the forms of the supernal pillars which are Netzach and Hot are called the hooks of the pillars all those of below are suspended from these hooks what are hooks have been they are six within six because between bobs are two times six equals bob for the six extremities are Combined of each other and each one has six therefore Netzach is six and Hot is six they are united and watered by the spinal column which is Tiferet that stands over them for Tiferet stands over Netzach and Hot in Safrat it's Neotah and the hidden book we learn that there are Bobs above in Shesed Bure and Tiferet and Bobs below in Netzach Hot and Yezid they all are interpreted in the same way meaning that there is no dispute here.